lot of times When sweet words turn into lies We got caught in our nest, yeah I put our love on a rest Hit the break, I turn over And never ever say that you know her Got a flame to fuel every night Keep her safe and hold her tight High on your love, high on your love High on your love, high is never enough Never enough, never enough I'm so high on your love, high on your love Singing 
than despair Hold me Hold me tightly
shot, new kid on the block. Curtains running strong like a solo wave. I feel electric. Locked, plugged into the socket. Watch me burning hot, yeah, I already ate. I feel electric. Cars in through my veins like a power surge. Call it misbehaving the way I burn. If you're gonna wait, then you miss your turn. Charge up and ready, I'm going steady with you. The energy you can change the lights from red to green. See, I got what you need. Sparking a connection, go VIP. You feel electric. You feel electric. League Season 22 is brought to you in part by Intel Arc, Acer Predator, DHL, Monster Energy, 1X Bet, and the United States Air Force. Good morning and welcome, and thank you for welcoming us into your homes or computers or heads, at least, this morning. And we really appreciate it. And I'm sure that you are very excited for today, as are we, because we're in the group stages. You're watching Dream League. It's season 22. We're in group stage number two, phase two. Only eight teams remain, and we are in the best of threes. And that means we have a day filled with Dota 2. So let's get started. Yeah, there we are. We are having so much to talk about. I'm going to jump straight in. This is Jenkins. He's my co-host. Hey, Jenkins, how are you doing? Hello. I'm not a co-host anymore. This is the co-host chair, but welcome. Uh, I have a question for you, Jenkins. Uh -huh. um, previous seasons, mm -hmm. every time we had a commentary duo on the couch with us, what was one thing that they always kind of did 
that was always just the same. Uh, bicker with each other. That too, definitely. But they also all sat every time they sat in the same place. These two seem to just swap around. It's very, it's, it's like, you know, if, if you're sleeping on one side of the bed, you normally always sleep on the same side of the bed. What's going on here? Was I on the left side yesterday? <laughs> yes. See, the uh. fact that he doesn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and also... It was all purposeful. Yes, these, Shiver, these, what do you have are, to say? Yeah, mm. These are guests, you know? Mm -hmm. It's lovely. Why did he bring his coat? Is he not liking our hospitality? You, you see, here? Here's the thing. Last time I wore my coat, you gave me shit for it. All right, you made me very <laughs> self-conscious. And the moment you said it, I started to get warm. Actually, I was fine until you brought it up. I didn't. It was such a comfortable coat. Now I'm putting it on my lap. Yeah. Just to respect you as a host, mm. but just in case I get cold, I, I can put it on. Was it, it is sweet enough? Was it cold when you rode it on the the Harley? <laughs> Why do you think this is a leather jacket? <laughs> Are you brain dead? <laughs> How many times have you made that joke? Is that joke? a rhetorical question? <laughs> That's looks, true. That's it true. looks on you like a leather jacket. It's plush. You look right? like you look like you've retired and you're traveling across the Midwest with your <laughs> wife. And parking in that's Walmart kind of parking my, lot. Yeah, that's kind of my MO, I guess. <laughs> Quite close. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, I also would like to uh, take this moment to let us know that we have an imposter amongst the mids. I don't know if you guys watched yesterday's broadcast. It's Jenkins. Something was brought to my attention, oh. and mm. you you might have already seen this. Uh, mm. And I think Sunspan, if you need assistance after this, we're here. Uh, there's a whole team ready to to help as well if you need it. Is this bathroom related or no? It's okay. not. Okay, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you look at me? Why did you look at me for approval on that? Let's the just look the, at the, the video. Quick, the quick glance. <laughs> Well, let's just look Is there the a video. video we can play? What, what, are we supposed to play a video? <laughs> yeah, please play the video. I think we just uh, we kept our cool. We said, all right, that was a little bit too aggressive. We'll get our, we'll get our core items. We'll get the mech. We'll get Roshan, the Aegis, and we'll get the uh, the pipe up before we actually start base pushing. Just took it step by step. And then uh, we just we were really confident because we know one the scare factor always is going to be that anti-mage. But we locked him down really, really well in the start with our lane. Uh, he didn't get anything, obviously, against Lich and Viper in the middle lane. So, uh, yeah, we, we just yeah we, we kept going, I guess. What a beautiful that, British that was, accent! That was actually less cringy. The, the moment they put it on, I was like, oh no, I'm gonna hate this. <laughs> I hated it less than I thought. Because mm. the, the interview that I've heard from back when I was mimicking a British accent mainly, which this is. Mimicking. Uh, wait, wait, were you, act uh, were you putting on a show or were you actually talking that way? This back was then? how I spoke back then. Don't I, you remember, Shiver? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, the, the first year I met him, he was like, and then he started hanging out with me. I attribute his American accent to me. Yeah, specifically. he always takes credit for everything. Mm. It's, it's 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 a mix. That is actually true. Um, do that. Now, but the, the clip I mean, I, actually, I shouldn't be saying this. There's a clip that I thought was way worse. So thanks for picking a good one. Good job, Cinder. What happened? <laughs> what do you mean? You sounded so smart there. What happened, Cinder? Jeez. Yeah. You were very proud of beating an anti mage with Lich Viper mid. <laughs> That that is quite the feat. Wait, I wonder which tournament that was from. It's probably a DreamHack. I probably guess? a DreamHack. Yeah. In the past. Yeah, it's the only two tournaments the setting, you won, right? The setting looks like DreamHack. Wow, you're really on fire today, aren't you? What? That, those are good tournaments. You beat Navi. Yeah, you said the only two. That's incorrect, factually. Okay, well, name another one. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Moving on. This is moving on. How the podcast tends yeah, to go yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm just. I, when I watch it silently. Why did you speak British? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Still on this. Yeah, why did you speak I British? Don't know. It's what? not just one person that can like make you lose your whole accent. <laughs> 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 okay, so I guess to give a little bit of background, I. Um, can so you speak British now, real quick? Yeah. Do no. you still have it? Not really. <clears throat> you Do you want to try? I would like you to try. I'm Please not going to try that. Please. Right right now. Well, well, take a bottle of water. Bottle of water. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so, That's pretty bad. All right, do, do the explanation in British. No, I'm not. <laughs> what is the point of this? Am I just here to be tortured this by you or Phil, what? This is Phil. All right. Uh, no, it's is, not. I'm it, just really genuine torture. Okay, so to answer your question, I'm I'm from a family of teachers. Both my parents had English as their second subject in in uh, high school. They were teaching, and I think they just generally were going for a British accents. So that was mainly the type of English I grew up hearing. I think. And in Danish schools, I think it's probably more common for the, how to say, the education materials to... To be British. Yeah, that's to the be same, That's the same in the Netherlands. Yeah. But I, so, I didn't. So I think that's just why. You know? Yeah, I, I guess maybe it's part of just that coming from home, I suppose. Yeah. That's, that's my best guess of why that started. And especially, my, especially my dad. Yeah, at some point you're like, nah. <laughs> no, nah, but I, I think what's, 
what happens is when you when you're a second language speaker and I think a lot of like what you said is effectively what happens is it's a lot about the people you are around. Yeah. So if that you, influence on you. Yeah. British British you sound like so yeah. You sounded so clever. Yeah. Yeah, oh. Look at you now. Yeah. I mean, fa now. Absolute fall from grace. Can't even sit on the same side yeah. of the couch. You yeah. know what? Uh, <laughs> I can't even remember anything. <laughs> you know what? Another country is that actually does teach people British English in terms of accents. England. Yay! <laughs> wow. England. There you go. But also. Next question. South Africa. And that leads us to our next topic because our next guest actually comes from South Africa. I believe he still lives in Germany, though. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we have Knoxville calling in. Hey, Knoxville, how are you doing? Hey, how's it going? Did you catch any of our previous conversation? Yeah, I, I think it's a bit disrespectful that uh, Sunspan was talking so disrespectfully to Cinder and winner of Midas Mode to Europe. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a little bit rude. Very distinguished. That's good. Good tournament. Very good. Thanks I, for the stat, Knoxville. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, glad problem, to have no you with us. Uh, I, I know, yep. I mean, obviously we're very familiar with you and your work, but uh, would you mind doing a little bit of a tiny intro for people that might not be? Uh, sure, uh, I do stats related to Dota 2, uh, sometimes at events, sometimes remotely. Uh, I also do various other stats and maths related things related to events. Like, I guess the thing which we're going to be talking about today is related to like probabilities of teams performing and qualifying for events or winning events. And yeah, as a result, I have lots of very happy fans who definitely don't get angry when they see their team has a like 0.1% chance to qualify, <laughs> and it's my fault. Is it, is it not? Uh, well, yeah, the, yeah, stats don't lie, you know, as uh, <laughs> some old professor used to say. <clears throat> it's true, true. Yes, the onus is on you to provide us stats every day, Knoxville. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I do that. I sometimes slide into uh, Nevo Cinderin's uh, DMs, Ooh. and I... Give him little tidbits, little facts when he messes up or when he says something funny. He had an amazing one correct the other day. I don't know how he knows it, which was like he's only had one game ever where nobody on his team died. And I was like, wow, that like, how does he know this? Is like, does he just like remember that one game and it's been like a glorifying, brilliant game in his history? And yeah, he was right, which is stranger. How many years ago was that? I remember this game uh, very clearly. Ti Ti six ish. Yeah. I think it was it was the what was it called the um what was the full score how many kills oh we did we win 16-0 or something or something like that yeah it was a whitewash obviously but it was like not it wasn't a huge one it wasn't a 22-0 or something like that yeah. it was, but the, the funniest thing was which player actually has the most one of these which completely surprised me it was misery has had like six games where his team has never died that was uh, that was a shock hmm. you know because he played in NA for a while. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> that could be. I also have been told that before we get into the probabilities of teams doing well, that you're going to tell us who Monte Carlo is. And why is he so important for math? Uh, I, I mean, Monte Carlo is actually just named after the casino. <clears throat> um, guy made it up like in more popular culture. Oppenheimer, the movie has come up, has been very popular. It wasn't Oppenheimer who came and uh, developed the technique. But uh, Stanislaw Ulow created it for like, when it comes to uh, modeling how atomic bombs are gonna explode. Okay. So it's like a probability <laughs> method. Yeah. Was quite complicated scientific methods amongst others. <clears throat> and yeah, it's a very powerful tool in statistics for complicated situations where you can't calculate an exact answer. So you simulate it and you use like lots of simulations to work it out. I see the correlation, calculating how bombs explode, <laughs> calculating how teams in Dota 2 do, it mm -hmm. applies. Yeah, it works on NA Dota especially well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I, I believe you have a spreadsheet for us uh, as well to, to show, like, no, apparently well, we I don't. don't, sorry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can tell you that, that there is like a, a rough calculation and I think towards the end of this competition, it's like stable enough that it'll be shared a little mm. bit more publicly. But yeah, I mean, it's no, no big surprises really at the moment because, you know, we are quite far into the season. We've still got this event and then 
There is uh, Birmingham, and then there's Dream League uh, Season 23. So, yeah, we're, we're halfway through plus minus. So it's no surprise that some teams are very close to qualified. If not, like, it would take astronomical uh, unluck for teams like uh, Gaming Gladiators, Betboom, Extreme, even Team Spirit to, to not qualify given the current state. Um, but I think what's more interesting is, you know, as you go further down, a few teams have had like a, a very sharp increase in chance to qualify based on this event so far. So uh, Shopify Rebellion, uh, Extreme has also grown up quite a bit, uh, like several percent. And yeah, there's, I think it's eight slots at the moment, which are direct qualif qualification. And then there's 12 slots for the regional qualifiers at the end. So yeah, I mean, probably by the end of this event, it'll be stable enough start being a talking point as we uh, head towards the uh, Riot Masters. Uh, can I ask a question? Do you are you are Were you involved with applying like how many points each team wins if they do well or each team, like how many points people get from playing, for example, Dream League? Like which rank gets which amount of points? No, I, I have no idea about that. But oh. yeah, it's. I think that the numbers are like not necessarily a, a metric of like current skill and they're also not a metric of like average skill like they wanted to ramp up so that like the teams that do better towards the end get more points mm -hmm. and yeah it's quite aggressive in terms of like how many points you get just for winning like one extra best of three in the elimination round but that also reflects the dota scene like when you get to ti and stuff like that you win one more game and your prize money doubles or triples or yeah. five x's so so it is like quite accurate in that way yeah, because I was surprised by the, the you get forty two points if you count last. <laughs> Consolation points. <laughs> yeah. You get a couple. Uh, with you, we also like to look at the current uh, EPT standings uh, with that as well. With having in mind that there is like there's cer there's certain odds that come into play when uh, indeed well with the simulations how successful teams will and will not do based on the a sheet that you have somewhere, Nox. Which team yeah, yeah, yeah. do you, which team is uh, do you think is gonna do is gonna do better? Like which team does the sheet say should be getting more points, or doesn't it say that? Mm, uh, I mean, I guess Shopify Rebellion is like eleventh there. Yeah. Like, maybe that is actually quite. I think that they're they're quite a bit higher because these. I don't know if this sheet uh, that you the, the, the graphic that you have. Has got their current points in terms of the guarantees that they've got. They, sh they uh, should be the guarantees that they got this event, but not mm -hmm. the guarantees that they got from Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure about that. Um, obviously, the way the calculation works is it just has all of that basically, like as you're adding information, the point, the minimum points are like automatically increased. So, for example, the last time I updated the standings was once we determined which teams were top eight and made it to group stage two and which teams didn't that was like the last bit of information but theoretically we could add it after every single game to have a much smoother like update as it happens but yeah one upset and a lot of things can change like team liquid not making it obviously for them not really important in terms of qualifying they have so many points already but for other teams it means more potential to just get a little bit you know a couple of hundred extra points so it really just makes a big difference further down the table I have, I have one more question. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I have one more question. Okay. How much time do you spend updating this spreadsheet? Uh, well, now that I've written all the code for it, it's probably like half an hour or an hour a week just to add oh, all okay. the results in. And it's not too much. That's, that's yeah, manageable. Like the first, yeah, for TI, it's a lot like, you know, when you start look with, like in previous DPC seasons where you want to have all the results across all the regions, that is like awful. That is like two, three hours a week sometimes. All right, that, that's that much. Well, easy well, game. Well, I know that you sometimes also uh, tweet the current standings here and there. Uh, so uh, I will definitely keep my eye on that and I'm sure people at home should do as well. I've, is it uh, at Knoxville Dota? At Knoxville? No, just at Knoxville. Just at Knoxville, all right, there you go. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very <laughs> much for joining us uh, this morning, Knox. Uh, it was very no insightful. Problem, and uh, I will keep track of uh, of the Twitter for sure. See you, Knox. Cool. Hey, bye, everyone. Bye, honey badges. <laughs> Fun fact about this guy, he's actually known from Jackass as well. Oh, wow. Incredible. <laughs>
All right, let's take a look at the scores of yesterday. <laughs> Don't know how I was going to segue that in. It's good enough. Uh, for me. But uh, we obviously had a full day of uh, group sta stages yesterday as well. That was a day. This was day one, so that's why you see all teams only have one series played. Jenkins, it was an eventful day, though. Was an eventful day. Uh, Shopify, of course, two owing, so we're not going to call them Spotify today. They've earned the uh, right to be called their true name, mm. Extreme Gaming. This is one of the ga uh, series that went uh, three games. Uh, the third one was very long, but... Uh, just the third one. Just the third one. Okay. Actually, all of them were very long, that's <laughs> no, right. Yes. The Extreme Gaming, they've been, they've had Phoenix in the last four out of their five games. They're the one team that seems to really like this champion. So we'll see if that gets banned out today in the first series. Shannon. It feels like these games were uh, shellackings. I think we were talking about, I actually forgot, because how bad the games were. <laughs> the first game actually... The first uh, game was good. Yeah, I forgot all about it. I mean, it ended up being a stomp like halfway through, but the execution of the teams in that game number one is like the <coughs> excuse me, the highest that we've seen the entire tournament. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's, I, I don't feel like part of it is the patch, but also it's just the teams. I think it was just a bad day. I think we'll get a lot better Dota today. Yeah, we also yeah. Had, a, had a Chen come out to play. Like, yeah, I, I'm still I'm still not sure if that one was on purpose. That's it, not happening uh, again. Yeah, we need to ask. I, I don't think. That. Yeah, if we if we get an interview with uh, with OG, that could be a question about whether they genuinely mm. forgot the chin yesterday because they let it through and then they spent extra time in phase one trying to find <laughs> out their <laughs> I don't know like, what happened. If you're giving Chen, you probably have an idea of what you want to first pick, right? Uh, yeah. See saber light on screen there. Very nice. Obviously. <laughs> Um, Delicious gummy. They played a one hour. They, they won 2-0. The second game was an hour. It, it took a while to get across the finish line. Uh, Arteza was stupidly farmed on Sven that game, but uh, they had a couple of missteps here and there, but they had a big enough buffer. Yeah, I, th I think overall for, for our day yesterday, the highlight was probably day, game one between Extreme and Spirit. I, I think like the highlight is teams slowly, still not there yet, of course, learning how to use the banner. Mm. Still incompetent. But when you talk to Toronto Tokyo... Yeah. You could tell that they're thinking about yes, it. Yes, yeah. There it will was be actually... improvements. They've been shitting the bed lately. Every yeah. team has with that thing, but it's getting better. I, I, the fact that he said they thought about saving the banners so that they could stack them up, I'm like, yes, we need <laughs> the banner meta. That's right. Uh, that's, uh, we're going to actually talk a little bit more about banner in a second, but of first, course, we're talking but about... <laughs> Never-ending content. Yeah, never really, useful, content. really useful uh, stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about what, uh, what's, uh, what's coming up today because four best of three series are coming up today. So this is the schedule. We're going to have mm. Gaming Gladiators versus Shopify at the end of the day. Team Spirit, Aurora, their third. Uh, OG versus Falcons, Jenkins, should be cool. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. I mean, OG, I think, is surprising people. Uh, they did fairly well in Bepum Dacha in terms of their performance, not like how the numbers looked at the end, but they beat some... Solid teams. They, you know, replaced Yuragi with Tomato. They uh, didn't picking... do well. That's why they replaced Yuragi. Well, they didn't do well in terms of the numbers, but in the individual games that they were playing, they actually weren't that bad. It was like they were so close yet so far. And I feel like this addition of Tomato has um, done a lot for the team. Yeah. They're uh, it's a really good meta for Tomato as well. Like they uh, teams in general are picking illusion based. Like you just stand around and like don't die you don't feed that is literally like tomato's play style he's kind of a boring carry to watch in the sense that he just doesn't die unless he plays drow and he buys glacier then it's the hypest thing you've ever that's seen that's extremely hype people really <laughs> love glacier he's right uh, tomato's a really hype player to watch when he gets that glacier but until that point he's playing the nagas the pls and just kind of surviving and uh, that's exactly what you need to do in the current meta it's yeah. a Actually, just really quickly, it's actually a kind of interesting point because that is perhaps part of the problem for both uh, Yotaro as well as Duraccio is that they are, they as players have been very, I wouldn't necessarily say Yotaro has been as high risk as Duraccio has, but they're like very aggressive and they like making high impact, high risk moves and not be as stable. Uh, and both of those teams, Spirit and Gaming Gladiators are, I mean, they're still here. It's not like they're knocked out or whatever, but definitely not playing at necessarily the same high level that we're mm -hmm. used to seeing. So perhaps the meta isn't quite there for them. Maybe they'll have adapted since uh, yesterday. We'll see. We'll see what's coming our way. I know what's coming our way right now. And we are heading over to our first series of the day. It's Bad Boom versus Extreme Gaming. And uh, with that, we are going to check if Purge did his homework.
Thank you, Steve. I did do my homework. And I we talked so much about banners the last couple of days that I just had to, to figure some things out about it. So uh, a couple things, to, just for those that don't know, this is the Roche banner here. Ignore the three rapiers on Witch Doctor. Roche banner creeps in this AOE will be buffed with 75% more HP and 50% more damage. It's based on how much base HP and base damage they have. These clips that I took were about four minutes in, so creeps are gonna have more HP and damage as the game continues, but only a little bit more. And basically what you should know is the, the buff lasts for about 60 seconds. I don't remember the exact number, but the uh, but the benefit that it gives you is that the farther you put the banner across the map, the more buff that your creeps have. Uh, these ones here are about 40% of the buff remaining before it runs out. So that gives you time if you put it in, at your tier three tower, they get to fight like one creep wave before they go high ground, which means you want them to have HP as long as possible. See, these ones are almost gone and they only fought one creep wave. So if they have a lot of work to do on the map, you don't actually get much buff there. This, this buff is gonna run out as they get to the tier three tower. So the greedier that you are by placing the banner across the map, the more HP the creeps are gonna have. It's especially important if you can to place them when the catapult waves happen and to place it deeper because then these guys get gigantic. These catapults get massive and that allows the creeps to do more damage on the map. In fact, if you're even as greedy as, as uh, putting it halfway across the map like this, it makes an even bigger benefit because the creeps will kill more creep waves and take the tower. In one of the clips that I grabbed, uh, I placed a banner kind of similar to this on the dire side, and it allows your creeps to stack up. Then you have two gigantic creep waves pushing across the map. Then it really clears buildings. I would like to see teams do more banners deeper on the map, timing it with pushes so that your creeps are in the enemy base with high HP for longer. Right now, it's a lot of lazy banner placement that keeps the creep waves across the map, but doesn't do that much tower damage because heroes are eventually going to get there. So I'd like to see some advancement in this item or maybe some buffs to it personally. Thank you. Buffs? You want buffs to the banner? Yeah, why not? He wants buffs to the why banner. Not? I'm so bored it's of this banner talk. You are? No, <laughs> I'm so not bored of the banner talk. Dude. All right, it's been banner, banner, banner for like a week straight, bro. Yeah, but just remove the item, please, Val. I think, I think you can be very aggressive with placing the banner, but you also have to realize that it's visible, like where you place it, so people are just gonna kill it if they, mm -hmm. it's within reach. Either way, okay, I'll, I'll humor Jenkins enough banner talk for the moment as we do have our first series of the day. Hello, Effie, welcome uh, to the panel as well. Thank you. <laughs> What do you think about the banner talk? No, I said I wouldn't. No, that, well, that. I'm glad Purge did his homework. That was fine to him. Yes, that's okay. true. All I have to say, good job, Purge. Thank good you. job, Purge. It was kind of hard nice to like. Nice turtleneck. <laughs> really fits the banner talk. Thank you. Uh, it's like a college <laughs> professor is boring the hell out of me. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, it it, it's, it's hard to make the clips like really cohesive without spending like two hours on it. And frankly, I was too much time for my life. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised when I first did the banner mess around. Let's talk about it a little bit one more. <laughs> Uh, when I first did it, it would basically kill one tier one tower only. I thought it would do more personally. Mm -hmm. I really did think it was going to do more. It did not. Well, it also um, lasts for five minutes. It's a very long time. Yeah, but the buff on the creeps is pretty shitty. Yeah, it, but the, like duration. you get several creep waves with the buff. It's like yeah, but they're like they're push. better, but they're not that much better. It's like fifty percent more mm -hmm. damage, and most of the time they sit there hitting creeps, and a tower just kills them slowly. But pop quiz, is, is it, it percentage banners? based damage that the creeps are increased by? Yes. Okay, so banners are actually really strong when there are mega creeps. We've seen it before. Mm -hmm. That's when bowers, banners are powerful. Power. But, it, but it's mostly the HP. You just need to like, I, I kind of wish that a team would be like, we're going to go high ground at 25 minutes and they put the fucking banner right behind them. The what, the, As, the what banner? Am I allowed to say that word? <laughs> Relax, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> I it's think a, you're allowed to say it on those <laughs> chairs, but I'm not sure about that. <laughs> what you're the fuck out, man. Angry man. <laughs> Put going yeah, high ground, <laughs> okay. and you slap the banner down, and your gigantic creeps run in with you, and they tank so many more tower shots and hero spells. But teams are like, I'm gonna I th put I in the base. Th I think we're all overthinking the banner. I think you just slam it down mid because it's the shortest lane. I that's think what Toronto Tokyo said I as think well, but he was debating where. In but that's where I was putting it. It really doesn't last a that long. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's the true. Python theorem. All right. <laughs> you just need to put it down mid because the creeps are going to be pushed in. And you can take any barrack that you want. 
on account of the backdoor protection being off. Okay, personally, I appreciate the banner talk, but we do have to also move on because there's a lot to talk about because, hey, guess what? We have a series coming up. It's Bad Boom versus Extreme Gaming. It's a best of three. Uh, both teams, of course, victorious yesterday with a 2-1 to one against their opponents, which is great for them. We'll see who comes out on top today. And uh, before we take a closer look at Bad Boom in particular, there's something you should know about the team. Uh, and we are going to show that in the US Air Force Wisdom Rune, because chat wheels uh, are used, obviously, by the squad, but um, overall, Bed Boom has been using it a significant amount more than other teams. Effie, are you surprised by this fact? Mm, no. Mm. The banners, so banners per team? No, no this oh. is chat wheel, oh, okay, chat wheels okay. per team. Yeah, the banner talk was really useless. Uh, so let's just go ahead and talk about the do, chat wheels per team. So, do, do you mean chat wheels as in the pings that you do through Any chat, chat wheels, wheels or voice lines? Any chat wheels. I'm actually not surprised because it just becomes muscle memory. So you could just spam go, retreat, affirmative. Like it's natural to a lot of these players. And yeah. I feel like EEU teams, I mean, they get into the habit of communicating through chat wheel anyway because of pubs, you know, mm -hmm. at least at the start. It's just very common culture there to just yeah. chat wheel, go, 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 go. True. You know, so I, I think it makes sense. I think for, for group stage one, I was told that um, oh, that um, Bed Boom has 31-ish average chat wheel uses per game, and the second highest is OG <laughs> with 19.8. So there's a very big difference there, though. There's huge discrepancy. I mean, Bed Boom's doing the best in the tournament, though, so I yeah. think people need to up those numbers. OG maybe they could, off. Maybe they could up the all chats per game as well, because I think... Bad Boom's probably carrying that one, Toronto, yeah, Tokyo. Yeah, but that's also because they do, the need to, uh, they do need to check out their, their Discord settings frequently. But that's fine. We're, to, we're going to talk more about Bad Boom because GPK is our spotlight player for this squad. It's, uh, it's a player that Purges is, has been a, a, a prodigy for a long time. Obviously, mm -hmm. he's now a staple of the squad. He's, he's doing really well. Uh, do you feel like he has a, a stable performance or is he still going upwards? Uh, going upwards is difficult for him because he's at such a good position already. Yeah. I mean, during TI, him him and Nightfall, I believe, had like two of the top five KDAs at the whole tournament mm -hmm. or something. They just consistently die very few times, get very good kills. They're just extremely, extremely good players. So um, going up higher than that is difficult. I think um, GPK has more than a doubt proved himself in the last two years, basically, with consistency, mm -hmm. with high performance. People used to blame him, saying he tilts easy, and that's why he wasn't like he a top-tier player. But I just feel like we haven't seen those results as much lately. Since he shaved the beard, he's not been tilting as much. I can mm -hmm. tell you that from public experience as well. Uh, but I think GPK, if you asked all the mid laners in the world who their least favorite player to 1v1 against is, the most picked guy would be GPK. Okay. People really don't like 1v1ing this guy. Uh, we saw at the 1v1 tournament at Bet Boom twice yeah. in a row. Uh, basically, the finals was the Nisha versus GPK because Nisha went on to stomp the, the eventual grand finals. The GPK match was very close. Like, this guy is arguably the best 1v1 mid laner in the world. I want to talk, before we jump into the game, because we are very close, I want to talk about their opponents as well. We got Extreme Gaming, and I, I feel like, Effie, we have to talk about Jin Q because he was... Mm -hmm. I, I think he ruined some pub games yesterday as well with the <laughs> he performance. Did. Mm -hmm. He did. Okay, so I think Zinku is one of the, the funnest position fours to watch because he is a... He's very atypical in the way that he plays. And we saw that firsthand yesterday when he played Monkey King. So he just goes, you know, wind lace and boots and he spends the entire 10 minutes of that game one versus Spirit sniping careers. And the entire observation of that game was just us watching Zenki versus Mapochka. If Mapochka could stop him from sniping couriers, and he was just like level level three at minute ten or eleven, and they actually won the game on extreme gaming because those kinds of shenanigans can work if your team can capitalize on all the space that you're making and the advantage that you're giving your team by denying the enemy team items. So he's a very fun player in that sense, of course. Yeah, uh, we are in the draft for the series. So extreme will be on the radiant side with second pick and Bed Boom on uh, Dire side with first pick. Uh, the Chen obviously still gets removed because people don't forget him. And uh, yeah, the Monkey King is going to be on our radar. We'll see how this game is going to play itself out. Based on yesterday's games, Jenkins, do you have a, a favorite? Like, do you feel like one team played in particularly better than another? This is also, by the way, the first series that we have that is different bet between the groups. So it kind of comes down to you prefer the meta of Group A or Group B. I 
don't actually have a clear favorite. I feel like both teams are fairly equal, and in their series yesterday, both teams went 2-1, and the final game of the Bet Boom series was very close. And the Extreme Gaming series, also the first in the... I mean, all the games were, like, fairly long duration. So I feel like a lot of the teams in uh, the second group stage are are evenly matched. The The level of competition in Dota is very high right now. Yeah, I would agree with that for sure. Uh, the one thing that has stood out to me this tournament, though, when we talk about teams, is, like, typically we've always known Bad Boom to be the strongest laning team in Dota, but... Mm -hmm. I really think that Falcons has usurped that title from them. And they're still an incredibly strong laning team, but don't you feel like they've lost a little bit of their offlane power, just in terms of like lane mechanics? On Bet Boom? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess so. But the, the trade-off is they have they get a player that... Uh, plays offlane. Plays offlane. Yeah. <laughs> and has a hero pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he can play almost anything. Although we say that and he's just on the you know typical Dragonite, or at least that's what... Um, I would expect. Yeah, but we've seen him play Timbersaw and Enigma and Lycan. Yeah, he whatever plays anything. His team he's, he's, he's an offline player. He's not pure. <laughs> you know. And Extreme goes for the Phoenix, by the way, which in the last four out of five of their games, uh, they have picked the Phoenix. They've won three of those games, and it looked very good in all of them. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if they would first phase this. Maybe it's just a read that they have that this is extremely good against the meta heroes, which I feel like at the very least against the offlane meta heroes, it's like DK, Mars, Centaur, like primals being picked on the mid lane like a lot of these these are really high strength heroes yeah. really hard to kill through their their armor and reductions and obviously phoenix with the percentage damage is completely fine playing into these heroes and because mage slayer is falling off a little bit all of a sudden magic damage is more effective team fight seems to be really popular right now too so having phoenix in there to either save a guy it kind of covers both bases right you can either save the guy that's being killed or just provides a really strong team fight. Yep. Both both sections are really effective. But this is actually how they draft. They first phase DIY's hero whenever they can, and it's always Phoenix or Crystal Maiden, and they'll always first pick Phoenix if it's a uh, second pick. So they'll always respond to a DK or a Centaur or a Doom or whatnot with, with the Phoenix. Yeah. So th this is just their bread and butter draft. I feel like DIY is very specific in that I feel like X3 can comfortably pick Phoenix every time and not suffer on lanes. He actually makes Phoenix look like a strong laning hero in this first couple of levels, which a lot of support players really can't do on this hero. To be fair, I do, I do feel like it's a pretty good Phoenix patch in terms of, like if I think about traditional Phoenix counters, it's like Silencer type heroes, like literally Silencer or Skywrath Mage and When's the last time you've seen either of these heroes, right? Like there's, uh, there's not much to stop you from egging in fights. Uh, Yules is also a very good item. Uh, Phoenix likes buying Yules. Why is Yules a good item? Because Orchid's a good item. So everybody's building Yules. Yeah, it's a strong opening <clears throat> for um, for Extreme. I did also, I mean, I'm kind of missing the opening of the Crystal Maiden, of course, but, you know, DY is going to choose. And he chose the bird. It's fine. We'll see it. I'm not hurt by it at all. It's fine. We'll see it. It's just that I think yesterday we've mainly seen this Phoenix come when they're second pick on XG yeah. and when they're pairing it with something else. And they go for a Razor with it as well. We, we've we seen Razor, just I don't think we've seen it that often on Extreme at all. I mean, XM is a Razor specialist mm. and this is also a comfortable flex to offline if they need it. So it, it's definitely a comfort hero. And we've seen Razor a few times actually. Maybe not from Extreme. I'm just gonna check that really quick. But Razor versus DK in theory should be very good because of the static link getting on top of him in the early game. I mean, later as the game progresses, the matchup changes because DK's suddenly got that Ags and that Mantis style. He doesn't he show can, up on the map ever. Yeah, it's just illusions. Then he can just beat up on that Razor. XM has played this Razor once before, and he won from the mid lane. Yeah, even if you don't lane the Razor into the DK, which of course does fine because he's melee hero versus Razor. I still like Razor against DK and like the, from the seven to 20 minute mark, you can just run at him whatever lane he's in on the map mm -hmm. and, you know, suck him dry and he can't do what he wants to do, which is just sit somewhere and push towers and be aggressive. You can stop his early timing that way. I like to see him with these two heroes though. They definitely need mana. It helps uh, facilitate their lanes a lot and it'll stabilize whatever they go for. So they could go from a laning advantage into setting tempo and undercut mm -hmm. the team fight a little bit that way. 
Yeah, and actually Sam is surprisingly disruptive in the early game versus these movement-based heroes, these primal beasts and these razors. That level four of frostbite that she gets very early on, that's the spell that most Sam players will max, is very, very annoying for the early game skirmishes if you're a razor. So the hero does make sense. And it's just a strong enabling lane support. Toronto Tokyo plays it very well. You get the double magic damage coming out of Sam and Techies, like you mentioned, which will be an easy way to burst whichever hero gets dragon tailed by DK. So suddenly butt booms, you know, pick off potential is just that much amplified. It's very simple. DK blinks in, stuns, techies, blow somebody up. This is a tool. Bet boom tool. Stop this is a really good draft so far. <laughs> These it's three, three these, heroes. In. These three, <laughs> these three heroes. Like any two of them can kill anybody. And extreme, they they really need some stunner. All the heroes XXS plays feel kind of bad here. The slaughter feels kind of bad. The primal feels kind of bad against the CM against the DK. The the kiting ability. I imagine they'll probably go for the primal. Team pick. Uh, go for the alchemist. alchemist. That was going to be the next guess that I was going to put out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Definitely. Yeah. Two sources of minus armor now for extreme gaming. Mm -hmm. That's a 2-0. Bet boom teams turn. And the Nyx Assassin. Okay, Zing Q probably playing that one. Uh, he's playing that last patch even. And the Dagon just got buffed again. But we haven't really seen it that much no. uh, in the, the last couple of weeks, surprisingly. But um, it does do a lot of burst damage. CM's uh, shaking in her boots right now for sure. <laughs> yeah. So Zenki's played the Nyx Assassin twice during group stages, as I recall, and they were both wins. Mm -hmm. So when he calls for this hero, I feel like he's just comfortable sniping these supports on the back line. Because like you mentioned, Purge, the Dagon buildup just feels very good. This hero will be able to just scout out the CM, the techies, set up for kills. But I think there needs to be a hero that can capitalize on Nyx's scouting a little bit better than this Razor. Oh, I knew they would do that. In. This is a 2-0 for Extreme. This is, that was such a bad pick. 2-0 for Extreme. Heaver. <laughs> can you elaborate? It's really good against the Alchemist. <laughs> Listen, all right, okay. TB, very good against Alk. Uh, you play into him in the late game. You can Sunder him when he gets low HP. Uh, when the TB gets low HP, you get the Scotty. You like to man fight. Uh, you like to man fight versus the Razor. Razor mans up against you. TB can actually kill you before you get the drain off. Uh, I don't like the TB into the Phoenix. Phoenix can kill the Illusions. You can clear through the TB's massive HP pool. I think we're going to see TB die in one shot to the Nyx Assassin in this game, uh, especially if Extreme can get some off laner or mid laner that can pair up with and play with the with the Nyx Assassin. This is a 2-0 Extreme. Effie? Yeah, I mean, you make really great points. Uh, I think that Butt Boom just believe in their ability to go late game because the late game TB should be able to ex play this game incredibly comfortably. Like his core to core matchups versus Razor and Alchemist in the late game are very, very much in his favor. And it honestly would be a great game for BKB Terrorblade. He's not a hero that likes to buy this item, but with a BKB, if Butt Boom can just play around that item on TB, maybe his third item, they can kill the egg. They should be able to hopefully get the vision on the Nyx Assassin and take him out because this is a very high priority target, especially when Zenki plays it, but it's going to be too disruptive, disruptive with all the carapaces versus these support heroes. So definitely it makes it a little bit harder to play this TB, but it's playable, especially in that ultra late game, which is what they're looking at. Yeah, that's what Toronto Tokyo said in his interview yesterday as well when they won their series. He's like, the only games we struggled in were the games that well, we didn't go for late game. Other games, we'll just pick late game and an easy game. And so that's what they uh, went back to here. We'll see if it works against Extreme. Extreme normally wants to fight and skirmish pretty early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. And Betboom, if they want to do the same, they're going to need some mid jumper. Uh, Storm is a bit spooky because of the Nyx Assassin, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. some hero like that is what I'm thinking of. And Bob, you're right about the... Carapace is a great Carapace game. Destroys techies. I don't know if you guys have ever played that matchup. You suicide in, all of a sudden... He puts the mind down. 700 damage yeah. is reflected. It feels so sad. They do go for the storm into the Nyx, which is a bit bold. Yeah. Yeah, Nyx is typically a hero that's picked into Storm Spirit for obvious reasons. Like, you can catch the storm quite easily just by carapacing the uh, static remnant, and then you just follow up with the mana, the mana burn, which does so much damage on this hero. Then the mind flare, which, you know, I don't, they added that spell, they made this hero ridiculous. But. Again, BKB, BKB changes everything. GPK is one of the best Storm players in the world, and if he calls the Storm into the Nyx, that means they're already talking about playing these BKB timings, playing only on Vision. So this kind of feeds into the same strat that they would have to do for the Terra Blade as well. But it is bold. It's a very brave choice. It's got that mana battery as well, trickling across the map. 
That's true, but it doesn't feel as significant as it used to, to be honest. Like it, yeah. It's more significant when you're laning with the Crystal Maiden because you get double the effects, but otherwise it's not... Got a planter near you. <laughs> like, don't move. <laughs> I need this free mana around. for a second. All right, final pick needed for Extreme Gaming. I, I personally feel like they need... Reliable uh, stun. They need another stun, yeah. they need. Mm. It can't just be the Alk and the Nyx. Okay, they go for the Ember. Do you count that as a reliable it, stun? It is reliable, yeah. but... It's one of those things where it can go both ways against the storm. If he gets on you and he grips you, like he can fairly easily kill an Ember. He's going to get an Orchid, which means Ember has to itemize an early Sanj and Kaya uh, and be ahead or get the Yule Scepter, which feels like shit. Um, storm beats Ember in lane two. You can take off the shield really easily. So, But there wasn't much else that could uh, play with the extreme supports that would also be a reliable lockdown hero. I think we've seen a lot of Ember responses to Storm in the last couple days, at least on the mainstream. So it's maybe not, there's it's maybe not the best game for it, but uh, it, it is definitely a little what they need. I'm worried about Toronto Tokyo personally, like him laning against a, a Nyx and a Razor. I feel like he's gonna get ran down super easy. So hopefully he does mm -hmm. not die too many times. That's a great point. Point. I wanted to talk about the Razor Flex to the offline because they wanted a hero that could lane into Storm, but also deal with the TB in the late game. And they just thought Ember would be the best to do it. So I, I do understand why they went for this instead of a traditional stun. But now that you have this Razor Nyx offline, TB is threatened on lane and not just in game, but if they can run them down a couple of times early, like Purge mentioned, and make sure that he's not off to a good start, then their Alchemist can hit the timing earlier than before. And that's what XG are going to be looking at because the double BKB timing from Bet Boom is going to be pretty scary. Yeah, anything else? I, that, I, I agree. I, I, think, I think if uh, mm. if Extreme can get off to a good start and the Alk gets, you know, is able to farm, they're going to win. Uh, I think if the game goes late, which I do believe it will go late, uh, that Bet Boom is going to crush. I think this is a 2-0 for Bet Boom. <laughs> All right, so that one's more. Can we believe him? I don't, <laughs> I don't think we can. I would. I will have you know, I've been right 100% of the time. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. you flip flop right before the game ends. Yeah, because I saw the whole draft. <laughs> 2 0 Bet Boom. I was saying 2 0. <laughs> it's not. It's definitely. You said 50 0 at some point when it was already 1 1. Yeah, because it you was very likely, it was it was very likely they were going to win so hard that they would win their next 48 series. Mm. Sometimes you can just tell these things, Shiver. It's mm. called human psychology. Don't worry, guys. He's been right 100% of the time. Sure, promise. Anyway, either way, we're going to find out who takes game one of this best of three series. <laughs> 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 Extreme versus Bad <Batman. laughs> Let's head over to Sunspan and Sindarin. Welcome to game number one between Extreme Gaming and Bet Boom Suns fan here with Cinderin, the one and only. Also observing Michelle and JJ. We got PTP in the back. Shout out to you guys. Four best of threes a day. We're only doing two, Cinderin. We got it easy. Yeah. Smoke now from Bet. <laughs> <laughs> That's your that's your welcoming <laughs> roar. Hello, everybody. For the stream. Okay, that's it. Welcome to this game between Extreme Gaming and Bet Boom. I already said that. Go ahead. Shout out to Michelle and JJ. <laughs> okay, and PTP else? in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. You work right. four best of threes. We are lucky to only do two a day. Right. right. You got anything else to say? Sentry Ward. <laughs> you want to switch roles? We can try that. Go ahead. I would love to hear some Suns fan analysis. Here's the stun. Go ahead. He's dead. First blood for GPK. Boy, that was a lot of damage that they did to Jin Q. That's how they got the kill. That's my analysis. I feel like we're better at each other's jobs, actually. <laughs> first blood for Bet Boom. Good start. Always nice to get that first blood, Cinderin. By the way, I do want to talk about something we haven't really talked about in quite a while, which is the Alchemist game, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, with the Grievel's Greed, now that we've had a lot of time to digest those changes, the fact that you get Grievel's Greed by default, yeah. basically equivalent to the old school level two version. Uh, do you have any thoughts six months to a year later, how long, or long it's been? Um, I mean, it makes it, 
It's a bit hard without having the hard stats on this with the total GPM Alk gets, because there were multiple things that got changed at the same time, right? He, Grievous Greed got changed, but the map did as well. I would like to think that Alk farms slower in a free game now than he used to, but he just has more creeps mm -hmm. that he has access to, so it kind of equalizes it. Uh, if Alk could get the old Grievous Greed back and lose corrosive weaponry, uh, I think people picking Alchemist would prefer that in terms of just the individual impact because, yeah, this caps out a lot lower, right? Yep. Uh, when you were getting really farmed and getting a lot of stacks, you were getting stupidly rich. Is this better or worse for the game? I don't really know. Um, it's okay. I, I just think Corrosive Weaponry is a relatively uninteresting skill. I think, like, when do people ever really talk about this as part of the hero? It never gets brought up. So That's fine. It's okay yeah. to have boring skills on heroes. Not yeah. everything needs to be noteworthy. I mean, there's Ghoul Frenzy, for God's sake. Yeah, I think that's a lot more impactful than this one, though. It is impact, but you don't talk... I'm the only one that talks about Ghoul Frenzy. Yeah, that's true. Jin Q. Well, the meta is there. He's going to get the Impale off, though. His XXS with is the Plasma just, Field. But Jin Q, the, the reflection still applied. Nightfall will destroy the bug. A second time now for Jin Q to go down. This is uh, quite important for Bet Boom. This top lane, there's a couple of things that need to happen for Bet Boom in this lane to get off to a good start. Obviously, getting the kills is, is great and all, but the most important thing is lane placement, as Ame is also in trouble. Yeah, I thought he was going to go for the deny is... on himself, but instead he's going to go down to saves right click. Oh my goodness. DY? DY? That was a very oh. baby dive. Does get the kill and actually will survive. Clutch fire enough. there. Um. Yeah, so whenever Razor is playing a side lane against a melee hero, it's extremely important where the lane is placed. So this is where, at this level of play, the teams are going to put a lot of emphasis on manipulation. So you really want Terrorblade to be close to his tower at all times, but not pull the wave into there if possible. So you see the place that Nightfall is right now, he's going to want to try to stabilize things so he doesn't go too far down the lane, because when you do that, you're giving Razor the ability to walk the dog. And you just want to keep things calm, play at range, and not allow him to dive you. Um, so far, so good for Bet Boom up there, obviously getting that kill, and the first blood going to GPK earlier was obviously amazing for them. You love getting first blood on your mid hero to get that a bit of advantage against XM's Ember. Didn't talk so much about the drafts. I think this is a... a we, we had this happen yesterday where we were like, okay, you know, there's some pretty clear-cut differences and there's some clear-cut timings where one team is stronger than the other. To me, this is quite hard to call, really, how how this game is going to play out. That's a good sign, because we, we had some pretty one-sided affairs yesterday. Yep, I'm just going to go out and say this game will be 44 minutes long. Okay. okay. When's the first Roche? 22 minutes. That's wishful thinking. Jin Q is going to get Frostbit. We'll pop the Spike Carapace. Toronto Tokyo continuing to chase, but Crystal Maiden, very slow hero, as we know. Uh, Nixon Theory is quite good against this type of lane from the region aspect. Um, has one of the better regions in the game, and you're playing against CM, who's a lot about the constant harassment. If you combine that with a, an extra tango pack, you can probably stand your ground, try to drain her mana over time by just, obviously, you can't mana burn her without Vendetta, but just make her spend her resources. You see Toronto Tokyo is starting to drop lower on the mana, and Zinq's health is almost back to full again. But Toronto Tokyo has to do this to, to protect the Terrorblade. The way you do this as Maiden is by constantly pressuring. If you're just standing back and letting the enemy team take the opportunity or the initiative, you're opening the door. XM is playing this lane quite well, by the way. It's very even. Considering he's against First Blood, this is a very good uh, Ember against Storm result currently. It's it's generally a wash, this lane, but First Blood can change things quite a bit. Yep, and Jenkins brought up GPK being a god-tier 1v1-er that he displayed in this uh, last Bed Boom tournament. Who was it Nisha beat in the finals, wasn't it? Uh, Wasn't it XM? Am I thinking... Um, go ahead and look at it. Go ahead and hit that Google button. Yeah, I'm going to look this up. Hey, Google, who won that tournament? Hopefully that worked for everybody at home as well on their phones. So the finals was indeed Nisha versus XM. Okay. I, I could have sworn. I was like, he went quite far. He's a he's a good laner. Yeah, for sure. He's come a long way in terms of the, the tilt as well. He used to be the biggest tilter on the team. Now he's just the average tilter. XM? No, I'm talking about GPK. Yeah, I was talking about XM. Okay, very good. That's Frostbite, good. sticky bomb. Black. Oh, Ooh, impale. Clutch. Beautifully done from Jin Q. It matters not. That's called fake hype where we come from. You can still appreciate a good play for what it is, even if the outcome's the same. That was 
Very nicely done. But Bedboom still get the job. And the fact that Miero can just stay here alone, though, is a huge benefit for Bedboom. When I saw... Um, when I saw Extreme pick Razor, I thought they were going to counterpick Dragon Knight in both side lanes, actually. Yeah, Jin Q um, is trying to contest this power rune. It is a double damage, gets the double impale. He is dead. He is a dead bug again. Jin Q, many deaths already in this game. So, what effectively ends up happening here is that Bet Boom first picked Dragon Knight, and Extreme counterpick the hero in lane by getting Razor, but then they're not laning against each other anyway. So, I think. This is like the dream lane for Dragon Knight. You're leaning against a, a carry without too much aggressive potential in the Alk. And then the support is a Phoenix, so... As a result, Techies could just... Okay, nice sidesteps by save here. He will live. Uh, save was free to rotate, so he killed top, now he killed mid. And DK is gonna get level 6 earlier. It's like the the perfect storm here, basically, for, for Bed Boom by... I mean, every core, damage. other than XXS on Razor, is farming really well right now. He is the one that is definitely struggling, and that's basically the lead for Bed Boom, yeah. for all intents and purposes. True. And, I mean, how does this hero work from behind? Dyer's middle tower. It doesn't um, feel like... I mean, obviously, if you get... We talked about the, the counter to the Dragon Knight and whatnot. I mean, against Illusion yeah. Heroes, it's... Decent in general, just be able to steal that. Like static link being essentially a thing you'll get no matter what is nice. Yeah, it's just not the best razor matchups aside from that, right? Like Bet Boom made sure to counterpick the hero quite hard by getting Terrorblade and Storm. So sure, you can link any Terrorblade illusion anytime to get damage, but can you even stand your ground? Is the question. Storm has reach on you. He has infinite mobility, so you can't really chase him with your link and and get damage on him in minus armor and. The Terrorblade is just too strong if he has two illusions. EY. EY getting surrounded. Blast off. Save. That's the command. He plays this techies a lot, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he's played three heroes this tournament. Yeah, he's really good at it. He, he's owning this game. He's easily the current MVP, if you will. Right. When you're drafting, like, when do you, as we're going to see the eight minute power rune spawn bottom, it's a shield rune. And it looks like XM will be able to bottle that one up. But at what point. Because I feel like he always has such great impact on this hero. Like, at what point do you start banning supports? Like, I know Chen, mm -hmm. that's just a global ban, it feels like, no matter what. But we don't see, like, a techies ban that often. It's oh, Ame. Ame again. Surrounded. Concoction. Trying to go for the self-deny. Never mind. Actually stunning the TB who made his way over here, but will still fall in the end. Four members of Bet Boom. Looks like they'll go through the gate. Yeah. There's just there's a couple of heroes that you feel like I I kind of liked Extreme's approach of banning both Chen and Enigma in the first phase. I think that's the Chen is a gimme. Um, aside from that, perhaps you could have found a ban for it. But here we go again. Bet boom. We need a stat on how many pauses they've had versus other teams. Okay. Looks like we're fine. No, right. he's yeah, baiting. Always miscommunication. <laughs> Wait. So and he, he's the one that. So he said too. go. Half a second later, he says, wait, and then disconnects. Yeah, that's right. Maybe he meant, go wait. Yeah, that could be. Could be a translation thing. Um, Lost in translation. Great movie. Maybe he was trying to write, go west. A famous song by the Pet Shop Boys. Okay, definitely. Quite a banger, actually. Sure. I'll uh, GPK, probably too young to know that song. <laughs> uh, but maybe he's heard... Never mind, that's by a different band. Okay. okay um, great talk. This is a good conversation. Yeah. Normally, you're really good at filtering pauses. This is one of your worst performances. I mean, I like thing. talking to myself because I feel like it's more rewarding, more challenging. All right, we're going. <laughs> more challenging. And we're back. And GPK looking for the zip. XXS, oh man, his game is already not great. No TP's coming for him. But XM is in the area to try to take out Toronto Tokyo. A little consolation prize for him. He's actually going to continue on as the rest of Bet Boom just get out. Yep. And if you're wondering how Save constantly has all this mana, who knows? He just. Just one arcane boot, I guess, early on in the laning stage, and you can just gate back and forth and back and forth and keep casting your spells. There's a Crystal Maiden, of course. You know, True, I guess powerful. that's a level one aura. It adds up. That's good stuff. I mean, he, he has this hero down to a science. Yeah. 
I mean, right. when you play a hero this often, like everything comes second nature. It's just, it's quite impressive how it feels like more or less everything that has happened in this game so far has been dictated by a techies. Like every kill, every fight Bed Boom has taken. He's part of seven out of eight kills. And it's all spearheaded by him landing every single spell perfectly and making the right judgment calls of movement. And this is a very, very big part of why I think it's uh, Extreme missed the mark a little bit with their Alchemist pick against Dragon Knight. Because I think if they could have picked a stronger lane down there, Techies wouldn't have been freed up to move. And it's not like the game is in a terrible state for them. They still have decent net worths with the exception of Razor. But a big part of Razor's problem was the fact that Techies went and ganked him top, right? That's why he lost the lane this badly. Um, and he, Techies has the freedom to do whatever he wants because Dragon Knight is left completely uncountered in the lane. Um, that said, though, what carries are good against DK in lane. You had the Razor, but you put him off lane. What options are there? I mean, there's a reason this hero is a top tier pick, right? Traditionally, Ursa would do very well, but it's not really a popular hero right now. Um, Never saw is always Slark. Banned. Slark is also not the best. He's good against Dragon Knight, but he's not the best in the game right now. We saw Extreme run a Lifestealer yesterday themselves. Yeah, that was a wash. Uh, the lane is a wash, but then at the very least you don't lo lose your tower, which Alk did mid at like six. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's pros and cons, I guess. I mean, like you said, but, uh, the Razor had a lot of flex potential. Could have gone mid, could have gone I think safe Monkey lane. King was in the pool, right? They didn't ban that against... Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't remember it being banned, but that would have been a Jin Q. I think it could have been a really cool could pick to get Monkey it. King, actually, because exactly, you keep the flex open. If they would have picked Monkey King in the slot that they picked Nyx, yeah. then I would have really liked that for this game. Yeah, if it's not getting banned and it's effective, why not? Yeah, then you can wait and see what Bet Boom cook up in the end, and then you can choose do we put the Monkey King as a four or as a carry? I really would have liked that. Maybe it was banned? XXS. So. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Gank number 20, it feels like. He's got a TP coming. It's not going to save his life, though. It's too fast. Techie Storm is brutal. Yeah. He didn't even is, get to use a mine. That <laughs> is death mines. number three for XXS. That's concoction farming. Oh, he's actually going to use it to maybe you know, onto Nightfall for now. They have the high ground advantage, but Miero coming in with the Dragon Tail. Electric Vortex is there as well, but here comes the dive into oh, the egg. Good Pretty damn good placement. Toronto Tokyo is going to die along with save. Jin Q follows suit, though. Now Searing Chains onto the DK. Miero taking a lot of damage. They receive the Static Link, and XXS finally a part of a kill. As he nets it for himself, so a good turnaround from Extreme as it turns into a one for three. Yeah, really good zone control there. So they recognize the fact that so this this jump in theory is good if there's a follow through, but Techie's not able to get the blast. I think it was on cooldown from the previous kill even. If they don't have the blast off there, you're effectively wasting all of your stuns on XM who has flame guard running, so he's not going to die, and you expose yourself to the Phoenix plus next combo. And that's all of Betboom's lead down the drain, as a matter of fact. So, very big situation for Extreme to protect their Ancients, get Ami up to that top net worth spot, and yeah. XM now and ahead of the Storm. That's right. I mean, he was pretty much even with GPK for a while, but I think the bigger story is XXS. He's only yeah. 300 behind the DK now. He was a full thousand just a few moments ago. Big recovery. Looks like he's going for the Manta build. And XM, yeah, okay. Kaya Sange, we've been seeing that a lot in this letter patch. When you play offline Razor, I feel like you have a lot of uh, flexibility with your item build. I think you you can go this Manta route and kind of play carry style, but you could also go utility. Uh, we've seen sometimes offline Razors go like Yules. Uh, Orchid could have been an interesting item this game against the Storm, but maybe he's a bit too concerned about just getting run over in the fights. Uh, you could... Yeah, I guess you could technically buy auras, but maybe that's a bit of a stretch. So, we'll just be turning into effectively a third core. Looks like the game plan for Extreme Gaming is we want to make sure we can go late, not be on a timer. Oh, GQ, he's got his Vendetta. He has the Dagon already, actually. If he hits GBK, he'll be out of mana. Electric Vortex. Not getting They have the vision, but do they have the damage? Jin Q finally will go down. Took him a while. As it takes save uh, to save the day. Nice setup with the sentry. It is a very big part of this matchup, Nyx against Storm, whether you get that attack in or not. 
Because Vendetta, since I don't remember which patch it was, 734 something probably, uh, you burn half their max mana on attack with Vendetta. Yeah, so arrow. Oh boy. Form. He is just dead. Inside the acid spray here. gets demolished. So extreme. Showing Nothing more signs of life now. And with Radiant's that death, X XS is ahead of the DK, so it's definitely made a full recovery, but might be another gank to his name. <laughs> He just can't catch a break, it feels like. TP Look. coming in from DY. Is a searing chase from XN finds Toronto Tokyo, so this might be the trade for offlane for CM again. This is like the exact same situation as yeah. before. They go on Razor, they kill him. Phoenix TP's in, and then someone else shows up and they get a counter. Last time it was a better ultimate trade off with the bigger chase. Oh, Zinq is on the hunt. That's right. Probably one of the more exciting supports when you go for this build. Yep, for sure. I mean, he is eyeing up he, Dagon uh, Mines. Oh, Say it? Okay. Yep, the mines, always a problem. At the same time, though. Oh, he still finds a way to get on top of save, though. The zip in from GPK to try to get the counter. They will get Jin Q. Oh. So one for one. These trades are, are not bad for the Knicks, though, because. He's forcing rotation, and the Storm has to burn a lot of mana to get the one-for-one -one trade off. In the meantime, his team is free to do whatever they want. Bit of a... Oh, not again, surely. XXS. This time a different lane. Will there be yes. a different result? Yes, yes there will. GPK is dry. All right, that's a dead Toronto Tokyo, probably. Yeah, he's always the one that dies in these uh, Razor ganks, but usually it results in Razor dying, at least. Although save is here. Gets the disarm off. Oh, that's Side a disarm. does literally nothing as a result. They have the blast off as well. Do they have the damage? The remnant away. Slide of fist remnant again. Just enough mana to get away. Oh. No more mana to chase for Bet Boom. Masterful. Somehow play there not. By uh, yeah, resulting in a kill either way. Yeah, I was gonna say there's actually quite some similarities between Zinku's way of playing Nyx and Monkey King. Right? He's playing as this kind of scout role just being a Pestilence, forcing the enemy supports to invest more into sentries to cover the defensive areas of the map. And he's drawing a lot of attention to himself. So they're they're getting a lot of freedom on especially their Alchemist because uh, of the way he's playing the Knicks. And I suppose, correct me if I'm wrong here, I think there's no, there's no ability left in Dota now that you can't reflect with Carapace onto the hero, right? Like it's always going to be the hero oh that takes boy. the damage and the stun. Right, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say there probably is. <laughs> If you reflect and walk bug, onto though. a mine, you stun techies, right? I believe they changed it to do that finally, yeah. yes. Which makes this matchup a lot better for Nyx, because if he has an idea where techies is, he can just flat out run in, take a mine, and just kill him, right? Yeah. Well, it, it only reflects one mine. Yeah, that's enough, though. You get the stun from Carapace, you know where techies is, and then you burst them. Uh, GPK, they want to fight over the rune. The illusions is taken oh! by GPK. Stun comes out, freezing field as well. Cut the Searing Chains, but now the Egg is fully exposed as Nightfall continue to right-click. They will get DY in the end. And XM going to have to run away with a sliver of HP. XX that's a little bit late to the party. God. Again. How many times this game has he stunned during Blast Off? It's I been... Think, uh, I think that was the third time. Pretty consistent, yeah. Welcome back. Or, sorry. Goodbye, Kedro. <laughs> sure we'll be back in time. I mean, they talked to the, the panel talked about the spike carapace against the blast up, but that's only for you. Radiant if it's going to be hitting multiple people, yeah. But it's just the it, impale is just better if you can actually get it. But it is really hard. It's if you think about how. Uh, so okay, yeah. This is a, this is a bit of a different conversation, but still the Knicks versus Techies matchup. If you think about how Techies generally plays the map, this does feel like a deliberate flat out counterpick to that hero specifically. Because you have a hero that can find out where mines are. When he finds out where they are, he can maybe kill the techies. Uh, you can, as you said, you even have the carapace as a, an X factor against blast off together with impale. There's just so many upsides to this hero for Virgin Q this game. Which maybe when we're going out over all of this, this is why they chose it over Monkey King. Because. Uh, yeah, the, the monkey I mean, was an interesting flex, and obviously they've had success. Doesn't take a genius to say that. Hey, save is probably going to take techies if it's available. There's yeah, a good I mean, chance. You obviously knew it at the time you. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying, so. like before the draft, you right, right, ahead of time, you're planning this anyway. Yeah, Dyer, for sure. Oscar. This was definitely a, a planned solution. The Knicks. Two K. What, what do you think of the build though? Like just straight Dagon, and he's 
looks like he's just going to keep upgrading it. I think it's good. It uh, it provides threat against the enemy supports and against the Terror Blade. Oh, right. Steering chains. We'll find Toronto, Tokyo. Miero gets off a Dragon Tail. Is it enough to save the CM? No. A dive in from DY. Gets the Yules off onto the DK. Jin Q with a follow Impale. Into the Vendetta. Into the Mind Flare as well as the Egg is doing damage over time. In addition, Nightfall trying to do some body blocks. Miero somehow survives the Onslaught. Now XM getting a bit low on mana. will back away, so extreme resetting. The somehow you're looking for is Mage Slayer. True. <laughs> uh, Sunray wasn't available also. Otherwise, he would have died. Yeah, true. No shard yet for DY. They are successfully making a lot of space for Ame, but Betboom are keeping up quite well on the farm. We haven't talked much about Nightfall, but he's quietly also becoming an absolute monster here. And the top three of the top four net worths do belong to the side of Betboom. Main problem they have here in a in the broader sense is the support starting to fall behind more and more against those of Extreme. And this feels like a game that is very likely to be decided by support net worth, where if Phoenix starts getting, you know, toward an ultimately or maybe a refresher and they start getting these shards on, all right, you got the Phoenix one that's basically perfect, perfect. for Extreme. Uh, if Nyx starts getting this Dagon leveled up and maybe gets a defensive item, they can start really dictating the pace of team fights. Despite playing against these really farmed cores, both Nyx and Phoenix have incredible scaling potential in a game like this. Whereas Crystal Maiden, not so much, most likely. And Techies? I don't know. Save has been slowed down quite a bit just now. 4k to lead this top tower. Extreme are not interested. I should Go. mention, I mean, we don't get go. to see Nyx that often, but Jin Q, the, the reason that his Dagon upgrade is going so slowly is because he actually did purchase the shard. So not waiting for the Tormentor 50 50. Yep. Uh, that one provides basically spell damage to Vendetta. And makes Wait, so he good. bought this before they got the Phoenix one? Yes. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Because you obviously don't change the odds for the Phoenix. Yeah. You just move so he has the extra spell damage from the shard. He has Whisper of the Dread, which also gives spell damage, but reduces. Daytime vision. Oh, pretty or, irrelevant for that hero. It is. For the most part. Wait, you say irrelevant? Yeah. You think so? I mean, it's it's something, but... It's a hunter-seeker type hero. I feel like the vision is pretty damn important. It, it, it is, obviously. I'm not going to say vision doesn't matter, but this hero has an inherent advantage over a lot of other heroes, right? In the fact that even if you have lower day vision, you not seeing the enemy hero at the same time they see you is kind of what's going to happen anyway, right? Like, you... If you have 1,800, usually you lose 15%. Oh, Nightfall. You're this still invisible. Be a huge yeah. kill. Yes. Vendetta impale death. That's a killing spree out the window. XM gets credit for it. Biggest kill of the game right there, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a tower as well and a Roche. So everything from that one move is going to be claimed by Extreme. Maybe they don't get the tower, but I think they could. See yeah. who they put the ages on. I think all three candidates are viable. Yeah, I would. Uh, I mean, XM is probably the best in theory, just because Ame. I mean, the Alchemist is kind of a transformation hero. Even XXS, you could say, is with the ult pretty yeah. long cooldown. I'm probably just putting it on Ame. Yeah, that's XM. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that's who I said. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Extreme. I like that they did that. It's just, it feels like so often the teams just Dive. default to putting on the carry, but I really like that they put it on Ember. Uh, Jin Q spotted. Orchid is there. See you later. Good pick off, Ame. Oh, Concoction. Oh, he will dodge it with the Manta. Good timing. It's actually pretty hard to do. Yeah. Well, rather narrow you window. Don't, you don't seem too impressed. I'm just, you come to expect that from players of this caliber. I, I feel like I've seen a lot of Tier 1 players miss that consistently. Oh, yeah, for sure. Never refuse. But is Ame really a tier one player? <laughs> it's a tier S, I guess. Uh, it's a different category. All right, Dagon's continuing to come for Jin Q. I believe that's a Dagon 2 now. I mean, I feel like when we see the Dagon first from a Nyx type hero, it's typically level one oh, into okay, something yeah. else, and then you upgrade Dagon a little bit later. Yeah. He's prioritizing the actual upgrade process. Radiant which I find interesting. I think there's a lot of good things to be said here about buying a Dispel instead. I, I don't, I'm not sure if maxing out the Dagon, I know why he wants to do it, because it gives him the well, true it's burst. Fun. That's the most important. It's fun, and it gives you the bur amazing burst potential against Terrorblade and Storm, which is great. But 
Having a Yules here seems really powerful, right? You can dodge Dragon Tail. You can break the Orchid of Storm. So you can keep yourself alive and still become an, a force to be reckoned with. Oh, boy. Oh, this would be huge, but uh, he, can't, he can't do it alone. Yeah. Well, the Ancients can maybe it's help a bit. Kind of close, actually. Yeah, with I the, feel like he's going to try. He, of course he's going to try. Nobody else is coming anywhere close. Oh, he gets it. Kaboom! Nightfall, second that death. is why you upgrade the Dagon Suns Fan TV. That's right. I, mean, I do it all the time, but people call me moron. A moron. Maybe yeah. it's for other reasons. It's because you don't find this play. <laughs> That's true. I When's the last time you killed Nightfall in a pub, Shannon? It's been a while, yeah. yeah. It was good times. Well, that probably set him back. Counter-Strike once on a Smurf and you killed him. Yeah, potent well, probably not. I play on American servers, typically. Uh, well, California 20 ping servers, which don't exist in Dota, unfortunately. Everybody has their guilty pleasure. Like, maybe to let off steam, he just goes and plays Counter-Strike on NA. <laughs> yeah, that seems likely. Maybe spend that time getting a haircut instead, but that's a discussion for another time. I'm very uncalled for. <laughs> don't worry, I flamed him at the actual Bed Boom tournament. <laughs> Did you <right> actually? <laughs> yes. Hey, really nice bad. to meet you, Nightfall. Your haircut. <laughs> <laughs> However. <laughs> okay. Jin Q. All right. Oh, the dust would have been on point moment earlier as BKB who was that was that Ame that picked it up I believe so so it has blink BKB radiance Manta Dyer's top yep. tower is under attack. And one more item to go before potentially getting an ags for someone or upgrading the blink for that matter and Ame with the chemical rage now tier two attack. tower Getting pounded on. I think you just let this go as bet boom. You have a very strong timing coming up that you want to wait for. Dragon Knight is going to get Ags, and he's closing in on level 18. So this makes their lineup a lot more dangerous. And you also have GPK not too far from the Lincolns. This looks... You know, you look at his inventory. Uh, maybe that's just me, but I look at his inventory. I'm like, okay, he's got he's quite far from it. But then you remember the ulti orb is so expensive. So when you have that component... You already have like two thirds of your Lincolns, right? Yeah, true. So he actually just needs what's this about twelve hundred gold, thirteen hundred? Then he's gonna have it. Yeah, Miero has his ag. Doing the math so right, he needs sixteen hundred. It. it was close. Anyway, so black. Dra oh, actually, he doesn't have black dragon yet because he's level seventeen. So close to a big power spike on Betboom's side. Uh, well, who's who paused it initially? Was it Betboom again? Yeah. Good lord. All right, if we get a post-game interview, this is for Shiver and the rest of the crew, we need to ask about these pauses. What's their excuse? I think if they lose, I think we should ask Extreme their um, their theory about the pauses. Mm. We should ask the other teams, what do you imagine Bet Boom Stupendous. struggling with when they pause? How about that? Start some conspiracies together. Yeah, I, I like that. I think I think it's good journalism to pit the players against each other. I agree. I think it's good. I agree. It's a good storyline, even if it's completely yeah. fake. I think yeah. we've learned that from mainstream media. Yes. It's Keep all everybody about, on their toes. It's all about the story. Nobody cares about the truth anymore, Shannon. Yeah, I love be... fiction stories, so why not? Yeah. People just want to be entertained at any cost. This is true. Crystal Clone. Very nice move from Sub Toronto Zero Kyo. It was Sub Zero is called, right? Good one. I called it Absolute Zero the other day, and you laughed at me. I did. You actually knew a video game. I'm very proud of you. Well, it's Mortal Kombat. It's iconic. Dyer's top yes, top. so it's is Zelda. Attack. Not iconic to me. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate. It has you, blood and guts. That's why I like Mortal Kombat. You even have the perfect age for having been able to play the very yes, early yes, Zelda. Yes, yes, I know. How did you avoid that? Because I was playing Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Great okay, game. That is a very good Dyer's excuse. I'll give you that. Did you watch the blindfolded speedrun? I did. I, oh my I, god. S I've never tier. beat the game normally, so I was disgusted and impressed yeah. at the same time as Ame is disgusted and impressed with Betboom's lack of defense here on the tier two tower. Mostly impressed. Wow, that was very easy, he says. Yep. Aegis is gone, so Betboom did have an opportunity to technically defend, but like you said, I think they're too close on a couple of items here. As Nightfall does have the BKB. Yep. Miero is level 18. So it's just GPK and his eventual Lincolns that they're probably waiting for. This game is still Radiance definitely very is even. The X Factor is going oh, to be... Thank you. Spotted. Spike Carapace was there, but yeah. be enough to save him in the end. 
I think Jin Q is the X factor of this game. Uh, I mean, obviously he got the f solo kill on Terrorblade earlier, which was huge, but it's also, it feels like when the game is in this state and it's very even between the two teams, getting the initial jump, getting the vision and information is always going to be decisive. And um, well, with him out of the picture, Bet Boom finally feel confident to cross the river. Feels like it's been a while. Yep, without that Aegis, definitely a little bit more confident. Big Black Dragon. Next time. He's going to be spotted with this. He's going to get Orchided now, but there's the BKB. He'll have to Remnant away. And now Extreme. I don't know if they want to fight, but they do find a couple of supports. Crystal Clone activated for Toronto, Tokyo. GPK. GPK. Jesus. Having a seizure right now is Jesus GPK. PK. Jesus Christ himself is playing the Storm Spirit. Won't find a connection, though. Who's your favorite mid player, and why is it JP Key? <laughs> <laughs> I have real trouble with his name for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. And then there's all these X's on Extreme. Like, you've got good at XXS, though. You used to really struggle yeah, with that one. Yeah, that was a hard one. I mean, this team should be sponsored by Elon, honestly. Mm. The amount of X's that they have going yeah. on. Everybody has one in their tag as well. Yeah, including Ame X. Blink now. Well, that's a really late blink, actually. I didn't realize Miro didn't have one yet. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty crazy. Oh, uh, Jin Q. Oh, oh, oh. Toronto Tokyo is dead. Dagon surprise. Wait, did he? Oh, that's cute. He's going to die, though. It was Orchid. still cute. Was it worth it in the end? We'll see. Oh, he's going to pop a Lotus and then die afterwards. That's GPK's entire mana pool. It's not, not that bad for the next. So... If you didn't notice, the way Zin Q... I knew, but what? What did he say? The, the way Zin Q set up this play was by carapacing the Cloak of Flames. Kind of oh. a cute little detail there. I see. Uh, we're going to see a Yules onto the big black dragon for Miero. Yeah. And DY will be found. So Toronto Tokyo typed, I knew, but I don't care, need farm, by the way. And Jin Q said, ha ha. Just to keep you guys updated on the drama of this game. <laughs> Seems to be some good uh, <laughs> some good vibes going on between this team and Zin Q in particular. They also said good luck to him in the start of the game and tipped yeah. him and stuff. So I'm assuming there's some pub interactions here. Probably. I mean, Bet Boom, they, they all chat more than any other team, for sure. More than Falcons? Oh, that's true. I forgot about Falcons. Okay, that would be know, a man. really good matchup. Alreen just can't stop fucking talking. Yeah, but that's only when they're winning. <laughs> that's only when they're winning, right? Bet Boom I will, like Malreen for the record. Bet Boom will type player. when they're, they're winning or losing. And then they'll pause the game as well, so adding extra excitement to the game. Oh, yeah. We love that. So after all said and done, 2K lead only for Extreme, but this is an Alk. So yeah. Bet Boom probably a little bit ahead. Overall, it's a unique game because, you know, a lot of the times oh, with Axe. Alchemist, we start talking about, okay, this hero will eventually fall off compared to hyper carries like Terrorblade. I, I don't think Extreme are on a timer here just because they are running triple core and their support skill so well. So it's okay yeah. if Ame gets overtaken eventually or doesn't, you know, keep running, oh. running the show. Ame just gifted an Axe to XM. Yep. That's pretty, that is maybe... That's got to be like a top five, top five gifted ags probably in the game for this hero. To just get that for free is absurd. Miro, dragon form. Okay, they find Ame. Lotus Orb is applied. He's going to get stunned up, though. Reflection is there as well as XM. Really deep on the rest of Bed Boom. It looks like they want to reset completely. The egg now kind of out of range. The Sunray being applied to Nightfall. He's the last member of Bed Boom to get to this side of the river. Going to pop the Manta now. It's XG still continuing to dive. Looks like Jin Q is going to be the first to fall. Toronto Tokyo gets off the freezing field just just the moment. End up dying as well as now Jin Q buys back into the game. And Bet Boom thinking about going back in as XM. Thunder. Dragon Tail is there. Blast off as well. Down goes the Ember Spirit. He's dead for a full minute now as this looks like a full disengage for Extreme. Bet Boom played that incredibly well. Let's see if Extreme. Yeah, okay, so it's going to break up now. So. The way Extreme approach fights a lot of the time when they play these Alchemist lineups is that Ame is literally just going to pop his ult and blink into five heroes. Just give information for his team. He's just going in there. If the enemy team turns on him, he's going to pop BKB or Manta and try to buy time and set up his his teammates for success. Exactly what he did there was just jump straight into them. 
Bet Boom got a perfect clean disengage on the entire opener. Supernova was used, the Alchemist did his initiation, his ult ran out. They lost nothing. They only spent the terribly BKB. And then Extreme feel committed. You know, they've used a lot. They're going to continue chasing this. And, and Bet Boom just have really, really good formation there. I'm very impressed with how they played that situation and get the good result. The kill on the Ember. And as you mentioned, that was an Ember with an Axe reveal, so the chasing potential was near limitless and just tons of damage too, but found a way out of it. Yeah, Bet Boom getting ready for the Roche that will be traveling to the Radiant side. Miero gets the stun off onto DY. Yes, Yules. No, does get not get anything off. XXS forced to use his BKB in retreat, along with Ame potentially. He's thinking about going back in, but the Dragon will continue to kite. Under attack. At least they get their Wisdom Rune on the way out. But they should set up Bet Boom for the Roche. And I don't believe they damaged Roche, so this should be no banner. So Jenkins can rest assured we won't be talking. I mean, we still can talk about the banner if you'd like. Yeah. In his honor. Sure. But it will be the Aegis and Cheese. So Both of which amazing. Yeah. Storm. But they're not banner. That's true. I think if they had the banner, how do you think they would use it? They would just waste it somewhere. Okay. Although no, Bet Boom, they did say that they, they were thinking about the uses. As, and Nightfall, interestingly enough, takes the Aegis. I thought they were going to put that on GPK and just let him run rampant in the fights, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, he does have Lincoln's S and K, so... Yeah, maybe he has enough defensive tools, and this way you protect your Terrorblade from a potential burst surprise with Nyx opening up a fight. Maybe it's good. Uh, Reckon Bet Boom are perhaps also thinking a little bit in high ground terms with this choice. They want to try to poke it. I, th this team is hard to high ground into, though. You got to be very careful. Yep, as the Ags is now picked up by GPK, so Electric Vortex is now Black Hole, effectively, without the channeling, of course. Yep. Deceptive very, very strong. Visibility. And if they can use, I mean, this is one of the craziest type of reveal ags I feel like that you can have in the game. Yeah, definitely catches people off guard. It's probably got to play around it like completely differently. Number one surprise ags is probably disruptor. True. Yeah. But this is definitely up there. Bong. It's the sound Dagon makes when you kill an illusion. GPK looking for an opening. The Lincoln's applied to save, surprisingly, as he's frontlining right now. DY will have to dive away. XM getting kited by these Black Dragon illusions. Approaching this high ground is so difficult for the side of Extreme, but they will still try to keep poking and use the Mantos for vision. GPK has used half his mana just to try to bait out spells, but... <laughs> just four Mantos running at them. <laughs> illusion on Illusion battle. Yeah. Top tower is under attack. Nothing is real, Shannon. It's all clones. It's the Matrix. Yep. Great movie. Which one was your second favorite Matrix? Oh, they're all equally bad. But your favorite was the third one. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fourth one was just uh, somehow bad on a new level. Azami with the Chemical Rage will take off the Reflection. Trying to push out this wave. And Potentially gives Bet Boom an opening. Miero. Now Ame's already used his blink. Now they run into the illusions though. And now Miero. No dragon form for 35. Regen on XM is Defend quite big. XM, nice sleight of fist to dodge. Glipe near to follow. You can see GPK doesn't really have much He's mana. Dry. Does he want to actually fight? If they here? identify this, Ame. this is actually a really good moment of opportunity for extreme, but I don't think they recognize that. Yeah, premature oh. BKB for Okay, Ame. he popped the cheese. So he he would have had that regardless. He's burnt that now. Really wants to be fighting ready. Yeah, that's still a pretty valuable thing to use. Yeah, exactly. That they, Essentially, they just forced the cheese there with this uh, with this move. That's not too bad. Oh, looking for the stun. Really It'll nice blink Ame from Miero. He was in big-ass trouble there, but somehow... Oh, now he's a big-ass dragon. Yeah. Jin Q trying to get rid of some of these illusions with the dag, and there's the electric vortex AoE onto two. Jin Q is dead. Blast off to follow the Sunray, not enough to keep Ame alive. So just like that, it's a three versus five four. Bet Boom as Nightfall continuing to right click with 
That meta on top of XXS, Breathe Fire, Dragon Tail, Miero and company take out yet another member of Extreme. And the Ember will fall as well as Bro is called, which I think means <laughs> the game is over. <laughs> And that is a full team wipe with no buybacks at all. They could literally go thrown right now if they knew. Oh, they actually they will. Yeah, it's over. It's actually just over like that. Oh, man. I was looking forward to some epic late game fights, but one moment, no buybacks whatsoever, and bed boom punish. How often do you see that? No this buyback. is quite rare. And GG is called. So bed boom take game number yeah. one as they all chat their way Damn. to victory. Hit him with a bro. <laughs> I think he was not happy that he was the one person to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, that last move felt a little bit forced, honestly, on the side of Extreme. Ame went in. I think he didn't have BKB or ulti ready when he came in to try to help out Zinkyu in that fight. And Bed Boom just stand their ground with their Terror Blade and absolutely obliterate them. Uh, a very well played game, I want to say, from Bed Boom. Uh, keep in mind that we had this mid game portion where the Nyx was being a terror and he killed the solo, killed the Terror Blade, gave a lot of vision and opened up the map. But Bed Boom just kept their composure and kept farming. Look at those core items at the end of the game that they have on all three of them. Yeah. Just massive inventory. Like Jin Q, like he had a little bit of, uh, like he had some really nice impales. Mm -hmm. I, I, this build just didn't work. I like think he got a couple pickoffs here and there, but it just didn't really result in anything else. It, it feels like if he went Dagon 1 into Yules and then Dagon yeah. 5, it, yeah. it could have definitely changed his game because his the Orchid of GPK probably killed the Nyx like four times in this game. Uh, you also saw the Dragon Knight now getting the Bloodthorn. So it was just, there were too many problems for, for the Nyx. And yeah, nicely done. I, I got to say, Bed Boom just finishing that game off really yeah, fast. Yeah, that was a very sudden end to the game. I think our panel is now ready to take over as Bepu take game number one. Yep, uh, we are definitely ready to take it over. I, I must admit, when I saw Jinq sniping the Terror Blade by himself, I thought that was the start of the end for Bed Boom, but I could not have been more wrong because Bed Boom just seems to be a little bit more fueled because of it. They take the first game, Effie. We said that they would have a better draft uh, if the game goes really late. Uh, but this fight that we see right here, I guess it's only 39 minutes in, but it was the ending, game ending fight already, even though they're tier two, they're still up. Yeah, I think team fights for Bet Boom, uh, like we dabbled on a little bit, just change entirely when you have this double BKB timing on Storm and Terror Blade, because it essentially counters what XG want to do with their draft, right? Their Nyx becomes useless, their Phoenix becomes susceptible. The Razor honestly is not comfortable running in without the backup of his two supports to take these fights because he's just going to get beat up by a Terror Blade and his illusions. So there wasn't really much that they could do except try to take these long drawn out fights on XG where they kite out the BKBs and then re-engage, but Bet Boom just didn't let it happen, Jenkins. Yeah, I don't know how much you want to take a long drawn out fight versus a bunch of low cooldown abilities, mm -hmm. a Terror Blade, a Storm who's going to be zipping in and zipping out, a DK who is probably the best long drawn out fighter in Dota currently. You get multiple rounds of the, the Manta off. Um, that That's where like the Ame build on Alk, like this guy has always gone Octarine Core Manta Radiance. He invented that. He was the inventor of the like Radiance Carry Alchemist. And I just wonder, I, I feel like against TB you can't do this. I feel like you kind of have to go for the Bloodthorn Manta burst him, end the game, play around killing people, don't play around going late, because I don't know if there's a better matchup versus Alk in the late game. Maybe Slark is better than the TB versus Alk, but the later the game goes, the happier Bet Boom is. Yeah, I, I will say though, I mean, we said, okay, Extreme, if they're gonna do, uh, gonna do well, then it's gonna be in the early game. So, I guess, they didn't do that either. I guess the idea is to get the Octarine Manta and get like a stranglehold on the map and that and that's how you like you don't necessarily win the game early, but you can test all the farm, but it just it wasn't happening. Even with Zing Q running around killing the TB, still the other heroes were farming. Still there's enough jungle camps in Dota that it's not enough to like make mm -hmm. the map feel that oppressive. At, le at least for me, like as a viewer, it didn't feel I didn't feel like Bet Boom was that oppressed in this game. 
<laughs> they weren't. They were leading the pace entirely. Like they got all of these good picks in the laning stage, and even though the net worth was even, it was often Bet Boom who were, you know, walking into the triangle and making these aggressive moves. And yeah, maybe they were losing some heroes in the process and XG did get a few kills here and there. They never really got kills that gave them the map control that they needed to really do anything with their heroes. And I just want to point out the weakness of Nyx is that he plays a very specific playstyle, but he's very heavily countered by BKBs. I don't want to make this whole thing about BKBs, but if you look at the Nyx, he had a Dagon and Boots and a Windlace, right? We have Phoenix who only has a Yule Scepter, but if XG wanted to take fights later on, they needed to itemize to kite these heroes. Like I mentioned, they needed four staffs and they needed Glimmer Capes and they needed ways to just save their Razor and save their Ember and their Alchemist so that once the BKBs are down, they can take advantage of, you know, they can dive in with the Phoenix, they can mm -hmm. Supernova. And for them to have gotten to that point, it would have taken at least maybe another 10 to 15 minutes and that boom were just way too decisive. I've been in this exact same scenario as XXS, where you're playing Razor in a game, you're having a great game, you're playing against a TB, and you're like, what item can I go that makes it so that like the lead that I have, the good game that I have, mm -hmm. translates into not being countered by TB in the late game? So you get the butterfly. You're like, okay, I should be good. And then he just kills you anyway. He kills you through it. I'm telling you, there is no item. You can go Bloodstone Shivas, you can go any Razor build you want, and it just feels like shit versus TB in the late game. Because like I said, prior to the game, th the way that Razor likes to fight is he commits in, and we saw that in the last fight, Toronto Tokyo even question marked and said, bro, bro, you commit <laughs> in, and TB's just like, okay, he's the, he's the best hero at standing there and fighting you. The way that you beat TB is you kite his meta. That's the whole concept behind the hero. So Razor in a nutshell, like feels terrible against the TV and there's just not items like the only way that you beat it is you do well in the lanes and then you end the game before mm -hmm. TV goes late that's that's the way to beat it any razor player will tell you that's that's how you have to do it I also want to say that uh picking storm spirit into Nyx is very confident but GKB uh, GBK pulled it off very well. And when I say double BKBs, the second BKB was on Crystal Maiden, by the way, towards yeah. the, the fight that they won the game. CM had the BKB and TV had the BKB. But I love the build that GPK ended up going for, the Lincolns and the Kaya Sanj. You just kind of tough it out, let other, just go in first. Don't let the Nyx uh, engage on you. And GPK did a really good job of that overall throughout the game. Like we saw when the Nyx went to get a pick off in the dire jungle, mm -hmm. Storm Seer just instantly TPs in and kills him. So it was a matter of, okay, if we see where Nyx is on the map, can we capitalize on, capitalize on it by picking the Nyx off himself or just getting a kill on the opposite side? And Batboom did that very well. And with that also, in the, then on the other side, the Ember Spirit, why couldn't XM do more in this game? Because I felt like, I mean, he was obviously there, but he didn't like pop off or anything. I really think this just boils down to Extreme Gaming has a... Um, like chip at you sort of draft in the late game and Bet Boom's team is better at doing that. Uh, on even ground, e yeah. even if they were, I mean, it's an alchemist. So even if like Alk has a 5K gold lead, you're still kind of even there. But even if there was like a big gold lead, I still feel like Bet Boom late game with the DK when you get the Aghanim Scepter, with these supports, like Techies has low cooldowns, CM has low cooldowns. Like you want to play these long drawn out fights. And XM's whole build was to play long drawn out fights. He had Sanj and Kaya, he had the Gleipnir. Uh, and the reason that he had that is because you also can't man up versus all of these stuns and, and the Terror Blade, at least in the late game. So I don't want to like boil it down to draft because I do think that, like Effie was saying during the draft, uh, XG did have a good uh, like early game if they could get the momentum, but they just didn't. And I think maybe item builds are where they could have changed things there to, to win from the early game. Yeah, I'm okay. also curious to hear uh, what Purge thought about this game. Thanks, Fever. I want to continue the discussion on uh, Roshan Banner. No, I'm just kidding. It's about the position four heroes uh, for the Acer Predator head-to-head. -head. I thought those were the, the most interesting role. And Dota is pretty much always a balance of uh, team fight items, uh, being able to gank, uh, being able to push, things like that. In this case, uh, Jinkyu, very much about being able to gank and do a bunch of damage and save on the other side. Did do a lot of team fight contribution through damage, but also through team fight items. Um, and this mostly comes down to the the Nyx Dagon. Uh, that's what makes the hero viable, and, and it's been buffed recently so that it can do more single target damage to one guy in a short period of time. And if this catapults into getting kills, it's really effective. Um, in this case, he interrupts some of saves disables here um here's another gank from save coming onto the bot lane he is contributing towards damage but he spent his gold a very different way than jinku did uh because 
of the, the nature of techies. On the other side, Jin Q said, I'm just going to go for burst damage because getting being able to get these solo kills is so, so important for myself as a hero. But once you get into the team five period, period of the game, this is what he, he, he contributes. He can do some solo kill damage, but in this fight, Save uses a, a mech. He glimmer capes himself before he dies, and you just didn't see the same impact on the other side. So it can work if it snowballs your team and keeps the TB really down and your net worth of your carries is higher. But in this last clip, TB's net worth is higher. So did it really pay off? Would you almost say that this was more of a puppy build for ZinQ? Because I, I, can, I can see, because you're playing more for yourself. You're playing more for your solo self rather than for the overall team. Um, it, it is traditionally more of a pub build, but mm. those pub builds work really good in pubs because players are disorganized, yeah. which means that you're able to get a lot more kills than Jinku guys. Jinku did get a lot, yeah. but against some of the best players in the world, very difficult to do. But in pubs, you usually end up getting like 10, 15 kills, and then it's just so much gold that it makes it worth it. Against pro teams, it's harder because they're more likely to group up. They're going to cover each other against the invis. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, they're going to build the right items. You won't necessarily continue to get solo kills. So it creates a different dynamic. So while he did get a, a bunch of really crucial TB kills, the impact that safe had was just higher in terms of team fight and support and all those things. Would you rather have to have to get a you know you can still get a dagger and you get dagger too, but then you shift into more team fighty items on the side of Nix Assassin, or would you just not go for Nix Assassin at all? The valid thing to wonder about, but the problem is that if your damage does get too low and you spend too much on team fight items, then you stop solo killing, yeah. and then your impact there isn't good either. So Fair. it's it's a hard balance to hit. It is a it seems like a very difficult balance hit, and and this time around. The balance wasn't hit for Extreme Gaming, but maybe they can balance it out in game number two, Titus score. We're finding out game two after a break.
Welcome back. We have had a short break, but we are refreshed and ready. And I hope that uh, Extreme Gaming is refreshed and ready as well, because Game 2 is right around the corner. And Game 1 went the way of Bet Boom. Not completely the fault of the draft, but it is, of course, where everything begins. And it is where Extreme Gaming will try to find success, uh, first and foremost, as uh, that's where we're heading towards. I'm joined by Perch, by Jenkins, by Effie, and we already have the draft on the screen, where Extreme actually credit that win. They're like, you know what, Save? You are not getting this techies is anymore. This is 2-0. Shouldn't ban the techies. It wasn't the techies. It wasn't the techies? No. What was it? What was it? Jenkins, enlighten us. I, I think you uh, play into a draft where Betboom has clearly better late game. You itemize, you play for the late game. It's ballsy. It's ballsy against this team. It's one of the highest MMR average teams in the world. This is a team that did very well at Betboom Dacha. What's it's ballsy? It's a level of disrespect, Purge. Mm, don't like being disrespected. No. Wait, what's ballsy? Playing into the late game against Betboom when they have mm. a better late game draft. Oh, for sure, for sure. I thought you meant conceptually because... I was about to say, that's Extreme Gaming's forte, the mm -hmm. late game. Well, maybe they should prepare for it better mm -hmm. this time around, then. Also, is it is it worth it to play into the late game with an alchemist who has Manta, Radiant, Octarine core? Fuck no. Does that even feel good? But, yeah. The numbers are good. No, it doesn't, but that wasn't what they were trying to do. I think mm -hmm. they were trying to play for the mid-game and not the late game. Otherwise, they wouldn't have drafted the alchemist with TV in the pool in the first mm -hmm. place. Good point. It just didn't work out. But boom, we're just way too solid on lanes. Because it does feel like that Razor plus Nyx lane in the last game could have gone better. Yeah, I could see that. I think Nyx was the first person to die up there. Got hit with like bullet grenade Nova reflection. It was funny watching uh, Toronto Toku get killed though. <laughs> Bro! These all chat mo moments are great. <laughs> so Centaur gets given away to Extreme Gaming. This hero uh, is consistently banned against this team and the one time that it was given away by Spirit yesterday, we all figured out very quickly why XXS was topping the net worth. And he had the sole responsibility in that game of being the one guy to catch Sniper, and he did it. Mm -hmm. He delivered on that. So he's definitely very comfortable playing this hero, and this team is comfortable drafting around it as well. Yeah, it is also, though, a hero that Bad Boom knows Extreme Gaming plays a lot, so they could have drafted something specific to, to deal with that. Because one thing that we did find in that game in particular was that, as you say, he was the only one doing that, so they didn't really have any other forms of initiation. Maybe they're banking on that. See uh, if they can find a weak point. Yeah, finding initiation is very important. Um, mm -hmm. Bad Boom picks up the Marana. They've played that five times now. They've, they've won every single game with it. So they're sitting great there. Good yeah, Marana's, Marana's been doing very well this patch. I think she just has so many natural or comfortable combos mm -hmm. with the Marses that are high tier, the DKs, the Centaurs. We see these heroes so often. Even the Dooms, she's really great follow-up damage with the Leap Starfall. Yeah. So she does cover a lot of bases for a lot of the popular offlane heroes. And she's a solid aura builder too. The fact that she has a natural initiation or escape mechanic from her... Mm -hmm. One of her abilities is pretty rare for supports, actually. So that you can just get a fast mech, heal your cores for 200 and some HP. Um, and that's a nice little value that you don't necessarily get from other supports. 
Yeah, that's a great point. I think that's why these teams are so comfortable playing Murano on position five, is that in the last position four meta where there were, which Murano naturally used to be, like she was played as a five, but it was shifted around. The support items were just too strong in terms of like, you have to buy the Mage Slayer, you have to potentially buy the Atos, the Force Staff. Murano's not a hero who buys these items and really feels good about it. She's more of, she's always been like a utility girl. Like she'll mm -hmm. buy, she'll buy Yules, she'll buy Greaves, she'll buy the mech that you talked about. And playing that from the position five makes a lot of sense. And mech's really cheap right now. It's like 1800 gold or something. So if you think about putting a vitality booster worth of HP on you and your whole teammate in a fight, it's, it's kind of a lot. But they pair with a line. Great disables for them. Saves line. He's been playing this since before. It got powerful like years ago. Uh, excellent, excellent line player. It's a combo too. I really liked it in both of these drafts. Betboom have picked two supports that can actually make moves together. You throw any core on top of this and it's uh, like really strong trio to run around the map and do stuff. It really frees up their last two picks. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Slaughter looks pretty good for Miro right now. It's good setup for the Mirana. It's good with the Lion because you can run around and you know chain stun people. You have damage from the Lion to follow up from the Slaughter initiation. Mm -hmm. Good against the Hoodwink as well and the Centaur who's a very low armor hero. Yeah, and that's I think really important in a lot of games because if he's the guy frontlining, it just allows you to take that out of the equation. He can't just sit in front of the, his team and give vision and make team fights easier. You have to genuinely worry about dying if you're against the slaughter. I think with slaughter though, you have to you have to see at least one of the two heroes you'll be playing against on lane because mm. we know Centaur Hoodwink is going to be the off lane. So yeah, they should see it here. I, w I would imagine that a mid laner doesn't come out. Mm. Yeah, but. Without that, it's it's not very comfortable because Slardar can get heavily punished on lane. Oh, got their fringe. Okay, so very stable. I like it. I mean, uh, some minus armor here, generically good with most carries, gives a save against this mm -hmm. heavy disable combo that Bat Boom's got to start things off with. So, I think a, a great hero for this position in the draft where you don't see much. Primal's also not bad uh, for Bat Boom. It destroys the hoodwink tree it's impossible to to hit your combo uh, with that with that hero hmm. interesting uh that's why they banned the anti-mage i yeah. suppose yeah so a couple things mainly uh you don't have to worry about minus armor at all if you're playing medusa lion can pump mana into you which is going to heal you so this is a way to basically do the pugna like mm -hmm. thing to your carry also i think so when you're playing against Extreme Gaming and they have this 18 pick, they will often go for an Illusion Hero. We saw them go for the PL on 18 yesterday. It didn't look good because it was a very difficult PL game. But when you have this Lion and this Medusa this early in your draft, when the enemy team has an Illusion Hero player and they have that 18 pick to close out second phase, you've already addressed a problem early on. And you're going to shy away from picking Illusion Heroes now in Extreme Gaming. You have to go a different route. Mm -hmm. So good call on the Primal Beast Jenkins. And those illusion heroes are already dissuaded because you picked line in your first two as well. So it's, you, that's a good, really good point. Really setting yourself up for what you expect your opponents to pick. I feel like Extreme, uh, they're super debated to pick the Void here. In fact, it was actually Bet Boom originally that we saw play the Void into the Medusa, like way back. I think it was Berlin Major that we saw that, where you just kind of kite the Medusa, and that's how you yeah, play totally against her. You, you kill everybody else. And it's also Ame's most played hero in the tournament. It was nine pandas and the Ramses. Was it nine pandas? Yeah. I was trying to gas you up. It didn't work. One of the <laughs> Eastern European teams. I was, I'm surprised that they went Sniper. I was thinking maybe Sniper. It's one of the best heroes against Medusa in the game. It's a defusal builder. Uh, you can outrange the Medusa. And they have picked it a lot on the mid lane. XM, it's his most played hero. But Primal Beast is very good at getting on top of Sniper. Mm -hmm. that, that's why I was thinking like maybe they wouldn't pick it. And then there's a lot of follow-up to kill this little fucker in the back lines. Do you think it's okay because of the Centaur and the Venge, though? Is that enough cover? If they have cover, sure. I, I think so. I, I, I do think that's why, because XM has a very high success rate on the Sniper. Plays it incredibly well. And the Centaur Stampede should be a really good way to disengage in the first place from the Stone Gaze, which is going to be a follow-up. And the swap out of the Primal Beast initiation should hopefully be enough. But that allocates a lot of resources to protecting the Sniper when they still have a carry to worry about as well. That's probably the only concern, but I do believe in XM and how he plays Sniper. Do you think he'll still go like the Ags into eventual Conda build, or do you think like right click is more? I guess if they have a carry, you can still against, go the Ags build, but against Noosa, I feel like the the right click build is probably better. Defusal, yeah, defusal build. 
You gotta ban the void, right? Yeah. I mean, that'd be insane to leave it with the sniper. It's like so much damage into the chrono. I feel like concussive grenade's really good this game, though. You could use it if Primal Beast doesn't use BKB to like push him away when he's charging in. I assume that works. You know what? I'm gonna freaking check. Go check. Yep. Sounds like a great plan. Ten seconds remaining. Slark is a very high winner hero versus Dusa, but remaining. with the sniper, I don't feel like it makes that much sense. Like you, you want a little bit more of an active carry. Mm. And uh, I mean, I suppose Slark can kind of be that, but I feel like his timings are a lot worse now with the, his items being nerfed. Mage Slayer, Diffusal, these are just generally worse items. He has like a 40% win rate. Would you still like to have a core that goes for that Diffusal? Just, or just just get a Terrorblade? That is seeming very greedy. That's not this a is, carry that it, this farms is extremely greedy. or fights early. Yeah, this is very greedy. I mean, Terrorblade versus Duso used to be played a lot like six months ago when Duso was absolutely busted. Or was that eight months ago? <laughs> and I think that matchup, like, it used to be a bit more even when Dusa was more broken, but now I'm kind of leaning towards Terrorblade. And it's, it's a TB six, favorite. Six, it's like 60-40 now for TB, so I understand why they went for it. They also just see the Primal Beast that he's leaning against in the first place, so they feel comfortable. I mean, I think Primal Beast is one of the better heroes on lane versus Terrorblade. If he has a like, support like Lion, they can just play aggro all the time. But if Ame made this call, that means he's comfortable in how he can lane against it. Maybe he just thinks that they'll withstand the storm with potential kills. Well, they don't have to withstand a storm, they have to withstand a Zeus. Uh, that is going to be GPK's hero for this one round, but uh, that... I mean, we know Bad Boom is like, they, they thrive on late game, but this looks like pretty early game. Are you happy with the uh, Extreme Gamers Draft? I mean, it's, it's a good Zeus pick because Zeus lanes very well into Sniper. He just farms with his Chain Lightning. He doesn't tr have to try to go get on top of him and right-click him, right? Like, other mid heroes have to. Yeah, they both course, do fine. And it's the natural counter to Terrorblade. Like the magic damage coming out of Zeus has always been Terrorblade's worst nightmare. Mm. The one issue is you have this Primal Beast initiation alongside the follow up line link later on in the game, and that's what you're depending on to get on top of this sniper. But there are defensive capabilities on the side of extreme gaming. So every time a team only has one means of initiating and one means of taking a fight, when there are heroes that need to be jumped on and need to be caught, I feel like the game gets much harder for them than it is for the other team. I feel like if I look at Extreme Gaming's lineup, I really like it cohesively together, but I, I just feel like the Betboom lineup has a lot of the tools that they need to, to beat them up. They've got tons of illusion clears. They've got lots of magic damage sources against the TB, so if they catch him on the BKB, he's going to die really quickly. So I, I just feel like Betboom had Extreme Gaming's number this draft myself. I think Extreme's got to win the lanes, uh, in my opinion. Like I, I think if, if Primal can get out of the lanes and have a a solid game. They've got a really good support, like ganking trio. I think that Extreme doesn't have any heroes to really like do anything on the map, uh, especially if Centaur's not having a good game. I, I do think that the Sniper is like relatively unanswered when it comes to these uh, saves that they have for him. But then on the flip side, I don't think the saves are going to matter that much because I think that Betboom just has better lanes and better ability to run around and kill people. I don't think Avenge Swap is going to save you from like a thousand damage overkill. Agreed. I, I think I disagree with both of them. I, I think Betboom have a solid draft, but I'm leaning towards XG slightly because I mean I think their Centaur is very scary. They showed us why yesterday, and I think their defensive capabilities are enough, and their late game with a Terrorblade should be better. So yeah, I'm hoping for a 1-1 here. 2-0 Extreme. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna find out can extreme <laughs> tie <laughs> this series. <laughs> That's the question we're gonna have answered together with Sunspan and Sinrin. versus Bet Boom game number two. Bet Boom taking the first in this best of three showdown between the Eastern European beasts and the China beasts. And the primal beast. True. Extreme, the only Chinese team left in this tournament. Yep. Much to more, to, much to your chagrin, Sinner, because I know you always think the Chinese teams are going to win the tournaments, and then they seem to fail you quite a bit. Okay, I don't always think they're going to win, but I think they're going to do better than they have for two to three years. Um, and I never learn from my mistakes. I also had higher hopes for this tournament, specifically for Azure Ray. I think uh, a lot of people did. But it was not their 
not their tournament. They ended the group stage six and eight and got eliminated. So here we are, Extreme Gaming holding the torch for the Chinese region. And despite losing that previous game, still obviously won against Team Spirit yesterday, which is could turn out to be a an instrumental win later down the line in the second group stage. Nightfall Ooh. taking a ton of damage here, actually. Yeah. He... Does he go back to base here? He can barely lane with this. That, he basically has 300 HP right now. Yeah. Uh, okay, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe he can leech a bit. This is very awkward. Did take Mystic Snake, so can get some of it back. But yeah, not the greatest start for Nightfall. Uh, but we get to see the XXS Centaur. Very exciting. Hmm. This guy plays a really mean centaur. With Toronto Toko arrowing this range creep, the wave what? is going to push very early. That particle effect. And I'm mean, not mentioning that. Given Nightfall's mana, I don't know. I I'm actually not sure if arrowing that range creep was good for Bet Boom. It's like a lot of the time, ensuring range creeps is very good in the link stage. That's that's clear. But you are going to be a little bit vulnerable. As this lane gets pushed up, because do you think that particle is pay to lose? Because it looks nothing like arrow, and sometimes, like depending on which cosmetic you have, what they look kind of. Is that a new one? I've never seen this. I one. don't know. We've already discussed how I don't open chests anymore. That ha this has to be the worst poison in the world. He's firing poison arrows at them nonstop, and nobody's getting poisoned. And they're taking a little damage, 55 to be exact. Uh, well, it looks kind of cool, but maybe it comes with uh, the pumpkin. Oh, uh, his pumpkin's on every hero, isn't it? Yeah. Huh. I couldn't tell you, but it looks very cool. Almost and that's what like matters. An, it looks like an impetus. He just really wants yep. to play Enchantress. So but GPK, this is the cool lane here. So GPK on Zeus, XM on Sniper. Obviously, we're going to be talking about Conda at some point, Cinderin, but not yet. We don't need to get ahead of ourselves. But how does this lane go? Sniper versus Zeus. I would think it's kind of even. Um, both heroes kind of, you know, just stand at range and hit creeps. They can't really harass each other in a meaningful way most of the time. Uh, but GPK is off to a little bit of a hotter start with the four denies in particular. So yeah, I think both heroes are just going to farm. That's okay, my, very that's my, exciting. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what else would really happen, but it is possible that there is a slight edge for either hero, especially in the start before a headshot's higher level. Maybe Zeus pulls ahead a little bit, but it's not a matchup we see very much. So my frame of reference is not the most reliable here. In the top lane, Ame on the TB, Miero on the Primal. Yeah. Pet Boom definitely getting the Lotus here, pushing into the tower at three minutes. And they're also getting it bottom. So both side lanes will be getting the Lotuses. Yeah, pretty nice. The low tie, if you will. Sure, no. No one says that. That is correct. That is because you can't say that. DY, DY getting is... slowed into an onslaught. Does not want to go for the trample for Miero. Not worth the effort, it seems. This XXS is going to take more damage here, just trying to get under his tier one tower. And it looks like Nightfall a good amount of his mana back now. Yeah, this double ranged hero lane, now that they've stabilized the Medusa, it looked like it could have potentially been a little bit scary at level 2 with his low mana pool, but they stabilize now and they're playing double ranged with lots of poke and prod against both of these heroes. Hoodwink doesn't really have the best trading potential unless you're standing in a way so that you can get hit by the acorn shot. Has pretty bad base attack time. I think maybe the second worst in the game or something like that. Mm -hmm on the Hoodwink. Um, and yeah, the, the Centaur doesn't offer you any protect, any sort of protection or assistance when it comes to the trading aspect of the lane. So Toronto Tokyo will just constantly be hitting Jin-Q, and if Jin-Q tries to fight back, he's going to get Mystic Snaked and hit once by Dusa and lose two to 300 health. So what what is Jin-Q going to do item, itemization-wise? Because every hero he's played, it feels like, is on the extreme level of something. Monkey King does not play Dota. He's just hunting couriers. He's level two at like ten minutes, and then you play Nyx, and you go Brown Boots Dagon, and yep. you just upgrade Dagon after the fact. Is there a build for for Hoodwink that is equivalent to any of those? Um, he could rush Bloodthorn. Wow, 
Really cool. It's not good. Radiance oh, he's starting the courier business again. Courier killing business, that is. I don't know. Yeah, he's probably... I mean, in this game, you're probably buying standard stuff, right? It's a really good Glimmer Cave game, so you're probably going to see that. Yeah, it's just going to be weird that he's not on extreme Yeah, here. it is. He's on extreme gaming as well, so maybe that's why he plays that way. It's, uh, it's a very telltale sign that extreme are tilted when they pick normal heroes and <laughs> buy normal items. Yeah. So Zinq is... Going back off, to the drawing board. Off balance here. <laughs> yeah, but early on, you can see the Zeus 25 and 4 in the mid lane to the Sniper's 25 and 6, so very, very even. Yeah. No real advantage either way. Uh, but really, the story it looks like it's Miero. Top CS in the game right now on that Primal in the top lane. But the TB also farming extremely well. They're just effectively both free farming. Where does this 1k lead come from for extreme? Did they get like three or four bounties at the beginning? Oh, they got all four. Oh, I totally missed that at the beginning of the game. I was like, how? How do they have a 1k lead? The CS is even. Yeah, that is. Uh... All right. That's the entire lead is the initial rune exchange just completely. Not often we see all four. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, it's it's particularly a story because it's four. Because three to one, it's like, okay, it happens quite frequently. But four for zero is a rarity. And I, I wasn't even looking for it, but they somehow managed to grab all of those. Look at that TP. <laughs> he knew this was happening. That's yep. the haste from XM. Dodges certain death as a result, and now XM has to be forced back, pick up the bounty rune, and back to the mid lane he goes. The top three net worth so far on extreme side. Yeah. Very early stages, though. Main winner here is the Terror Blade of Ame getting a lot going his way currently. 44 CS minute six. Very good. But not too shabby from Bet Boom either. Uh, they have a little bit of a. An X Factor here with level 6 Zeus. If they want to try to look for a move in either side lane, they will have that extra burst of 300 damage. Coming their way. And it looks like they'll do exactly that onto XXS, so this should be the first blood here. And arrow will hit, Starstorm as well. He gets off the hoof stomp though. And now taking the path. Oh, the Zeus <gasps> ult was not enough. Wow. And Toronto right. Tokyo's fake impetus is not enough either to finish off the job. <laughs> This is why teams pick Ench, because then that's a kill. And then they lose the game five minutes later. Well, not five minutes, 45 minutes. Later. True. Miro getting four stuff for now, but yeah, still no first blood for either side. That's a philosophical question, Shannon. When do you lose the game? Mm. Oh, when the Ancient explodes, I guess. When the fat lady sings, as they say. Mm. DY is going to take some trample action. That's the magic it's missile eventually. XM on the high ground just waiting for this. Ame is in the vicinity as well to get some XP as XM will get first blood. And now, just like that, it's a 2k lead for Extreme very early on. Yep, that's a late first blood. This is the slowest of the event? That does not seem Dyer's right. Yeah. The slowest time so far was 656. That does not seem right. Average time, 2 minutes 12. Now, this is bad news for you, Shannon, because when First Blood happens this late, heroes get gold slower, and therefore Roche dies later. So your dinner is in jeopardy here. Oh, boy. We need to get that average time. Let's let's bring up the average time for first Roche kill of the game. Let's <laughs> see if it's... Oh, we're not bringing that up, unfortunately. I yep. can, I, uh, because you asked. I'll ask in 10 yeah. minutes, and then we'll Fair. do that. All right. Miero, magic missile. To the bushwhack from Jin Q. Save gets a nice impale onto two, though, as Miara trying to turn this around onto Jin Q. But again, XM from the high ground. This is a familiar story. Arrow's going to hit the Vengeful Spirit, but Miero should be able to tick out now. And Jin Q gets credit for it. Well, Toronto Tokyo wanting to try to snipe out Jin Q, but he dies instead. This is shaping up to be, dare I say, a. A stomp? I it's it's early days, nine minutes in, but this net worth distrib distribution now is not looking healthy. All of a sudden, for uh, for the side of Bet Boom, it's more than a thousand net worth lead on both core matchups, and the third one, the Primal Beast is also trailing by 500. So just between uh, every single hero in Extreme is ahead of their counterpart by at least a few hundred here. Miro with the 45 CS, he was doing great in the beginning. Now he's in sixth place. After two deaths to the sniper, 
And it's, you look at the extreme gaming lineup, and it's not inherently obvious that this is going to happen, right? The panel we're talking about, well, what's the playmaking potential? Mid sniper, carry Terrorblade, like how many moves are actually coming? It hasn't been that many, but the ones they've made have worked. Yep, 10 minute power rune will be taken by GPK. He'll take some damage. It is an invis. Although save oh, okay. is it? He really wants this D ward. That's okay. Maybe he got it. See the shrapnel because it is purple in a blue river. It might be colorblind. Is Miero on slot away? You know, if you're colorblind, things aren't invisible. <laughs> they just look different. Yeah, maybe it blends in too much that he just didn't notice. You know? That would be a crazy type of colorblind. This is just the empty void <laughs> where something that color is. Wow. That's right, Cinder. That would be something. I mean, that seems to be your disability at times, though. Void? You don't see things that I, are there. I am void. That's true. Very absent-minded young man. Yep. Fair. I'll, I'll own it. I own my weaknesses. Also a WoW player. That's a weakness. That's debatable. That's... Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. But true. Depends on the company. Ame. In the bot lane, Toronto took a lot of those pounces, or leaps, I should say. Still dead, not though. Mark. Jin Q snipes him out, and this is getting a bit scary for Bet Boom. I will say, though, they are a team that, I mean, typically they are the ones ahead, but the times that they've gone down in recent memory, they have come back to at least put up a good fight yeah. and see if they can bounce From back in this, this game, too. this game state, though, if you lose this hard with Medusa, what's the plan, right? Like, that hero is usually... Sit back and farm for 20 to 25 minutes, team rallies around you and you get stuff done. Mm -hmm. But Deuce's carry matchups in this game aren't good. You're not good against Terrorblade, you're not good against Sniper. So really, finally a move here for Bat Boom. They will absolutely punch the squirrel to a pulp with yep. their Primal Beast. A nice little snack. He had it coming. Yep. What do you get? I mean, everything about Hoodwing is just like this cocky little fucker that's just annoying, you know? So, at some point, justice will be served for people like really? that. I, I don't feel like I get that impression at all. Is X really? gonna delete the rune? Yeah, I think it's maybe because there's other heroes in the game that are just so toxic by nature. Yeah. Like the Venos, the Arc Wardens, the... I love everything about Necrophos' voice mothers. acting. It's one Necrophos? of my favorites. Yeah. yeah, Necro's fine. I didn't yeah. say Necro. No, I did. Okay. He is very toxic, though. Yeah. I love him. Oh, he's cool. Love his voice acting. XXS and DY gonna combine here. DY will find level six in the fog. I think they could consider a collapse on mid with smoke. Swap Zeus in, burst that guy, get the mid tower with sniper. Could bring in the Terrorblade as well if you really wanted to ensure the tower play, but likely Ami is uninterested. He has places to be. Got the ancient stack. So GPK has a phylactery on the Zeus. And we'll be getting the lightning hands next via the shard. And then likely a Manta or, I mean, we've seen Hurricane Pike. We've seen kind of like a decent amount of variation. And we've even seen phylactery into just normal magic build as well. Yeah, I I'm thinking, is it reliable to go the Manta route against these heroes? Like, can you actually even stand and deliver? with your illusions against Terrorblade, against Sniper, I feel like they're just going to get killed off really fast from range, and they won't even be able to reach their target. I think the Lightning Hand Zeus is generally a lot better against melee cores or short-range cores. Uh, against TB, it can be so-so. It's a bit of a mix, depending on what form he's in and time of the game and stuff, but I feel like Sniper just warps this matchup way too much for Lightning Hands to be the build. I generally find myself favoring going the just caster approach. Maybe that's just personal bias. It is. But no one goes for that. Yeah. Moonlight Shadow for I mean, that's just not true. Th on the <laughs> <laughs> if I say it confidently enough, uh, it works out. Radiant confidently Radiant incorrect. I do wonder in the pro scene in the last few months, though, how the build distribution Dyer's has been. Like, how many have gone the... I mean, it's definitely the minority is the magic build. Pure magic. Radiant You're positive. I'm, I mean, attack. I've cast a lot of games, so yeah. I, I can't even name it. Maybe one game I've cast. So I almost always go Manta. Like, basically every game. Yeah. Okay. Middle tower has yeah I wouldn't be a fan of it here. XXS, uh, he bought an Ogre Club, by the way, to build into an Eternal Shroud, then changed his mind 
and then went for Blink, and now he's going to finish Eternal Shroud. So, yep. Extreme, obviously feeling like they're going to be power spiking along with this this Blink dagger to get this aggression going. They would be right. If they all group up now and make a move, it's very likely to be successful. Bet Boom will suffer from the problem the panel talked about. If Primal Beast doesn't get on top of the Sniper, who will? Uh, Save is not going to be approaching a Blink Dagger at any reasonable timing this game. We saw him pop off on Techies in the last game. This one... This is probably the worst early game he's had this tournament, I want to say. like. Ooh, that's an early axe. Flat out bottom net worth. Not even remotely close to a Dagger. He has 500 gold. Man, at 15. Just nothing to show. Scanning. Oh, baby. All right. I was getting very excited because XM has an Ags, and he's not going for some weird build, as in... Oh, we have to hold that thought. Assassinate. Find save. Phylactery. Playing a little bit extra damage and slow. Save does get off an Impale, but like you said, has no real way to get out. He's yeah. buying all the time he can here. He will end up being chased oh, okay. down by DY. Magic Missile into an eventual death. But yeah, XM is going for the shard, so Radiant concussive grenade to be able to give him some escape mechanism. So if somebody does end up next to him, how, how does disarm work against trample? Does that not work? It should work. It doesn't work. Oh, because he he actually disarms himself. That's yeah, you true. don't attack. So maybe you make him attack. <laughs> you disarm his disarm. Yeah, cancels out. You overpower his Radiant overpower. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be a relatively early conda then. I think this is going to be a relatively early GG. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves, though. No, I, I think your statement might be more likely to be true than mine. Uh, these but games. Betsum have nothing going for them right now. Absolutely nothing. They're taking no initiative. They're running around the map just trying to farm. And they're losing at that, too. Miero trying to cut the wave here. We'll back off. The Moonlight Shadow. And maybe Betboom are going to try something here. If they don't bring Medusa, it's just not happening, right? Yeah. They're just flat out conceding a tier 2 tower minute 17. Oh. Yeah, they get the assassinate oh. onto save. Who well. so ends up getting run down via the stampede, and now the tier 2 will be taken out in favor of extreme again. Oh, there's a fortify. So. Yeah, these games. I mean, like I said, I think Bet Boom, they've shown the ability to come back. They've been one of the few teams, I feel like. Mm -hmm. But these games do feel like they end up lasting 45 minutes when there's an ex like a ridiculous attack. net worth lead in the laning stage. But we'll see how that works with Nightfall on his Medusa. Yep. Has the Diffusal, has his Manta. Probably one item away from wanting to kind of fight. <laughs> Question is, what does he want to go for? What do you think is... The best Medusa item. I don't know the reason I'm, I'm just really deep in thought about this because I don't I don't I don't know what you can do against this quarter core matchup if your team isn't doing well. Because I think Medusa carrying this game is very largely dependent on the other heroes being able to catch the sniper, and they just can't. Like the lion won't have a dagger for the next ten minutes. He he's Radiant barely even gaining net worth. Primal Beast can't just charge in on the back line because there's going to be a swap and a stampede. So what, like, what's the, what are you trying to itemize for? Are you itemizing to stand your ground against heroes that outrange you? It's not going to matter because you can't hit anyone. Do you, do you buy like Swift Blink? <laughs> just go in? I don't know. Not as third item, sure. Yeah, that, that's the, I know. I mean, I, I'm trying to think outside the box here because the standard plan for Medusa isn't likely to be able to be pulled off. So maybe you just play for the really late game. You get high yeah. ground defense. I mean, Zeus is really good at pushing out these waves. He's going butter, which is obviously great against Sniper terribly. There's no doubt about that. It is. If this game was going according to plan, it definitely would be the best item. Yeah, Miero. CP is canceled. Will onslaught get assassinated? Extra stun action thanks oh, to the Axe. blink, so this could take a while. Okay, stampede now from XXS. He's not happy with this primal beast. Another hoof stomp is hit, and Miro this time will look into the wall like he's in Blair Witch Project and die. And now the Roche will be a freebie for Extreme. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structure. Yeah, not really much Bed can do about this. Almost a phylactery for for XM, by the way. We're almost there, Cinderin. Yep. 
Can you one shot Lion? With a Conda? It's got to be kind of close, right? With Conda or Phylactery? Uh, he can't with Conda. A thousand damage, that's a bit too much, isn't it? That's got to be too much. Surely. Tower it's quite a lot of damage. It's 400 from Assassinate, then there's the Conda on top. Yeah. He can probably take like 60 to 70% of his health. I mean, once you get that first Divine Rapier. Oh, yeah, then he can one shot anyone almost. Not anyone. Almost. He can one shot like three out of five heroes, which yes. is almost anyone. It's closer to everyone than not nobody. Yep, that's technically That makes it true. almost anyone. Now, Nightfall, like you said, the butterfly, that's not going to give him many stats in terms of the HP pool. But I mean, we have been seeing less Scotties, I guess. On oh, wait, he changed his mind, did he? Is he going Swift Blank now? He's going Disperser. I thought he was oh, going to... I I, I'm pretty sure he was queuing up the uh, the Butter when I looked a moment ago, but... Okay, Disperser, so... I mean, it, this is also an interesting idea, right? Because, again, it, it offers you some potential of chasing, and it offers you a, a way of getting away from the Sniper, and you can save a teammate. So... You can see what he's going for. With it, mindset-wise. Curious what his next item is going to be once he completes this one. Terrorblade will finally finish the job bottom. Attack. Boom! Headshot. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. That did quite a lot of mana damage tonight. I'm telling you, this build is good, man. Yeah, I'm. It's I'm, you. You made fun of me day yeah, one. I did. Is Which is attack. I'm usually fine with, but when I'm correct, it's Radiant's not okay, Cinder. It's because. You probably thought it was good for the wrong reason. No, it's X good because it's good. That's A why. XM is buying it, and he's good, so it's good. <laughs> you are oh, buying man. it, and you're bad, so it's bad. Well, I don't play the hero, so hey, it's so you, so you weren't even educated. You were just guessing. Oh, you were just guessing. Oh, well, we have the initiation. Start out onto the Medusa. Nightfall with the Manta. Already the tower is dead. Swap on the Jin Q. Extreme are going to reset a bit. Uh, the Aegis. Still plenty of time. They forced four of them back, got the tower, and they can return to farming them up. They have really nice deep vision here if you look at it as well. They have the deep ward on the stairs, they have a ward at the leftmost tormentor. So, Bet Boom, do try the tormentor. They could actually get punished mega hard if, if uh, Extreme are in the neighborhood ready to smoke. Well, for now, they will just play the enemy triangle and just keep maximizing. And they spot out the damage rune now. What an odd game. When's the last time Bet Boom had one kill minute 23? Like, yeah. this is, they're just absolutely not capable of doing anything offensively. So I'm, I'm not going to sit here and be like, come on, do something. Like, as if it was obvious and that they have to do it. I mean, 9k, it's, it's not checkmate. like this is nothing, but it could be so much worse if they were trying to fight, I feel like. I, 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 they could have dug their own graves by forcing fights that are not winnable. But it definitely goes to show that, like, strategically on a macro level, this game is very... There was a couple of specific things that really needed to happen that didn't uh, in that laning stage. Extreme getting four bounties is the start of it. And then afterwards, Bet Boom just bled a couple of kills very early on and weren't really able to recover. And at this point, as you've said, it come, it's going to come down to some sort of super late game high ground defense with Zeus. This is a full Scotty now completed for Ami though. He's very big. Protection behind him with the swap, protection with Stampede. All right, it's time to throw out some tips. Yep, still a minute on this Aegis, so expect them to try to go for this bottom set. Yeah. As Bet Boom, I mean, honestly, I could see them just letting this go. I know there's a BKB now in Miero, but I feel like Nightfall still needs that plus one item, at least. Yeah, I think for Extreme, fully. what you want to do here is you want to jump the Zeus with Centaur, and then you want to swap him in, and then you just, then the fight's over. But yeah, they're, they're not. They will give it up. They do find mm. their second kill of the game. They've doubled their kills now for Bed Boom. Little squirrel sack. XM is spotted. This would be a huge kill if they can somehow grab him, but it's going to be hard. Thunder Gaben's Wrath used. XM gets stampeded now. Oh, he still doesn't have the shard. Okay. Oh, Miero. Nice block. Wow. But the swap out. And the BKB from the Primal Beast to try to stop XM, but he doesn't have his Pulverize. Oh. So he just TPs out. That arrow was real close. Well, Bet Boom triple their kills. They lose a bit of barracks. That's good for, buildings. good for extreme. 
You lost two supports, you got a lane. Yeah, let's see how close this arrow was. Well, we might not even get to that, actually. It's a pretty long highlight. Uh, it's... We gotta cherish the one we get, right? True. This game has not delivered much. That was a really good block, though, I have to say. So here, Toronto will fire it now. And... Yeah. It was within, like, 0.3. If they get that kill... I'm still not going to say that's worth a lane, but you got to look at the big picture. You're losing that lane anyway. Yeah. So, I think you it's know, right getting something is, is better than nothing. Oh, it feels so weird watching ZinQ by Greaves, doesn't it? I'm telling you. Greaves Mage Slayer. Not normal for him. Nope. It's not normal to be normal for ZinQ. <laughs> yeah, true. He's an abnormal player. Yep. It's fair to say. Uh, oh, XM finished his conda. Didn't even notice. All right. Been waiting for this all tournament. Yeah. I, I really want to see... Wait, when did Roche die? He can respawn in 320, right? There's the app. Oh, 2201. You owe me dinner, sir? Damn, you're close. You, get, you said within one second? No, I said you need to hit a spot on, but we just need one more early Roche, and the average time might be just exactly 22.0. Oh, 22. my goodness. Damn. But you need to prove it. <laughs> you need to show up with receipts. All right, XM from afar. Has that Conda, so the Assassinate does hurt. These supports will be hurting for Escorting. That is for sure. And the Tier 3 tower, not defended at all. Bet boom, there we go. Miero jumping in with the Pulverize. Thunder God's Wrath comes off as well. Big and damage. Hex, on Ame gets all. the Thunder off at the last moment. Still stunned up, though. Do they have the damage? It's going to be close. Trying to run away. Pops the Manta. And now Toronto Tokyo is melting along with save. The rest of Bet Boom have to retreat. Oh, oh beautiful God. bushwhack from Jin Q. Turns into the death of both GPK and Nightfall. And that might do it for game number two. That was really close to what could have become is a comeback called. fight, but... Wow. Uh, okay. Conda. <laughs> yeah, that Conda really changed everything. Wow. Used it one time. Uh, yeah, that that was a game of Dota. That that was one of the most non-games we've had. It was literally... Bet Boom lost the lanes. Extreme farmed, kept staying ahead, and just had them counterpicked, and the... It, I don't know, that, that was a little bit of a weird one. I, it's so weird that Ame ends with one kill. Yep. Jin Q is the highest kill participant in his team with five. No. In terms of kills alone. You're talking about kills and assists, that's what you're looking at? Yeah, that's generally yeah, what kill tied. participation is. No, they're yeah, not tied. Number I, one is XM right. with 11. Forget that I said participate. Delete the word participation. Kills. Okay, Zin Q is the highest kill in his team. That's right. Five. That's yes. correct. Very well, good. He is the highest kill participant because he also died twice. No, but he is still that's below XM. Kill on his team. He's still below XM. XM is eleven. That would be ten. All right, let's go to the panel. Wow, that was great, Shannon. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that was great, Shannon. Thank you, and uh, Sandra, thank you as well. And uh, Extreme Gaming was especially great for them. They uh, took this game, they tied a series. We're heading to a game three. We'll see what that brings us. But first, let us break this one down. I am joined by Jenkins, who <laughs> together with Purge was uh, on the wrong side of things here, Effie, where only one person was on the right side of it, and that was you. Yeah, um, when we're talking about draft here, I, I just feel like the sniper was, was not solved. What I was talking about in the pregame is that if you have one hero who goes in on him, you're too dependent on that one hero. To call. <laughs> You're too dependent on that one hero having a good game, and that just didn't happen. Yeah, I agree. Just like I predicted, Shiver, uh, this was not enough to answer the sniper. Miro needed to have quite more of a fantastic game there. I thought that there would be an additional answer from the mid lane. You know, we saw the Zeus. I think Purge, with his correct prediction, said this is a good Zeus game, and uh, I think he's just completely flat out wrong with that. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, the Zeus is, of course, good against the Terror Blade. It's, like, fine against Centaur. Centaur does build into HP regen type items. He can go for a pipe, which does suck for the Zeus. But it felt like a good Zeus game, other than the fact that there's this completely unanswered sniper. So, you know, uh, 
if if they're gonna draft like this, they're gonna need Miro to be able to shoulder a whole lot more of the of the pressure uh, because it was all on him. He went Blink Tiger first too. You could see yeah. he felt that pressure. He had to, and I think the thing that XG did best in this game was just lanes. For a Bedboom to be able to play that game and play into Extreme Gaming's draft, they needed to win their lanes hard. They needed to find kills on the Centaur and find kills on the Terror Blade, and. Honestly, Lion plus Primal Beast, that's a lane that you'd expect to be able to kill the Terror Blade at least once, but Ame and DY played that lane so well. They didn't give away any deaths on lane. He was just CSing on par with the Primal Beast the entire time on TV. And Centaur looked like he was in danger a couple of times of dying, but XXS also just had, he was maneuvering that lane very well. And because Extreme Gaming didn't give away anything, in the laning stage, they could just easily play on how strong their sniper was, and once they got the, once they got that centaur blink, taking fights was so easy for them. While for Bet Boom, so many conditions had to be met for these fights to be taken, and it was too early in the game to meet those conditions. Because we said potentially the lineup on the side of Extreme was maybe a little bit greedy with a pickup of the Terror Blade when they already had a sniper. That traditionally are heroes they just need a little bit extra, but it didn't turn out to be that at all. Was that purely because the lanes went as well as they did, that they didn't need that extra time? They could just ball up earlier? Yeah, and I think Sniper functions a little bit differently, because if he has a good lane matchup, then he doesn't feel like a greedy hero. He's just a hero that supports can play around early, who just, you know, punches people, especially if there's no gap close. I mean, obviously the story is a little bit different if there's like a Kunkka X marking you, or a Storm Spirit jumping on top of you, then you become greedy, because you need time to itemize versus these heroes that can kill you. But in this game, it just didn't exist. I will say the perception of Sniper being like a greedy mid laner mm -hmm. is a perception that's based on old Sniper going for like Dragon Lance and right click items. If you're going Ag's Conda, th that might just be like an incorrect perception of the hero. Like it might just change with that item build because XM actually was very active that game. And it is like Effie is saying where in order to be active, you do need to have a good lane because then you get to the Ag and Scepter and then that lets you be active. But I, I guess not, what I'm saying is my opinion on Sniper is definitely tilting outdated. towards... Yeah, it's it's like I'm, I'm realizing that it's, that it's outdated. And this happens all the time in Dota with every yep. patch, with every new item build that comes out. You have to adjust. And maybe that's why Boom wasn't expecting a TB because they're like, it's too greedy. Maybe they also need to, to adjust. But none of that uh, justifies the laning stage of Lion Primal, which should pretty much beat any lane, uh, losing to the TB Venge, which is an okay lane, but really, I do agree, it does go down to DY. I saw, like, he was 2v1ing them in in the forest as a 5 position, mm -hmm. and just kind of, like, the thing where the two heroes run towards you, you run away, you kind of, like, fake the pull, where he's just riding that line of, like, not feeding, but putting himself in enough danger that he's wasting the time mm -hmm. of two heroes, and TB's just sitting there free from me, like, you know, keep loving doing his what life. what you doing, DY. Yeah, yeah, keep it up, yeah. keep it up. I'm just hitting creeps over here. Yeah, so that so that's where the that's where the game really was different, playing out differently than what it should be on paper. Not basically. necessarily because it's not like it's not like that was the only reason. I think there were draft issues in particular versus the sniper, like we mentioned. But if the lanes went slightly better, the game definitely would have looked different for Bad Boom, and I think they were capable. But XG just outplayed them. The thing about extreme gaming is people don't think of them as a strong laning team because they see it this farm-oriented style. <laughs> they play on Alme, but this is a laning team because this is three members of Azure Ray who won Kuala Lumpur, and they won Kuala Lumpur by winning every single lane. That's the way that they played. Yeah. on Azure Ray, and they, you bring these players. XM is a lane dominator style of mid laner. He's he's not the type to win off of his rotations. He's the type to play disgusting heroes and win off of that. And XXS was consistently winning lanes in Kuala Lumpur as well. So this isn't a team that you can just run over in the laning stage if you don't draft for it. No, and then Bedboom definitely did not draft for at least not enough. We're finding out if they can do so in game number three. There will be a deciding game, of course. Maybe Extreme will take it. But before we head there, we're going to head over to Purge. <laughs> Thank you, Shiver. Yeah, for the Acer Predator head-to-head, the, -head, the, the mid-players are the ones that I want to look at. It looked like a great Zeus game. He's against a Terra Blade. He's got that global burst damage. If you compare their hero damage, the Sniper actually did more, which is very shocking, actually, because Zeus just presses his ulti every 90 seconds to gain MMR and uh, also to uh, damage heroes. Uh, Sniper on the other side, XM is playing a very unique style, right? It's uh, not so much right-click focus, which is a little redundant with your carry, but what it does is it gives them long range map control and gank. Because a lot of the times in this game, I feel like we saw XM 
be kind of close to enemy heroes. Mm -hmm. He'd just launch the torpedo at him, stun them. The stun's not a super long duration, but it's like enough where it allows your team time to catch up. So it's almost like a catch kind of yeah. from global range. Uh, it's It seemed pretty pretty darn effective, I gotta say. And he just surrounded you shrapnels and right clicks and slows and all those other things. Like his impact was just a lot higher than what Zeus does. Zeus is almost strictly just damage. Yeah, so, I, th I don't know. I think also the in this case anyway, XM was everywhere. Whereas yeah. GPK, I always felt like, oh, got to get that one more item before I really join you guys. I'll be able to support with my ultimate from afar. But he wasn't really, you know, there for yeah. the squad or in the fight. I th I do think the 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 last fight, the big last fight, where obviously Extreme ended up winning it, but it, it's. That's when we saw where Bet Boom could have potentially like, okay, this is what they were going for. If they win this fight, maybe the game goes another way. But by but, that time, it was already too late. But it was hard because he's he's already a long range hero, yeah. and Ags gives him more impact from even farther away. It makes your shrapnel in some way safer because you can plant it down without mm. being gone on. So it's like you're farther away from your opponents, even more than the normal build. It's harder for them to even get on top of you to initiate. You outrange the Medusa consistently, so her ulti isn't even like a threat to you. So it's like your impact is just higher than Zeus. You're you're doing kind of similar things, True. but you have more item variety. Your right click is just simply better. Sorry, Lightning Hands users, BSJ watching right now. But um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a cool place. I, re I really like watching XM. He's got he's always got some creative, smart ideas on heroes. It worked out really well. I do think though. I mean, if I look on paper, it's like okay, you got Lion to jump the sniper. You got Primal Beast to you know charge at the sniper. You got a Zeus to help from afar. Somehow, all that was still not enough to really make that worth it. Purely because there's a center in the front line on the side mm -hmm. of. Extreme that just makes all of that impossible. And really good play by XM. That yeah. He's reading where his opponents could be, might be. The one time uh, bot near the bot tier two, he's hiding in trees, gets mm -hmm. to do something and still makes it out with dying, without dying. It was really impressive. So those are the kind of deaths that are easy to just like glaze over when you're watching a stream. But like if you're in the game, I would have died 16 times that game to all of these dive <laughs> heroes, for sure. I would have probably died a little bit more yeah. even than that. We're going to find out, though, if uh, Baby Bet Boom will not let the sniper be had by XM next game round. If you want to find out what the draft will be and who will take this series, stick around. We'll be back.
all about being able to adapt uh, both in game, in series, in tournaments, and we are now uh, hopefully witnessing some adaptation mid-series. And psychologically, Shiva, as well. And psychologically <laughs> yeah. as well. Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, Purge. What is with the bold <laughs> predictions you've been making, and why are you always so wrong? I the spreadsheets just, just don't work out for you. I just thought it'd really show how much I know if I'm consistently wrong every time. I did say 3-0 bet boom, so, yeah, what can I say? Sorry, I was wrong. It's okay. Say 5-0 next time. I should have. Yeah. Should have. Uh, we are, of course, heading into game number three here. Both teams won a game, and uh, both teams, I will say, it was pretty convincing. Whatever. Oh, over. Anyone? I got Mars. Won. Elaborate. Yeah. This is a free Mars game with these bands. Destroys Timber and Lanes. Best off laner in the game. I think you just have to... Uh, be good at Mars. Like, if you look at the win rate in pubs, it's an okay win rate, about 50% in pro level pubs. But that's because people don't understand when to go for the Revenant's brooch, when to go for the Jewels, when to go for the Octarine core. But, uh, of course, XXS, uh, as, a, as a master uh, a timber saw, is not going to be able to play against this uh, masterful Mars from Miro. That's probably his best hero currently. I, I thought timber saw was a higher contested hero than Mars. Now, my opinion on that has changed since and yesterday. Uh, I think Mars is better. And like I said, I, I think Mars that it's just a much higher skill hero. Like in terms of Radiant skill uh, for the current top offlaners, it's like DK, Mars, and Timber. I think uh, Mars is the hardest to play, but the best. Timber is the second hardest to play in the middle. And then DK is the easiest to play, but the worst out of them the, with the lowest uh, skill cap mm -hmm. um and that's just because of the nerf to the black dragon mm -hmm. form that they just mm -hmm. did on the c patch i think the interesting thing that happened here was both mars and timber were left in the pool and but boom had their choice between either of those heroes and Miro's actually a really sick timber player his grandmaster tier he always pops off on that hero but they decided to take mars for you know reasons that jenkins mentioned why that hero's stock went up but also i think taking away mars from extreme gaming if you're making the trade you're better off with their timber saw than their mars because yeah, you gotta do it the way that they play with mars is that they'll pick phoenix right after like if you take the timber there they'll take the mars plus phoenix and we've seen extreme gaming just be unstoppable in the late game simply because of how well they can combo the, these two heroes together and take team fights. That's a good point. It really puts them a little bit more in the back foot if they just have their easy, straightforward draft that they win more with more often. It's just uh, a lot easier for them draft-wise. So no stuns from their offlane potential. Uh, that I think that's going to make the game weird. It could be their mid. I, I wouldn't be surprised if XM plays it, honestly. But Yeah, I like when XXS plays it, though. It feels like he's their timber guy. But there's your Crystal Maiden Shiver. Yeah, I'm very much a fan of the DIY Crystal Maiden. I think yeah. Bob is as well. He's, he, it. he's super high win rate on this hero. Uh, plays it online incredibly well. It's very aggressive and enables a lot of these killing style heroes on the safe lane from Ame. And also, he, they didn't necessarily feel the need to play Phoenix plus Timbersaw. I, I do think CM covers Timbersaw's bases a lot better, even though Phoenix would have been good versus Mars, because she'll give him the mana that he needs and she'll give him stuns, which this hero lacks. Like in the Frostbite, the root, she'll have disables. This hero is really strong. He does an incredible amount of damage, but he doesn't lock down hero as well. So CM definitely covers that better than Phoenix would. What an absolutely fantastic anti-mage game. I love this pick. Why? We're in mid-game. This is mid great. This is fantastic. Uh, these three heroes on Bet Boom can't do shit to an anti-mage. They all do magical damage. Even the Mars Revenant's brooch build is mm. magical damage. Uh, there's very little to burst him through his his shell. It's an easy hero to just jump out of the Mars arena in the laning phase. You don't get pushed out of lane at level six. Bet Boom really needs to answer this hero right now and they have to do it from the mid in the carry pool, which is hard into Shadow Shaman. A lot of the heroes that play well into Anti-Mage don't play well into Shadow Shaman. Something like mm -hmm. a Faceless Void, uh, mm -hmm. which is, that can be like a 50-50. It's because they're mostly catch heroes, right? You need somebody that can catch and jump far mm -hmm. to, to catch Anti-Mage, and those mm -hmm. heroes are hurt by Disable, yeah. For sure, but it also covers the lack of disables that Timbersaw has with the Shaman mm -hmm. that we talked about. So you can just have the Shaman running top, playing around this Timbersaw once he hits level 6. And they're already going to be laning together, but you, you still need that level 6 peak on Timbersaw to enable his kill threat. And it's going to be there with the Shaman, so it's a very cool pick. There's the lockdown you need. The rocket, that's the easiest reflection <laughs> in the game. They lost. Yeah. Game's over. It's 2-0 uh, extreme gaming. Yep. Well, it's gyro think. carry, right? It, sh yeah. it should be, because I... When did we see Gyro be played versus Timbersaw? Was that yesterday? 
I've I've seen it once or twice so far. Yeah, the group I think stage. Is it was. Life. Yeah, uh, Shopify played it versus Aurora, I think. I remember watching a game this morning where uh, the carry gyro just killed Timbersaw like three or four times on lane. I think that's what it was, but this hero is a really good solution because what you need to kill this hero is magic damage. And gyro is a very interesting carry in that he can provide you with that magic damage inherently just based on his skill set, but he still builds right click. So you're still building to scale, you're still building for the late game while you have that magical damage aspect covered. So actually, I think that's just, this gyro pick is pretty good. Yeah, there's not really a lot of carries that do a lot of spell damage in the laning stage and then also transition to right click. Mm -hmm. It's it's usually they just lack in nuke and lane presence and then yeah, they're later one of the, stronger. One or the other. Yeah, so definitely an interesting pick mm -hmm. if they can make that work. The Undyne can definitely body for him. Uh, the fact that it's a Shadow Shaman or a CM S4 means that the, at least the support duo is not the most aggressive necessarily. So I feel like with a Tomb down and Flat Cannon going, they should be able to run into whatever dual lane it is. I think their lane is stronger, honestly. If I'm looking at Gyro plus Undying versus Shaman plus Timber, I'm scared for the Shaman plus Timber. Mm -hmm. I, I don't necessarily... They're going to have to do a lot of like outskilling, outmaneuvering to play this lane, especially as they get levels. Also, we didn't talk about Gyro's you know, combo potential with Mars in the early game. If Mars can play this Gyro early on, you've got the call down into the arena, the flag cannon into the arena. There's a lot of team fighting coming out of Bed Boom that Extreme Gaming just doesn't have. You also, you're also going to have the techies mind control in the arena too. Like this Mars pick with this gyro just like solidifies that boom's draft in my opinion. I will also say that uh, from a support perspective, there's going to be a tombstone and a rocket and you have to hit both. Can't do and that. And you can't because you're Crystal Maiden and Shadow Shaman. And and Timber. And he, timber. Dis he disarms himself when he uses yeah. the Chakram. And CM and Shadow Shaman both stand still when they're yeah. casting their abilities. That's that's why I really like the gyros because both of these supports walk in and they channel something and gyros like, all right, I'll just heat with eight flax mm -hmm. in all of my spells. Mm -hmm. it, it seems like a really rough game to be these supports. You you definitely want to play on pickoffs mm -hmm. if you're extreme gaming. But they still haven't addressed the AM, correct? Yeah. Everything else sounds really good uh, in terms of combo potential, but unless they snow ball over the rest of the heroes, killing the AM is going to be hard. Mm. But that's what they should look to do. Like, they shouldn't look to uh, address the AM. Maybe they can just stomp their lanes really hard and end before AM is ready, because what? Extreme Gaming's lineup still needs that hero from XM to round it out, because they need some Kunkka type hero that can give them team fight, give them that mid-game stabilization that they're lacking right now. Because Timber alone is not going to be enough. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Wind Ranger definitely can kill anti mage. Yeah, they address sure. the yeah. AM, but it does not answer the other heroes that well. Like if I'm if I'm extreme and and there's no AM and it's CM Shaman Timber versus Wind, it's like not a good wind game. Yeah. These heroes all do magic damage. They can disable her. They can kill her through her wind run. So this is a very like all in. This is going to be the hero that deals with the AM pick. She needs a BKB for sure. Yeah. But I think they have to pick Wind Ranger here because. Like, who do you pick when you're going to get counterpicked on last? You need a hero that can kill AM, that can still lane against most mid laners, yeah. and that, that's Wind Ranger. And there's the OD. Ooh. Okay. Gives him some nice save. Yeah. 2 0 Batboom. But very, very inactive. Yeah. Very inactive hero. I don't think it's that great against Windrunner either. You're maxing Windrun in lane, and yeah, he can astral you, but a lot of ODs play around the Q these days, and you can't Q Windrunner when she's Windrunning. Um, what if you just banish her when she wind runs? Is that good enough? It's not. Doesn't it's do enough. It's all right. And all how right. about the matchup on lane? Because maybe they just picked it to give her a bad lane. Because from the way it sounds like that, if she's mostly picked to deal with anti mage, if you shut her down on lane, then she can't really do her job. Correct. I'm not a. I'm not a mid laner. Uh, actually, we don't have any mid laners. Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, Effie. <laughs> I played mid yesterday. That was. <laughs> she played mid twice no. yesterday. Yes, you did. I had to. It was our stack. There's nobody there. <laughs> no. Uh, the thing about Od generally, though, is that he needs supports. Like when you when you pick him mid, he. If he doesn't get off to a good start, he can't rotate to side lanes. He needs supports to be able to defend him against enemy support rotations. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you're taking resources away from the anti-mage, who is the win condition here for Extreme Gaming. So I think Extreme Gaming have put themselves in a difficult position where this anti-mage is going to be hard to pull off. But I've seen Ame pull off some miracles, honestly. Like, it's not unwinnable, but the lanes coming out of boom the sidelines especially are strong and their team fight is stronger than extreme gaming so they're gonna have to play an incredible first 15 minutes on extreme gaming if they want to win this game and that that that? Uh, no, I just can't wait to see what happens honestly okay well you don't have to wait to see what happens Thank because uh, we are heading into game number three right now <laughs> up 
upon us. OD is picked. Cinderin rejoices with all the other disgusting people in the world that like, I mean, there's not that many, to be honest, that like OD. We're a small club. Yeah, that's a very, very small minority, thankfully. I was about to say XM is my homie, but he also likes Viper, so... It's unlucky. We can't... You, you know, even when there are people you agree with a lot, you're always going to have your differences, and I can put that aside as long as he likes OD. It's okay. Okay. Sure. Yep. This is going to be an interesting one. I think the panel covered it quite well. You know, the... The Dire lineup's job is to win the lanes here. I think they are set up for success in that regard, and Bet Boom have been no strangers to crushing lanes when they're the favorite team. Um, they have the potential to snowball this game out of control before AM and OD really get a foot in the game, but if they don't manage to do it and the game gets stabilized somewhat uh, for the side of Extreme Gaming, if they get to weather the storm and start getting some items, I find this to be a really promising AM game, actually. Um, I, I was surprised when they picked it, when they did. It, it was, was still really early. It was yeah. a bit early. It was like I the thought, third pick of the draft. I thought it was early enough that they might try to flex it. Like, we've seen some people, it's very few, play it mm -hmm. off lane. It's like, but obviously that yeah. doesn't really work here. But yeah, very early. I mean, I was saying Bloodseeker, counter Cinder, and very good against Timbersaw, very good against AM. But of course, big change. The Blood Rite does magic damage instead of pure, so. That makes it worse against both. Yeah, if you the want to make Blood Seeker even right worse, now. Valve, you can make Rupture deal magic damage as well. Yeah, that's a and, good... Uh, how about that? It's a good addition, I think, for the next patch. I think the next patch is called Crown Fall, if I'm not mistaken. Has Blood Seeker unpicked this tournament? Uh, certainly. I'd be surprised if it's not. Hmm. Which is weird, because I feel like throughout Dota's history, it's always been at least occasionally picked. Yeah. As DY will take out a courier, and that's because it's just a really good counter to a lot of these melee carries that we see. Well, the arrow is actually... This might not look that bad, but getting hit by AM a few times in the first wave is actually quite crucial for this laning stage. If Mars runs out of mana, then sure, you're not going to take as much damage from Ame, but you're, you're effectively disabling techies if uh, Miero has nothing to play with, so... I think Ami will really try to get in those pot shots when he can onto the Mars. It's kind of weird to do pot shots as a melee hero, I guess, but we'll roll with it. It's fine. Everyone understood what you're saying. No need to draw attention to your stupidity. I'm sorry. I'm just learning. Yeah, you were British not too long ago, so... <laughs> I don't know how that's related whatsoever, but... Just throwing it out there, you know. Speaking of British, you, you guys can buy some Birmingham tickets today oh. for the upcoming ESL. That is going to be very hype. I believe the talent has already been announced. Can you confirm that that is true, Center? before I go further? I don't remember. Okay, thanks for joining us. Okay, we have. Yes. So Cinder and I will oh, be yeah, there as remember. First Blood goes to save on Ame. What? Wow. Get your tickets now. <laughs> And you'll see it that many first bloods <laughs> at Birmingham. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of rowdy fans there. It should be a lot of fun, though. Very excited for it. Other than being with you. Yeah. Dare everybody to do a collective shoey. Although that is more of an uh, Australian thing, I think. Oh, here nice. we see. Yeah, so there's the spear into one mm. last attack. Wow. Yeah, nice attack range there on techies. <laughs> That was a nice like 900 range there. Yep. All right. Well, you are exaggerating a little bit more than I am, but that's fine. Good start in that lane, though, for Bet Boom. They get the first blood on Techies, and they have basically set themselves up to continue well in this bottom lane. Ame will not be looking at any sort of cornucopia here, so if he keeps getting harassed. The fight for the Lotus is going to cost Miero all of his mana, and Ame gets the Lotus as well. Blinks up to hit save as he tries to go to the north, but oh, he's going to go for the blast off again. Do they have more? Miero, spear is available, but didn't find the right connection here. Not the right angle, at least. But still, keeping Ame at low HP at this early stage. There's going to be a certain point where they just, I would assume it's like the old AM at least, where they get pushed out of lane at some point. Yeah, it it definitely changed Antimage a lot when Cornucopia took the slot of Ring of Health in the Battle Fury build-up. It just makes it so much more awkward to bridge the gap in this earlier stage of the lane, mm -hmm. where Antimage could just float until he got Ring of Health, and then he could, you know, 
reliably farm. He would get poked and prodded here and there, but you would outreach in it. Now, Cornucopia is such a big investment that he's he's not going to really get there while the pressure of the lane is, is worst. And I think, honestly, that's a quite a big part of why this hero fell off. It, at this level of play, these small things really matter a lot. Um, see if Ame can somehow get there. He's going to buy a raindrop here to try to mitigate some more of the damage, but again, that just means that it's an even slower build-up. Now you're going raindrop. Might need to buy a tango pack unless DY can keep feeding him tangos. Because this harassment will be non-stop. Yep. They will keep doing this every time he comes close to Mars. He's going to take a rebuke. He's going to take two techies hits. I mean, is there any consideration to switching lanes, maybe? I don't know what you can do. Because this hero does not jungle well, that's for sure. He also not does early not on. lane well into Gyro and Dying. Yeah. Yeah, you can see he is bottom CS right now. See if he's able to turn it around or not. This is a hero that can definitely come back from a rough start. Yeah. But it's all very dependent on the Battle Fury. And it's also very dependent on the team. It's it's kind of similar to what we talked about with Medusa in the last game where, yeah, you can come back, but effectively you're not offering much help to your team for 20 minutes. So they need to be able to stand their ground themselves, and that's also why perhaps the panel was questioning the OD pick a little bit, because that hero is also a lot of the time a bit team dependent. Yeah, so maybe a lot of pressure on XXS. This is definitely a hero that can stand on his own and yeah. keep the pressure on while the other cores farm. Timber definitely needs to have a good game here Hi, for awesome. Extreme's lineup to make sense. And so far, so good, I guess. He, he is doing quite well. And the mid lane for XM is also going well. Ame having to use a blink just to avoid any more harassment. XXS. I mean, Gyro is good against this hero relatively because of the magic damage. The XM Ooh, making that an early is rotation. Not a good TP. No connection yet. Jin Q. Can he find the shackle? Gets off the hex. There's the shackle. Do they have the damage to take out Toronto? Toki gets a big decay, and that's going to force a Sanity's Eclipse. So XM does get something out of it. Obviously, not the main priority, but would have been a lot worse if he hit, went home empty-handed here. He's going to settle for the Undying, but that's just not the reward he was looking for. It's going to cost him two waves mid. GPK has the freedom to make a rotation of his own now, and he will be looking toward bottom. Good vision placed by DY in this instance. I don't think they'll find Ami this time around. Tried for the spear there, did Miero. Oh, they actually get his blink out. That made... That was a 180 from yeah. GPK. He was heading back to mid, and he, oh, he blinked. Okay. Five seconds. Are they going to spear the right, CM the instead? DY will well, basically sacrifice himself Dyer's for Ame. Yeah, almost done with the treads here for Ame. It's XXS with the double bracer. We'll be going Kaya first, and. From the timber saw, is there any specific type of item itemization you want to see? Because we've talked about it before that this hero has just so much freedom to kind of go yeah. different items every game. So I guess uh, the first on Toronto, Tokyo. Tombstone is placed. Nightfall with the homing missile, but Jin Q will be there to assist. It feels like a good game for Eternal Shroud, I think. Okay. Gyro is... Uh -oh. oh, Ame pops the so wand. He's dead. DY is here, but the blast off connects. One more right click will suffice. Ame dead again. Yeah. AM having a miserable start to the game. It's just not a strong lane, right? CM, CM AM. If it's one of those lanes that's extremely good 2v1, but in any 2v2 against uh, powerful laners, you don't get to play to your own strengths. Like... Antimage is so good when he gets to run at heroes and keep hitting them, but you can't... Like, the enemy heroes are just too strong. You can't trade. So, effectively, both he and CM will be struggling under those circumstances. Uh, so, the reason I think Timbersaw should get a Shroud here, or at least that it's an interesting consideration, Jyra's a lot of magic damage, Mars, Techies, and... I think XXS's job in this game is to just get in there, get vision, and tank spells, because... Okay, nice. Um, <laughs> that really took you out of your <laughs> line of thought. That's a very distracting voice line, I have to say. Focus fire onto XM. We'll have to use the Astral, but the blast off comes in. Save. Can he finish the job? The Sticky Bomb connects. Toronto Tokyo looking to try to get it up, but he's not going to be able to find it in the end. Tombstone placed in his exit. That's just going to feed extra gold for Extreme. And now Toronto Tokyo taking more burst damage. 
Whirling Death into a Frostbite, but they don't want to fully commit just for an Undying. Good stick charges there. But XM lives, which is the most important. Yeah, for sure. They need to... I think it was especially Mira on the panel talking about this. You have to play around your OD. You can't let OD leave him out to dry in this game. You have to bring XM into the game so he can have an impact while AM farms. With uh, XXS as well, not having the greatest start. It's good enough, I think, but... This is not where you want to see your AM minute oh boy. if he dies here. Oh boy. I think safe didn't see him. Nah. Uh, uh. Kill him with blast off. He just barely didn't get vision. Yeah, that was close. Night vision for the loss. Yep. DY able to hit level six, free ten minutes. So not too bad for him. Jinky only level four, and he finds a lowly undying here in his triangle. Top tower is under I'm surprised DUI is such a high level at this point. Toronto, Tokyo. Sitting here explaining to the enemy team why they should not be killing him in their triangle. Yeah, yeah. Oh my why they should be letting him live there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. <laughs> I feel like they're using these pauses to strategize. <laughs> like, there's no way you have this many issues. All right, he's out. <laughs> All right, I'm out, boys. All right, he's back. back oh, I needed water. a water. That's got to be against the rules, surely. I think if you if you go to the enemy triangle and get killed, and then realize you're dehydrated, <laughs> <laughs> then that means you're really dehydrated. Yeah. It's like I it was very dehydrated. I went there because I didn't have enough water in my system. Okay. You know, if you are dehydrated, you can struggle to think straight, and maybe that's what he came to the conclusion here, that, all right, a hydrated Toronto-Tokyo does not go there. Yeah. And he... Would still love to see stats on... And this is not for production, because I'm sure this is not a thing. Maybe for somebody that has no life on Reddit that can just look up the stats of this. How many pauses Bad Boom has had versus the rest of the teams here as DY will get destroyed inside Miro's arena. All right, Ame left alone. I'll give you a challenge. Mm -hmm. Do you think they have had more than all the other 15 teams combined? Yes, easily. Blast off, half HP, gets the spear off with the focus fire and the rebuke. Double kill for Miero. This AM has been shut down to a degree we have not seen in quite some time. This hero is not popular for a reason. 600 gold ahead of his position for Rasta. Yeah, that is, is super having low a level. Sick game. He almost has as much as his carry. That's one way to look at it, I guess. <laughs> the last I checked, Jinkyu was a super, super low level. Remember, this is how people justify in pub games whether they want to report a player or not. Obviously, don't report them for the reasons that you're supposed to do it for. People specifically report for underperformance, and they will look at the net worth and be like, wow, I have the same as my AM, he must be trash. And then maybe not consider that this lane is actually unplayable and you're playing against really good players. It's, uh... I don't know. It's just a hunch I have that people probably do that. I mean, this is shaping up to be like 17 minute Battle Fury, maybe? 18? What do you think? That's not ideal. Yeah. I, and, at and what it, point is it just. Like, because I've seen games before where AM just has a super rough game. And we have to hold that Thajin Q. Gonna tank the gank. Shackles there. XXS would have been the more valuable kill for Bet Boom, but he's just out of reach. It's Toronto Tokyo inside the wards. Chakram into the Sanny's Eclipse. Be able to get him. So one for one again. As XM getting chased by zombies. Focus fire from GPK. Arena on the other side is Miero. Finds a connection onto Ame, but the Mana Void comes in. And that is a much needed kill for Ame and company. Can they continue this on though? Save. Absolutely. So Bed Boom wow, gets crushed there. Absolutely punished. That did not go the way I was expecting whatsoever. How did this even happen? So they get, they go in there and they kill the Shaman. And they survive on their Undying, who was ward trapped. And then Miero just solo jumps mid with no backup, gets killed by Maiden and AM. And then they chase them down. I'm still trying to wrap my head around how this was the final result of that. It was such a weird outcome. Mm -hmm. So really good news for Extreme. Of course, Gyro not involved means it is effectively a 5v4, but Shaman dead from the beginning here. XXS on a third health. He doesn't have much to offer. Can throw out this Chakram, and then OD will come in for the ult to start us off. But there is a Tombstone. 
GPK will focus Fire XM here and then not chase despite no, not being Astral. Miero completely alone jumping too. Wow, this was just very disconnected. Yeah. I, I don't know what the... Disconnected that you'd think they'd pause. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you. I like that. That boom. They need to regroup. I think... Uh, Losing a lot of their advantage. I think Miero needs to wash his face in uh, some of uh, the water that Tokyo just brought to the rim. That's true. That water is holy. So XM is now the top network in the game on this OD. Of course, you and the panel talked about the hero not being the most active, but if you're top net worth at this stage, that's good news for him. And as long as he's playing with destroy. the supports, right? Like, this is always going to be OD's Achilles heel, is that the catch you have doesn't allow you to deal damage. So you need somebody to have some sort of lockdown that you can get attacks off during and just burst them with your ult, and both supports are great for that in his team. Um, and I, I think the play call here for Extreme should be, how can we play around our OD the best? Ame is on an island. He's out of the game for 15 minutes. Just think of it that way. He will join if the fights happen around his towers. Otherwise, he is single player. So how do you play with OD? How do you play with Timber? I mean, the that fact that they were able to get him to fight a little bit there, get a kill. Next success. Very unusual. And Okay. Didn't get the spear off. He just went for the rebuke first. Jin Q. Watching from afar. Yeah, it's all Battle Fury watch for Ame. He's got the Cornucopia. Still a couple more components. Oh, we instant back from X. Jin Q. Freezing field from DY as well, but the Shackle's going to completely nullify it. Miero stuck inside the wards with a Chakram in between. Great kill from Extreme Gaming again. Call down. It looks like Nightfall wants to get involved. That's going to result in the Jin Q death as XM is going to get blast off, and the burst damage from XXS and company is enough. Oh, hey guys, hurt. There was a fight. Here comes Anti Mage. Yeah, but he's going to try for it. Has the mana void, which can be pretty scary, but not there at all, right, all. I've done my part, guys. See you in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> If it was level two and he hit a couple times, that would have been... It still wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> I understand his TP there. It makes sense, right? You want to go and help the OD, and in case OD dies, you can farm his lane. You're a body. So that's nice. Yeah. Well, he's getting there. He's definitely farming at a faster rate now, thanks to these fights. So this should be like a maybe 17-minute... Battle Fury, then? It's very slow. It, it, it's, there's no way around it, right? But it could have been a lot worse, for sure. Yeah, sure as hell could have been a lot better, too. It's, how? Uh, if he hadn't died three times in lane. <laughs> yeah, but how could he not die three times? You need the jungle? Yeah, that's fair. I mean, maybe there was a world where Zinkyu could have helped him a little bit from the top lane. It could have left Timber alone, but that's part of why this gyro pick was really good, is that gyro and undying together can bully Timber out of lane. But you, you got to pick your poison. And I, I can't tell you with confidence that this wasn't the best solution because XXS can do something in the game now because he got all the help, but obviously Ame is just nothing. Save will drop eventually. Mira was thinking about it, but maybe if save had a little bit more HP. So it'll be a support for support as DY dies on the other side of the map. So Miero, this time does go for early blink. We'll be going for BKB next. And yes. XXS went for a pretty early blink as well. Oh, this is an early Roche. I guess it's that, worth mentioning about the gyro. The timings. The gyro against AM matchup has changed over the years, right? After gyro got side gunner, he does a lot better against AM. Um, obviously gyro's biggest Achilles heel used to be single target damage. He's always been a spread damage carry, but with the Ags, it, it does help quite a bit in that department. Up the arena onto Ame will be able to blink out though, as Roche is taken. Let's see that timing. What's the average Roche time? Oh, there's a battle fear. That's oh, that's good. that's actually quite bad news. They killed it at 17, and they, oh, this this better be this better be 21:59. God, I'm gonna laugh so hard if the average time is 21:59 now. We'll it might actually eventually. be. They killed it quite early. It yeah, 17:25 will probably skew the results quite a bit. It oh. went up. It went up because, no, that's because they killed him later. No, they didn't take it. So it's not accounting for this game. It's for it's updated since last game. That's true. 
So now, next game, it will be lower for Wait, sure. It, wasn't it 2201 last game, and they killed it before 22? I don't remember. All right, whoever's got my back in production, I'll get you dinner instead, okay? No, Good. don't. I bet it was actually 22. This. Don't bribe your way out of this. <laughs> Let me have my win. Let's bet boom get the first Aegis of the game. And the question is, how much can they get out of the map with this Aegis? A little surprised they put it on Windrunner instead of the, the Gyrocopter, but we'll see how it works out for them is double tomato, double potato. Damn, Nightfall is stupidly farmed, actually. And yeah, I say that, and the, the, the gap to the next heroes on the Radiant are actually only a 1,000. It's not like they're poor either. This is definitely a game we've got on our hands. I feel like Extreme Gaming, given the first five minutes, are actually going to get this game to the state that they were hoping. Uh, with a couple of moves attack. from Bet Boom that got countered, especially around the triangle area, Extreme Gaming have stabilized. And now this is going to become a game of cat and mouse largely. Attack. Can you catch AM? Can you kill him enough? Or is he going to reach that point that you are worried about, especially as. I don't know. I, I guess the gyro. If gyro's ahead, does it even matter that AM gets farmed? Like, I think you could still win the fight. Yeah. Windranger has a decent solution too. It, you need a lot of items on AM before this truly starts getting scary, I think. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower. Shinq and XM are smoked up, but it'll just be more of a ward expedition than anything else. Yeah. I think they were hoping to find a gyro without the Aegis there. But not the case. That boom were as a matter of fact making their own smoke move, attack. and they will also find Nice and empty jungle to go and ward. Which they will. Yep, the scan is successful. XXS. Very good positioning here. We'll pop the smoke on the arrow and save. The sticky bomb will actually hit. Blinks out though. Quick fingers again, but it's not coming this time. Probably doesn't want to fight until that BKB is finished. Not too far off now. Obviously, this Aegis uh, is posing a bit of an issue for Extreme. Is ooh, there's no way. Is there? They're gonna. They can do this. Okay. This a nice little cheeky steal for Extreme. Gen Q might die for it though. Uh, they yep, can't. he they sure can't. did. They could, they could do this. But he gets rewarded with a shard. Yep. I like the, the tormentor turning into a chicken. I feel like that's a nice little detail. Okay, so they still trade. They just steal each other's tormies. Yeah. Which, honestly, is good for Extreme. So let's keep in mind the macro situation, right? You're the team that can't really fight if the enemy team is taking charge, and the enemy team has the Aegis, and they're... Yeah, the fact that it's even net there. worth is their benefit. Yeah, this, this is good enough. For the first time in the game, Ami is about to be top five net worth, uh, which is very unfamiliar for him <laughs> to not be in that top five. Yeah. But... Uh, Bet Boom will have to scatter and spread back out. The waves are being pushed. Extreme smoke. The teams are reading each other quite well right now, honestly. Indeed. Very good dodges. Oh, However, find the sheep anyway, though. And GPK. Oh, that's man, life number one down. and probably number two it's as gonna well. Let's go to kill him here. Oh, wait, he has BKB. What am I saying? He does get off the BKB. Yeah. Now making him force that. Aegis, BKB, and decent. a tower for one move? We'll take that. I think Extreme are happy with this. Is that the first BKB for GPK? Yeah. Right, Definitely. So. Down to eight seconds he goes. Now the tier two defense. But knowing that GPK has no BKB, maybe Extreme wanted to force a little something. But then again, you are just playing the waiting game on Ame AM. Still waiting for his battle for, uh, <laughs> that would be really bad. Oh. Still waiting for his Manta style. Pretty close now. Yep. Uh, I mean, he could, with the Manta, he could probably participate a bit, but... Nice shackle. Okay, focus fire. Cute little detail okay, there, but no follow through. Do you want him to fight with the Manta, or do you need that third item? Uh, I think he should farm until he has to fight. I actually think that should be the mindset. Okay. There's no... Uh, if Bet Boom aren't bringing the fight to you and you have to take object, uh, defend your objectives, you just keep going. You need four or five, six slots this game. GPK. No, 
the spell shield activated to avoid any shackle shenanigans. Shinkyu in the trees. Roche is not close to spawning. Radiant are scanning. Scan comes out in a very precarious spot. Won't find a connection. Even Jin Q going for a BKB. Basically just a recipe away now. He's farmed. Yes. Philosopher Stone. Yep, that'll do it. Just let him cook. There's the manta. That's what the alchemist has always said. So at this point, if he's forced to fight, he can definitely pack a punch. It's a level 16 AM, so level 2 mana void. He's going to be going for the Aghanim Scepter next, so... what I was expecting. Get the little poke with the illusions. He's not committed to this Ags yet. I was thinking there was potentially a different route to take here. Butterfly is interesting against Wind Ranger plus Gyro. Oh, BKB from Miero. Jin Q is just going to casually TP out. Blast off! Does hit in time. I think that was literally point one. He was super close to being out, so clutch there from save on the techies. I accept this offering. An XXS. Looks like he's going for the boom boom item. Boom boom versus bed boom. That's right. Why do you call it boom boom? Because it doesn't sound very hyped to say reactive armor activated. It doesn't have a name. Is that a good enough reason? The for rocket you? will eventually catch him. He got yep. him. Yep. Arena comes out from Miero. Finds a little CM action. Nightfall will be here to clean it up. So no real team fights. It's been mostly just solo pickoffs here and there, and the fact that again, despite giving up Roche, Extreme. Dead even, net worth wise. Yep. As they wait for Ame to continue the farm. Yeah, so I thought Ame was either gonna GPK go. Oh, gets off the shackle. Jin Q is gonna get spear, so the shackle does not hit. Stay with a beautiful stun as well. As XXS is gonna get dropped really fast. And the tier two is gonna go down as well. So the first true misstep, I feel like, from Extreme. Yeah. They had no business being there anymore. But I mean, I, I guess they were kind of on their way out. Oh, Ame. Shackle. And spear. They don't have the focus fire. If they did, this would actually have been a kill. Yeah. Ame will blink up to the high ground. Don't think they can chase any longer. It is oot of there, as uh, Trent would say. <laughs> nice dodge of Keith the Bold. That really packs a punch, that guy. Yeah. What is yeah. it? It's called in Dota. It's just called Ogre Bruiser, isn't it? Yeah. It's but so it, it, impersonal. Let's give everything a name. Yeah, it should be Keef the Bold. Keef the Bold. In Artifact, he had a card that allowed him to uh, kind of strafe in front of the hero. I feel like he should get an ability that allows him to move while punching. Like an Ogre Seal Totem. It's kind of like that, but you're strafing. Like ogre you're Strafe strafing. Totem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was good. What would you name the three Vools? Uh, there was no name in Artifact that I can remember, so... What is it the three ducklings are called in DuckTales? Okay, no idea. Huey, Dewey, and Louie, right? How do you not know that? Jesus. It's... Just leave. It gets referenced in Zelda. I'm trying to cast a Dota game here, Cinderin. Uh, apparently it's the only game you know. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no, I know Counter Strike as well. Okay. You can ask Radiant's any trivia. All right. How attack. much does an AK-47 do? How much, does it, how much does it do? <laughs> how much does it do? <laughs> <laughs> a lot, if you're good with it. A headshot is a kill no matter what. Doesn't. There's That's no true. way around it. Any range as well. So it does a lot. It doesn't drop it's off. It's not an incorrect statement. It's fine. XXS. Top tower's gone. Yep. Ame. And Focus second Roche. Bot. Yeah, Roche is up. Yeah, Ripe for the taking, and this is a dire Roche, so we will get the cheese. I think teams are at this point just going to strategize to kill Roche top, just so they don't have to place the banner ever. Yeah, ever since we've been super obsessed with it, as of yesterday, nobody's really killed it on the Radiant side. Aegis taken by Nightfall, cheese on GPK. Yep. As the Ags comes through for Ame. 
So, I mean, the thing about AM Cinderin is he hits this enormous power spike where typically he's getting his, like, four or five slots faster than other heroes. Mm -hmm. That's not the case here. And in times of old, AM late game isn't even that special. Right. Especially when there's a gyro. Like, Aghanim Scepter has just changed this hero's complexion entirely. So, do you, has anything changed in that respect? Because um, I know that, like, the your supporting cast is just going to be much more farm than it used to be. Yeah, the, the, thing about, the thing about late game AM is I think most of the time it really depends if anybody can stand up to you and deliver. And if nobody can truly fight you in a 1v1, then the, even if the game is ultra late, it doesn't really matter. The problem why AM would fall off late game a lot is that the meta that he was facing would have carries that could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. In this game, maybe Gyro can. I feel like Windranger eventually is going to struggle when AM is six slotted and he just gets the jump on you with some sort of true strike. He's just going to eat you alive with true strike, a bit, true strike abyssal. Um, so that will become a problem. And you're also looking at. I think it's a bit dangerous to look at this game in isolation. Like AM has to totally carry it. There's a lot of damage on the side of extreme gaming. He has a team. The OD can hit really hard. It's going to buy lockdown for him. They have the supports. Yeah, this is for, for Bedboom. This is just not going to work. They're going to have to go back to base. And Q finds the opening. They destroy Miero before he can even react. And now the gyro shackled up. Do they have the damage to the BKB? Nightfall getting off some damage now against XXS. Boom, boom, time is coming. So he will stay alive as a result. They lose, lose the Rasta eventually, but still a really good kill for Extreme. Yep. Oh, and the Astral XM didn't think he had the vision there, but indeed he did. The blast off though finds XM as a re-engage is there for Bet Boom, and they take out the OD and CM in tow. Meanwhile, Ame getting the tier three top as AM does because he just doesn't fight with the team. That's written in the lore. Doesn't just hate mages, he hates everyone. He hates beings. I think he hates the fact that he bought Ags, given that this happened. Imagine if you had a damage item, you would have got a lane of Rax almost. Yeah, that's true. We haven't really... If you had that butter seen. there... The how, can't you, how can you not love butter? It's just, just good with everything. It is. Jeez, but yeah, the butterfly this game is actually extremely good. I mean, the Rebuke does not dodge that. True. But Miero's not really going for a crazy damage build. To be honest, this, uh, this sequence was very high skill from both teams, though. Like, the... Bet Boom are under pressure constantly with this AM shoving in top, so they need to, every second they need to make the judgment call of do we send someone back to base, and if so, who do we send? And they still keep their cool. The Mars gets jumped and killed, and it already looks really bad at that point, but they still manage to re salvage the situation. When the Undying gets cancelled on his TP back to stop Ami, they immediately turn around with the Gyro and get the two return kills. It might look easy from our perspective, but in, when you're in that position, it is it's not easy. Oh, they find Ame that. this time. It's a big one. Indeed. Very big. 70 seconds. Does have the buyback, but that would be... I mean, he would be giving up a lot of net worth just to get back in the game. But he might have to, because Nightfall's on the doorstep. Minute and a half on the Aegis. Picked up his Satanic now. As the building damage is coming, fortification used. Can't extreme use defense. theirs as well. They will still lose their siege creep though. Call down, just to buy a little bit of space. They will get the tower. There's another fortification for extreme. If they want to use it. XM, just trying to delay. I mean, maybe you give this up. Hey, you can't fight. I think an AM buyback could be disastrous. Fortification does come through, but it looks like they will be giving up the racks anyway. Oh, another Astral. Okay. Just trying to be annoying. Being successful at that, at least. He's stolen quite a lot of mana. So he's just turned into a fight with his ult. Yeah, Tombstone placed ahead of time. And now that Ame is up, does Bet Boom stay? Again, 30 seconds on the Aegis, so they have to be careful with this timing. Tower goes down. There's the Astral. Ame looking to get in. Regrets his decision, putting the Blink Fragments for now. Yeah, they're going to use the Serpent Wars to kill the two. What's the best way to use this Blink Fragment? You just, you use it a couple times and then you go in to use it in conjunction with Blinking. Like, it's not like... Yeah. It, you it's use kind of it a weird to, one. You cause confusion, you get information in the fight. It gives a lot of vision, obviously, which is very good. You can force supports out of the fight with just these Illusion casts and then play around that. But I, I do question what his mindset was buying this at the time. Because generally, genuinely speaking, 
most AM games are one of two things, right? It's either the game where you cannot fight for a very long time and you have to keep split pushing and look for the building damage, or it's the games where you can fight. If you think this is the game where you can fight, you can buy the axe as a fighting item, but he, shied, he was shying away from the fight. Mm -hmm. So, I just... I wonder yeah, why I this was the build be the order. the first time we've seen it used on a hero since he's purchased it. Yeah, right. so if you're not going to fight, this is just a horribly inefficient item, right? Like, then you could have bought the butterfly and you could have almost had a Scotty or a BKB at this point. Go! And then I think your impact in the fights would be bigger anyway at that point. So it's it's also why AM is so hard, I feel like. Because when you make, like, one or two bad decisions, his game is just... It's very... It's a very punishing hero. Well, the good news is if this game goes long and if he can eat the Ags, then it won't matter anymore. True. Then we can all forget about it. Butterfly is coming, though, for Gyro, which will likely force... I mean, I, I would think the that Ame needs an MKB anyway at some point. Yeah. But Or a uh, or Bloodthorn or a Thorn in his team, at least. He's so. going Butterfly, though. Yeah, he has to buy this item. But I... But that means that's another item where he can't hit, at least not Nightfall or GPK while he's win run. Yeah, Nightfall's just flat out. He's just 6 slotted minute 34. All right. Very casual. Bottom lane is next for Bet Boom, And you can see the TP. How are they going to kill this DY. guy? I have no idea. The butterfly is there, so this is obviously the fighting time for the likes of Extreme as the arena comes out. And just like that, XM is dead. 70 seconds. No way to get back. And the CM will follow suit. Jinki with the BKB going in. XXS going in extremely deep as well, but they've already lost a third member for Extreme. Ame's watching. And XXS looks to be next. Ame going to go back to farming. It's the only thing he's been good at this game. Oh, uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. What is this? Is this us or them? Bet Boom looking for a pot. No, that's us actually. Okay. That's good. I was expecting a pause from Bet Boom as we watch Ame go down the mid lane. And the game will just end, just like that. This is an anti-mage anti, -ga anti game in a nutshell. Extreme Gaming, they will lose two to one to Bet Boom. Very, very weird series, and especially <laughs> two, game three. Two of the games we've had, I don't know, this was less weird than game two, I guess, right? Yeah. But like, I don't know. I, I don't know how to put this into words. It almost feels like I watched a scrim you know, where the teams are trying new things in games two and three, and it's just, all right, guys, back to the drawing board. We'll not run that one back. Yeah. Uh, one for each team, right? Yep. Like this this anti-mage third pick did not work at all. And in the last game, the Medusa third pick into then Sniper Terrorblade was equally poor. So really, for my, as far as I'm concerned, just two extreme draft wins. Uh, and not by not extreme the, gaming, yeah. both of them, one for each team. Just very one-sided and strange games, but that's how it is sometimes. Yep, indeed. Panel, take it away. We will take it away, and so did uh, Bedroom. They took this game away from XG quite, uh, well, it, quite fast, because we, we knew, we said before the game started, after the draft was done, we said if, it, if Extreme Gaming is going to win this game, they will have to play a very clean first 15 minutes, and Effie, that did not happen. No, I mean, they tried their best, I suppose. Like, at minute 15, the net worth was even, which is way better than expected, given how poorly that bottom lane went for Extreme Gaming. But ultimately, an even net worth at minute 15 is really not what they needed. What they needed was winning lanes and a couple of successful rotations. And while they were able to even the net worth score out on XG because of some good kills they got, it was a result of Bet Boom's aggression and Bet Boom's rotations on them and they could never be anything but reactive which really isn't good especially when you have an anti-mage you need to be able to play this four protect one strategy mm -hmm. and just make space for him but bedroom didn't put them in that position they just crushed lanes incredibly hard especially that bottom lane of mars and techies and i actually wanted to ask you jenkins is it supposed to go that bad or what went on there yes chef yes chef but weren't Heard you chef. saying that it's impossible to play anti-mage Mars against anti-mage usually? No, that's definitely not supposed to go that bad. I mean, I'm really bad in general, but uh, anytime I'm Mars against against anti-mage, he just mana drains you, and the way that Mars likes to play is spamming his nukes in the lane, and that's how he harasses you. That's how he pushes the creep wave. I, I think in order to uh, dominate an AM like that, you pretty much have to get a kill from levels like 
one through three, which you were saying the techies definitely helps out because, of course, techies is a universal hero, has the highest attack range in the game. So there is that poke. I think also he... I, I don't know what happened with the blink, but I know the level one blink is like a very short range. So they must have chased him on a blink. Like some shit has to go down for that to go poorly for you. And then after that, Mars can get like a couple of stat items and then sure the lane can be good for the Mars, but it's not supposed to go like that. Like AM with two Wraith Bands or AM with like Wraith Bands treads is stronger than a Mars with equivalent items. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have a lead on the Mars to do well in a lane like that. Yeah, so that was just a really well-played lane. I mean, Mira was topping the CS at some point, which is definitely what you want to see from your Mars, but also the Wind Ranger. We talked about how he would have to go BKB inevitably this game, and he just chose that first item yeah. BKB. He didn't build anything else. Like, GPK identified how they would lose the game, potentially what kind of what kind of misplays would result in that, which would be maybe him having a good lane, then losing, throwing his lead away because he went for aggressive items before the BKB, and he just didn't that he didn't allow that to happen, which was really impressive. I also thought Betboom responded to the anti mage split push very well. They sent the Wind Ranger up there t a few times to, you know, push him out, get him to half HP. At some point, Miro even came because they thought maybe they could chain stun the anti-mage and kill him. And then eventually, Miro had that really great find where he found anti-mage in his jungle and him and the Wind Ranger just killed him off and the game was won there. Yeah, they never overcorrected for the AM. Mm. I think that's what AM usually wants is that you freak out and like send three heroes back and then there's two left or three and then your team jumps on them, the AM TP's back or you send too many and then it means that you have like more opportunity on the map or something like that. They never really did that. It felt like anytime they went back to deal with the AM, it was like with as minimal heroes as possible or they would actually get him when he's doing his split pushing. And it's games like that that make Anti-Mage look like a shit hero. Yeah. But it's not. I think it's a good hero. I honestly think that Betboom just played extremely well around it. I also think that last pick, OD, did no favors for extreme gaming, honestly. Exxon played well because he was his high net worth. He did very well in lane. He tried to make the hero work in terms of, I'm going to rotate and correct a lane, which mm -hmm. isn't really what that hero does unless the, the lanes are doing a little bit better. But he TP top early on and then they managed to get a kill, but it was only on Undying and... It just didn't provide them that team fighting, rotating kind of stability that they needed to play with an anti-mage. Yeah, they needed something that maybe gave him a little bit more time and space, basically, mm -hmm. right? And that, that didn't really happen. I do think that there was... I mean, I always have the feeling like if you don't close fast enough against an anti-mage, you're still going to be struggling. But it, it did feel like at some point, Bedboom was like, okay, this is our point. Here it starts to get a little bit hairy. So what was like... It, basically the same timing as previous game actually around 31 minutes they're like okay we're gonna go high ground if we let this game go on for longer then maybe anti-mage is gonna be a problem because mm. it felt like they, they they did do that Jenkins I like their high ground push too yeah. like I think the way that they executed that was kind of perfect the uh, XM kept going in and astraling to stall and he was like astraling and then uh, blinking out and uh, Miro picked up the sheep stick, and I think that was the reveal of that. And he blinks in, hexes the OD when he's trying to do the like astral, then blink out, and then insta spears him to the arena. And you could see that GPK also blinked in at the same time. And like the call clearly was like, let this guy do his annoying bullshit. It will blink, will will go on him. Like he's yeah. the save hero as well, right? Like he would save with the imprisonment, so they have to go on him as well. And honestly, at that point, he's the only damage dealer that could. They could carry XG in the team fights. So it's like he's the one guy they need to go on. If they kill him, the game is over. And it did instantly end when they jumped him like that. So very good call, whoever made that call. Yeah, it was it was a it felt like a very smooth game, obviously. <laughs> That's easy to say on hindsight. Uh Bedboom played very well, extreme. And back to the drawing boards for them. They were of course able to take one game off of Bedboom, but at the end of the day is the it's the series that counts, and the series goes the way of Bedboom. And with that also the way of Nightfall, who is joining us virtually here in the studio. Hey Nightfall, how are you doing? Hello, hello guys. Doing good since we won the yeah. series and uh tour right now. Yeah, uh, congratulations. Great results. Uh, I have a very unrelated question first. Uh, do you have a personal chef? Uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that was the guy who came to me right after the game. Yeah, that is. Uh, I, mean, I, I was wondering that because you know he was wearing the apron and everything. What's the best thing he cooks? 
I don't know, he kind of like cooks uh, everything really like really good and well. I mean, if it's it's already like it's going to be up to like what's your, you know, like favorite dish, not like what he cooks uh, b b like better because he cooks kind of everything on really good level. So, I mean, for me, it's like, I guess some uh, like some pasta like uh, carbonara or something like this or some just pasta with like some yeah, that's like yeah. there's like uh, yeah carbonara. Yeah, <laughs> that's all that it's. Uh, that said, I agree with your choice. Pasta carbonara is is great. All right, I also have some uh, some Dota related questions, but the first one comes. I mean, it's somewhat Dota related. Um, how much do you and your team communicate with chat wheels? With chat wheels, I mean inside our team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just you know, you're playing your normal game. How much chat wheel usage do you know? Just saying, go back or missing or whatever. How much do you? No. I mean, if we talk about Chatville, I don't think we ever talk like uh, with Chatville. It's just like maybe some uh, some guys will use it just, you know, from um, Bustle Memories, from pubs, but uh, no one really like, I mean, especially me, I mean, and no one I think really looks into it. It just like happens casually, but no one really like re reads chat and like uh, what's happening there. So okay. it's like kind of zero. So, so with that said, did you know that your team is like almost, you're almost double the second in the list, but you guys are topping the list of most chat wheels used? I mean, I didn't know that. <laughs> I mean, that the chat wheel inside our team or all chat? Uh, I, I think it's both. So I think it is, uh, you know, both. So it can be, uh, it can be all the voice chat wheels <laughs> from your heroes as well. I mean, uh, I guess people spamming, vo uh, like, I guess everyone in our team spamming voice lines from like Dota Plus or yeah. uh, like some commentators. That's uh, usual stuff. And and also with that, uh, I have to ask, what's the what's with the tipping at the very start of the game? You know, you, if, if, for example, game two, you're tipping uh, XXS a centaur. He tips you back instantly at the same time. What's with that? I mean, there's no, nothing really like uh, nothing wrong with it. Really, just like uh, some casual like re respect tips. Just uh, he's a good player, and like I stay against him, so like, <laughs> just respect tip. Okay. No, nothing, not much to add. No, no drama. Just respectful tips. I appreciate it. Uh, and then I, I have to ask a question that uh, obviously this was a series where you did end up winning uh, again. But it did take the full three games. And I was wondering, as a team, how you balance, because in game two, you did let, for example, Extreme Centaur through from uh, from XSS. And we see everybody else ban that Centaur against the squad. So how much do you balance in a best of three, potentially experimenting with that kind of stuff, in, especially when you're game up, versus just um, trying really hard to, to close it out as fast as possible? I mean, I think when we're game up, we're we're able to like pick something like unusual for us and yeah we we, we can experiment and like everyone can like yeah just p even pick some unusual mm -hmm. stuff and uh, for centaur yeah maybe we i think we should have banned it over the naga but uh that didn't really even been discussed just some bans happening so i mean yeah if we play like full series i think we we needed to ban centaur but uh, if we talk about just game two, uh, I think we it, we got kind of out drafted, and we also lost like four bounties, so it was uh, kind of like GG. <laughs> it was a it was a tough game from uh, from the get go. I also have Purge that I would love to ask you some uh, Dota questions. Hey Nightfall, uh, in game three you were playing Gyrocopter, and you're up against an anti mage. Uh, were you worried about the matchup in the late game between those two heroes? Uh, hey, uh, I mean, if I talk about matchups, I was thinking uh, between uh, Gyro and Troll, but uh, I decided that like with Gyro, we're just gonna go and like push their objectives with Aegis, and I think Anti Mage build, uh, which Anti Mage plays right now with Agony, is like super useless right now against Gyro. So like he can't do anything uh, to me. I will always out farm him since I will have like better lane, and I'll tempo him up with like Aegis, second Aegis, like Satanic Butterfly. He can't uh, touch me. He can't like uh, like. He can't like even like deal deal damage into my hero, so and I will just send game, and I knew I knew that, that the, and that game was kind of free. And I think probably a safe bet not to pick troll against uh, extreme gaming when they pick Odie all the time. We unfortunately saw that many times with Team Spirit. So, um, in yeah, I mean, uh, troll can just uh, with troll he can just poke me with anti mage and like he can burn my mana and then we'll die. And I can't really hit the ground. Yeah, it sounds so much that's harder. why Gyro, Gyro was way better. And we'll also have like heroes like Undying, Mars, like Ultimate Team Fighting. We we'll just go together. Cool. <laughs> Alright, and then uh, in game number one, you were Terrorblade and you got ganked a few times by the Nyx. Uh, how was that feeling as the game developed? Did you despair? 
Was it rough being solo killed or did you have confidence in your team? No, I think uh, I only died once and I, I don't know, it's kind of crazy damage. He like killed me with 2k HP. I could have used stick, but uh, I thought I won't die, but it's eventually like like some unreal broken damage. And he also got some uh, like most OP like natural item uh, tier two, like Whisper of the Dead, of the Dread, mm -hmm. which is like broken uh, neutral item. Like without that, I think uh, I maybe uh, like leave and don't die. But if I talk about my death, like uh, my first death was kind of like uh, ruining, like uh, my team was smoking and I I thought like and, like they just won't like attack me like seeing zero heroes but they actually did and I died and I think if I wouldn't die there like game will be over like there because we just kill them with my scuddy like they can really fight at this at the point of the game and I died like they got rushed the game game became harder but I always knew like this game is like really favorite for us like every minute like they're losing game like we have DK DK and the uh, raise uh, DK and like TB and they have Razor Alch like they can really like fight in us like later game goes like gonna get my like 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 five six slots like the heroes that are like bullshit like I got I just like got really like free TB pick and like I mean my t I I was like even like kind of like drafting a bit like uh, game one so I kind of drafted them so yeah it it seemed very one sided all right thanks so much yeah thank you so much Nifo for taking the time to to talk to us obviously a two zero so far in this group stage fantastic start looking forward to what you have coming for us tomorrow uh, so uh, have thank a good uh, rest of enjoy. Day. Thank you. Bye. And we're continuing on with the Dota 2. That was only Series 1 that we got coming your way today. If you stick around, our next series, OG versus Falcons. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>
One series done, three to go, and we are getting treated to a fantastic one right now. You're watching Dream League Season 21, and we got OG versus Falcons. Let's go. OG versus Falcons. Now, they did play in the groups against each other, but guess what? It was a tie, and guess what as well? Both teams have evolved since then, because it was a little while ago. Uh, before we dive into it though, Purge, I would love to hear your take on what you are looking at for this series. So there's some uh, drafting patterns that the teams have been sticking to. Uh, Falcons have been playing a lot of CM in the last couple days for sure. CMs, Pucks, uh, some occasional Huskar picks, a lot of Mars. Um, they're kind of being flexible uh, a little bit more so on their support duos, but Malarine does sometimes have these like out of nowhere mid players, uh, mid picks, sorry. On the other team, um, OG, the last six matches, they've picked Hoodwink. No surprise at all. Ari's been playing it a ton. They like it, doesn't really get banned that much. It kind of is a jack of all trade support. Uh, maybe one of the weaknesses, though, is that it is physically weak when you go on the Hoodwink. So if. Uh, if Falcons are able to have some good dive heroes, maybe a storm type hero, then Hoodwink can maybe be a little bit more of a liability. Uh, but I think OG as a whole has been looking really solid. They had uh, some creative drafts against Bet Boom with the the IO and the Lesh, not exactly the most creative combo, but something that other teams aren't doing. So I like that OG is sticking to their own style. Mm -hmm. um, they're picking heroes that they like, and they're getting close to beating the top teams, which is certainly an improvement for OG compared to the, some of their previous rosters. So For sure, and with top teams as well. Falcons winning uh, BB Dasha, I think they have established themselves as a top team. Uh, we're focusing our attention first uh, on OG, though. They are coming in here as on paper the underdogs here, Jenkins, but this team has definitely delivered, as Perch says. Yeah, kind of. I mean, in BB Dasha, they were the underdogs for sure. Uh, I said this before, I'll say it again. I still feel like when they lost in that tournament, they still looked all right when they were losing, like the games would go very late. The same thing is true, but they're stronger in this tournament against Bet Boom. They went 1-2 and the final game went to almost 60 minutes. They won one Falcons in the group stage. So I actually think this team has some pretty insane potential given how their record has been for the year and how quickly they're performing with Tomato, I have uh, I have some pretty high hopes for this team. Yeah, speaking of Tomato, uh, I also want to hear Seb talk a little bit more about him. We feel like the Dream League is going pretty well for us so far. I think obviously we were hoping to perform better and just have better results. When we're on a on a good day, in a good game, kind of like uh, we can beat any team. But average is, you know, so-so. Um, we're not uh, experienced enough as a team to kind of understand what makes us really get ourselves going and, and what makes us underperform a little bit. Sometimes it can be hero related. It can like there's like many things in the game that can lead to that. We're mu much more in control of the games. If that makes sense, and that also uh, that is also what explains that sometimes we're a bit off because um, sometimes we're trying too hard or when when I think given the talents in this team, if we would just like relax and play the game, if we wouldn't be as try hard and as kind of savvy about the game uh, we would just chill and play and probably there are games that we lost trying to win them <laughs> Tornado EMP into the oh they got big RP onto two from Ace but the song comes in the sun strike coming through onto Duraccio oh, big blast good. as well the tomato destroys him Cinderin double kill for BZM the coil from Quinn is there oh, oh shit that's clutch from Seb you know we're still adapting he brings a lot of energy he, he knows what he is, what he's doing. And that's kind of what we were missing. It's easier to kind of build around him in a way, in, in, in the sense that, uh, yeah, he's the kind of player that, that, that requires for sure and things to happen and, and, and is very vocal about. So, you know, there, there are pros and cons about it, of course, but the pro is that it becomes much clearer uh, how the game should play out, you know, and, and when you're strong, when you're weaker, what to play for. Like there are teams we're losing to, but honestly, I feel like there's maybe like, Two teams we lost to in the entire group stage like that's for how it felt that they actually just you know either out drafted us or out smarted us or outplayed us the rest of the games it really felt like we had it and uh, we kind of lost to ourselves so th this is what we're working on uh, and, and and hopefully once that is behind us then it's gonna be about you know being able to challenge the best teams and and break them big shout out to the og fans for being the best fans out there i mean i see 
all of the support and the encouragement when, when we lose and, and, and that's amazing instead of like the classic uh, what I see on Twitter for other origins just like flame don't flame us you know keep it up uh, help us uh, we use the help uh, it boosts us you know it motivates us thanks for the support and hopefully we won't disappoint you yeah, the help and the boost has definitely felt this uh, this event. They've been doing fantastic. Yeah, they came in 7-7 in the group stages and had to go through tiebreakers. But I think we've been saying from the get-go that the team is looking looking very good. Uh, Seb also mentions, uh, as, as we have had have done as well, that Tomato is definitely an asset to the squad when it comes to being vocal uh, when it needs to be. And I think overall, OG has got uh, a pretty good balance down, Mira, in terms of veteran young kids. Bit of a bit of a mix. Yeah, and it feels like they've had that kind of mix for a while, but this mix in particular with Tomato really works because I love what Seb was saying about how it feels like they just have a clearer and simpler game plan now because Tomato needs conditions to be met and he's very vocal about them. And really, when you watched OG at the KL tournament earlier, for example, but they weren't even there. When you watch them at the last tournament, Betfoom, sorry, yeah. the Betfoom tournament earlier, uh, it felt like they had really strong lanes. They were good at the heroes that they were good at, but then they would go into the mid game and they would just drop the ball so many times, even though they had really good starts and would often do well in lanes against the strongest laning teams. So you'd ask yourself, what's going on? Why do they fall apart in the mid game? All of a sudden, Tomato joins and they're playing for timings. They're playing around a certain player. And that's what Tomato's used to because on TSM, he was the shot caller. He was the in-game leader. I mean, they all had to be it to an extent on that former team, but he really had to step up and he brought it into OG. It's he really did. It's kind of amazing like how much just like a little communication changes that impact where you can have like very good mechanical skills very good player like Yuragi was but it's like if you don't cohesively do things strategy wise then you just look bad because losing yeah. makes you look bad frankly so now they they're doing the right things they're going to win more team fights because their strategy is improved and that little vocal change can really mean the world yeah i think if we look at falcons maybe the 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 vocal so the communication within team was already established by by the from the start they just basically probably talked about who's going to do the shot calling and they had that balance down also a good balance in that a team with uh, young and old as uh, when we're talking about falcons i actually want to focus on crit who comes in and one of the veterans uh 27 years old so has been having a fantastic career already obviously spent most of his time on the same team and then did, probably did not get the results that he wanted and then in November, he uh, he sends out a tweet saying people expect more from me. New era, you know, slander. On the, we, I remember us last year, Purge. We were not too impressed with it, with his performance. He was one of the supports that, for example, didn't play techies very well when everybody was playing techies, and he definitely got some flack for that. Yeah, I mean, he. I I, I don't know if there were too many people that were like saying crit is garbage or no, anything no, no, like no, that no. but they were like I mean. <laughs> but they were no no but he used well, to, he, privately he we used were, the word yeah. oh, of course of course Probably. always off we wait till we disconnect the mics and then yeah <laughs> uh he said the word slander right that's like saying but but and the reality was that he hadn't won a tournament in a really long time that the shopify rebellion rtz squad had just kind of had potential but always disappointed pretty consistently and yeah he had a couple good runs but he didn't look like this like flashy amazing player and i just feel like there was some restrictions within the team that made crit have to fit into some like little box of play style play a lot of the similar mm -hmm. heroes because it solved their box but now he gets to like do creative fun things he gets reinvigorated with new teammates all of those things are going to make you play better and he really like after making that tweet i was like i will see if he really if it if, if he puts up and he definitely put up yeah he, he's slowly learning to crack a smile from what i've seen he's smiling helpful, a, a, yeah. a lot more yeah. uh, i think he's very surprised by the fact that he's winning uh because a lot of the time last year i do feel like he would play very well in certain games and then still yeah. kind of end up losing like i i know a lot of uh four position players last year uh professional players tier two players that would still be looking at crits replays because just like mechanically speaking this guy is like creme de la creme of mechanics it's just that it didn't seem to fit together within a team and i feel like this falcons lineup has a really good mix of like stability and just absolute psychotic freaks <laughs> like they they give amar this ability to go revenant's brooch uh, three rapiers and it's fine because like maybe that game like Malreen will be playing more of like a standard guy. Skeeter's always going to be on his, 
you know, Naga Siren or on his Life Stealer, the same thing every single time. And it's it's just uh, the perfect fit. The cogs in the machine, they fit. Yeah, they fit very well. I feel this team has, has been on top. Yeah, they have. I mean, yesterday they looked even better. I, I watched their series versus Gaming Gladiators and they beat them on lane. Every, every time, and when I watched Falcons during this tournament, they're beating everybody in lane unless they're getting severely outdrafted. And in those cases, it's really hard to do it. But honestly, also they traded they traded stomps of Bet Boom, which usually happens when one or two things goes wrong draft wise for either team. But to to put to, to be put in contention with Bet Boom in terms of like laning teams, I honestly even think that they're better. So th this team, you have to break their lanes. They, they're playing Bet Boom style from last year, where if you let them just get a lead in their side lanes, you're gonna get completely run over, and that really feels like the biggest problem with Falcons right now. Yeah, that combination, as well as like blackmailing the opponent team into banning all of your signature heroes rather mm -hmm. than banning what the meta is, is like that's a pretty potent combo, man. Mm -hmm. Usually teams do one or the other. But doing both is like, I, I can only imagine how frustrating it is to play against this team as a competitive team. I mean, you can already see it. The draft has begun. You can already see the, the vast difference uh, from my perspective in terms of bands that we see. Okay, we still see the Chen and the Timber, big surprise. But, I mean, seeing the ban of the TA, Rubik, and the Hoodwink, a little bit, a little bit more surprising. Together with the Crystal Maiden and the Razor, obviously they're specialists on both these squads, so, so, such as the offlane Rubik for OG. That flex potential is spooky, but it also means that Falcons is just fine with dealing with with whatever comes their way. Yeah, uh, I hear of that. Teams usually opt to ban out versus OG is also the Batrider, but I think Falcons just probably watch their performances and prioritize this Ari Hoodwink instead. I mean, mm. they've looked incredibly good on it. And it before before yesterday's series, I believe they won every single game that they played Hoodwink. Right. Uh, they, before they won a lot yesterday's of them, yeah. series. Let me see. Cut it up. And Ari said, if you're going to keep giving me my best hero, I'm just going to keep picking it. So he's kind of doing the, the counter blackmailing strategy, but yeah. from uh, the four position rather than the three. Mm. They've won a lot of their Hoodwing series, but they, they lost both against Bet Boom yesterday. Yeah, like. I, that's that's what what you said. Said. Okay, <laughs> it. Ten seconds remaining. All right, so with the DK and, and the Mars opening, I guess that is telling us nothing. So we have to find information on this second round of bands, on the three bands that we are going to see. So far, and we know the the Kunka and the the Naga Siren. Is that telling us anything of where OG wants to go? Nope. Still nope. all very targeted. <laughs> it's uh, just the good the good Falcons heroes. Yeah. You know, both both teams showing each other a lot of respect. Yeah. Uh, pretty much the only like normal ban I would say is the Chen, maybe the Crystal Maiden. Uh, but Falcons is a very strong Crystal Maiden team, so you could even argue that this is targeted as well. Mm -hmm. I just feel like they, they took out the other team's most common support hero, just switched it up a little bit, and we'll immediately go into three picks that are not switched up at all. Yeah, the Shadow Demon often hailed as a counter towards the Dragonite, and mm -hmm. if you don't ban it, you probably want to pick it, which is what Falcons ended up doing. Yeah, so they have deny picked it. They've also given themselves a support that can save in Smars, right? If any hero gets jumped on by the Smars spear into arena, or honestly just a spear, now they have the disruption that they can do from very long range, very long ranges on Shadow Demon. See a casual techies coming out here. Oh, they go for the Bat Rider. I mean, universal hero. That's what happens. You, you basically the trade off is you're giving them the Bat Rider instead of the Hoodwink, which. Was pretty telegraphed, but as far as Batrider goes, I mean, I do think he's an excellent hero versus Shadow Demon, who, once the team has drafted this hero, he's the high priority target. In order for you to be able to take fights, you have to be able to either control the Shadow Demon or just, you know, blink in, lasso him first, kill him, take him out. Mm -hmm. I feel like with a bat support, I mean, this could still be Seb playing it, but with a bat, you probably want some other stunner, like a lion uh, or Shadow Shaman type hero. If they are going to run, Stab on the bat, then Ari. I know he really likes Shadow Shaman on the current patch. Mm -hmm. Lion sounds kind of good to me, though, just because they have so many illusion heroes. But the hero did get nerfed, obviously. It's a little bit weaker. Seb had a really good Lion game the other day. He's playing against a Morphling. So 
I'd, I'd like to see that personally. But maybe the draft will dictate something different. I don't necessarily see the need for a lion right now because they do have like enough damage covered, but that wouldn't be the worst idea for sure. Why do you see bat picked into SD? It's traditional. I mean, that makes me think it's almost going to be a five bat because otherwise you have the save for the blink lasso. Mm -hmm. You have the shadow demon ulti to slow him when he jumps into the fights. But you can also just lasso the shadow demon. Yeah, you can, but that means yeah, you have to look for him for the whole game, which is a bit of a pain. It does feel like that's how you play versus shadow demon in the first place. Like he needs to be a high priority target. Sure. So you'll see a lot of storm spirits versus shadow demons, simply just because of how important it is to kill this hero at the start of a fight. In some ways, I feel like Gyro kind of works well with Bat Rider because Gyro, it's difficult for him to land any disables or to like bring his magic damage to the foreground. But Bat just brings the hero to you. So it allows you to uh, burst them a little bit quicker with set of call down and things like that. When Falcons bring their SD Mirana, they played this for a lot of Bed Boom Dacha. They won that tournament with it. You have set up for the arrow. You have this really strong position five hero in Mirana because Snake King just loves his Mirana. He makes it look like a lane dominator, mm -hmm. even though it traditionally is quite average on lane. I remember the the quote, this is the best Marana people has ever seen, one of the games he played Marana 5. So uh, yeah, looking forward to this, should be fun. Usually there's a, some sort of stunner set up, pick with it. Uh, Sven, Wraith King, two hero Skeeter has been enjoying. Um, maybe not the best into Bat oh, Mars, but yeah. you're, you're never going to get a perfect pick. I think you've got enough set up though, right? Disruption, Dragon Tail. Three setups for this Marana. Sure, it's just the, the only issue is like that's both in, in one lane. It's, it's nice to be able to just have the Marana run between lanes, have set up with whoever with having the support there. Skeeter's hero pool has been decently diverse so far this tournament, actually. It's like almost every game he's picking something different in you know, around the third or fourth pick for his team. I mean, he had a Bloodseeker, Weaver, Dusa, Luna, Dusa against Sven. He's all over the place, so they're just waiting to pick him for the ideal matchup, so yeah, it looks like. Pango means they have more than three picks prepared that are mm -hmm. decent, and they also want to, like you said, see the matchup. They also just, now with this Pangolier, they have counter control for the Mars Arena. Typically, Pango is one of the better heroes against this for the Rolling Thunder, and they're just going to have this side lane enabler, because you have so much lockdown on your side lanes, but you need someone to capitalize off of it, and we know Malvin has had so many good Pango performances. Puck. Yep, there's the Puck. Uh, really the only like instant lockdown for the Puck is DK, but they know it's going to be Pango mid. Puck does fairly well against that. You can coil him, he can't use his ult. Uh, you've got some kill threat. I feel like they did need a little bit more lockdown, uh, you know, to pair with Mars Arena into Spear. Puck gives them that. Yeah, and you also have a means to jump this SD plus Mirana. Puck is a really good hero. Once she gets that Witchblade, she just gets on the Shadow Demon of Silence, kills them. Plus but you can ravage them with a Dream Coil and Flame Break. It's very low cost, very powerful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go for the Flame Break uh, mm -hmm. range talent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The break distance, yeah. I think the biggest issue for Falcons, honestly, is just going to be the Dream Coil for this Pangolier, but this is what they always play. They got all the heroes that they're good at and the heroes that they love to play and their comfort and combo picks. Whereas with OG, you do get that and you get the Whisper Mars and you get this Bat Rider that they look so good on. But I don't know how comfortable I feel looking at this Gyrocopter because it's still we still don't know where it's going, whether it's going to be support or core. And that's the nature of a flex pick, but it's not like they're going to see the overall last pick to counter it, right? They have the 23 pick here. So they're going to have to pick a hero, reveal their flex, and get counterpicked by Falcons. So the biggest question mark of OG's draft right now is the gyro. Do you guys feel like gyro is still like a, a bluff of a flex pick? Because I feel like it's been core most of the games that we've covered on mainstream lately. On like, the mainstream, uh, it has mostly been core, but I still would say it's flex. We've seen it support. Yeah, okay. I think it's still a good support. Uh, like, at least in pubs, I'm still seeing it a lot as support. It's just a better just better at carrying now than it was. It's like a better flex. We've definitely seen it a couple of times on support. I remember watching Celery 
by BKB yeah. on Gyro. And not Shard. I mean, just like two patches ago, <laughs> yeah. the best support duo in the game was Bat Gyro. Like, that was literally the two S tier yeah. supports. It was so annoying. <laughs> I was like, I have PTSD from that. Yeah, I also love this uh, <laughs> this last phase ban. One Terrorblade, one IO. It's the carry, <laughs> don't know. It's the carry IO, obviously. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it's the, the IO support with Gyro. Just an obvious yeah. pairing. So they, they expect it to be Gyro. I mean, both sides. Well, they also bet on the TV. It's like, have your bases. Have your bases. Have your bases. Yeah, it both could sides aren't sure. Four, true. Like, d the DK could be Skeeter playing it or Amar. It, it's neither side is sure. Like, they banned the Sword R because, I mean, Falcons has actually been last picking Amar his heroes in, in this group stage. So, mm. I don't blame OG for thinking they're going to do that again. Okay. So, bench support for sub makes sense. Yeah, it's going to be a really solid damage amp for the Gyro with her minus armor. And also, it's going to be a means to save whoever gets blinked on by this DK into a chain arrow. Now you have the swap to potentially rescue whichever one of your mm -hmm. core targets gets put in that situation. They can swap break coil as well, so there's just there's a lot of good crossover in their lineup. This game's over. They're going to pick a life stealer. Skeeter's going to dumpster this game. Going to get the entire OG draft. 2-0, Falcons. Looks pretty good, yeah. Good. Is it worth it enough just to give you lane stability against the Mars because you just can't get zoned out? Is that? And it's good, it's good against Bat, and it's good against Puck, and then it beats the carry to carry matchup of the Gyro. Really good with Marana in lane too. The slow into arrow setup, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, of course. That ten percent slow level one. Yeah. And this could still be a safe lane DK is the thing. They they could just be looking for a Mars hero right now, and this is what they're deciding. Definitely taking their time for this. They got about 20 seconds left, so why not take it if you have it? There's no Huskar option here, right? Mm. It's the one you always got to worry about. No. Nah. Team Falcons. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think. He's smiling again. Oh no! Yeah. Is it the Huskar? <laughs> Crit smiles when oh, it's the Huskar. There's a lot of smiles. <laughs> a lot of smiles. Oh, there oh it my is. god! Nice I'm so food. glad I said it now. Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, just in case. All right. Okay. They're doing it. All right. They're doing offline Pango. Interesting. Uh, I have my suspicions about offline Pango, to be honest, but maybe they just saw a really good Huskar game and they wanted to capitalize on it. Because the issue with offline Pango is it doesn't really enable its other lanes the way that the mid Pango does with runes and rotations, and it can get punished quite easily on lane. And it's not like it's going to be an easy lane for our dear Pango versus Gyro plus Vengeful Spirit. This is a pretty strong lane, but. Yeah, maybe Malrian's Huskar is just too good. They they want to bust it out. I, I like this from Falcons because I see it as like an investment. If this game turns out well, yeah. and they can rotate a dog shit hero to the off lane and in the Pango, and Amar does fine, and then Malrian dumpsters the mid lane, Huskar will never go unbanned yeah. against this team. Yeah. Never. They're playing the long game. They're playing the long game. It's group stage two. They already, I'm sure they're confident they're going to make it through. They're like, you know, maybe some finals somewhere down the line. It's like, you know what? If we play Huskar now... Imagine how afraid people are going to be yeah. of this, if this works. And OG kind of has a lack of single target damage that isn't magic. Like, Gyrocopter might struggle to kill Huskar for a longer stage of the game. Puck also very magic heavy, so if Huskar gets his BKB at a good timing, gets a Halberd, like, I think he's going to match up okay against the enemy squad. Yeah, it's a good Huskar game for sure. O only thing I'm worried about is the Pango, but I know that Amar is very creative in the way that he plays offlane and approaches bad lanes. So, so long as they don't lose or bleed too much on the side lanes on Falcons, which I'm sure they won't, this Huskar looks solid. Do we all believe in the Huskar here then? Yeah, this is a 2 0. Stop saying 2 0, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing that. Let's start with one game at a time. Is that okay? Yeah, for you guys. I think for Falcons it might be as well, obviously. Who knows if Huskar is going to be victorious. On the other side, we also have the Whisper Mars. You know, that's one of his signatures. There's non-believers here on this table. It's good. That's what I'm hearing here. But uh, what I'm also hearing is that we want to watch some Dota, and that's exactly where I'm going to send you over to Sunspan and Syndrome. OG versus Falcons, game number one underway. Sunsvan here with Cinderman. More all chat. Okay, we're, we're, I'm keeping track of all chat now a little bit better just after we uh, 
discussed what was happening with Bet Boom. Yep. They're definitely winning the pause game. But Falcons, I think you're right. I think they do take the cake on the all chat. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Well, let, let's just uh, let's just address the Huskers straight away, shall we? Because uh -huh. this, this is kind of the hero of the game whenever it's in it, and he's going to be playing against Puck. You and I had the pleasure of casting this matchup two days ago mm -hmm. in the tiebreakers when Squadix played against Quinn and got absolutely trashed as Puck. It was super one-sided. Yep. Uh, if Mel Ream can even remotely replicate that against BZM, OG will be in trouble because their lineup is quite reliant on Puck to be able to set up things for success. Um, it's not like it's the only catch they have. They have the Mars. You could argue they have a bad rider who can do it as well. But the problem is if Puck isn't popping off, I think Huskar is just going to be able to run the show with a lead from mid. So very curious how OG managed to handle this. As the panel talked about, it's going to put their Pango in the off lane. I have a little bit more faith in that offlane Pango than they do. I think he's actually going to do quite fine. Whisper is... Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble. Snaking not able to go for the blocks. The rebuke is there to slow, and he's actually going to get a bounty rune for his efforts, but he is super low. And if he tries to TP out, Snaking might be able to, if he keeps chasing. Now, he'll stop. Whisper looks like he'll just suicide here. Snaking, okay. Well, just like that, there's your first blood, I guess. Yep. <laughs> I guess that's what you have to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's I. What you gotta do. The only other. I mean, if you TP the lane, then. I guess giving the first blood to the support, there could be worse things, I suppose. How long do you have to stay out of combat? It's like 30 seconds to not give first blood to the hero. It's too long. Like, he can't wait. Yeah. Oh, can't wait. oh, all right. So, Falcons not only winning on the all chat. But they want to try to catch up to Bet Boom with the pauses. <laughs> this is one of 100, so they have a long ways to go to get to that point. But yeah, Huskar, very interesting hero, uh, and I think maybe it takes them aback because Amar is not, I would not say he's really, like, I don't think of Pango when I think of Amar. We'll he's, see how he does this game. He's actually very good at that. Hero. I'm not saying he's not good, but it's not like his prototypical, right? Yeah, it's not in his top three, I guess, but it Nothing is, except for that makes <laughs> except no for sense. the three heroes. Yep, that's right. I was gonna say his top three. He is like, he's almost top one in the world on those three. I guess uh -huh. that's what I was going for. Okay. This one, I would say, other players can hold a candle to his pango. Um, but do you think that they thought that? Oh, takes a couple pop shots from the tower. Uh, but do you think that they were that OG were thinking that this could be the offlane pango? I don't think they had it in mind because I, I feel like you would have banned the Huskar if you were considering yeah. this. And Except, stab. Uh, yeah, blood grenades surround with the disruption. Gets off the magic missile onto Amar. And the Rocket Brush is doing quite a bit. They do get the kill on Seb, but it does come with a heavy investment of HP. If this offlane with Pango is getting kills, I mean, it's just Avenge, of course, but it's one thing for Pango to survive this lane and do okay, but if it starts getting kills, then things are already going better than expected there. Mm -hmm. Got to say, though, BZM's already doing better than Squadix did against Quinn. He has 9 CS to the 10 and 5 of Huskar. Yep, so far so good. BZM. Malreen is going to show him who's the king of mid here. That's a lot of burning spears. It's only level 1 right now. But it's definitely a good indication of what Huskar is good. I mean, this is a lot of magic damage from OG as well. So yeah. this passive of Huskar is going to be doing overtime. Malreen. I mean, he is set up for a good game, but I don't think we've cast the Huskar game where they've lost, honestly. Even at TI, that was just a dumpster fire. I think it was Quinn that was playing at that time. Just feels like it's a kind of a trump card where you just win the lane and then just that's kind of the game. But you win so hard. But so far, like we can see, this isn't that bad. He's definitely... BZM's losing mid, but better than expected. Yeah. So far. I'm curious about what happens now when Huskar hits level 5, because these Burning Spears are going to start really being a pain in the ass for BZM. He is getting out leveled as well, and the thing that's so frustrating about playing Puck against this hero is Puck actually fares well in a lot of matchups with the consistent harassment. Huskar just doesn't care. It's like you're hitting a brick wall, yeah. you know? He's just going to take the trade every time. He's going to regen it back up, not give a crap. Was there any... L I doubt there was, but... 
Is there any play from OG where they just switched up the lanes that they could have, like, at the beginning of the game to do something, like, really awkward, like, they really have, weird to... They have no hero that can lean against Huskar. Yeah, that's the problem. Dire I think so. Um, what heroes are good against Huskar mid, in fact, just generally? Um, hmm. I guess Windranger is quite good. I think Viper should do fine. Mm -hmm. So two? Two here? <laughs> I, I mean, there's there's got to be more as well. I'm not exactly a mid-specialist, but there's definitely a couple of mashups that are completely playable. Sep going to rotate in here with a TP. Trying to be cheeky with a wave of terror, but they didn't get the kill. And BZM will get the water rune, so at least he's going to stabilize a bit here. Yep, and... Snake King is playing the Marana. A lot of the Marana games that we've been watching have been extremely underwhelming to the fact that the hero just hasn't looked that good. But Falcons are the one of the few teams that seems to have just really good success on it. It's position five, and of course they do have the setups with the disruption with the Dragon Tail, and that probably has something to do with it. Uh, but I'm curious as to why Marana has not... I mean, maybe it's just the games that we've cast that is possible. It just hasn't looked good. Yeah. I, I feel like we've just got a lot of outliers. I think in theory and on paper, I understand why the hero is, is very beloved in the pro scene, because it has its weak phases in, in drafting, but if you if you think about it, let's say you can float a lane with Mirana as a five. Let's say you draw and you just do okay. This hero can scale. It has an escape mechanism, so Perch talked about this earlier. You can buy utility items on it because it, it has the escape built in. Moonlight Shadow is an incredible skill at the highest levels of play because the better the players are, the more powerful information is. Um, smoke is a finite resource. This isn't. Arrow is a, a bit of a wild card, I would say. I actually think it's Marana's worst spell in a way, almost. <laughs> Sad. Sad will TP away here. It's her worst spell. Interesting. I know it's kind of a weird way of looking at it, and Dota doesn't really work that way, but... You see, Marana's in the safe lane right now, when they play this a 5, often don't skill arrow until level 4. They go 2-0-1, because they can't rely on the arrow hitting. Starstorm is a very high damage ability, and is their wave clear for later down in the game. The Leap is the one that allows them to play offensively and to escape when they're getting ganked when they split push. And the Moonlight Shadow is the team ability. So arguably, the arrow is the least important spell, which used to be Marana's entire reason for being picked. Oh it's boy. kind of ironic. Oh boy. If Malreen gets this, which he will. Oh dear. Double, well, 1.8x damage for Malreen. Let's, let's start calling it that. Damage rune. Amplify spell spells Already as here. well. Malreen is, he's level 6 and he's holding the point for life break potentially if he finds a, an avenue. Is Seb getting caught off guard and surrounded by crit. We'll get the magic missile, but the surround is successful. Crit will die though. So a little bit of a gold exchange, but the XP going the way of crit. Seb gonna laugh that one off. I actually thought Seb might have been able to get the kill first there, but just barely got killed by the illusions. He had the raindrop to try to block some of the damage from Shadow Poison, but Crit had enough in the tank too. BZM has just uh, exited the lane. I mean, <laughs> when he got the double damage, uh, Huskar, don't want to touch that. It, isn't it funny how BZM was actually doing quite well and just marginally behind, and then Huskar hit level five and the lane was just over. It just ended in an instant. 44 and 20 to 27 and 4. Again, compared to the, the game that we were casting the other day, this is way better yeah. than the puck was performing. Uh, but that was like one of the worst shellackings in the mid lane that we've seen in a long, long time. Now Huskar's going to do Huskar things. It's very unique to this hero. You just go Ancients minute 7. That's not Huskar, that's Batrider, but it's also in the jungle, so we'll take it. There's fire, so... Consolation prize here. Confusion. Dragon Tail from Skeeter. First Dragon form of the game. So out-leveling Whisper right now in this offlane. You can see Whisper and BZM, roughly the same net worth. It's not the greatest of signs. Call down is going to be completely avoided by Amar as he focuses on Seb. Has to swash up in just a moment. We'll use it to get that kill, and now Tomato's in a lot of trouble as Malreen makes his way over with the life break. Not even needing the Rolling Thunder from Amar. So two quick kills for Falcons as they have a 2k lead. <laughs> That's a nice shot of Malreen. Seems like quite the character based on the interviews that we've heard from, especially his teammates. Like a very lively guy who's just enjoying yeah. 
enjoying his time in the sun. I've heard some things about Amar, but in person, like interviewing, I think he, it feels like he's matured a lot. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed uh, the few experiences that we've had. And Malarine, haven't had a chance to talk to him, but you're right, in the interviews, he seems like a fun guy overall. They do talk shit a lot. The, the thing that's worth keeping in mind about pro players is that the formative years for pro players come later than for other people because we spend like 10 years in Dota. Yeah. So you don't get other life experience. So the formative years, if you're like 19 as a pro player, you're experiencing the transition that other people experience in their lives when they're 13. Yeah, that's so right. So the maturity comes really suddenly. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that because people are very immature when they're 13. I have very lowbrow humor and I'm really old, so. Yep. You uh, have you've not also matured been, yet. Yeah, you're still stuck in CS, so that's even worse than Dota. True. Well, according to you. <laughs> True. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Skeeter in the Moonlight Shadow, but Whisper will be able to walk away here. He's Radiant holding the point on Arena. The Seb not quite level 6, and they're going to use the Moonlight Shadow to set a potential gank up on him. Swash, Rolling Thunder will be cancelled. Good call down. And call down from Tomato will force them back. Amar still thinking about it, though, as Crit was taking the brunt of damage from the Gyrocopter. Ari coming in as well. They will be able to clean up Crit, but here comes Malreen to... Uh, <laughs> He hits the homing missile once and then just leaves. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> He's got that armlet now. We'll be going the Sage. Is this going to be the Halberd, I would assume, for the Huskar? Yeah, probably. I, well, you don't have to finish the Halberd. You can just get the Sange for the value and then go BKB or Axe or whatever you want. It, but it is an incredibly high value item on this hero in particular. It's the best Sange buyer in the game by a wide margin. It's mm -hmm. just way better on this guy than anyone else. Oh, gee. This, okay, it's and a one-to-one -one pause. I don't know if we mentioned this or if you noticed it there. Amar has Diffusal. It's minute 10. Oh, wow. I think he got it minute 9 in the offlane. He skipped Boots. Oh. He has Wraith Band, Bracer, Wand, and Damn. a Branch. So massive stats, and then he just went straight Diffu here. Damn. This was an offlane Pango that was supposed to lose the lane, and sure, Gyro is ahead of him on net worth, but Amar's game is very good. Like, this is faster than the average <laughs> from mid. Yes, so that is kind of crazy. He is, of course, bypassing the bottle. That needs to be said, right? trying to gank faster, him, though. But... There's the coil. That's the counter to Pango for sure. And they will have the burst damage. A lot of heroes BZM here. desperately needing that, along with OG. A good pick off. As Falcons will use this smoke to go into the triangle where Whisper is trying to farm. Oh, boy. Demonic Purge. They could get this stack potential, but the TPs are coming. Life break from Malreen. Arena keeps them in place. Whisper still dies, but Ari coming in now with the Flame Break. Magic Missile from Seven. Tomato, big call down. Can they get the kill onto Malreen? Swap comes out to give some extra damage mitigation. Ari falls. Tomato is next. Malreen is perfectly healthy. And now just working on the Ancient stack as well. Just one disruption from Crit. Just he makes it look so easy. It's, it's one of those spells that you need to be a bit... You need to be wary of when and exactly how to use it. That was just second nature for him there to, to get that off there. Because this looked like this arena was actually going to lead to something good, right? He gets three of them in it. He gets this spear off. Ari is connecting. Oh, he doesn't have lasso here. yet. As Tomato is on yeah. top of him with the entire combo, it gets fully broken, and they just clean the house. I didn't realize Ari was only level five. So I, no lasso. For what it's worth, the lasso would have done nothing, right? Potential. He was just trying to get disrupted anyway. Yeah, that's true, I guess. Oh, Lasso. Try it now. Onto Malreen, bringing him not to the high ground, but into the arms of Seb and company. Magic Missile was there, but he's going to be able to walk away. Swap coming in, but double kill for Malreen. There it is again. As another disruption to save him. Does he even need saving is the question. And now Tomato trying to just fight it out, but it ain't happening. The Huskar reigns supreme. Three for one. And now <laughs> it's starting to get out of hand. 5k lead for Falcons, and it just feels like another Huskar dumpstering game. Offering accepted. Is under attack. Yeah, this guy's a beast on this hero. And the game will, as always, center around him. Falcons are very... I feel like one of the things that this team does so well is understanding what hero to play around when. It's, it's so easy to theorize and so easy to talk about, but they do an excellent job at playing around their strongest hero, bringing the correct players with them. We've seen the Shadow Demon now with two perfect disruptions nearby. 
They've been bringing the Pango when it was time for that. This time the Dragon Knight rotated over as well to be a part of this play. Mm -hmm. And another thing about the Falcon's draft in this game that's kind of interesting, as we see Crit potentially die here, or, or Seb, sorry, at least getting... Yeah, he's screwed. Skater coming in from the south. Easy swash. Lots of long-range damage for Falcons. When you give Falcons a first pick Dragon Knight, you have no idea where it's going. They have three cores that love this, this hero. So yeah. Most other teams in this tournament will pigeonhole it into offlane almost always. Some of them play it mid. This team plays it in all three positions. So when you give this as your overall first pick to them, you know nothing about the draft. Like, there's just... You have nothing to go on. You're just picking blindly after the DK comes out. Um, it's not just, I mean, yeah, DK is the extreme version because all three, but even like with Razor and Timbersaw, yep. you never know what lane it's going to go. Yeah, with Razor, they also have three players. That's true, actually. Whisper was getting ganked, and this, oh, well, yeah, another one right click from Skeeter should lead to the kill. Breathe Fire misses, though. We'll have to expend a blink. But they do get the kill in the end. Lamar wanted to go on Ari. Misses the swashbuckle. They have the lasso, but the disruption comes through. The arrow hits Tomato as he gets the call down off. Amar with the swash from afar. And the double kill for Skeeter. Falcons are just on another level. They're, they're just better, this game. I mean, I'll just say it. They're just playing better. It's one thing that the Huskar has such a good matchup in the mid and everything, but their movements and their coordination is just stellar. Barely made a mistake in this game on any player. Like, I think Snaking could have cut one death <laughs> that I can think of in this Radiant's mid fight, where he ended up taking a flag shot that he didn't need to to try to cover from Malreen, but aside from that, they're just nailing it. This very beautiful Dota from, from Falcons this game. And as the panel talked about, it's the creativity, right? It's the fact that they can just put this Pango in the offlane and run the Huskar. They can play the Dragon Knight carry, they can do whatever they want. Everything is just working. BZM, some major oh trouble boy. here. Rolling Thunder does hit into the arrow. Shield crash as well. BZM gets off the illusory orb. Coil, it's only onto the one target. As Amar will continue the chase, swash and one right click. Make it a shield crash instead. Down goes BZM in the t into the double tip. <laughs> as Falcons have run away with this game number one. Yeah, so before everybody jumps this and says, wow, they're being so toxic and all shit over, these are old school teammates from Team Creep Wave which is still in Malreem's nickname here as a sponsor. <laughs> uh, I don't think you can be sponsored by your old team, uh, including Amar. He also has Creep Wave in his. Oh, OK. Uh, but yeah, these two guys together with BZM used to play together a little over a year ago, I think it was. Time flies when you're having fun, though. Look at them now, playing Husker every game and killing Roche at 16 <laughs> minutes. Good. This might be too early for you, Shannon. This is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can we get that uh, average Roche timer up? Oh, oh my God! Are yes! you serious? Yeah. Baby. Are you serious? Let's go. That was after last game. So before no. last game, it was 22:01. Yeah, so it's gonna be lower now. Yeah, and now yeah, it's yeah. Gonna be low. Oh. <laughs> oh. I think production is just trolling me here. This feels so good. Unbelievable. That's close enough. All right. We round up. I, I said on the second. $100 dinner on the line here. <laughs> You've been one second <laughs> off on both sides. That is so funny. Oh, this is the dream. This is what I hope would happen. Tomar, tomato into the arrow. Oh, my goodness. He is not going anywhere. There is a swap, but Amar gets the stun just on time. And that leads to the double kill for Malreen, who is completely dumpstering this game. The Husk has the halberd now. BKB is next. Only the recipe away. Top three net worths on the Falcon side. And what does the OG do, right? Because good question. Now, there's a Huskar with Axe or sorry with Aegis that's going to start pushing. You don't have single target damage. The combo that you have is something like coil into swap, and then you try to lasso him into tier fours. Well, now and you the can't. The coil, do that. but Skeeter has already come. They are on the same page at all times. OG just cannot find a free pickoff to save their lives. BZM, Illusory Orb is Amar, will continue to chase. Very greedy boy. Swash, not sure if it clipped anyone there, but Whisper, oh, just in time he blinks out. Goodness gracious. Yeah, OG. 420. That's true, it is 420. We appreciate that. Speaking of blinks, there's another. Crit has his now. Yeah. Arrow. 
It is going to hit. So Snake King able to hit his arrows, unlike some of the other players in this tournament. So this this is why Falcons picked this hero. It's because Snake King hits arrows. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's really good, apparently. Oh, that's a nice angle. Maybe one TI at some point. Green shot. Yeah, he's, he's quite good. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom All right, how long is this game going to take to end, do you think? Let's do some guesses Radiance here. Middle tower uh, do you want to do over under? Sure. All right, what do you think? Oh, I can't turn it around on you. You have to give me an over under time. Okay. Uh, let's say 30. Under. Under 30? Yeah. Okay. Top tower is I under thought you were going to be more bold and say like 25. That might be a little bit too rough. Let's see. Uh, all right. Uh, Get the yeah. lasso off, but crit comes in to cancel the TP. That'll be a free pickoff for the side of Falcons again, as the BKB now comes through from Alreen. There is a real chance that they just end now, actually. If uh, OG fail an attempt on Malreen, they will lose a Rax and probably just call it here, because the, the path to recovery is almost insurmountable here. Well, they are getting started on it. No Batrider, and when Batrider responds, there's no Lasso. Yep, that's a good point. They're prospecting while pushing here. A very nice little kobold friend beating the drum of gold. <laughs> Fortification was used. They'll have another one at their disposal. Malreen, again with the Aegis, we're seeing carry the kobold. Carry? Yep. I was going to say Kevin, but that's Purge's name, so that wouldn't really work. Uh, miscommunication for the first time here. Tomato. They missed the arrow. They do. And the counter initiation. There's the Mars Arena, but the instant stun comes out onto Whisper. And here comes Amar with the Rolling Thunder. Snake King does fall. So finally a kill going the way of OG. But Tomato, Dragon Tailed, and he's done for a while. And looks like Whisper is next on the list. This fight barely even had Huskar in it. He just arrived. <laughs> Cleaned up. If he does that every time, that would be really impressive. Radiance top Down the mid lane we go. Indeed. So this will be... Down the top lane we go. Top Rex, at the very least. Well, for a second, I thought that was Roshan's banner. I was like, that's offensively <laughs> placed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the first lane. Nothing OG can do about this one. Other than Fortify, okay, one more time. They can delay it five seconds and then lose it after. I wonder how much difference there would be if they get rid of that Fortify refresh. That would change the game a lot. Are they actually... Skeeter, okay. Yielding here? Yeah, they... Wow. So the range rack okay. goes down. Falcons will not get the full set. I really thought Melreen was going to hit it a couple more times, but his Aegis is expiring 10 seconds later, and he will play completely safe and back off. Not a single inch of opportunity given to OG. That's measured in inches. Okay. Uh, okay, well, Seb wants to deward. He wants to die. More like it. BZM going in pretty deep. Would have been a pretty decent coil, but I don't know if they have the damage follow-up as Tomato is initiated on. And he's the first to fall for OG, which means they need to retreat. Malreen with the BKB will just go high ground. Can't quite finish off the racks yet. And as you can see, Whisper isolated on the other side. So that's now a 5v3. This could be the beginning of the end or the end of the end. The end is the beginning, and the beginning is the end. If you ever watch Dark, that's the only uh, dialogue that they ever use in every episode. Blink stun from Skeeter. Seth finished off by Amar. Now the tier 3 tower mid is in their sights. It's the dragon form again from Skeeter. So it'll be minimum two lanes. Still no GG's called from OG. And Malreen will be getting that Aghanim Scepter pretty soon, so the taunt is only 600 gold away. Not that it's really needed here, but super strong Ags. Ari, he's on the back line. Looking to try to find... Well, he doesn't have Lasso for 15 either, so no real openings. I feel like we've had this conversation in the past when we've been casting, where we're like, at some point, is it just better to call it from like a fatigue or mental perspective, like, mm -hmm. is it worth grinding this out? I mean, it's the best of three, though. It, it's not an elimination game. Do you just want to call a spade a spade and reset? Like, are you trying? What are you trying to do here? Are you looking for some sort of dream fight? Is there a plan? Well, maybe Malreen will sprain his finger hitting R. 
I definitely feel like if OG aren't gonna smoke and just YOLO fight this, then they might as well call it, right? Because then you're just letting Falcons play the map. They're gonna look for something here. Yep, Amar with the swash. BZM going in pretty deep. Same with Tomato, but he's the one taking most of the damage. BKB's pot for Malreen and company. As Malreen just fighting it out. Nice swap for, onto Tomato. He's gonna live as a result. Oh, I say that, but Amar finds him on the back line again. With the Rolling Thunder, that is three dead for OG. Now the buyback onto Ari. As Amar will continue the chase. Whisper oh, gets what an arrow. arrow. Snake King is a god. Beautiful. Skeeter. Still no GG's yet. <laughs> Somehow. Maybe OG don't think the game was good. Yeah, that's true. They you, could say BG. You don't have to lie. If you, you just... type BG, the game doesn't end. That is technically true. What? 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 How is that technically true? Oh, you mean it doesn't end it, until the yeah. engine? If you That's type correct. BG, the yeah. game. Well, oh, you're really slow today, Cinder. Yeah, I am. That's like Just like day. Falcons is to end this game. Yeah, wow, Falcons, step it up. It's 24 minutes. Yeah, need done to be faster. Already. They have six minutes left to get yeah. your prediction. They'll go get an Aegis and end it. That's a late rush. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even sweating right now. This. That's because it's freezing. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Sweden. Very cold. Seb, Seb gonna again. try to do what the same word. <laughs> All right. It was there oh, again. Oh, dear. <laughs> Are we sure this isn't a highlight? <laughs> I've seen this before. Uh, yeah, well, he confirmed his suspicion. They were there. <laughs> yeah, Highest Falcon's amount of building damage at 24 minutes on any hero for a Skeeter. Oh. 11,000. Which makes Very sense impressive. because who has even hit a tower yet minute 25 in this patch? BZM? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, the lasso from Ari. They need to get one kill. That's their goal. Oh. Don't think it's happening, though, Mission as failed. Ari will drop. Nice blink from Amar. BZM gets off the phase shift as now, of all times. Why now? <laughs> of all the time that you had, why? We'll have to ask that in a post-series interview. But if Falcons end up playing like this, I don't think they'll be interviewing OG. This was uh, very one-sided. Yeah, we uh, we just get some one-sided games, you and I, don't we? This was, uh, we talked about yesterday how we cast six games and the average game time was pretty high, but the games felt relatively decided 25 minutes in. They just took a while to end them out. Well, guess what? We can get the same thing where they just end faster. How about that? Yeah. This they game, 25 minutes. Last series, we had two 30-minute games. If Skeeter had Naga, they would have waited longer. Yep. Regardless. Absolutely. So glad it was a DK this time. And yeah, Falcons what really showing up. Smackdown. I mean, they're looking just like they did in the in the Bet Boom Dacha tournament. They 3-0'd the finals there, and they're not stopping, it looks like, anytime soon. Slam's really good. Yeah, it's a very clean game. The last pick Huskar worked wonderfully. They throw Amar on an offlane Pango. The panel's like, how is that going to do? He went 10-1-13. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty good as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, well, uh, what can you really say? More or less a perfect game for Falcons. Yep, Falcons 1-0 start. Will they continue with the 2-0? Panel, do it. Will they continue with the 2-0 is the question. Well, if they keep giving Amar his signature Pangolier, that's, uh, that's, he, he claimed that, by the way, signature Pango. He said that. I, I saw him say it. And uh, to be fair, he did play like it was Jenkins. He played like that was a hero he plays every day. Yeah, Shiver, this is a 2-0. I think Falcons has OG figured out. I uh, think that teams are going to need to start banning the Huskar, potentially, yeah. at the very least, in the last phase. I feel like they could probably even get away with second phasing this hero if they pick it on the last pick out of the second phase. <laughs> this man, yeah. this man knows how to Huskar. It, it, you always see the crit smile preemptively too. So if we could get camera access to OG, I think they know what the draft is coming up because there's always that classic crit smile right before the Huskar pick into domination. Effie? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I don't think, I'm not sure if they're figured out or anything. I think they just got last pick Huskard. It was really unexpected for the DK Pango to to not be the mid plus offlane duo because mm. you're not used to seeing this Pango flex to offlane. So yeah, they pulled out a really nice trick there. It worked out very well. Falcons are so annoying because you have to always consider Malrian's hero pool and then you have to consider that maybe they're going to flex 
unusual heroes to the offlane and still pick the Huskar anyway. And it, yeah. it was the last pick Huskar. It was very hard to deal with. And honestly, there wasn't that much OG could do. Like they did have some successful rotations early on to that bot lane, but it, it was rough, man. It was like they were, it, David versus Goliath with these drafts. The more that I see Falcons, the more fear that I have in my heart. For whom? For everyone. Like what? this, this just seems like one of the ultimate super teams in Dota. There are so many annoying things that you have to deal with. You have a team who probably has the highest average MMR out of all teams at the tournament. That usually doesn't go that well because the synergy is not there, uh, but it is. They have the synergy. They have people who have played together a lot before. They have a coach who has coached some of these players before. They have fresh new blood in Amar and Malreen that are both incredibly high rated and have been like very subversive in the scene mm -hmm. when they were introduced. You know, Amar blackmails you into banning all of his heroes and then he just plays the flex last pick uh, to allow the last pick to his other, you know, fresh blood mid laner who's like insanely good at this Huskar. His armlet toggles are beyond broken. It's, there's so many levels of having to deal with this team that at this point, just like, just give up when you're against them. Just like, all right, go next. We'll play the next series, who cares? Just accept the loss. It's a 2 -0. Don't play game two. Yeah. We'll no. have a break until 6 p.m. I no. think so. No. no. <laughs> I think so. No, they've dropped many games and the games are dropped and you can manage to draft in ways that outlane them. This team, if they snowball off their lanes, they dominate more than Gaming Gladiators of last year did. And we saw that OG did draw them out in group stage once they did. when they had a really good draft against them. But uh, this... Again, you have to consider so many annoying heroes when you're playing against Falcons, which makes them such a nuisance, right? Because you'll have all of these people target ban ATF's hero pool, and all of a sudden you have Mallory's hero pool to mm -hmm. consider, and then you have two TI winners on their safe lane who are consistently winning that safe lane. I mean, Skeeter may not be the flashiest player, but he is the best player in getting the job done. You know, he's always farming in the right places. He always hits his timing. He always contributes to the correct fights. Like. Like Jenkins mentioned, it's the super team. Yeah, he doesn't mind having to play a DK if it's needed for the squad. He'll deliver either way. That's that's the carry meta in a nutshell right now. That's exactly why OG, you know, I'm we're talking a lot of praise about uh, Falcons, but OG has looked extremely good in this tournament as well uh, since they got Tomato, and Tomato is the same thing. He's a very stable, standard carry, but he's very good at doing that. He will always get farmed. He will always have like the lowest deaths on the team. Um, it's just that you're playing into Falcons who has the same thing in their carry, but then all of these additional layers that are very difficult to deal with. If you're OG, here's what you do. Out annoy the annoying team. Okay. Just pick really obnoxious stuff and see what happens. See if you can tilt them into, into out of their comfort zone. Well, you do need to get them out of the comfort zone. We heard it from uh, Cinderin during the cast as well. He said, Falcons, I mean, draft aside, they're just playing better. Uh, curious if they can do that too for for an, a second game in the row in a row. But before we check that out, we're gonna see what Purge is up to. Thanks, Fever, for the Acer Predator head-to-head. -head. The hero we have to look at is obviously Huskar, right? Uh, I mean, it's a uh, it's a staple pick for Team Falcons. We got to see it again with the last pick. And number one, I love to look at some hero damage here. Uh, one of the ways to beat Huskar is you let him win his his lane and then you let him hit creeps because he hits creeps at a decent speed but maybe not like the fastest you cannot farm this guy the worst thing you can do is you can try to kill huskar and then fail because then instead of getting creeps somewhere else slightly faster than huskar you instead bring all of your net worth to huskar to feed him gold and experience which he then uses to pressure the map once he gets this death ball advantage or he farms even faster as a result. So the damage taken between these two guys is is also just one-sided. That's the uh, the Huskar taking way more damage here. And the, the KD is <laughs> it's a little different here. Zero oh. deaths, like I said, gotta kill Huskar. Yeah. He doesn't die. His net worth is gonna be way too high. So yeah. With all the damage taken, he gets better as well. So that's in true. a way, it, that's just buffs. Yeah, it, it is a big buff. The two huge disruptions save this game in a lot of ways. Crit disrupting there guarantees that the carry rotation in doesn't succeed. He ends up killing everybody and clearing the stacks. Here's the second time he gets gone on. He gets kind of low, but unfortunately the Mars Spear doesn't catch him in time. Whisper is just a moment away from catching up and said once again, gets disrupted, buys him more time. He looks like he's going to die, but we know he's not going to die this game. Yeah. He kills the enemy carry a second time. And that is why this game was so fast, because they did 
on paper the worst possible things you can do, which is not kill the Huskar while committing to killing the Huskar. If they had killed him, very different game. And they were they, very yeah. close. They were Couple very times. close. Yeah. As but well. they didn't, so the game ended really quick. It's uh it's worrying. Do you think that uh, what Jenkins said is uh is the way to deal with it? Just just ban out the Huskar. Like because yeah. would that have made the whole game different? Uh, I mean, almost certainly they would have had a mid pango, they would have had a different offlaner, mm. and uh, maybe the game becomes standard normal kind of a thing. Um, maybe the carry matchup feels fine enough, but uh, I don't, I, I don't remember what else they banned. Uh, it's, I, I'm glad they we got banned to see Tiny this. and Slardar at the end. Tiny um, and Slardar. Of Tiny would have been good against Puck. M maybe you would have made BZM have a really bad game. Slardar's kind of mm. spooky because it allows you to kill the gyro potentially. That ma that matchup would have been bad too, but yeah. Huskar killing your whole team is also a bad matchup. <laughs> yeah. Just keep a better work, uh, better yeah. radar spread for the Huskar. Make sure the mm -hmm. know yeah. that he's still in the pool and perhaps just be sure. Just ban it out. Um, there's a guy behind me. I'm going to check out what Brian's up to with the social report. What's happening on the interwebs, sir? Well, for this, I'm more so giving us a what is happening with certain heroes not being seen in this tournament so far okay. and why. Okay. So we've got a list of the uncontested heroes in Dream Lich League is one so of them. far, and it is one of your boys, Lich, is on there. <laughs> and one story that I've always been seeing in Twitch chat as well as in Reddit is, my favorite hero's not in these games. Yeah. I'm winning all of these games with it. Why not? Why so we not? decided to look at some of the pub win rates for these heroes to see, like, maybe... People out there aren't so crazy after all. So for some of these heroes on the list, these hero win rates, Sand King, 57%. Holy crap. Ricky, 53%, all the way down to Spectre at 51.5%. Now, Shiva, people at home are being validated. Yeah. They're thinking, yep, these heroes are absolutely busted. These pro players are absolutely too stubborn to be picking them. What is wrong with these, you know, closed-minded individuals? But... But that is actually the hero win rates of these heroes in Herald Shiver. Oh. <laughs> As the win rate of these heroes no. in Immortal, Why you do that? some of them are still positive. We see oh. Sand King and Ricky still above 50%, but what we see is a statistical drop off, pretty significant, right? Sand King's all the way 6%. Your boy Lich goes from 52 to 48. So. At the end of the day, Dota can't be perfectly balanced around the skill level that it happens, and this was an overwhelming trend. We obviously showed you guys like the most stark differences between <laughs> Herald and Immortal Bracket. I was really starting to wonder, like, oh my gosh, that King, what's wrong with this hero? Like, 57 is insane. Yeah, they don't buy dust in Herald or oh, Centuries. that explains the Ricky there. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, is, is there any hope for Lich? Uh, 48%, so it's not like he's garbage tier, but at the end of the day, it's hard to argue. You know, it's hard to convince them that uh, it's worth it. Uh, I got. I just got to win more, get some higher ranking, and show everybody what's up. Exactly. Well, that's what I'll do. Raise the percentage of <laughs> yourself. Be the change you want to see. Chief. Maybe I'll have time to do exactly that. Play some more lit. If this is a two well, we're finding out if that's the case because Falcons only need to win one more game. But of course, OG has other plans. Let's see what's happening after the break.
But just like a fine wine, it just keeps getting better, better.
Thank you very much, Pak Chab Pandas, for sounding in this game number two in style. Now, we need a little bit of energy coming out from OG as well, because uh, I think they need it. Uh, game one was a pretty one-sided ordeal. I'm joined by Purge, by Jenkins, by Effie. We're in the draft of game number two. Uh, we want to give, uh, you know, always have the, the Huskar in the back of our mind, but ideally not give the Huskar to Team Falcons if you're OG. But we'll see uh, We'll see where they take this, because I think Purge, after a game like that, do you think for OG it will be easy to say, you know what, just not let them have Huskar and we will be fine? I think they should not be too stressed out about that game, genuinely, because mm. Huskar is pretty cheesy. They had good rotations to kill the Huskar with like four of their heroes, and they just barely didn't kill him like twice. Yeah. And if they were just slightly executed better, they would have gotten him. They would have gotten him. And, he, and then the game just changes. So they just say, okay, we got yeah. cheesed a little bit. Maybe they ban it later if it doesn't look like a good Huskar game. Uh, it'll be fine. And does a very unexpected Pango flux. It's not mm -hmm. like, oh, Falcons just defeated them on every level. It really was a surprise draft. So as so long as OG can mentally reset, their Mars has looked really good. I mean, with the exception of that last game, which like you mentioned, Purge, things didn't go that well, but their Mars has looked incredible. It's given them so much opportunity. It's Whisper's best hero or one of his top three heroes at least. And their Hoodwink still looks really good too. That gets taken out again by Falcon. So they might just go back for the Batrider, which there was also no issue with that hero. This is the same draft, minus the Crystal Maiden ban. It was replaced by a Marana ban, which, uh, considering the DK mm -hmm. came out from Falcons last time, I can understand that they don't want to give the Marana pairing with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a high priority ban. Also, not just because of the DK, but also the Shadow Demon that they love to play. They even played Bane before with Marana. So they are a team that will try to worm it into any draft. Now, with the Shadow Demon, obviously, it is a great pairing with Marana, but we also mention it frequently with the Shadow Demon. Is this still something that we see Falcons wanting to go for, or do you want OG to ban it or pick it themselves? I mean, it looked so good last game due to the game context. Uh, I think Crip played it fantastic. Mm -hmm. He was getting lane kills. He killed Seb with it in the lane. He saved Huskar multiple times. He ganked with it with the ultimate. It, it does, in, in a good, really good player's hands, Mm -hmm. SD looks like a completely different hero, and, and thus I would say go for it if you want to play it. But yeah, maybe they ban it. And it should be thought about though, because you know Falcons does have this DK. So if they're if OG aren't taking it, aren't taking it to take advantage of it. See, that's the unfortunate part is they take out the Shadow Demon themselves. Because if they don't want to pick it, they're giving it away to Falcons too. So they just take it out entirely. Mm -hmm. And now they're forced to yeah, that they lose a ban all, all because of that yeah. stuff. Is that OG's? inability to, to play it or is that um, would they have a different plan like does does Ari I mean I'm sure Seb plays everything I would argue it, it I mean you you can pick it with an initiator but I would say that there's better fours to combo with Mars in both lane and in like team fight impact if you're going aggressive and you have something to follow up on Mars damage with I think that that's uh, really helpful Shadow Team is okay there but he's like a hybrid defensive slash weird offense support Man, Sin just yep. gets babied on that couch, doesn't he? I think that's just the babying couch oh, over okay. there. But also, it's because Falcons has the pick coming out of the banning phase. So OG just have to take it out, which is just really unfortunate for them here. But it's an important hero to take out because it completely disrupts what Mars wants to do, of locking onto a target, spearing him. Getting that save out of there will make it much easier to play Mars. The trade-off is you're giving this CM away, which has been such a strong hero for teams with these strong position five players who love to play aggressively. But I still think it's easier to deal with with the Shadow Demon at least. So it makes sense. I love the CM with the DK. I feel like you see a multi on top of a DK stun. You can also just DM Frostbite into DK stun into Frostbite again. There's mm -hmm. just a lot of kill threat between these two heroes. I imagine they'll probably pick a Another support position hero that can run around with uh, with these two and get a lot of kills. Like all DK wants in the early game is damage, maybe a little bit more disable, and CM offers both of those things. Really nice. Being really nice. Beautiful moment. Yeah, it's a I, safe space. It is a safe space on that couch. I hope OG haven't lost faith in their Batrider because I still think it's a really good hero versus any kind of target mm. that you need to isolate like DK. Well, they're also, taking their time here. Yeah, I, I just want to point out that when Extreme Gaming played Lifestealer yesterday versus DK, and it was also versus Sven, to be fair, uh, 
that looked like a hero that I hoped would pop up on a lot more teams' radar as a solution to the DK if it's allowed in the draft. Yeah, it was. I was really surprised by how great it was for setting tempo in the game because you just plant it in the lane. The DK didn't get to just ulti and attack towers and take it easily. It actually force, forces your opponents to, to rotate multiple, multiple heroes to force a team fight. So it, it accomplished a lot of things. The life stealer was cool that game. Uh, the Tiny is what OG ends up picking uh, for their probably four position for Ari. Um, good repositioning tools. CM is going to have a bad time if that's her caught. It also protects against a, pick, a puck being picked at any phase here and might open up OG a little bit here with their next two picks, no, now knowing that puck is less likely to be picked in response. But also, I actually think it's a very solid hero versus Crystal Maiden because Tiny's got a lot of HP and he can eat a lot of these CM spells without caring. He's also faster than she is because Tiny will have to go for boots or Runlist or something on the lane to let him trade with heroes because of tree grab. And CM is a very slow hero who gets boots later on. So if he can get a toss back on this crystal made into the Mars, it should be a surefire kill. That's a good point. Yeah, she's squishy, low HP, two spells and a spear. Yeah, she, she probably dies. Harder for snaking to play the game. Uh, they still pick the Batrider. Except on Falcons this time. Mm -hmm. Should be good. Yeah, so we'll still keep an eye on the the flexibility of that hero as well. So we don't really know too much mm -hmm. regarding the cores. Batrider is an interesting hero because versus Mars, he has to buy a BKB just so that he can play into the arena. But he's also good versus Mars in the sense that you can just look for the Mars and lasso him first because Mars is the way that OG will be able to take team fights and win them. So a support Batrider will get a BKB slower, but as long as it's on the radar and he doesn't go ultra greed, it should work out. And they now pick Naga Siren, which is a classic here for for the Falcons. Uh, I think it got banned in different phases in the previous drafts, if I'm not mistaken. You are not mistaken. It was banned second phase by OG previous game. Okay. That, that's basically the Shadow Demon. They spent the ban on the Shadow Demon this time around. Gotcha. Previous time they spent that on the Naga Siren. This is where the very convenient flex from OG comes in, where they can play the Wind Ranger in multiple positions. It means that the Naga pick that comes up from Falcons, which I'm sure they were expecting, can be answered with Lesh, which is top three highest win rate heroes in the game against the Naga. Uh, there will be a Mage Slayer on the DK, I imagine, so that deals with the Lesh a little bit. Uh, do my guess could still be an option if it's going to be like a Malrain mid DK. That's usually how we've seen teams answer the Lesh currently. Last time we saw it, or at least that I saw it, it was the IO Lesh, and uh, the Doom was not as effective in that circumstance, but IO was already banned. Um, and now because Tiny's going to be a support, most likely they banned the Puck to protect themselves from that. So kind of cool to see their draft develop with that, that second pick Tiny mm -hmm. for OG. I wonder about the slush. I'm, I'm looking at it and I understand why they need it versus Naga, but Five I don't even like. So let's say a really bad matchup comes out in the overall last pick, and they've already revealed the, they have to reveal the flex again because their first pick on OG. So yeah. 23, they're gonna pick the hero and show us whether it's a five lush or not. But I feel like this hero, if he's relegated to position five, really suffers versus the supports on Falcons. Like, he just won't be able to get on top of anybody. He's gonna get kited. Repositioned, he's gonna be stunned, he's gonna be slowed. Yeah, Lush does not feel good. Sometimes, unless you're a core, because you need items to survive being close yep. to the enemy. So if you're a support, and yeah, you have to deal with getting flame breaked, even like 400 units, that's your death sometimes. The Falcons has and then also, if Absolute he's... Absolute last pick. Oh, do we have to mention our obligatory, uh, there's Oscar in the pool? Yes. That's is, <laughs> is that, I don't know, is that scary this game? It's fine. I, th I think, I think because there is the potential FA was mentioning about the Lesh 5 and still running the Windrunner mid, mm. Falcons is a, is a, or carry is a little bit less enticed to do the Huskar because Windrunner can, deal one with of the that. few heroes that can kill the Huskar. I don't want to say deal with it because I feel like that's a, that's a challenge to our boy Malreen. He'll <laughs> he'll probably take that challenge. He might pick it anyway. Isn't Lesrak? Lesrak in some cases should be decent as well because he's the got pure damage at yeah. yeah, DOT. He can't armlet toggle, basically. Yeah, I still think Lesrak, if he's played core, he needs a mana battery. It looked so nice because he had an IO, but he doesn't have that this time around. I mean, another potential battery for this Lesh could be a Pugna. 
But if he's played independently without this mana battery, I still think this hero has so many flaws. Like, the Bloodstone did get buffed, but it's plus three mana regeneration is not enough for Lush Wreck. Mm -hmm. I like Pugna or Lion, uh, Lion's Band. Lion's yeah, Band, Pugna, Band. Pugna's good. You also clear the illusions with the Pugna. Yeah. It's pretty good against the bat and the CM that like want to get on top of you. You decrep and suck them, and you have to lasso the Pugna. CM can't do anything to the Pugna. It's decent. There is that life stealer that you guys were talking about. Okay. Yeah, it's it looks good. It looked really good when actually played it. Uh, it kills DK very quickly. The only fear that it has right now is the lasso in terms of what could go through its rage. But it's one of those heroes that was picked against Naga very frequently in the past, where it would just buy Mjolnir, click it on itself, and you can rage through the song and potentially kill her. So this is one of the old school solutions to Naga. It's also good versus Crystal Maiden. So. Solid, it, solid life stealer pick. I'm still a little bit worried about Lush Rock, though. Is it worth ah. it if the DK might go in a different lane, though? Because DK could still be mid, right? Yeah. I don't see them smiling, by the way, so I don't think Huskar is on the horizon. They're not laughing. I don't think you had a Huskar versus life stealer, too. No. And this is kind of most likely Lush support now, too, right? I think so. Could I mean, I think they, they can decide based on what's going mid on the other team, no? Yeah. It's tiny Wind Ranger supports. I, I think really? Lush support is mm. griefing here. Yeah, probably is. There's the Doom. Okay. Right, it's, it's that makes you want to run the Lush as a sub. And well, they're not too going late. To. Uh, it's already going to be played by BZM. They okay, 2 Falcons. This one, I think he actually means. Yeah, the, I do yeah. actually mean this. Yeah, this <laughs> is the, the first time all day. Absolute last pick Doom against Lush. I mean, yeah. how lucky can you get, you know? I think we had a segment yesterday, I don't know if it was with you, Kev, or with Brian, but where we basically saw Doom versus Lushrak. Mm -hmm. And the longer the game went, the more the Lushrak survived with the Doom. But that was with an Io. Who's going to save him here? Or maybe a Tomato jumping in to help him? And Yeah, it feels a little bit different because in theory, Doom should be able to get punished on lane by this Lifestealer, but this Doom versus Lushrak is quite terrifying because Lashrak can be 2 or 3k net worth ahead of everybody else and get doomed and he's just empty net worth in a team fight. So they're going to have to play around that doom incredibly well on OG. It looks hard, but I will say the Lifestealer is a good pick and it is a hero that can carry this game. So they have that going for them. Yeah, I, I agree. I think all eyes are on the Mars lane. If he gets completely destroyed in lane and then mm. the counter to the Leshrac is not really going to matter. I think it is possible with the Lifestealer versus Doom, they're gonna have to do some creep cutting shenanigans or some rotations or play really well around the jungle camps, but you can't just standard like 50-50 lane against the Lifestealer as Doom, unless you get the Frost Armor creep, then you can do it if you're very lucky. I mean, maybe he gets lucky. Yeah, the point about uh, Lifestealer and Infest is a good one. I just checked and it does work. You can heal somebody with Infest, even if they're doomed. So that yeah. gives you some crossover potential to, to protect the Lesh if he does get gone on. So yeah. I assume Tomato's going to use it effectively. So right. yeah. gives him some, some counterplay at least. But that does mean that your carry is relegated to, okay, I'm here to save my mid laner rather than, you know, actually carrying during the fight. But they can maybe count it's just, a, it it's just a quick in and out, yeah. and then you go back to fighting. It's fine. He can do a lot. Like, maybe he buys some time, but overall, like, you're not looking at the slush rack to win you the game. You're looking at your life stealer. Okay. We're looking at the life stealer, uh, but I think more importantly, first off, we're looking at the Mars. Can Whisper help his team tie the score here in this three game series? Potentially three games. The best of three. We're finding out it will go all three together with Sun Spanner Center. Number two is upon us now. Suns fan here with Cinderin. OG versus Falcons. And yeah, Doom last pick. This hero has not looked good in this tournament at all, but it is Amar playing it, so I expect him to somehow just Shit. absolutely destroy. <laughs> to um, be able to do that with literally anything he picks. Saberlight crushed a game last night oh, with Doom. Okay. So it's just when we cast that it doesn't yeah, do well. So this will be the true test. It's Falcons with Doom. Either yes, Doom is. is going to look good or Falcons will lose, Shannon. We can't have both. Oh, well, technically can't have both. Yeah. Um, and the Doom itself, of course, they talked about the 
the Lesh being the main recipient, I mean, it's also good against Lifestealer because Feast is just, it's not going to heal the Lifestealer at all. Goes through Rage as well. Yep. But we'll see how Yeah, they were focused out. a lot on Dooming Lash. I think Dooming Lifestealer is a very valid play this game. Especially if Dragon Knight goes Mage Slayer, then you can solve the Lash partially that way. And then Dooming the Lifestealer out gives DK as well as uh, Naga a much safer fight. So, we'll see. The options are definitely there for the side of Falcons. Uh, interesting to see how Amar starts this one out on the Doom. I think that is going to be the... The hero we'll be talking about in the start of the game. He's running five branches, which is quite unusual item build here to start. And then he will be turning that into an early Helm of Iron Will. This item has been nerfed twice. <laughs> it is now down to four armor, four region. Yep. Still good. This goes to show how ridiculous it was when it gave six and five. Cost the same as well. Um, don't think this is that bad of a lane for Doom. No. Flame Break will only hit Seb. This crit is going to try to harass as much as possible for Amar to get the free farm here. And Effie brought up the fact that Tomato will likely be buying a Mjolnir. Could honestly go Radiance as well. We did see that the other day. And yeah. It's good against Illusions as well. Radiance definitely good here. Is there a preference that you would have? Can you go both? Ooh, that feels like you're double dipping. Armlet, Radiance, Mjolnir. Is that terrible? Sounds okay. pretty good, I think. That's a whole lot of no, no stats. Well, the Armlet is yeah, a lot, but, but the pro... Armlet against Doom is always something. Well, I guess it's not anymore, right? You can toggle now. I feel like you have so. to get St. Joshua this game. So getting that as a fourth item doesn't sound very good to me. Can you actually counter Doom with Armlet? What is that mean? where we've come to? You can toggle between the damage ticks so you don't die? Uh, I doubt it, Cinder. Why not? I Doom, doubt Doom it. does damage every second, right? It's uh, it's one damage instance per second that's very easy to toggle, mm -hmm. and you can now use items while you're doomed, right? I would think. You, you can could. use items, but I, I don't know that's how it works with the extra HP. It would be ironic, because that was specifically one of the reasons you really didn't like playing against Doom with Armlet, was that you couldn't switch it off. Right. All right, we'll see uh, if he ends up buying it or not. Is Tomato getting down to half HP is snaking in the bottom lane. Oh. Will somehow live as Skeeter on his... Patented Naga Siren. Yep, he's the only one, apparently. Not sure how he gets a patent for this hero. It is, um, come on. From Tundra? This is what they ran in TI? Why is it patented? It's patented by him, because he's picking in every meta. Doesn't <laughs> matter if the hero's good or not. It is good right now, of course. I feel like generally when we talk about patented hero player patented. combinations, it's something like, you know, you have go a special build. No. You can't just own a hero. He owns it. Okay. I'm telling you. All right. You'll see. As you wish. Uh, but do you agree with the assessment of the panel that Falcons have the upper hand with the draft, or do you think OG has um, a better shot this time around? I, I mean, think there's it's, definitely no Huskar type. It's hero. way more even than last game, because I think last game was just... Just a slam dunk out draft for me. This one is is more uh, more even. Um, I will say that if the game, if OG don't build any advantage leading into the later portion of the mid game, I'm a little bit concerned about how they handle the Doom plus Naga combination. Because uh, as far as pushing out the lanes against Naga, Lifestealer is not great. Even if he goes counter Naga items, it still takes a while and you're showing on lanes, you're not out on the map being dangerous with potential infest bombs. Um, and the support, Wind Ranger not the best at killing Naga Illusions exactly, Tiny is okay. So it's kind of mainly falls to Lesh to, I'm always going to call it clean up the trash when it comes to Illusion Waves. It's just annoying. It's a chore. All right. Oh, he oh, gets blocked the by round. the Illusions, by the okay. patented pick from Skeeter. That is the Naga Siren, in case you were wondering. Yep. You're reminding me of a cast from last night where... SVG somehow managed to say 23 Savage, best Morphling in the world. Probably 25 times that cast. <laughs> and he didn't have a great game and lost. So <laughs> that was... You're really setting up Skeeter here for success. He is currently... Oh, now he's not lowest Die CS in the game on, among the core, so that's okay. Amar. Amar, Ghoul he's Frenzy. Dead. Amar will fall. First blood for Tomato, and that is definitely what OG needed this game. Crit was off killing a courier. So no backup there for Amar, and just gets walked down by the Lifestealer. That's what tends to happen. Yep. Still, despite this death, I would say Doom 
doing quite well here in the beginning. DZM really bringing it to Malreen here. Big wave as well. TP support from the CM. Oh, BCM doesn't Fun know, though. Baiting. Snake King with the Frostbite. Malreen just barely lives, has two levels of that Dragon's Blood. And now BZM, he does get to the high ground, so Malreen can't really follow it up. But might be missing some XP here. <laughs> That's might still... be able to get the bounty, though. That if is he, something. If he gets a bottle refill, this is a quite nice win for BZM, because he forced the rotation from the CM. It's giving Whisper some space. Flame break on this stab. He's just going to TP out. Oof, gets really low. Actually TP'd to the tier one, so. Might have been a potential kill if Amar had held the Infernal Blade there. Tomato is going to be left alone for a bit now. Seb's going to have to heal up. Yeah, very interested in the itemization for Tomato once he gets these phase boots. Yeah, I, I don't know what the interaction with the armlet is, but... If it's good, he will certainly buy it. Flame Break into the Dragon Tail. Really nicely placed from Crit. BZM takes a tumble, so <laughs> mid lane advantage now. Uh, I just noticed a funny detail. You know when you click on people's heroes, you can see their Sticky Buy on the right? Yeah. All right, everybody in the game has an item on Sticky Buy that's the same, which is Town Portal, with the exception of Amar. Yeah. It's Refresher Orb. <laughs> I thought we had this discussion. Have we had this before? Maybe that was Kezu. <laughs> I get you two mixed up all the time. It's just so funny. Yeah, we're, we're, we're actually just the same person, so that's fine. Fly with the Blood Grenade. Going to try to potentially deny himself. No, goes to BZM for the help. Lightning Storm is in. Now Crit looking for the deny, but Seb will follow through with the kill instead. Radiant structures are fortified. Yep. Oh, she's taking some damage on the mid tower in return, but not too bad. This will be the first dragon form expiring soon, and the siege creep has died, so should be the end of this push. As a matter of fact, Malreen actually nice shackle. Yep, toss back into BZM. Gets off the dragon tail. Is that enough time? Yes. Heads up. Good attempt from OG. He knows BZM doesn't have a point in split earth, so he just goes instantly for the stun TP out. Quite interesting to see BZM go this build, by the way, the 0-3-2. Mm -hmm. You'd think a point and stun against Dragon Knight would be nice, but he's actually very out-leveled on the Lash. Now he gets a 6. I mean, it's 31-14. It's 14 denies. Uh, pretty, it is. pretty good. But the CS still, still is fine for BZM. It's Malreen. Looks like it'll be the quick blink for him. Not to be mistaken for Swift Blink, which is a right. different item. Amar's Toast. Tomato is there as well. Only question is who will snag the kill? It's BZM. Crate will steal a stack in the meantime, as much as he can anyway. Won't get all of it. Not BZM bad, will though. clean up a decent amount. I think Crit didn't get a single neutral item there, so a bit unlucky. Yep, Avalanche already looking for the toss. Oh, not quite in range. Structures are fortified. Pressure. That gives some space for Malreen to push the tower. Yep. This is Dragon Knight mid, 101. Don't make them, don't give them any breathing room. You're just constantly pressuring this tower with the Dragon Form to force rotation. And it will eventually fall here. Whisper, interesting rotation yeah. here. He gets the rebuke, but he's spotted. He's Frost on bit. five. It will it's be like enough. Snake King is going to have to be sacrificed. Malreen and Crit now on the run. Four members of OG hightailing their way here with BZM's haste leading the way. Not going to be able to actually follow it up thoroughly, though. Very adamant about defending that mid tower. When you rotate over level 5 Mars to kill the Maiden just to stem the bleeding there, that really goes to show you're diehard protecting this, but it will all be for naught as it will die now if Malreen hits it one more time. All right, just he trying didn't. to make sure that there's no deny to come out. Yeah. Should just deny it now, honestly, BZM. There's like, I, I don't feel like it's worth trying to bait this or leaving it there. Well, Reno will be getting it any second now. Crit. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're turning this into something. Why nope, they definitely top. aren't. All right. Both sides are a little bit timid there, but. All right, Malreen failing the CS against the creep wave. It's, uh, that's a non-banner creep wave, by the way. Just oh, he lets know. he lets the tower go to his sponsor. I think that's a fair. Yep, trade on. Shackle. Do they have the damage? Seb is the one taking the brunt of the damage. Snaking there with the frostbite. It's enough. Ari gets the Avatoss. Snaking back into the fray. There's the Mars Arena. Whisper showing up with a huge rebuke. Two dead, just like that for Falcons. And Malreen is next. If they. <laughs> okay, that would have been really bad. 
So three kills for OG. As Amar will be able to TP out. Really nice response from Whisper. And so fast, too. He's just there in an instant. Turning it around. So very well done by him. The rotation early on mid as level 5 didn't really bring too much with it. Just gave him the CM kill, but this one was huge. Getting that Dragon Knight kill is very, very important. Gives them a bit of time to get out on the map again, because now the pressure just is going to wane for 30 seconds. So the mid wave will be pushed all the way in. It's going to give a power rune over to the left. Ari again, the toss back. Shackle hits. Beautifully done. Really good coordination from Ari. And the rest of OG. As it looks like Tomato ended up going for Orbit Corrosion. Uh, and now we'll be going Radiance into SNY. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. So Radiance, SNY. Uh, I just wonder if we're going to see Ags. Probably not this game. It's not particularly good. Radiance Courier has been Radiance killed. Radiance, SNY, Mjolnir? What's that? Mjolnir? Is that still just bad or...? I mean, what was it ever bad? I just don't think you go Radiance and Mjolnir on the same hero. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. It's that bad. Maybe oh. it is. I mean, I can't remember the last time I've seen that. Oh. Radiant was there ever a time that Lifesteal would go Shiva as well? Shiva? I know oh. it sounds crazy, but I feel like there was a phase in Dota where Lifesteal is more buying Shiva against Naga. Arena comes out from Whisper. Talk about your terrible build in just a moment. Whisper Radiant able to get out as Seb uh, TPs into a Frostbite. Okay. Now we're getting some right clicks in. We'll force them back, and now the tier one tower is going to be taking a lot of damage. The first doom of the game. Amar, though, we see Tomato get off the infest to give it a little bit of extra HP for BZM. So first doom of the game, not successful. And honestly, this is kind of what we've seen from Doom up until this point in the cast that we've had. Yeah. I don't know if his win rate is even good, but I feel like it may not have won a single game that we have cast. And we've seen it. This is the second game we cast where it's ultimate last pick, right? Yeah. Like, the teams are really... They must feel like it's very good to grab it in this spot when they have every bit, every bit of information available and a plenty of picks still that Amar could have run here. He still opted for that Doom. So he's just rushing the, the Shivas. Won't be stopping off with a Midas or anything like that. Some more anti-heal. Time to farm a fat stack here with crit. Farm the fat stack for fat stacks. Yep, pretty good. And uh, can they kill it in time? No. Scorched Earth is expiring. Oh, the Firefly still had just enough time left on it. Nice. All right. A big chunk of gold there. Mark can get his plate mail and then just the million gold recipe for the <laughs> Shiva's itself. Two thousand and fifty <laughs> gold recipe. Yeah, it's, what? it's gotten out of hand. I feel like there was a different way of nerfing this item. Yeah, just make the item slightly worse, but keep the price. I mean, 2,000 recipe. Uh, it's crazy. What's the most expensive recipe in the game? Is that it? Is that Refresher? Refresher is like 1,800, isn't it? It's 200. <laughs> That's right. It's been changed because of the tiara. Oh, all right. Yep. This is the tiara different now. Different era. Of course. <laughs> what's, the, what's the most expensive? It might, it might just be this one, right? It's got to be. Maybe. Radiance bottom tower Potentially. is under attack. Uh, Wind Waker's 1400. Well, if you count Dagon 5 as 5 rest. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't count. Uh, it's got to be BZM with the Diabolic. Radiance bottom tower. Tier 1 tower for OG. Dyer's top tower. Sporting a 2k lead now. Yeah. I mean, is this a, a game where you think OG or Falcons need to have some sort of a lead at a certain point? I mean, I feel like Falcons feel very comfortable going late anyway because they got the Naga. As they got to hold that thought, Tomato gets dragon tailed into the Doom, uh, and he's dead. And I think this will be the main Doom target. I think so too. In a lot of these fights. I, I think they're more more likely to be successful by dooming the life. The only thing they can much. do is like a toss back save, I guess, but it's not really reliable. No. I guess Arena can create some good spacing too until BKBs come out, just run away. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially when to when Tomato gets the Sanj component for the status resist, that will be making the time he needs to reset that much shorter. But ways to go for that, obviously. Radiance is still far from completed. And the, this starts getting a little bit concerning now for OG because Naga is going to ramp way faster. So Lifesteal was ahead of Naga the whole time. Now Skitter for the first time in this game, top net worth. And it's going to, for the most part, largely remain uncontested. 
especially with how his team is playing. So the rest of Falcons are putting tons of pressure in the top half of the map most of the time. So you gotta pick your poison for OG. Are you trying to shut down the Naga and making your own sm smoke moves and giving up ground top? We'll see. Well, nothing yet. And That's do you think mantle. that Radiance is enough to deal with the illusions? Do you Radiance need to, I mean, obviously there's the Pulse Nova, mm -hmm. which is inherently. Is there any, like, do you need a Shiva's against it? Do you need, like, how much itemization will go towards these illusions eventually? Because you know that they're going to come eventually. Like, like you said, he's going to get to that point, regardless. I mean, I would imagine. So I was talking about the Life Steal Shiva's, right? But now that I look at it, I mean, why not just buy that on Lesh, right? But I think having a Shiva in their team will be very valuable. It has secondary benefits as well against, like, Dragon Knight and Doom, so... Um, I would think it is a plan eventually for BZM to grab that one. Uh, the, the thing that's so tricky about Naga is that it, it's not only about, okay, can you win a fight against the illusions, right? Because that's a way oversimplified way of looking at it. Ideally, what you want... Okay, oh, nice counter-initiation. This was a bit of a bait as Whisper gets the spear onto Malreen. Reinforcements. He's the not whole coming. team there. Indeed. Um, the bigger thing about Naga, or equally big at least, is who can keep handling the trash all game. Because Lesh is obviously great for that reason. You have a low, low cooldown, zero cooldown in reality spell in the ult to just... Man, snaking's really fast. Yeah, drums will do that. Pretty good. Drums plus night time. Um, I, I literally forgot those mechanics. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's an interesting one. <laughs> yeah. Obviously makes a difference there because the enemy team also have night time, but you get a percentage buff, so you get more. Um, but yeah, against the Naga, the only real reliable zero commitment clear you have is the Lesh. The Radiance on Lifesteal is going to float for now, but when Naga gets like four items, it's... Oh, uh, Doom, uh, onto Lesh. You ain't healing. Yeah, you also yeah. keep him alive a little bit longer. Infernal Blade to follow. As Ari is going to get the toss back, so they do get the Lesh. That is the very important kill. Tomato, bit of trouble. Gets off his rage, but now just has to run. No infest as Skeeter comes in with the song. Tomato's able to get out, but the remaining three, not so lucky. Focus, of course, on the court, which is Mars. Whisper is dead. Seb literally just dies to illusions. And that's a three for nothing. Is That's the first fight that Skeeter's been a part of, and it's like it's just going to get harder from here. Yeah, that's a big one to lose. That's a 3 kick old swing. Good attempt on the infest, but... It's not enough. Yeah. But this song is so clear. So, if he doesn't stop to song, the spear is actually going to save them all. But the spear from Whisper misses because Skitter stops moving in that exact spot, casting the song of the siren. And they get the two extras there. Simultaneous kills. This is starting to snowball a little bit. Tomato with the Radiance has way to go. Oh, he is going Maelstrom eventually, so he will be going both. Orchid? Yep, that's a problem. They don't have Lasso, but they have Yeah, they have the Dragon Tail. Ouch. On the other side of the map, though, Amar does get picked off. But it's all about Tomato and that position one life stealer. <laughs> And Amar has uh, definitely bounced back despite that death. He's third net worth. You see how much higher he is than Whisper on the Mars. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And we're getting close to that Roche timer as well, Cinderin. Yep. Exciting stuff. Snaking. <laughs> Randomly run into by Whisper. Ari comes in for the Avatos. And they'll get a freebie. Malreen will take the gate away. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. So Shiva's is finished for Amar. And only about 600 away from the blink. So Sange Kaya now. On to BZM. Right. So both cores with the status assist coming up. Lifestealer, I'm assuming, will build the Sanj first before the Yasha? Most likely. Let's see. 
feel like he just has to. Sometimes you want to buy the Yasha first. It also keeps options open in case you want to deviate for a Manta, but definitely not the case in this game. Smoke from OG, Radiant hoping to Oscar. find something, but they're on the uh, entirely wrong half of the map. There's absolutely nobody down here. Yeah. So, and it's being drawn as well by Crit, saying they're probably here, guys. <laughs> and he's pretty much... Dead on. Covering all five heroes within that whatever shape he drew there. Um, that looked like... Uh, an ellipsis. No, it was more of the Deathly Hollows symbol, I think I'll go with. He's a big yeah. Harry Potter fan, of course. Yep. Yeah. Sure. The only other video game you've ever played. Roshan. <laughs> it was a good game, actually. Roshan comes to the Radiant side where OG is greeted by, and you can see the scan comes out, so Falcons are aware, but They're not. not getting here in time. This will be very good for OG. I assume BZM picks this up, but last time we saw Lash Core. And most importantly, this will be it. very good for me because it's sub-22 again. Oh, that's true. Damn. So we're starting, Damn. starting to drop that average in, and I can feel, yeah, can feel that stake slipping away from you. <laughs> twenty-one fifty. That didn't change since the last game. Uh, it's got. It's definitely twenty-one fifty-eight by now. Oh, Whisper nice. takes the rune, and will punish Crit for just even attempting to steal it. Clutch. I say clutch. Okay, never mind. It's spawning now. I thought I saw it spawn ahead of him. <laughs> In front of him, I mean. Starting to see things now, Seb. Yeah, we'll see his own death. Frostbite will drop to the deck. So the Aegis did go to BZM. That's good to see. Has the bullwhip item, by the way, which they finally got rid of that animation. Yep. So you can just run freely, which makes it even better for Lesh. And he can use it while doomed. It's an item, so he can create some distance. All right, ooh, quick blink. He is infested right now. Very thick boy, 3k HP. He's likely going to try for an Avatos, but can you get the opening? Nope, Amar's going to get the opening. Gets Avatos there. Lifestealer pops out. Tomato, not really able to find a clean connection. Instead, he gets lassoed and brought back into the Doom and snares there as well. Trying to surround him with Crit, who gets tossed him at the end. The Illusion's doing a lot to work with, but... Uh, is he dying? Is it enough? No, he's fine. We'll just barely live. All right, that's very good for OG. Indeed. They're going to take advantage of this, try to push down mid. They even have a barrier rune on the Mars. Oh, Song. Skeeter. I always call it barrier rune. They disrupted rune. His, his farm. The barrier rune? I don't know. I always call it barrier rune. Children. Much World of Warcraft for you. It's a barrier. Radiant it's a concept. It's what it's called attack. in this game, too. <laughs> what are you talking about? Is under attack. <laughs> a lot of World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> what I said isn't wrong, okay? You have no Radiant idea whether there's anything called a barrier in that game. There, okay, considering how many things are in that game, yes. I, I will state my reputation. I don't actually think it. there's anything called a barrier. I guarantee it. In last epoch, however. <laughs> That's not how you say it. No, nope, that's right. Oh yeah, I need to do my American uh, pronunciation of words. So it's last epic. Yeah, I don't know why. As we found that out. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Great job, America. You <laughs> done it again. <laughs> Are we gonna gate bottom with an infested life stealer looking for trouble? Oh, Speeder. He doesn't have song this time. This I could be a really Ari. big find. Oh, they, wait. They don't want to go for it. Uh, okay. Orchid, trying to bait this in potentially. Pops out the life stealer with the rage, focusing on Malreen to start things out. He's inside the arena. Whisper with a nice spear as well. That actually hits Snake King. Come uh, to think no, that no way he's getting out Trying yet. to get through the gate. He does. Oh, my he God. He gets through somehow, and Snake King will be the only kill they find. Aside okay. from Crit. Aside from Crit. And yeah. Crit's Courier. Skater. He does have TP. No. no. Oh, the spear. Uh-oh. 42 seconds on the song. This is going to be a slow death for Skeeter, but... Pops the Conjure. Yeah, he's not going to be able to get out of this. There's no way. Spear. That would have been hilarious if that pushed him up the stairs and he ran away. But that is a huge kill for OG. Absolutely ginormous. And ironically, their Skitter could have actually survived if he waited with Orchiding another two seconds. He Orchided and then he had cooldown on TP for another second and a half. And then when he starts the TP, the Orchid expires on the Mars. But 
from his perspective, he might be like, if I don't orchid this guy, I'm just going to get speared and they're coming in and killing me. But mm -hmm. Mars was alone for a while, so he could have escaped that one. A really nice sequence from OG here. They got so much out of this. They get the bot tier two. They get really aggressive placement on the map. Uh, Amar is drawing... Don't know. Okay, that one I understand. That means top. This one means they are in their base. Teams are communicating very efficiently through drawings here. I'm still trying to interpret Amar's two... I don't even know what they were. Lines? Uh, <laughs> those are not lines. Tomato. They still have this Aegis on BZM for a little bit more. Uh, 30 seconds. Not sure if they can get full use out of it. A couple scans coming out now. And OG, I think, yeah, they're going to play this a bit conservatively. This motto now with the SNY and still opting for the Mjolnir. So it's all about killing these illusions. Well, maybe it was a fake back. Infest is there. Whisper will show himself on an illusion. And Ari is basically the vessel for the life stealer. I feel like so far these infest ones have been a little odd. I don't know what he's waiting for. Maybe some spells to be used on Tiny before he pops out, but. Yeah. It's like he's been showing and then he pops out like five seconds late five seconds later. So he has the radiance disabled right now just in case. As the arena whisper, find the connection onto crit. Boom. He gets bursted. That's the infest bomb. Now the tier two tower will go OG's way. Skeeter cutting the waves. That's why it's his patented hero. I've seen this many a time. He actually patented the strategy of cutting waves as well. I think so too. Oh. And BZM is going to poke at the high ground with his diabolic. Yeah, this is. Uh, did they not have fort? They did I, not have glyph. Wow, they did. That's and true. nobody was interested in defending that. Under so a tower in the base now, suddenly for OG, really blowing this wide open. This was meant to be the time for Falcons when they could perhaps start taking a little bit of charge on the map, especially with how the fight around the mid game, bottom tower mid lane, attack. happened. They found those kills in the song and really started pulling back, but. OG with a very good sequence are now 3k up. Early Roche spawn is in a minute and 15. Bloodthorn now for Skeeter. Yeah, a huge damage increase for this hero. All the illusions doing so much damage with that Bloodthorn proc. And I guess there's no dispels on the enemy team, right? There's a Yule's on Lesh and the. Yeah, Yule's on Lesh and the BKB. And the BKB on Mars, but that's it. They don't have any Lotus. Lifestealer doesn't have Manta. So he's still exposed. So Snake King uses Freezing Field. Oh, actually, there's a Lotus on Step. Wow, okay, they actually do have quite <laughs> So never mind that. He just picked this up. And Ari is going... Or sorry, uh, Whisper's going for Yules as well. Illusion Bait by Malreen. We'll detect the Tiny. And 20 seconds we'll know when this Roshoff will occur. And for OG, it's a bit scary. The Song of Siren, historically, used in that Rosh Pit area, very, very scary to contend with. Instant D-Ward here by Tomato. That did not get to stick around very long. And it's a 53 second Roche. Crit, Crit oh, will get sneaky. the wisdom this time. It'll cost him his life again. Well, that time he got it. And that gives BZM his bloodstone. Yep, doesn't help against Doom. If he is the target. If he does Doom him, yeah. I mean, we might see a refresher not too far off for Amar. What is he going for now? He has it in this quick buy, as you said, so it's always on his mind. <laughs> he can't use it yet. He has to get Octarine first. He doesn't have the mana pool. But you do have Crystal Maiden, Cinderin. Just wait 30 seconds, you'll have mana. Yeah. When Maiden has level 50 aura, I think you can probably <laughs> skip refresh. <laughs> A 
That's a good 25 damage. <laughs> that would be kind of a cool talent. It's just like make your Arcanor absurdly good. I like that. At what point would it be too OP? That's the real question. As Tomato now at the BKB. So two ways to get magic immune. You rage, then you BKB, then just enough time. Well, it's close to get the rage off again. Not too far off, at least. Not too much downtime. He doesn't have to rely on teammates to remove the yeah. Bloodthorn. But even if he gets Bloodthorn, he can still Ogre Seal Totem while the Ensnare is midair, so he might not even need to BKB for that if he's fast enough to react. Malarine. Initiation onto Whisper. Okay, Doomed. they are not messing around. His team is coming. He pops the BKB as well. We'll get to the high ground. Right. He might just live through this. And OG, they're looking for a fight. Partial smoke on 7 BZM as they head towards the pit area. And Amar and company without the Doom ultimate means that this fight is not going to happen. Malreen does get out, but this means Roche number two for OG. And this is the banner. Let's see if they've learned from all of our great commentary over the last couple weeks. I feel like we haven't concluded anything. I I concluded on day one. Okay, what's the conclusion? You don't use it right away. You, oh, you save it until you have two. That's right. No. Well, yeah, you can. You save it for when you have a full lane. Okay. And so. then if you don't, if you're behind, then you can use it in the lane that you've lost the barracks. So you're saying never use banner unless there's been a raxing. Yes, of some kind. Okay. Correct. It's just not worth it. These creeps are not that strong when you buff them. Yeah. Unless they have another it. buff. I can see it. You're quite smart after all, and a game designer. That's true. Anyone can be a game designer, though. Yeah, Jenkins is also a game designer. <laughs> That's where I was leading. <laughs> very close. This is the is closest close. game we've had in two days. For, oh, God. Why? Why? Okay. Well, one benefit of this is that it's not obvious the creeps are buffed. Because you have to click them. Maybe you notice now. I don't okay. know. Okay. Here's the downside to this. You're against Naga. We can literally just send her illusions to the flag. Yeah, but I don't think they care enough. That's true. That's something we've learned in this turn. So it's actually next level. The pros They're trying to bait Naga to miss a creep wave to kill the flag. <laughs> How much is the flag worth? Uh, Today, you learn that. Oh. High as ground BZM for OG. high ground, yeah, and Falcons. Are they just, just going to give this up? Fortification comes out. They are sacking it. Yeah. I think. That looks to be the case. Okay. There's the flag being taken out. That's I guess 200 gold. Wow. Yeah. So now that the bear, now that the flag is down, they don't care about this lane because now they can't use the flag on the lane. <laughs> I guess so. BZM gets an absolute free set of racks. Skater. Okay. They find the initiation. Bloodstone. This is the Aegis. Remember, Bloodstone activated. BZM. Gets off the split earth with that shard. He's going to get Infernal Bladed now, getting pretty low. Skeeter with the BKB now. They will get the first life. Song of Siren. That's the end of this play. They have nothing in the tank. I think OG can keep going. That was Lasso. It was Song. They'll it was BKB try. on Naga. If they protect BZM well here with Tomato as well as a Lotus Orb. Snake and got a oh. kill Maelstrom. Okay. Very random. Very cool courier kill at the 33 minute mark. Somewhat impactful. Tower dealt a bit of damage by OG. They don't have the Aegis any longer. Do they want to continue this push? Malreen is about a thousand away from Black Dragon, which will be an enormous power spike for Falcons. Yeah. Of course, not showing any components yet, but. I'm sure OG knows that he's on his way to building it, at the very least. Yeah, he's had his other items for quite a while, so... There's a damage room top. Man, Lesh would love to have that. Wait, can Amar actually go Refresher because he found a Dandelion's amulet? I think he can. The Dandelion amulet gives him 300 mana. This is the highest mana you can get on a neutral item, tier 3. 
I think this mana pool is enough. Hang on, so... Now the Arcane Aura really comes into play center, if it's close. <laughs> oh, the Doom is 300, your BKB is 50, and the Shiva is 75. So that combo is 425. Okay. And then you probably want to use Scorched Earth as well, and an Infernal Blade. So that's like 560. Yeah, and then you refresh. Yeah, you actually still can't. It's still not enough. You could just double Doom, though. Yeah, but then you're not. Then you don't have any other spells. Oh, that's maybe also maybe that's enough. Sure. Falcon's looking for a fight. Malreen gets the opening connection onto Ari. Lasso is expended as well. Seb throws out the power shot as Whisper coming in with an arena onto three. BZM, the BKB, Pulse Nova, Split Earth hits on two. They get the Batrider, buys back instantly, though. Malreen could also buy back, but no dragon for him to work with. So double kill for BZM as now Falcon's on the retreat. Skeeter getting pretty close to his butterfly now. Yeah, quite Lots a big... of AoE from OG. A problem with this fight for Falcons is that Naga is not part of the initial move, so they don't have the burst damage for the tiny, so they have to start committing multiple heroes when Naga Illusions alone could have handled that with a lasso. Yep. Oh, Ari finds play. the real Naga. Song of Siren is up. Skeeter's going to get Glimmer to the high ground. They're chasing. Whisper, indeed, doesn't get the hit. Now Skeeter way too fast. I think he's just going to buy the full butterfly here pretty soon without buyback. Yeah. And, I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, the Mars isn't going a right-click build. But in terms of like right clicking the illusions, Lifestealer does not really want to buy MKB. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. But might have to. Dyer's structures are or, yeah, actually, this Bloodthorn isn't going to help against the illusions of the Naga. Only against the Dyer's one target. Tower is under this is a huge timing for Falcons, by the way. They just got Axe on Dragon Knight and Butterfly on Naga at the same time. So, major upgrade. Doom is close to Refresher as well, so he will get it. Okay. Curious to see how he's going to manage the mana here. Dyer's bottom tower Are you sure? He just bought Octarine. Yep, never mind. He put in his quick buy after buying Octarine. <laughs> All right. Well, he did the math too, clearly. Okay. Well, he'll get to do more often. Tomato will be greeted by the Black Dragon now. Ari trying to go for the toss back, but it's a creep instead. As the Gale Force bringing Malreen back into the arena, pinned as well, but the song, is it going to save the Dragon Knight? No. Down goes Malreen. And now it's a 5v4 situation for OG. Tomato, a little bit of a premature BKB where Ogre Seal away. Gets Lasso now after the fact into the Doom. The Yules is applied right now. But I think they have enough to... Another Yules, all right. But I do believe the Lifestealer is dead. So it ends up being a one for one, but a nice shackle onto Amar. is going to force out his BKB, snaking. Going to drop of his own accord. Will buy back instantly. Flame break. Connecting onto two is Skeeter. Still trying to have some impact here. As BZM pretty much out of mana. There's the ensnare. Snaking. Frostbite to follow it up. Ari with the full Avatos onto Amar. Will not be bursted down this time. Instead, Seb will be by Skeeter's pure right clicks with all the illusions. And now the surrounding. Wind Waker, though. Gonna keep BZM out of harm's way for the time being, but the Frostbite again from Snaking. That was actually the Crystal Clone, and then the Frostbite. Avatos again from Ari. This time it's enough to finish off Crit. But yet another Frostbite. <laughs> Frostbite's being used 20 times this fight, I do believe. Frostbite. As Skeeter continuing to try to chase. Gets the ensnare on the BZM, as Ari is eventually finished off. Skeeter with the ensnare in two seconds, but BZM does find the distance. Will eventually get out of dodge. Really nice plays from both teams there. The initiation on the Dragon Knight was great from OG, but quick response to find that from Crit. Lasso Lifestealer into the Doom. Despite the two Wind Waker saves, he still gets killed. And Falcons defend their top racks. Roche is alive in anything between zero to three minutes. Let's see. Uh, Frostbite was used nine times in that fight. Does that count the... And Crystal Clone was used four times Okay, that so that's not even... That is good. absurd. That is actually absurd. <laughs> 13 Frostbites. He has, the, uh, he has the cast range talent for Frostbite, and it's a six-second cooldown. So, it's quite a lot of time. 
I think it's worth trying to target him since he just bought back. If they can find the connection, he dies very fast, of course. As, ooh, Whisper. He's going to be spotted by Malreen with that terrain walk. Another Wind Waker being used as BZM. Going to put a Split Earth all the way on the other side as Crit will die to Whisper first. Gets off the arena. The song is placed by Skeeter. Tomato's BKB still going. The Doom applied now to Tomato. We'll try to walk it off. Rebuke from Whisper. As he yields onto Amar, is going to force out his BKB into the Shivas as well as the Illusions. Just decimating Seb. Gets the Lotus applied, but eventually burns down. The snaking on the high ground. Spear will cancel it. That's the dieback for the CM. And the gem. Not sure if they noticed. I think uh, Whisper went back for it there. Yeah. So he will claim that. Oh, Skeeter still on the high ground here in the enemy triangle. This fight's not over yet. Orchid. And Skeeter's going to try to run away as Tomato with the rage. Amar was trying to back him up. Skeeter. Very aggressive play. Might be punished now. Rebuke. No song, of course. They should be able to burst him down here eventually. And Tomato gets the kill. I have no idea what he was doing there, but huge kill for OG. That was really cocky. Yeah. I, he was... I mean, they have this aggressive ward down there, right? At the enemy... Uh at the enemy jungle, so maybe he was assuming based on the vision that they were already split off and he was trying to get a quick pick and then backing off. It's one of those moments where, from our perspective, it just looks like a total blunder, but in reality, the information he had, that could have just as well turned into a good play where he gets a quick pick on Tiny and goes back. But OG were still sticking around the neighborhood. That is a great kill for them. Still a very even game. These Wind Wakers are proving to be a massive yeah. problem for Falcons, though. Two Lotuses, two Wind Wakers. Yep. I wonder if Ari will be buying one as well as his next item. It's very expensive, but it's very good. Tomato has had that Tier 4 in his inventory for almost a minute and has not chosen it. Uh-oh. And it's been... Can you choose and a neutral item while you're infested? I think you can't. Oh, that might be why. That's true. Oh, he's wearing your jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Snake King spotted out. Dead again. 60 seconds. <laughs> so random. OG finding a little momentum now. And the Naga is the real prize, of course. Skeeter. Is nice try. Oh, that was actually very close from Seb. If he finds that connection, Whisper will come over and find him in the trees as well. That could have almost just ended the game, actually. I think Naga wouldn't have had buyback there, or maybe? Does he have enough? Okay, he does have surplus now. But scary stuff. Not much margin for error now for Skitter. Roche number three. Yep, so Refresher Shard will... Drop for OG's side. Probably put on. Oh, Mars already has the orb. So, Lesh, I guess, for a second round of BKB and Wind Waker and Shiva. I suppose. Oh, don't leave it in the pit, boys. Okay. Shit, I don't have space. Let me drop this banner. Yep. Uh, Easy choice. Ari doesn't have space either. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Okay, I'm keeping a close look. Alright, let's see where he puts this banner. It's got ninja gear. Just put it in the neutral camps. It has been planted by the Dyer. Okay. The bottom lane. Right, right next to the Dragon Knight. That's good placement. There we go. Okay, that is, Very without good. a doubt, the worst usage we have seen <laughs> in this tournament. The players genuinely do not give a shit about that item. It they was, just want to get it out of their inventory. It was better to destroy it. He just gave 200 gold to yes, DK. This That's is true. literally all he did. <laughs> Okay, so this this one is a little bit... I get what they're trying to do, because they want to push mid and top, and they want the banner to push bottom, but I think in this kind of situation, you're better off putting it mid where you have the super creeps, like you said, to make that wave really strong and force Falcons to spend more resources there. Yeah, of course. It's objectively the correct choice. If you're going to put it down then, it has to be mid lane. Skitter finally gets level 20, minute 44 on his Naga, and Skitter is toast. Yes! Surrounded... Pops the Maybe BKB not. and Song. 
Oh, he actually got trying to TP off. out, and he will get through somehow. I thought they got the stun off on him before he BKB the first time. Then he's just gone. But quick reaction will keep him alive. Stole the wisdom, got out. The fact that this net worth lead is dead even is insane. Well, it's Doom and Naga in the same team, so it's there's true. gonna be gold. Yes, this is accurate. Question is what the actual value is of this net worth in terms of output and fights. I'd argue that each gold on the Leshrac is worth more than each gold on the Naga when it comes to straight up team fights. That crit will get his worthless shard. Uh, what that does is it increases your net worth by 1400. Yeah, it makes your buyback more expensive. Yeah. Fortunately, he could just go and kill a Roshan's banner and make up for that <laughs> with the extra 200. <laughs> he can cover that difference. All right, Naga committing here for the synth. No buyback on Skitter. Okay. He will now have Ensnare that pierces Spell Immune or Sleeping Units and reel in. I don't know, this text actually doesn't make sense anymore. You can already song people uh, and snare people in song, right? Can you? Yeah. Or sleeping unit. Well, maybe sleeping. Okay, we're we'll gonna have to hold that thought. Amar gets off the Doom and now has to run away. He can refresh BKB. Yeah, he's gonna have to. He he's refreshes, too slow. but the avalanche toss and the right clicks of Tomato with the ghoul frenzy applied. Oh. Amar, second oh. BKB. Needs his blink up in one second. Will be fine. Whisper. Being chased, meanwhile, gets off his arena. But Crit gets the blink and the lasso, but no connection yet from his team because the arena is blocking them off. Now BZM coming in. Split Earth onto the high ground. As Whisper still being pursued, and Snare is there, gets off a rebuke. The Lotus now applied. Breathe Fire as well. He finally will go down. And the song comes out. And then shortly after, Skeeter dies. And that is the no buyback, as you talked about. The shackle onto the DK. Power shot as well. As Malreen gets to the high ground and dies there. OG finding the fights they need to try to extend this to a game number three. Man, Easy the name out. of the game just seems to be heroes are just hard to kill. Yeah. It's crazy how difficult these kills are against the Wind Wakers, against the BKB Refreshers, all the armor from the Shivas that they have. But OG do manage to get the better trade here. This should be a second lane minimum. DK can buy back and probably force them out of the base. Oh, Ari gets the Avatos in the back, and that's the buyback, like you said, from the DK. Lasso onto the Lesh. Crit is going to get right clicked down by Tomato. Not able to get to the Fountain. And now the Gale Force onto Amar, glitching out. Typical animation there. Zamar will be able to step away, but the no barracks now. now being consumed by the focus fire. And Tomato's right clicks. Two racks for OG. Yep. Imagine if they had both banners. Oh. Well, Dragon Tail. I don't even want to think about it. That sounds unfair. Better use them early. <laughs> <laughs> Better give the other team 200 gold. Yeah. And OG yeah. still with the Aegis, so no need to back off, but yep. and they, a bit disciplined. They know Amar doesn't have Doom. He just threw it on BZM, who survived with the Wind Waker. So, yep, poking and prodding here. Has the open wounds now. He's getting slowed perpetually, though. Dragon Tail applied. There's the Lotus. Aegis expires. The Aegis expires as BZM, stuck on the higher ground, slowed to a crawl, but the Wind Waker gets him to the low ground. This item Will OG has continue? really risen in popularity. It is. It's a great item. It is something. Skeeter with the damage rune. Don't be mistaken with the voice line saying double damage. It's only 1.8x. Mm. But OG now with a pretty sizable lead. I mean, 8k is not that dramatic, but it's the not about, are racked. It's not about gold. This is all about map control and about who gets the jump. 8k gold means absolutely nothing almost. Crit. That's the blink lasso. As a doom. doom somewhere. Oh, it's on the lash. That's a BZM big all alone. Fight. He is dead. Tomato going on the right clicks onto Amar. The Doom comes out onto him now as BZM buys back into the game. The lasso now onto Whisper. Lotus apply, but there's the song from Skeeter to reset. As Falcons, I'm not sure if they want to continue to fight here. The Doom about to end now on Tomato. Oh. The spear not going to connect as Falcon. Oh, Skeeter does get stuck inside the arena. We'll pop the BKB now. Does he actually want to fight this, though? The second arena coming out for Whisper. 
as Skeeter at half HP gets tossed into the air, speared into the arena. Down goes the Naga for 80 seconds. That is likely the opening for OG, as BZM taking full advantage of that buyback. Oh, he just got buyback he now. just got the gold. But it might not matter. Megas are coming the way of OG. And they're going to try to go for the throne. See if they can set something up for the buyback onto the Naga Siren. That's Tomato. Getting gone up, but Ari gets the Avatos, the Shackle onto the Illusion, but along with Snake King. And that's the bigger kill. He buys back instantly. Abyssal Blade from Tomato. Fly to Amar. All he can do is pop Shivas and die. Oh, at the lasso, though. BZM gets stuck into the fountain. This is going to be a dieback for him. Huge kill for Falcons as they buy back again onto oh, Amar. So shit. five versus four. Dragon Tail now onto Whisper. I've seen this before for Falcons where they go for the win. It's Whisper. Infernal Bladed. Orchid it up. Brought down as well. Does have buyback, though. Oh, the shit, 5v4 this is actually not over. Falcons will likely just try to go down mid. Naga is a really good hero in this specific situation because she can push multiple lanes at the same time while you're going down mid. So the timer that's on your base while you're trying to end, it's a little less tight. Oh boy, and they have Dragon Knight Mantis that they can send to the side lanes. They have travels. Yeah, they have 85 seconds where they know this Lesh is not alive, for sure. Okay, so what OG need to not do here is commit hard into a fight that they lose. They need to poke, prod, stun, delay them, try for a toss into tier fours yeah. maybe. If I Arya think Falcon's going to skip this and go for the tier fours now, and that's oh, exactly what's happening. Shit. There's the lasso initiation onto Tomato. He's already at half HP, gets pinned, but finally gets a Lotus over applied. Uses, okay, they get the song off from Skeeter as the first arena comes through from the buyback. But the Mars already at half HP. He's getting decimated inside his own arena. Tomato looks to be next. Gets forced up to the other side. Tossed up by Ari. But it's all for naught. He dies. Buys back instantly. Amar refreshes. And three dead for OG. And now it's a five versus two situation for Falcons as they are going for the win. Fortification and likely the last one for OG now for the rest of this game. They don't even have to go for the hero kills if they don't want to. Amar, he's going to get Bissell Blade again. A little bit too aggressive. Tomato doing quite a bit of damage. Dragon Tail applied. The Rage runs out. Has to pop his BKB and try to go back to base. He's getting reeled in. The literal worst ability in the game from Skeeter being used. The tier fours are down. The Ancient fully exposed. Focus fire on the Skeeter. He's just ignoring everybody. The Ancient will go down for Falcons if they just ignore everything and they win it. Unbelievable. I cast a game at Dubai Dacha. This exact thing happened. Falcons are so good in the extreme late game scenarios. Holy shit. Oh my god. The one oh. possible way to win the game. Lasso the guy without buyback into Fountain and push all the way down mid. And OG just dumbfounded. They know this one was in the back. BZM got too close. He flew too close to the sun. And the sun has an applying, an amplifying debuff every time it hits you. And the sun burns really hard. <laughs> wow, what great analysis. I am a poet. <laughs> this was such, okay, honestly, in the last two days of our cast, this was the only good game, and it was S tier. This was such a good one. Very back and forth. Thought OG had that, man. That was... They definitely was did. Lost. I mean, BZM's obviously going to be kicking himself here because if he doesn't get that close, I think they only had the one four staff of crit to get him into the fountain, so he would have already needed to be close to it to begin with, but... It's just so much going on in this late game, right? You can't really keep track of everything and heads up play from crit to identify that that was the one chance and the absolutely ma magnificent way of ending that for Falcons. So Team Falcons wins it, 20 kills to 34, <laughs> and they win. Let's go to the studio to break this one down. <laughs> yeah, we never doubted uh, their success for a second. Definitely didn't walk over here thinking that uh, OG had won already. Definitely not. This was completely expected, as my analyst will analyze. Uh, nah, but all jokes aside, this is actually... Uh, I mean, it was a crazy comeback there, Effie. This was not what we expected was going to happen when we went into the final like couple of minutes of the game. That was insane. That We started walking out here thinking the game was over. Then we hear the lasso sound. We turn around and Lushrak is in base. That was just incredibly well done by 
Falcons, I feel like at that point, if that particular scenario hadn't happened, it was just over. There, there was no way for them to fight back, so incredibly well done by Crit, but also the fact that they were able to isolate the Leshrac earlier just a little bit, get that Doom off on him before his team could connect meant that they got that kill off, they forced the Leshrac buyback in the first place, and then they were able to just somehow miraculously do it after that. Yep, the MVP of that game, definitely the Fountain. That was a uh, <laughs> very solid gameplay. I agree with uh, what Brian was saying in the green room. If you go near the Fountain against a Magnus or a Batrider, you are Fountain diving. You have to be super careful against these heroes, especially in a late game scenario where you don't have buyback. Um, I mean, even then, even with the Leshrac not having buyback, mm -hmm. Uh, I still think that like 4v5, OG probably could have held that if Falcons didn't also play the fight in the OG base yeah. extremely well. So yeah. it's it's just, it, it's like they do one clutch scenario, which lets them do another clutch scenario where they can win the game. But I think without the second clutch, the first one just looks flashy and funny and we get a game three, but... Uh, yeah, they, we, they, have, we have a clip also of the, uh, of the, the, the dive, as you see here on the screen. Right. There he goes into the fountain. I mean, this is just, it's so, it's so unfortunate for OG. It really is. And from the, the moment that, that he's in the fountain, the rest of OG is like, oh no, and they start running. And obviously when you start running against a team that has this amount of catch, mm -hmm. what do you, how can you run from that? Yeah, yeah, that was, that was rough. But also like Jenkins mentioned, they played the fight in base incredibly well. So before that, situation happened where Leshrac got lassoed into the Fountain, both Dooms were used. They pressed one Doom on Leshrac, which forced the buyback in the first place, and the second Doom on the Lifestealer, who survived it. But when, after they got the lasso on the Leshrac, Fountains, uh, Falcon, Fountains. <laughs> <laughs> we can just call them that for, for now. Falcons just ran down mid, and Whisper probably assumed that Doom would still be on cooldown by then, but it had just come up when he TP'd in Asmars. So he comes into the fight, gets instantly doomed, and then it's just over. I feel like if that hadn't happened, if Mars was just able to cast the spells correctly, or maybe just come in from a different angle, they still had the buyback on Lifestealer too. They potentially could have held. They could have thrown him in first, have him die. He buys back. The Mars gets to get all yeah. the spells off. He doesn't get doomed. So the the doom cooldown reduction really came into play from that Octarine core there. Late game Dota. Late game um, Dota? There was so much happening in that game. It didn't feel like it was a 51 minute game, but it was. Like if we had waited nine more minutes, we would have had the uh, tier five neutral <laughs> items come out. So that's just Dota in a nutshell. That late uh, in the game, you can get a single kill on a single hero without buyback mm -hmm. and you instantly lose the game because at that point, you know, tier three towers, tier four towers are not getting any stronger, but heroes are. Mm. They have the DK, they have the Naga. Even at that point, there's a lot of stats who will do a lot of damage yep. to, to towers. So you just have to be careful. You always have to be on in this game. This is one of those stark reminders of that. You cannot, you, you can't blink. Otherwise, you're going to die. Yeah, and uh, this is a person that did not die. It is Crit, and he's joining us virtually for for winner's interview. Hey, Crit, how are you doing? Did you, did you catch a little bit of a breath after that one? Yeah, it was, uh, it was very back and forth. A lot of uh, teamfight losses into teamfight wins, and then I don't know what happened at the end of the game, but we, we will take that for sure. <laughs> you talk, talk to me about how that was like on, on comms at the end, because that was uh, that was a, a good catch, obviously, on the Lushrak by yourself, uh, but it kind of it kind of balled out of control from that as well. But can you talk to us how, how it was? What was, like, what was it like? Uh, it's, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, the whole game, we're kind of trying to find a way to, to fight because we were having a hard time, like, figuring out how exactly to fight them when, we're, when they were fight together. So I think we, at that point, it was kind of, I mean, the game was in their hands to have Mega Creeps. And then we, we catch the Lash off guard and he, he uses his buyback and then he's a little bit too careless. And then I think we were, we, we did well to, ex to uh, what's, the, what's the word? Uh, capitalized on it when he didn't have buyback, so that was kind of the only chance we had to win. I think at that point when they have Megas, so it's very good for us. Yeah, it was it was really good. I have a, I have a couple of questions, but one is actually completely unrelated to the series you just played. Uh, earlier today, we actually looked at a tweet of yours uh, that you tweeted in November. Uh, where you basically said, you know, you, the years haven't been uh, the greatest. There was, a, you said, there was a lot of slander on your name, and you know, be ready for what I'm going to do next year, and everything's going to be different. And obviously, here you are, and, and Falcons is considered to be the the top dog at the moment. And I am 
curious what kind of improvements you yourself have done to, to I don't know, if, I don't know if you had to make a switch or anything like that, but it's obviously, it, whatever you did is paying off and I'm curious how you treated that transition. Uh, it's, I mean, that's, that's a good question. I don't think I had to change too much with myself. It was more like uh, I had to put myself out of my comfort zone a little bit. Like it's a completely new team. Uh, we're playing in a new region with new players that all have high expectations, you know, young players. I had to, to make some sacrifices at the start of the team to, to make sure we could play qualifiers and stuff, uh, cancel vacations, all these type of things. So I think that's the, like the biggest thing. Uh, I think it's been, it's been very intense, like since we started this team, because we all want to win. So it's just a lot of hard work and it's, it's just nice when you see that it comes into fruition. Um, I think the biggest thing was just when, you know, when I go on Reddit and I see a lot of people saying I'm washed, you know, that was, <laughs> that was pretty much the biggest thing I was addressing. It was not like, I saw you guys were talking about you guys. I don't, I don't feel like I had too much blame from you guys. It's mostly, you know, the Redditors. So I had to oh, you know, I, I don't take, I don't take offense at all, but it's, uh, if you can, can you use that kind of stuff as fuel as well? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean that's 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 what the tweet was for. Definitely to to fuel myself as well. To not only to show them, but also just to remind myself that that I'm I can be the best position for in the world. So I think that was the biggest thing for me in this year to to go back to that. Well, it is uh, definitely all the the effort and hard work is paying off. We see that, of course, in the results as well. Uh, I have a question about because there is a hero that I always remember you playing. Earth Spirit is completely unpicked, completely off, and I would really love to hear. Uh, yeah, you're, I see your face already. <laughs> You're not, you're not happy about the state of the hero. What's wrong with it? I don't know. It's just, it's depressing. I think, I think honestly, the biggest thing is when they change the fact that the roll does, like the CD doesn't work while you're rolling. So it's just like, like the whole, like you can just roll across the map in like two seconds is gone. And now it just feels like you cannot play this hero's four anymore. And then I don't know, as a mid as well, it just, I don't know. It just feels bad, this hero. It's just sad to, to play. I think the biggest thing about this hero has always been the role and the fact that he was so so fast and he could get across the map so fast and now you just can't really do it. So And they also nerfed the range on the role talent. That also was a, a big hit. It's a shame. It really is a shame. Maybe maybe he'll come back. Maybe there will be a little bit of a, a patch at some point because I feel like he's been out since the, since everybody played in mid. I feel like he's been out of the support for a little while. Uh, I also have Purge who would love to ask you a question. Hey Crit, uh, I, as a SD enthusiast, I watched you in game one and you had some really perfect disruptions. So I was curious how you choose when to disrupt. Obviously there's a lot of spells being thrown around. Do you like vibe check waiting for the best moment when your carry is almost dead? Are you waiting for like a specific spell to be cast before you use that ability? I think in that game it was pretty easy for me because I have Huskar and I know like the win window for them to kill him is like not that high. Like it's not that big. So. When there's like a Mars there and he has, you know, the only thing they can really come with is if he gets speared or if there's a gyro there, they need the, the homing missile into cooldown to hit and then if I just disrupt that and he's not going to die, then it makes it a lot easier to use the spell and sometimes it's like they don't really have anything hard committal and then you use the disruption and you basically just set up for the spear. But I think this, that game was pretty easy just because Husker is like, like such a fine margin hero to kill, like it's, it makes it very easy for me to, to save him as well. Gotcha. And uh, priority for SD has been pretty high for the tournament, Can uh, but you were pretty effective ganking surprisingly, and sometimes SD is criticized for his weaker uh, ganking presence. So what would you say the overall value of SD is right now and why he has been pretty well prioritized? I think he's just a good laner. I think the changes they made to disruption make him a lot stronger on lane. Uh, obviously, it doesn't scale as well, but it just means that he's more solid in early game. And then he still has, he still has the same toolkit, so his scaling is still good. It's just that the illusions from disruption are not as strong, which is not like the biggest deal. So I think it's, he's just more of a well-rounded hero in terms of like throughout the whole game. Like he kind of can do everything. Like he can go four and five. He's just decent laner, you know. He's he's set up. He's safe. He has like he has a lot of options, you know. So I think he's just a well-rounded hero that can just kind of just, it's easy to open the draft and he can kind of do a lot of different things. Okay, and another support question. Uh, Mechanism is really popular right now. Um, why is it trending so much? It feels like more fives than fours are building it, but why does it feel like the item to build at the moment? It's just very cheap, I think. And then most people want to buy arcane boots and you can't build a, a lens, a, a lens from arcane boots anymore so then the only transition item from arcane boots is kind of greaves so then it just feels good to buy canes into mech and then at some point eventually getting the greaves i think that's honestly the biggest reason mech is just a very cheap team item and then 
it just the mo like the most efficient gold item you can buy as a five, and that's probably the reason why people buy it. Okay, and uh, last question: uh, in th in that match, uh, you guys were letting them have Mars both games. You respond with Dragonite. How can you compare those two heroes? Obviously, Dragonite's much more flexible, but in terms of like off lane position or initiating, uh, what are the pros and cons between the two in your mind? Uh, well, I think DK is a much better hero, honestly. Um, overall, I think he is more flexible and just honestly a stronger hero. Um, and then for us, it's also just we can play it in all three roles, so it's super value for us. Um, in terms of Mars, like we we have a really good Mars player, so we will take it. But we're not like scared of other people's Mars. You know, it's just we have a Mars, but other teams don't have him, so it's not the same. All right, great. Thanks for the questions. All right, Chris, thank you so much for uh, for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, for, of course, you have two two O's now under your belt. We are looking very much forward to what uh, tomorrow has to bring uh, from you guys. So uh, good luck in preparing for that and talk to you later. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. And uh, we are going to find out what's been on uh, the socials at the moment as uh, Brian has an update for us. Thank you, Shiver. I decided to check in with Reddit. It was a tough game one for OG, and obviously game two didn't go as they had hoped in the last few minutes. But we are hoping for, you know, maybe some draft tips, maybe some supportive tips that they can give coming from the player or coming from the people of this community. So we wanted to see exactly, you know, how to rally around OG. So we've got a couple comments from before game two here, where the first one says, why is nobody picking Necro? Is everyone dumb, question mark? So that's the first supportive question that it's we a have. a great question. The hero is 0-1 so far, so unexplored. Yeah. Can't really argue with that mm -hmm. point. Uh, the next one is, feels like Falcons could first pick Huskar and OG would still outdraft themselves. Oh. So not... Ooh. Not necessarily wrong based on game <laughs> two, but I do feel like the draft was not necessarily the problem. But don't worry, we got a few more supportive ones. But the idea is when we look at if OG perform or preferred to ban Crystal Maiden than Huskar against an amazing Huskar player, that is a baffling decision right there. I want to say that they are six and one on the side of Falcons with Crystal Maiden mm. right now. So. I don't know. It's kind of like maybe the option for them is to just ban everything. Like yeah. they might just go through Falcon's picks and just ban it all. Huskar, CM, literally every hero there. What do you think, Shiva? I think that's a great plan. I think uh, also, I mean, if OG is on it anyway, you got, they got Seb, Seb on the squad, right? Seb won two TIs. I feel like every TI you win, you get yourself another ban. Yeah, right? abs absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah I agree. Yeah, so the Snake King's racking him up right yeah. now. And, you know, we saw that last comment, which is oh, yeah, OG, the OG oh, coach geez. is preparing yeah. for the drafts for the other teams. But at the end of the day, Dota's not necessarily all about the drafts. We looked at the gameplay, uh, scrolling through Reddit, all the supportive, like, it's okay, OG. Sometimes you have some tough ones. That's what I was looking for. Instead, yeah. we saw, honestly, BZM is the weak link at this point. OG can't even pick any cheese heroes because this guy can't even play a single one of him one of them get rid of him why the f is bzm always in the fountain with no effing buyback sheaves <laughs> well, to be fair, why was he in the fountain is because uh, well it, it, i don't have an answer for that the, he you got know, last suited in I, you know, he's just in the wrong fountain it's a tough crowd at it's the end of the crowd. day you play a 50 minute game and all of it goes your way except for the last minute and a half and uh yeah it's just that's all people remember life though. of a dota player we heard crit talking about it during the interview and we can understand where he's coming from now with a little bit of uh, evidence. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe this will fuel OG. Yes. Yes. And exactly. the next time they win, they're on two so now, but tomorrow, to one and two. Yeah, they are. They are one and two. You know, it could be. Well, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Today, OG and Falcons are done. And it was a 2-0, and that means we have some extra time because we are using fixed schedule here, which means our next series doesn't start for a little while, which means uh, we have some content for you guys. But uh, before the content will play, I believe the Pog Jam Pandas will play something and we'll have a quick break. We'll be back.
watching Dream League Season 22, and like you're used to by now in Season 21 and 20 and 19, maybe 18 already as well, but definitely 19, um, sometimes there's a pause, and that's because we run a very nice schedule. It's called a fixed schedule, and it, that means that everybody can show up for their favorite team exactly when their favorite team is playing, but it also means that sometimes when there's a 2-0, like we just had with Falcons beating OG. Uh, we have a little bit of extra time, meaning we get Yay! to spend some time together as everybody's very happy. <laughs> I love running. spending time Brian, with these people. Brian, 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 Brian. 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 Suck, 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 suck. No! I love cake. All right, so we have, uh, we have, lovely, uh, we have a lovely game, as you guys can see. Secret Shop, and some of you might be familiar with the Secret Shop, uh, and some of you might not be, so I'm gonna just give the premise uh, a little bit. Uh, we have uh, Shopkeeper and a shopkeeper's assistant. A shopkeeper, in this case, is Jenkins. Shopkeeper assistant, lovely Effie. Uh, that is, that we have a shop as well. You'll see it in a little bit, that's fine. And um, they will move over to their shop in a little bit. That's fine as well. Now we have two customers, and these two customers are coming to return something. Angry uh, customers as well. They're, they're, they're angry very customers. angry. They're not. They're not happy. They've they they bought something and it's not going well, and something's wrong, and they're returning it. And uh, it is generally an animal, and uh, the shopkeeper does not know what's wrong with the animal, nor does it remember the animal that it sold. So it's a bit of a forgetful shopkeeper, but uh, they're gonna try to figure out what's the animal and what's wrong with it. That's the premise of the of the game. And uh, me, Purge, and, and Brian are just gonna be uh, lovely spectators. You know, I can really respect a, a leader that has dementia, so I, I think I really like this game. I don't know what you guys Because you're do. American. <laughs> <laughs> we might as well embrace it. Really. I honestly didn't get the joke until she said he's American, so I appreciate that one. That was a good one. That was pretty funny. Well said, well said. That was pretty funny. Um, but uh, shopkeepers, that's your shop. Right there. Shall we? Should we go? <laughs> yeah, you should. But I thought we were okay. Yeah. No, so because you you're you gotta wait for you gotta be in your shop, otherwise your shop's not okay. open for the for the. Can I get walking yes. music? You gotta walk like that as well. <laughs> you good? <laughs> cool. <laughs> yep. Cool. <laughs> All right, uh, shopkeepers. Whenever you're ready, you uh, you can start receiving customers. Yeah. Can you uh, assist me? Just do I'm, assistance. I'm writing notes. Yeah. Do assistance. There's a string right here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Bouncer, you can let the gentleman in the door. Most uh, any pet shops have a bouncer. Any customers? Yep, customers. Uh, Next! Is the door open? Next, I let's mean. go. Yeah, go open the door. Is this part of the game? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> where's the area? Game? It's a really slow day today. Let yeah. it come. <laughs> yeah. No, no problem, we'll get, we'll get some customers later. Right, yeah. right, it, the advertisements. It's the holidays. Yeah, holidays. Yeah, holiday season. Yeah. Try yeah. a coupon next time. Do the walking. Where's the animal? Walk to the music. <laughs> No, where are you going? Hello. Please, uh, behind the counter. Sir, please. Hold your coat. Where's the animal? I'm the valet. Authorized personnel. Don't show it. Employees only. Well, why are you uh, standing there? I'm a shop. In line, Speak please. with me. Please. Stand in line. Please, what are you? Please queue up this. Oh. Sorry, I've never seen this Where's content before. Door? Would you like a you second? You guys did a lot of this, but I Hello. didn't any of it. Would you like another gerbil? How can we help you today? We are very it's angry. Not, it's not a gerbil. And we would like to return what we bought, but we cannot tell you what it is. We can only show you. <laughs> yeah, I get the premise, man. Would you like man. a double fist? What? Can you, what, can, you bring it, can you bring it over here, please? Yeah. Where, yes. where, well, where let, is it? I don't let, see let me it. see the animal. Can we see it, please? Okay. Hold the animal with where, your hands. Where is the animal? Here you go. I'm becoming the animal, apparently. No. <laughs> what? No. Are you holding it? Are you? No, no, you have to hold it. You're not the animal. Yeah, sir, we did not. We did not this, okay, do do that. This is, not, this is not a statue shop. Where this is, is an animal shop. Is this the shop. animal? What are yes. you doing? She's trying to help them. No, it's not you the animal. You forgot the animal. Frozen. He doesn't remember the animal. It's we were not really given an animal. It's a dementia animal. The animal has dementia. <laughs> We were. Oh, there it so is. So you're returning. Thank you, Fever. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, well, it doesn't move very fast, does it? Oh, I it doesn't. we were allowed to act out the animal. No. no. Wow. Okay, I misunderstood okay, the skit. Is that, do you want to take okay. it from me? Because can, can, can you give it to them? No, no, just. Uh, it really, right. it really does look like there's something right. wrong with it, doesn't it? There we go. You got it. Oh, it's falling. Oh, it's, oh, it's falling, falling very slowly. Oh, here. Oh, God. It's having trouble. Oh, God. 
taking after its father, aka me. Yeah, Thank okay, God they're so terrible it. genes. <laughs> Alright, so uh, this looks like a normal sloth uh, to me. I'm wondering what the issue is with oh, it. Oh, it keeps falling for some reason. Oh, I see. Goodness. It, is it falling because it's heavy? No. It's, it's pretty normal. As you can see, I'm struggling because I'm very weak in general. It's not heavy at all, actually. Yep, there it goes so again. How much, how much food have you fed this morbidly obese sloth? <laughs> it just eats bananas really slowly. Oh, I see. Oh. It really likes bananas. Yeah. That's definitely the food this of the sloth. This guy's good. I'm not happy with the animal either. What, well, what's wrong with it exactly? Oh, oh just goodness. Keeps, just keeps falling. Oh, it's a monkey with vertigo. <laughs> uh, can't you see what yeah, we're but what looking about, at? Yeah, but, but, but what about the animal? What's going on? Come on, just <laughs> hold on! I can't! Is it a monkey with vertigo? It's falling because it... <laughs> we get one guess. Jesus! Is it not? <laughs> what is this? Well, well, what else does it eat? Can you bend over and try? This is actually yeah, can, hurting my back. Maybe it's... It's maybe, not gonna do any maybe better. Maybe he's the issue. Can you try to pick it up? Go ahead and try. This monkey that eats bananas? Yeah, can you please show us this? Can you pick it up? I gave Just it go a, ahead. some Snickers, too. Oh, okay. that's a problem. It's not that heavy, you weakling. Oh, it looks fine Just, in his hands. Yeah, I'm more, you know, I'm better. But, yeah. What kind of, what kind of That's food? That's making it more confusing, food? for sure. What does your animal eat? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> so it eats everything. What, whatever is so easier. What, what have you What have you done to try to help this ailment that's going on here? Uh, we tried to use tape, but that didn't work. You tried to use tape. We no tried stapler as well. Stapler. Yeah. Try taking Try taking the animal to the gym and do farmers walks, but it just doesn't help. Because it's four-legged. That's true. Is it? Is it not four-legged? We're really trying. We're training farmers' walks every day. Every single day. I just don't see the results. We tried rope as well, but yeah, didn't really solve For this the, monkey the issue. or sloth. It's a monkey. That ha that is very. Forget heavy. about the bananas, all right? The that, banana that was just you a random. Have said the banana. Yeah, Did you I, say hang banana? On, it's a sloth. Hang on, hang on. It's a sloth. Hang on. It, it can't do farmers' walks, but. Which, which part of it can't do the farmer's walk? Is it we'll ask them. Why were you well, doing that... farmer's walks to help the ailment of this animal? It's because having that's, issues. That's why you're doing it. That's what you're training. So this animal of yours, <laughs> wait, this animal of yours, it walks on two legs then? Like a monkey? Well, we see the animal. Of course, I can see there's something wrong you're with it. You're derailing right now, shopkeeper. Yeah. Please, we have to solve this. Go ahead, Cinderin. It, it's been on the floor for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, I'm not, I can't be bothered. No, I'm not so, picking it up so, again. So really, what's wrong with it? Like well, you go to the gym and it doesn't work out, but that's not very descriptive, you know? It's what specifically, what we're trying to do farmer's walks for a reason, and uh -huh. it just doesn't yeah, it help. Keeps to, dropping. to train its calves? It yeah. drops they faster than a calves. Farmer's walks is, is your forearms, and I don't know if they know that. It's the issue. Okay, but they mean the calf area, right? That's what Why? <laughs> what farmer's walks have to do with calves? Because you walk in your tip. Why you're looking at me? No, you I'm the do customer. You know? You're supposed to be I'm sorry. nice. I, to the I, should, I shouldn't raise my voice. I'm Can really I sorry. Can I complain to a manager? Really is there sorry. somebody in the back? Hey, so the far is turn the around and turn into your manager, please. Hello, hello. Oh, <laughs> Cockney. I appreciate Listen. that. Oh, a fellow fellow countryman. Oh. <laughs> How are you? I feel so much better now. <laughs> Can you Can help us? Can we try us? to figure I, it out? I'm this creature. What the fuck is going on with that sloth? Yeah, it keeps falling <laughs> down. Look at me. I'm trying it's to pick it up. I'm trying to sloth. pick it up. And there, it's on the ground again. It's a sloth that's been grounded. <laughs> Just tell me the animal. It, it doesn't have toes. <laughs> I give up. The monkey. No, because We're you're not asking the accurate. Listen. So. Wait, how many guesses else? do they get? Do you guys no, have any guesses? I think. I think you guys I have, have no clue. I, I saw it, but I didn't see the ailment. I oh, saw right. the animal. <laughs> I, was I right okay. about sloth? At least. All right, Shiva, Shiva, can you please confirm that the exercise I mentioned actually Wait, does not the thing? Not asking good questions here. Thing. I'm gonna ask a okay. question. Well, I'm you're trying to yeah, keep see it over here? Like, I need to see Listen, what they're derailing. Yeah, they're definitely. They needed to try and make it do farmers' works because otherwise, maybe, maybe okay. the problem is right. the original okay. owner this made it do too many farmers' walks. That's not enough farmers' walks. I think you need to have it practice hanging from a bar like he's been doing. It's not a monkey because he said it's ignore the bananas. He said ignore the bananas, shopkeeper. I think that's good enough. That's a sloth enough. that can't hang. But it's a sloth, sloth with poor grip strength. Okay. Yeah. That's close enough. There's a lot of ways you could have gone that would have appealed to thing. Jenkins about poor grip strength. I knew it was strength. a sloth. I, and you did <laughs> not I, go I, there. He didn't know it was a sloth. He said I think the man. biggest about thing, but he said that Jenkins. He said the shit about bananas. Why would you do that? That clearly makes me think it's a monkey. I mean, they probably eat bananas too. <laughs> <laughs> they like grubs and Take stuff. Take your Why do you think that, so that Cinderin wouldn't know what farmer's walks were exercising? Oh, come on. Come I don't know what they were, to be he fair. He was in the gym with us doing it. He goes to the gym once a I, year. I was he like, did this it with is... Blitz and us. Whatever. In whichever Whatever. country we were Who's in. Who's next? <laughs> what are we doing now? Thank God that's over. Sit down, Who's sir. Next? We sit down. Oh. Yeah, Dick's uh, spot uh, up. Good job, Shannon. 
You look like. Am I getting up? Yeah, Thank you're you. getting up. You I feel like we. Uh, first, am I getting fired or am I standing? No. Uh, first, or Ryan, really do you want to be the shopkeeper or the? Uh, it's not easy. Uh, I would like to be the person mm. acting it out rather because that was a pitiful performance. All right, you want to be shopkeeper? Brian, is, you ever like coach somebody that's like 2K and after you watch them play, you're like, I just want to play it afterwards. Yes, yes. That's can, exactly, can we, can, uh, exactly right, what I, I feel like right now. So are you feeling like they were I don't 2K give a shit as long as I'm involved in there. Can I propose a house rule, please? Yeah. If they get the animal or the ailment right, let's just say yes. It is. Like, yes. give that okay. a... Okay, because okay. we didn't know what we were even allowed to say. Of it. Just okay. make it up. It's oh, improv. I've been doing this for years. Nobody's ever been mad at us. Not even the viewers? Not even the viewers. Genuinely, when we walked on stage, I thought we were meant to act it out and not say anything. I thought we were meant I'm to be not, the yeah, animal, one of us oh. on the other, and then do the thing. I was excited to be then it was sloth, this is like I was going to just hang on him and then fall off. This is uncut gems level of chaos. Order, She's please. raising her hand. <laughs> Hello. So, did last season when we played, didn't we confirm when we got the animal right? Yeah, I, I remember think doing maybe that. we did, but I'm not I sure. You guys I suck. We didn't do any content. No, no, but they didn't know. They weren't. Maybe, they no, that was, they didn't that, that was unrelated before. to the content. Okay, that that's was fine. unrelated. I would like Just somebody to yes. clean yes. my yes. bathrooms. Naturally. Naturally. I'll come clean the bathrooms Thank and you. Um, you guys sort out that and be quiet. As uh, You guys can wait, sit in different there, chairs if you want. Is there one person? You got to shop to shop. I like it here. Do you want to be on your own, Brian? No, I want a partner. Okay, who do you want? Uh, I'll take you, Jenkins. Get in over here. Two in a row? I'll show you guys how it's done. Well, you're the one making excuses from the last one, so you have to redeem. We yourself. have a customer. Okay. Do we have a customer? You got this one? Yes. Yeah, I got it. I okay. Got do it. we just put it down over here? Can we open the door? Yeah. Okay. You yeah, carry whatever you want. Yeah, you carry. You carry. Okay. okay. I'll open the door for them. Oh. Hello. 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 Oh. Is, that, is that podium okay. wood? Oh, get out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what is he trying to build with that? What is he doing? <laughs> why, why does he keep grabbing that? What well, the it's hell? Just, it's just he really likes wood. Yeah. You know? Is it a beaver? Like your mom. <laughs> What's wrong with that animal? <laughs> Wait, it are coughs. we? Yeah, of course it's a beaver. You sold it to us. Is yeah, it like, is how it, is it well, wet? Right I only rarely see beavers. It, it but, keep, but, he keeps trying to, to, to grab that. He can't. Like, what, what is wrong with this guy? <sighs> like, he has one job. He just wants to do yeah. one thing, and he can't but even do it properly. He can't do it. Like, he's trying you to grab You sold us a faulty beaver. It doesn't have any teeth? I, it's, it's, oh, it's I mean, biting. It, it looks like it's biting, but now what? Like, you can't even do anything. <gasps> it with has that. no good bite strength. <sighs> Does I that mean, look like it's not good bite strength? What, what? What? What happens when you let it let go of? What, what would happen if you let it go? If what I like, if I let go of him? Yeah, don't do, don't do, oh, don't do, no, don't like, do, don't do. No, no, it feels like once he bites down, he it's just, just stuck there. He just doesn't oh. stop. He, he's Here, just like done. Like it's just. Oh, okay, sorry. I keep grabbing. He's really stuck. Now he's just stuck on the. Use your use your grip strength. You're doing farmer's walks. Wow, here, here. even it's, then. It's stuck. <laughs> oh. Wow. Oh, it that really feels beaver. like it feels like his jaw is just stuck there for See, some now reason. I feel like I feel like uh, right now I got it. Yeah, yeah. He's got like, uh rabies. Uh, uh ten when's the last time you gave him a tetanus shot? Uh he's not sick, it doesn't seem like. It just seems like <laughs> where the hell did he go? It seems do, like do, his mouth is just stuck on there. The, we finally got it off. Does, but does he, he do the Jack Russell thing where he just locks his jaw? Yes, he does. That's right. He, 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 that, now you can say it. That's right. It's yeah, is, is it a beaver that just locks his jaw? Yeah. That's correct. Beaver beaver that's locked. correct. Yeah. Yeah. That is the problem yeah. with our animal. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, here, have it back. I think you should take it back. Yeah, you can have him now. I threw it. Sorry, that's the one. That's how it's done. That's how it's done. No refunds. You wanna go again? Yeah, let's us. Uh, we just got asked if no, we let them to go. do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they saw. This was a fast that, one. Wait, do we? Do you we want a new teammate for this one? We have time for one more. We can switch it up. Yeah, you switch it up. No, switch I just up. did two. Somebody else got oh. it. Sh oh. I want to. I want to see no, Shannon. No, but people like you. Shannon and Effie. The, oh. Shannon and Effie. But it's the We Say Things podcast. We take right. advantage of this opportunity no, no. where we can let's put them together in, in casual I'm gonna situations. Draw I'm going to right, How about this? It's you plus what? one of us. And Would you anyone like to join Shannon, me? Shannon, Effie, and okay. Cinder, and, it's, and whatever that guy's name yeah. is. How about Cinder and the animal? Like I would like to act. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can I be the animal? So I can drop. Uh, take, take one hey, of them uh, with You're me. the judge. Can he who's, just be the animal? Who's with no. me? When I read our uh, prompt, I was so excited. I was like, I'm just going to hang on Shannon. Who is returning who's the animal? Who is me? Wait, who am I? My shopkeeper? You're with or? him. Where, 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 where do returning? you want to okay. go? And then you. What are we? Oh, wait, no. You two should be together. You should be shopkeeper. We're shopkeepers? Yeah, you're shopkeepers. Okay. You two um, together. Right. We're shopkeepers? Yeah, yeah we're yeah, shopkeepers. What are, what are the rules are, for us? What are the restrictions? Just ask, but don't guess. like spam what? names. Don't, don't spam that names. Don't okay, spam that like might animal. be a problem. Unless you're sure, sort of. Okay. You don't, uh, okay, 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 okay. Do you know what it is? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. 
Let me just pull this up on the telephone. It's okay. a Pokemon that she hasn't heard of before. Sorry, ah, once no, later. No, I, no, no, I know what it is. I just need to know well. the size of it. Shannon thinks sloths eat monkeys. If you guys need to... Uh, oh, well, let's try that again. Shannon thinks monkey sloths eat bananas. So if you need to look up the animal, I'm right. pretty sure we're screwed. Jenkins, while we're waiting, can you check what sloths eat? And if it includes it's bananas. Grubs, dude. It's All right, like we're ready. Leaves, maybe. They probably eat bananas as well. Yeah, come on in. All right, I'll open the door. Who are they? What are they bringing here? Why did you tell me it doesn't eat dogs? It ain't my dog. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The door is come closed here. still. We can't hear you. Come here, come here, come here. Come on, why? Why? We're, we're running out of time. Long, we're closing. Okay? For come here, come here. Just this is really important, okay? There's a reason we have a sign that everything is 70% off. We're literally shutting down the store forever in five minutes. What do you want? <laughs> uh, we're going to need a 30% back because... Wait, let's, just, let's just get okay. it close to You got it for free. Yeah, just, just, it's tranquilized right just now. Bring, bring Otherwise, it, bring here. you know, okay. we'd be... Seems to be pretty heavy. Take this thing back right what, now. What's it wrong ate, with it? It ate Purge's dog. It ate my dog. It ate your dog? How, it ate what, my dog. What dog do you have? Uh, I don't have any dog now. <laughs> what, what dog <laughs> did you have? How long? How big was your dog? Just just my dog was like... 80 pounds. 80 pounds? Yeah. <laughs> really big dog. How are you has guys even dog, carrying this animal? Has your dog dissolved she's, yet inside she's, the stomach she's of really this animal? Strong. Let's put it, put it down. Let's put, put it, it down. Put it she's down. really strong. Oh. How could you sell us Tell me more this about this thing? dog. <laughs> How could you sell us this thing? We have to really tranquilize it before we brought it here. Yeah. It is a danger to So why'd you buy it? Because you told us it did. It was a special one that didn't like dog meat. All right, what does it do normally, other than but eat dogs? It, it, it's <laughs> eat just, just it, about anything it can. It just exists. Is it slimy? Yeah, in a couple places. Look, look. <laughs> well, you look, can say that about anything in the world. Look, well, ask a better question. <laughs> How much what? does it weigh? We'll, we'll get justice for More your than dog. my dog. We'll get justice. Yeah, yeah, well, we surely. Yeah. I would like, I'm going to, well, I shouldn't say the X, because then they'll go on the sue defensive. I'm going to sue the rest. We're considering suing, but uh, the issue is... Okay, it's okay. You have a okay please answer it, it, the question. How, how heavy is look, the animal? It's, 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 it's quite heavy. It's heavy that is not dog. an answer. Because like, my dog's inside of it now. Yeah. <laughs> how many dogs fit inside this animal? Well, I don't know the exact estimation, but... If you had a dozen dogs, people? would they fit inside this animal? No. Chihuahuas, yes. Chihuahuas. Yeah, but oh, your yeah. dog was okay. 80 pounds. Okay. Yeah, that's like 10 chihuahuas. Yeah, yeah. Listen, this is not the problem. That It, it ate right, Purge's dog, like which is certainly a problem. Like that. It, the, the problem is it, it's eating things that it shouldn't eat. If yeah. it was an alligator, they wouldn't need to look it, it was, up. It was so hungry, it didn't stop on my I, dog. I don't want to get near it. It's, Sandra, that's metagaming. So it's eating dogs. It eats chickens. No, no, it, not just dogs. Why everything. would you buy a giant cat? That doesn't make don't any sense. Don't let it. By the way, we put a muzzle on it. We made it out of an old sock. Don't let it. Don't let it bite you either. We. we I genuinely can't think of a single it. animal that eats dogs. We did. Shit yeah, yeah. I kicked this it three times. Too. It's not supposed to eat dogs. What does it eat naturally? Literally anything it can get. Its Literally anything. Mouth so is slimy is it a hippopotamus? Not. But like. No, no, no. They would not need you, to look that up. You said you muzzled it, but we couldn't really muzzle it properly because there. There are other things going on where we should be able to muzzle it, but it's just eating everything. We had to use three plastic How bags. How many mouths it, does it have? It has have? multiple heads. <laughs> just one? Is it a chimera? One mouth? No, it's a real How many real anuses live animal. would you say it has, Purge? I know you have a that. How many anuses? Okay, I don't know. Just, I didn't go digging just, around. Just, just, Hard okay. to tell. Yeah, with does it does not come out of there yet? Like, Jesus. Help me drag it a little closer. You want to drag it? Just drag it a little closer. It's so heavy. Drop it. Drop it. Look Look at this scaly thing. Is it a black dragon? No, it's not this mystical, but you're on the right track. <laughs> scaly thing. This scaly The mouth is monster. very dangerous. But it's not a crocodile, I'm if assuming. If it bites you, you're going to be sick What's for a long time. What scaly animal eats it's dogs that they Look, wouldn't this, know about? Is this it's normally an extinct animal? God, Does this guys, exist it's real. It's right in front of you. Can't reality? you see it? Yes. Yeah, this could be CGI. I don't know if you're a CGI no, me up right now. Look at it from CGI, a different angle. But you, a lot you of great guys, things with AI these days. You, know? you, shopkeeper, you told me that you specially imported this from Asia. I am not the shopkeeper. I work here voluntarily. Voluntarily. Oh, the shopkeeper, you told me you imported this from Asia, mm -hmm. and you I, gave I have us an identical price. twin brother. He's a little bit slightly more obese than me. So I actually <laughs> did not talk to you. It was not you. Oh, interesting. This scaly, huh. monstrous, meat-eating thing. This ate large, your dog. scaly, monstrous. Yeah, it ate meat. Your dog. So what's the issue? Wait, the store closed five minutes ago. Can look, you fuck look, off? Look, oh. I just, look at it. Look at it. Look. Look. Please. I just. You're I just not wanted, leaving. I just wanted a mythical being. I just wanted to feel so like... This is, this it, is the closest we can get, honestly. Yes, now I, it's mythical. I wanted to feel well, like I had... Is it a, a griffin? Pet. It's the closest we could get with to mythical while it's still being real. Does it have wings? <laughs> I wish no, it did. They think, they it think looks it like does. it has wings, they but it doesn't. They think it does. Can I guess? It's very Asian. Is it Asian. a Komodo dragon? 
It is a Komodo dragon. That's real, though. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you eight times. Okay. okay. She said right, mystical. Okay, but please, okay, please look at it. Just, okay. just look at it. It's so not a Komodo dragon. There's, wh why is nice it? Nice and thick. It got so hungry that it wouldn't stop eating. Look, if it if it bites down right now. Yes. It's a Komodo dragon really... with an eating disorder. No. <laughs> <laughs> look, please, okay, look. It, if it bites down right now, it'll bleed to death. Do you understand? Yeah. We have to fix it. True. It's a Komodo dragon with a major underbite. No, no, if it bites down, it, it ate something, it should, it put something in its mouth. It's allergic mouth. to everything? There's something in its perhaps? mouth that There's shouldn't be there. Just help me take it out. Do you see? I, I don't do, work. Do you see? I don't work here anymore. <laughs> it's, uh, no, no, I, uh, it is the, uh, it reminds come, me of this come, Dota team's, come. uh, logo. No, no. No, when no, they no. redid their logo, Digital Chaos new logo. Come, come. Kind of similar to that. A serpent? Oh, no, kind of similar. What, what is a Komodo serpent? dragon? Wait, is there a serpent inside its mouth? What's that serpent, what's that what's that look, serpent doing? Look at its head. Look at its what's head. What's that serpent doing? There's something doing, in its mouth. It belongs to itself. So there are two It's a Komodo mouths? dragon eating its own tail. Yes, yes. thank oh. God. Oh my God. Oh, that was really easy. Good job. Well done. Shannon, you're so good. Wow. <laughs> I think I'm the dumb ogre. Oh I'm pretty sure of the two oh my of us. God. Good job, everybody. We I knew it. after 10 seconds, I just thought this was funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was stressful. Oh God, you know. I was really attached to this <laughs> thing. I needed a gun. This, yeah. is, this is like the show Bear, where I'm just getting sick. Komodo out dragons are in North this. America. Yeah. Like, this is, this, this is my work. They are not North American. They, they're in Arizona. Oh my gosh. Okay. I got thrown in off a so zoo. hard that it eats dogs. Yeah. I, I was like really trying to think <laughs> what would eat a dog. Purge you guys guess that. more mythical creatures than actual creatures. I don't know even. I don't think uh, Purge made it clear. What matters the most is that we had fun. Did you? Did you? We had fun. Have you guys done an animal that's not real before? No. Well, that's no. good to know now. So <laughs> now we're gaining very valuable. Not if not only that. we knew that in advance, <laughs> but it I'm, couldn't I'm, be. <laughs> We're learning a lot today. I feel like we haven't been briefed properly. No. This game's rigged. I agree. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's totally, it's not it's your fine. fault. Yeah. If, we, if we keep having two O's, we might have time to, you know, do more at some point, but not right now. And right now we're, well, you guys are, you know, re relieved. We are saved and we are going over to the Dota 2. Now the next series that is going to happen is going to be Team Spirit versus Aurora. It will be exciting. It's best of three. Then it's going to be Gaming Gladiators and Shopify Rebellion. So you're on the right place for some more Dota 2 here for Dream League Season 22.
Oh my god, dude. There's no difference. Okay, judging right away from the clip, I see she has a magic wand and a branch and tangles when she's in mid. That makes me think it's kind of low rank. It's Mutaro quick buy. He's trying to last hit the axe right now. This is a respectable gameplay. He's gonna make a rampage here recently. You got a rampage, I think. You get a rampage. Eat a tango, bro. What are you doing? Eat a tango, eat a tango, hello? Eat the tango, eat the tango. Dude, he's getting a rampage. No way. No way. <laughs> How is he getting a rampage? It's so weird. Maybe Ancient or below Ancient because the Lina didn't eat the tango. I don't think he's immortal. And they have Pudge and Axe and Ricky. They're shit heroes. So I think it's Arshan. Mechanically, like, I thought usually these videos are kind of like bad and the players are bad, but like that was like, I'm gonna say immortal. Yeah, it's pretty good mechanics. It's like out attacking and moving, but maybe that's like normal nowadays. I don't know, I would say like, it's like legend. I would say divine. He hit his spells, so that's a start. He has like some different item yet on mid, so that's like not a very good player, but you know, it kind of makes sense. Like Stig versus Storm, some kind of beta scientist, like some guy that thinks he knows something, but pff, you know, divine, I say divine. Oh, Ancient? Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, I guess I'm bamboozled a little bit. Maybe I should have said Divine. But I don't know, like, that doesn't strike me as Ancient. Because that person's, like, target priority was good. He actually tried to last hit as well. That's when you know when someone's actually, like, next level good. Because, like, you only care about yourself when you're out there playing these pubs. Like, it's you versus everyone else, including your teammates. So you're trying to get all that gold funnel it into yourself and that's a mindset thing so i thought that's like an immortal mindset okay ancient it's just the uh, starting items first of all and like the way like the enemy moved in as two Where's instead of five people Where's like same time it made me feel like it's kind of lower there's just two dudes running in and then <laughs> it's a fight breaking out i mean the guy can be a slur for all we know still exists i don't know okay, agonim's rush 16 minutes in there's 40 kills already Getting focus. From page again. <laughs> He's gonna kill them all here, isn't he? Oh yeah. This guy looks like he's playing with like 27 APM. Oh, the GG well played spam. Oh, this guy must be good. I think it's divine. All the heroes like pretty good and meta. Immortal or divine? Because uh, the hero was good and this guy has a good build on beast. Like he knows how to play. Ah, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I actually can predict rank off this video. Like it's pretty hard. There's a lot of elements to it that first of all, there's like the backspacing in the beginning where the dude is like, he sees them and he moves back, which is like, a good reaction like instinctually then he gets cursed but i don't know what the hell the enemy team is doing like i don't know why they don't just kill this guy so that's like a separate issue like i don't know what the hell they're doing so all right i'm gonna say the legend this one was impossible to guess i tried to figure out who's the enemy mid it's like weird i think this is a kind of low rank as well i would say it's like ancient maybe this guy is immortal he has a normal item build clicked his spells well i guess and he's buying an orchid he's playing against it's kind of a good orchid game kind of kind of <laughs> So, divide, divide. Yeah. Jesus Christ. The thing is, I would have done the one lower than that, but then I saw that GG well played in all chats, so I'm like, all right, that's a one up. That Lena was definitely a better player. This guy, no offense to this dude, you know, all, all respect to this guy, you know what I'm saying? That Lena, you know, quick buy, the last hitting, that was beautiful. Fuck, oh, so close. His farm was like way too good for an ancient player, maybe. Yes. Gets in. Hello, we are gonna rank ourselves with different categories where the most left person on the screen is the least of whatever we're ranking and the most right person on the screen is the most of whatever we're ranking. Hello. <laughs> so let's get started. Who is the most fun playing solo? Like, I think there are two tryhards. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, you yeah. guys try way too hard and when you lose it like really eats you up yeah. and you're like Ugh. So I, I'm, I think this is actually I it think might work with cheats, maybe. Yeah, I mean, we're both pretty have like having yeah, games have where we're try hard and less try hard. I think we're yeah. like on the same. I think line. we're pretty we much. Like yeah, we like this. 
And like, like I'm gonna do like this. Yeah, I think because this, I think I think this is pretty accurate. Well, yeah. yeah. Final ranking. Final we're ranking. like in a quantum state where we're both having fun and we can't have fun at the same time. Yeah. We're trying to win, so we can't have fun. Who was the best hero? Oh, that's definitely not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna come far. over. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. might be over there. You, I mean, you can be here too, though. Nothing speaks against it. Uh, do you think you have a better one than me? How many heroes do you think you play? A lot. What's a, what's a lot? You know, that's subjective. How many heroes do you have at level 30? I don't Three play. or four. Okay, then he's. I, I would I say no, like Dota, more yeah. above like level seven, above level ten. I okay. think. Yeah, above level ten. I've got I like probably forty. Or but wouldn't you think having having more. lots of players you have more than that? Yeah. Okay, having well, lots of heroes at me. level thirty means you played those few heroes a lot. Doesn't mean you have a good pool though. That's true. No, but you're, no, so you're saying you have a big less pool. level thirties with the amount of Dota you play is better for diversity. Yeah, you yeah, want to have yeah, like so loads of level twenties. But and stuff. The, she, I, I, she's I'll, on I'll the money. I'll be fair. I've seen him Kezu on my pause recently. He literally plays whatever role like the team needs. So that's true. It's probably Kezu. All right, so let's I'll take second. Up. Let's line up for the wait, final wait, wait, position. Wait, how many heroes are approximately you gonna get? How many? I mean, I play. I play between twenty and thirty different heroes. I'd okay. Say. Okay. Alright, she's a specialist. She's a <laughs> a, a, play pretty much a, a let's see him specialist. Yeah, AA specialist. Controversial one. Who is the most likely to destroy their items in a pub? Oh god, Brian. Brian, Brian is that supposed to be? I'm, I'm, I'm not there. I'm, I'm, never this one. I'm, I'm gonna go over here. I'm, I'm going to this one. Wait, no, no, seriously, has anyone ever destroyed their items here? No. I'm then sure we should I just have, all be over no, no. here. I'm sure It's most likely to. And I think in that regard, if we're saying if we're saying like who's most likely to kill someone, <laughs> I'm still putting you over on this side. You only destroy your items if you are so upset yeah. about a game and the way it's going, then that means you care deeply like about the results. Yes. Which is not us. You care too so. much. So you care <laughs> I care I love too much. much. I don't destroy I care, but I don't destroy I'll Okay, be here. I, also, will, I will tank this and be the one guy that would be the carry yeah, player this to seems destroy very his items. Seems you, he also has oh. a sub twelve K behavior score. I'm yeah, that's wait, true. you do? Yeah, it's only eleven hundred eight. That's eleven hundred eight hundred. Twelve. Well, right, so come on this side. Come right, on, we're right, back. Right, right, right. I'm back. I'll she, give it to you. I Sheed. can't imagine she's ever, ever doing no. so. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Final call. Final call. <laughs> All right, this one is about your your jobs. Ooh, la, la. Good Ooh. God, my what? Okay, Sheev's over here. Least. <laughs> Where is the least? Mm. Uh, I, I do, think I think Kezu does more. I than do me. quite a lot. I, I I think I think this is actually a pretty instant one here. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I'm gonna have to Spider Man on the wall here. <laughs> Who's in this tournament? <laughs> Where's Where are we? Who plays for Falcons now? Yeah. <laughs> Falcon? Who the fuck are Falcons? What is like, a Falcon? Yeah, that's pretty much me. So, I yeah. think this one's pretty I think this is accurate. Yeah. I'm a busy man. I got kids. You yeah. know what I mean? I got kids and stuff. You have to defend yourself. Research and dope. I do have to defend myself. They're the only ones judging you, not yeah. us. Yeah, exactly. This is for you. <laughs> He's the final rank. Who was the coolest in high school? Oh, oh my well, God. Brian. No. Brian was 100% the coolest in high school. <laughs> he, was, he was literally there, the prom queen. I'm I know not this cool for at all. Very cool. It's true, right? Wait, Very yeah. cool. no, he, was, he, was play, he was playing all the sports. Yes, yeah. he was a jock. Yeah, he, he was a jock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I was not cool. I played Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, but I was cool for one year. Okay, then you think you deserve third place, second, um, second so, place. I personally still think I should be at most here, Ted. So I, I think maybe I was never cool. You want to switch over to the left? Anyone I was with remembering this is going to be like, why isn't Ted guy, least cool? I Ted think, should be least cool. I think okay, any go, guy I'm that here. gets to go to the girls' school is considered cool. Yeah, by how do you do that? That was only for one lesson. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it Doesn't was pretty matter. cool. You that, pulled I it off. Mean, it sounds pretty cool. Uh, hey, it was cool. I still think you're cooler than no, me. Def- yeah, but maybe now. I'll maybe. just say I'm cooler than Tanda. <laughs> maybe so. now. Final call. Oh, now? <laughs> Are we happy with this? I, I am not especially happy. I would rather be there, but I, I will Whatever. take this. I will say, okay. I'm okay with it. Who will host the best dinner party? Ooh. Dinner party doesn't mean you have to do the cooking or the, the like, cooking. Because the host not necessarily cooks. I would be cooking. What's the biggest criteria? Cooking or like vibes? Both. Both. Yeah. Mm. That's a tough one. I cook mostly. I'm, I'm the number one cook in the house. Okay. I cook most than Mrs. Okay, you're F, pretty good. So. No, I know I'm over here. I, I, I will consider myself in the middle. I cook a lot. So I would only do the cooking because I'm not going to hold shit, so I'll be here. Okay, the only I cooking I do much. is in Dota. So, so I'm not a good host. I think I, think I, can, I yeah. can host a good dinner party. So I'll say yes. I will, I will have to go second or third. I don't care. And no, I'm here. This is fine. I, sure? think, I think this is pretty... <laughs> I'm why did, why don't you rate yourself, Brian? Uh, I just don't cook very often. Okay. And I've only got a one-bedroom apartment, so it'd be kind of hard to host like a awkward dinner party. Yeah. You, know? you can have a cracking orgy in there though, because you can all just fit in one room. True. Okay. <laughs> Easy. All right. Are yeah, we happy with this? I ranking? think this one's We're good. Happy with this ranking, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
It's all fun and games around here at Dream League until it's time for business. More business now as we get through to day number three of group stage two. It's time for Team Spirit versus Aurora. PogChamp Pandas, play me in. Thank you very much to the PogChamp Pandas, although my day accuracy was a bit off. It's actually day two of Group Stage 2, mm. and I've got a new number two by my side. It's Kazoo. I wasn't, I thought I was just an analyst today, nope, but you've been you're a co-host. Promoted, I mean, that, demoted, no, I'm Whatever, shifted. dude. That just Wait, means I can do whatever I want. Everybody pointed him so he feels singled out. No, I feel special. I can do whatever I want as a co-host. I could literally walk off and it's going to be a All right, let's not take any lessons do from it. Ted here. Calm down. From Jenkins. Or Jenkins. No. Jenkins. <laughs> he does not have very many role models to look up to. I have none. <laughs> I'll be serious. Be your own co-host then, Kessie. What kind of style would you like to have? Are you going to be more analytical? As no, tech let's just, role would... no, let's just talk about some stuff. Let's just talk about some stuff. I, I, I talked about shit. stats and like showing clips the other days. You don't have to do that. Let's talk about Quincy Crew. He stole my I, I, I suggested What that. everybody can What went wrong? In Ezra? Quincy Crew. What went wrong? Yeah, wait. So recap us on your time getting on to Quincy Crew. Yes. As everyone has been aching to know. Yes. Of course. I'm well, dying. I coached this man over here. That's Mr. Right. Avery Silverman. True. I remember. Quinn was the mid. There was Les on the offline. Some other people like your Warren Mojo were also on the team. Okay. Let's Seems see. Like Where do we start? Success. I mean, yeah. The yeah, team, what happened? The team did have skills, so I can start with the boot camp. I remember, I think Yavar was playing a bad pub, so then he was really angry. Do you remember his headset? <laughs> it's coming back to me, unfortunately. This, he was like basically playing with a headset where one of the like the ear things, earlobes, whatever, yeah. it's basically like hanging this far down because <laughs> he basically just straight up destroyed it. I see. So that's the first part. And I think the second part that people don't know, Avery Silverman actually gives very good speeches. This guy, surprisingly Ooh. enough, he's a good captain and he'll give you good pep talks. Really? But That's he has true. never That's let true. people actually see the side of him. Let me tell you something. The only reason we didn't get turbo last in that <laughs> <Turbo>. was because <laughs> I gave a hell of a speech. And then we lost. <laughs> <laughs> but that speech got us through that BO1. Who'd you beat? Lanham. <laughs> 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 If he you, didn't beat a team, he beat the <laughs> Lanham. Lanham. Yeah, because the meme the meme is if you go through my entire history as a player, I've never lost a Lanham on land. <laughs> well. Ever. He's the only guy I can beat. I don't, I don't know why. In your is cap. that actually true? Yeah, okay. it's actually true. I'm like 8 and 0 versus him all the time. <laughs> Damn. And like 0 and 10 versus the rest of China. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky. Impressive feat. All right, well, Kezu said something very nice about you. Avery, I think it's about time you return the favor. What did Kezu do? Is he capable of doing that? Let's on find Quincy out. Crew that you were impressed by. Honestly, I don't remember much of that team. Um, Relax. I do remember that Kezu. Say it, bring it. No, just say it, dude. <laughs> Put the camera on him. He's looking weird at me. No, you're the one who's giving uh, this plaudits is a, right this now. This is a very normal look, anyway. Please, Please continue. This is a healing space. I think Kezu did impress me that run. Okay. He had very good insights into what we should be doing at certain times in those games, and nobody was capable of executing it. Mm. <laughs> I felt really bad for him. The, the thing is, actually, when we, I'm just going to say we lost against OG at that TI, I'm pretty sure that series, with better players, they would have won. You put us a team that has 10% more skill, OG will not win that series. Well, then you had the strategy. Do you remember? Yeah, I feel like if we had a coach with 10% more coaching <laughs> I was ability. I to say, 10% more skill. We would have won that start series. start this by saying that the team had skill? Yeah, I'm just saying they had enough, but not <laughs> enough at that. Dude, they're, we were up like 20k gold. They have one Thompson Void Spirit. Thompson Void Spirit. Against like a Magnus and a Lion, and he just I mean, destroys everyone fair, on though, the map. That guy was having an awful tournament. Yeah, and then he goes Super and Saiyan mode. I remember our strat for that series going into that game. I was like, okay, yo, guys, this Tops guy ain't doing shit. We just need to <laughs> shut Sumail down. He's the only reason this team is a winning game. Oh, that was the Sumail OG. Yes, yeah. we shut him down. Ooh. He can't carry. 
Thompson's going to flops it all over, and then we win. <laughs> and I was like so confident in that strat. And then we go yeah. there, and this guy goes like 40 and 2 in two games. Just woke up. Yeah, he had like the two games of his life. He played yeah. Dawnbreaker mid. I don't think those were the games of his life. I'm pretty sure. The crew. I'm yes. sure that I am Thompson's Lanham. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> like Thompson sees me, and this guy just he's like God undefeated. Damn. Yeah, and I don't even think he knows who I am. That's the saddest <laughs> part. Like, I, I don't think he even knows who we were. He's like, oh, that team that I knocked out of like 14 eyes. Yeah, who was on there? Else? Yeah, <laughs> didn't care. I saw this guy's face. I just don't like yeah. him. But that's Dota too. That's the highs and the lows. That's why people love the game. That's why they come back to it. They can't get enough. The drug, you know, eliminating people you don't even know who they are. Just, oh, gets Wait, me so what excited happened, thinking about it. What happened after that, though? If if you he was such a good coach, and he was such a good captain. Oh, I, mean, I mean, we disbanded. Didn't, yeah. I'm pretty sure Avery just quit. You you stopped playing. Was yeah, that, was that mean, the one you quit? <laughs> stuff happens. You Is know? that the one you quit? <laughs> what? No, after that, I decided to play with them. <laughs> Oh right! That's right. I was that's about to say yeah. there was some point in time where you decided to play with them. I shouldn't. I should have done what he did, which is just stop. <laughs> you know, like I should have just stopped. Yeah. Go out on not turbo less. <laughs> so wait, yeah. whoa! But let's go back to this. I'm sorry. You you join this team. You're like, oh, they're they're skilled. Yeah. You you go to this TI. You watch them. You say to yourself, they're not skilled enough. If they had a little bit more skill, they would have won that game. Mm -hmm. And then you put yourself on the roster. Is I mean, that what I'm I didn't, hearing from I didn't that? put myself on the <laughs> roster. I'm not even saying that the team was bad, but the experience in the team, it was just, you know, it was not the right time. Mm. Mm. You were ahead of your time. Whatever you want to say. A different era of Kezu could have succeeded. Probably. The two years before Kezu, maybe. Wait, how does that, uh, how does that experience, your coaching experience with Avery, compared to your other coaching experience? I didn't have so many coaching experience other than... I did something with OG at some point, like two years ago, but that yeah. was like some one month behind the scenes kind of thing. So that was basically the only, I guess, real coaching. I would say it was a good experience. I think coaching, I would say the people who understand Dota, or the really good coaches, let's say like AUI or maybe Zhao Aid, I think that goes a lot more into this role than what people think. Like it's not just some, oh guys, I'm going to help you feel better. Like their strategy and like making sure that there aren't enough like many problems, that you fix it between the players, that people who have ideas that you bounce back and forth to actually, like I always go back to OG and Ana with Ayo. If some random team go, their carry goes, oh, I think carry Ayo is good. And some other captain will go like, <laughs> you dumbass, like what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, I, whereas I in, said that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whereas, whereas instead they'll be like, oh shit, like how do we make it work? Like what do you need? Some Abaddon, like, you know, they'll take it the next level. Well, that actually became quite poetic there from mm. just aimlessly shitting on these two <laughs> who are far better at Dota than I could ever hope to be. Maybe if you were coaching this OG, they wouldn't have gotten 2 0 Kazu. As we look to what happened yeah. earlier today. They would have gotten 3 0 <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> That boom team ended up taking a 2-1 over Extreme Gaming at the top of today, followed by what was looking to be a 1-1 split from OG, turned into a very surprise 2-0 from Team Falcons. That was at the first half, and now we, in the second half, are going to be getting into Aurora versus Team Spirit, and closing out the night with Shopify Rebellion versus Gaming Gladiators. Hmm. Mm. That's a spicy one right there. The last one with your boy Artur. Quinn versus the region he abandoned. True. Mm. 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 But that's for dessert. Let me give you the appetizer mm. first. It's going to be Spirit <laughs> taking on Aurora. Welcome, friends. It's game time where we're watching Spirit take on Aurora, and I've got two new faces joining me. We got Ooh. BSJ as my tech analyst. Not used to that. I'm usually used to seeing you sitting there. Yeah, let's see what he's doing. I'm sorry. You bet. The bar has been set very high, and I've got company man Ted rocking an ESL shirt right now. Hire this man for your birthdays and weddings well, and Dota well, events. I don't do birthdays or weddings. I do weddings, <laughs> but I don't like birthdays. <laughs> weddings well. only because you're so youthful. No, it just uh, reminds me. 
how old I am. Anyway, let's move along. <laughs> let's move along. Yeah, we've got a we've got a hell of a game coming up here, uh, my friend. We do. If it's anything like last night, it's not this one though. It's gonna be. Neither oh, no. of these two teams are participating. No, that team just played. Falcon. They just won. Can we uh, remove these hands from gentlemen from the wall and bring on Team Spirit? Aurora versus Spirit. It's common. It's common. Uh, so I, I was quite harsh on Aurora. I was, I was trying to get to sleep last night mm. because I ate that ice cream, which really disagreed with Half me. Half-baked. Really don't eat that ice cream. I honestly was almost sick in the cab home. That's I was true. lying awake for a little while feeling a bit bad. And I thought, you know, I was a little rude to old uh, Snorora or Borora or Aurora Borealis. I call them all these names. If you've got a way to win, it doesn't matter if I'm excited by it and interested. Play the way you want to win. Play the way you want and win. That's all I'm saying. I want to apologize to them. Well, I agree with you, but they also didn't. They didn't really show up. Hey, so they let's showed do, up. Let's do a mixture of They both. did exactly what they wanted to do. They sent the audience to sleep, and if that's your game plan, so be it. Yeah, Brian, so this, is what, this is what we were able to witness yesterday. We did not get to catch too much Aurora during group stage one, and you also did not get too much Aurora in your first shift days. So our understanding is that Aurora plays slow Southeast Asian Dota, and while Lornoff has been a good spice addition, uh, they did not really exhibit any spice in their series against Shopify Rebellion. They kind of got memed on. Yeah, it looked like when I looked at that the drafts, they had the whole anti-mage still farming for yep. next game meme. Uh, <laughs> yeah. When I looked at their drafts, like the heroes that they actually were successful, a lot of the on the side of Aurora, a lot of them were very mobile heroes, hard to catch, split pushy, draw out the kind of game. We're looking at Marana four and two, Puck four and one, Morph two and one, Bat three and zero. Oh, you know, maybe the anti mages of the world zero oh and two. But on top of that. I was looking, I was like, oh, their most successful support is actually Shadow Demon, who bails them out of trouble. I've been looking at a lot of these okay. series where a lot of the clutch saves in particular, like there's a lot of safe supports in Dota, but Shadow Demon's the one shining. They're four and one with him right now. And when we compare that to Team Spirit, a team I have watched a lot, yeah. uh, the story we've been saying is, do they have point click stuns on the side of Team Spirit, especially on Collapse? to basically punish the split pushing that a lot of these teams like to do. Also, do they have it to set up the fights that they want? So when I compared Collapse's picks with heroes that have reliable stuns to yep. heroes that do not have reliable stuns, Collapse is 0-1 on Viper, 1-4 on Kunkka, 0-1 on Timber, 0-1 on Doom, and a total of 1-7 on heroes with no reliable stun. You know, Kunkka has X, but it's not like the same as stunning somebody point blank range. On heroes that do have stuns, Centaur, 2-1, DK, 2-1, Slardar, 1-0, Primal, 1-0, Mag, 1-0, a total of 8-2. and two. Okay. So basically what I'm seeing is split push on one side, a lot of mobile guys, and then the team that really needs to have stuns on one particular player. So I've got my eye on Collapse's hero, and I've got an eye on how his hero is going to come into play catching the mobile guys that Aurora picks up. That's trend-worthy, especially because I know, Ted, you're all about the eels. These slippery heroes that are too difficult to catch because you can't get a grip on them. Yes. If you get a point and click stun on collapse, it seems like that may be a step in the right direction. I I, don't, I always feel like, um, I mean, I'm, I'm probably wrong here, but I don't see Spirit as a team that, that plays eel Dota. No. They're more taking over the map, pun punishing your mistakes, really closing out games and just feeling like an oppressive rolling machine that just gets picked up. This is when they're playing well. Um, a slippery snake, an eel-like team mm -hmm. would have like Puck, Wind Ranger, I don't know, maybe, maybe Morph. You know, heroes that can get away, can choose when to come in and engage. So yeah, I, I would understand if you're a team that wants to catch the enemy and kill them, like like Spirit. If you're up against a team that's an, that's eel-like and you don't pick any stuns, what are you thinking? You're gonna lose that game. You're just gonna be chasing them around, and they're gonna have some Morph or some AM just off farming. Didn't work when we saw them yesterday, of course. Uh, they just kind of got closed out. I feel like Shopify Rebellion had like a ton of ways to to kill people. They had Mars, they had OD and Sven, right? So they were just able to to catch people and blow them up. So I think if you're gonna play against Aurora. You're either going to put them back on their high ground, they're going to happily stay there and just hold you off forever, to what end, I don't know, or they're going to play this eel dota and you're going to be unable to catch them. But I feel like if you play against Aurora, like just to like add on to the point, you must want to just want to kill them. When you look at their gameplay, they're just farming, like splitting the silence and making that happen. But do you feel like the reason why they've lost so often when Collapse was not on a stun, did they not cover for him, like in the draft with other heroes? Yeah, I feel like the way Team Spirit operates right now is like, they're really good at picking the fights when they're allowed to. Like the games where they're losing, they're down by like one or two K and they just 
they make some weird move with collapse on Kunkka, and yeah. then it ends up being slow, meaning like it takes five, ten seconds to actually kill the guy that they're ganking. And then when you see him on a hero like Mag or Centaur, he just gets bursted and suddenly, like, that's not the same story. Yeah, yeah and it's also a clash of ideas between the carries as well. 23 Savage, self-proclaimed best morphling in the world, versus what many people would consider to be the true best morphling in the world of Yutoro. But what else do you know about Yutoro? If it's not very much, don't worry, I've got just the video for you. Yutoro, Yutoro. The name on everyone's lips. After winning TI twice and Riyadh Masters 2023 with Team Spirits, Yutoro was widely considered to be one of, if not the best carry player in the world. With a huge hero pool, innovative builds, and extreme skill in every aspect of the game, he is a player to watch out for, especially when he shaves his head for the bald buff. After an extremely successful 2023, Team Spirit decided they needed a break. Or maybe they just wanted to give other teams a chance to win something? Either way, they skipped ESL1 Kuala Lumpur to rest up. Despite almost every single team making changes in some capacity, Team Spirit keeps sticking together through thick and thin. They really do have some great Team Spirit. Uh, I think I just have uh, the best team ever. Despite being a relative newcomer to the professional scene, he always seems to adapt to any meta with great speed. It is no secret that Yatoro is a huge fan of Ame, making his 2021 TI win against him even more special. Let's see if Team Spirit can prove themselves yet again and score some sweet, sweet EPT points in the process. Maybe they'll be the first team ever to win two Riyadh Masters? Well, they were exceptionally close already in the very first Riyadh Masters. It was them against then LGD, the Ame LGD. Uh, they ended up losing the Grand Finals too. And then Riyadh Masters 2023, they turn it around, get themselves a fat prize pool. Five dollars, Ted, that's all he had to his name. Five dollars. Five buckaroos. And then he added a bunch of commas and zeros to that afterwards. He did. That's simple. How it's that even, simple. What tournament even, like, how do you win five dollars? What he must have played like the most amateur no, tournament. I think he just ever. had five dollars. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That they recorded on Liquipedia. Like they asked <laughs> for his bank account. We, we yeah, they looked at this. They looked at this balance. <laughs> he we begged a friend of his that he could beat him in last hits one v one mid. It was like I bet you five bucks. Here you go. And he won the five bucks. Liquipedia were like, we're counting that. Good there enough. are some amusing earnings from our talent. I know Cap consistently gets roasted because I think his Liquipedia says he's earned like forty seven dollars in competitive earnings or something like that. You did a few Twitch rifles. What's your esports earnings I right think now? it was like 30,000 because of DPC. Oh, like it, true, it, okay. It, it, got, it got a little So busted. the pre-NA DPC era, what was your esports I think it was earnings? like 9,000 or something. Nice, was yeah. that WESG? It was a lot of last places at Lance. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if you want to know how much, you know, eight last places are, it's about 9,000, guys. Were they all the, the country t uh, tournaments? The you, you and four other USA players? Uh, he has a few of those, but it was also like, we did one Dream League, like where it was, it wasn't oh, like a yeah. Dream League, but it was like one of the minors. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, the Dream League minor back then. And then uh, I went to two minors, so. The Got golden days. Place. Yeah. The minor major days. system. Yeah. yeah. These are all different eras of Dota. I wonder if we will look back fondly on the DPC leagues as well. Yes. I think right now all the players are very eager to get out of that system, but who knows? A few years down the line, we'll be like, man, I really loved playing six weeks of one BO3 a week. Nobody yeah. liked that. <laughs> Those yeah. are I don't think that exact sentence will come out. Yeah. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> At least, especially for these two regions specifically, Southeast Asia and Eastern Europe, I think. Uh, I well, I, I think Eastern Europe actually did succeed quite a bit from the DPC system. I think that SDA kind of floundered a little bit and that they had so much intra-regional competition that only one team was ever able to get enough points to make it to majors or TI. But Eastern Europe grew a lot over the past three years. I'm shocked at how like robust not only their tier two players are now, but their tier one teams are consistently the best in the world. Yeah, I feel like the CIS, they had a lot of like young talent that like rose, I think, out of like the division two teams and division two, like division one teams that you have now with Bedboom that people still refer to as like the generation of miracle with like some of their players. Now you have Team Spirit where I feel like for Spirit, like for me personally, they're my favorite team to watch. It's maybe a little bit of bias, but I feel like no matter whether they're ahead or behind, they know exactly what they need to do in order to come back. And they don't just do one style of Dota. I feel like they do everything very well, whether it's team fighting, they're laning, they're strategizing. So I feel like you can never really count this team out. And to me, that's what really makes them like so exciting to watch.
I think a big part of the DPC, but also the COVID era, was the fact that a lot of the tournaments that were online during that period of time were Eastern and Western Europe combined. I remember yeah. watching Team Spirit at the first COVID land, like literally one month after COVID started, and it was them getting like eighth or ninth place, but they we were like, huh, this is like a new squad. They look kind of promising. I don't even think they were Team Spirit at that time. They were they were under yeah, submarine. Name. Yeah, actually, I played I played against them when I was in Vikings, and yeah, they were Yellow Submarine. I think they didn't have Mira, Mira yet. They had a guy called Soul Bad. But anyway, Collapse and Yotoro. I remember laning against Yotoro. He would like whoop our ass like every half time. <laughs> but my safe lane it was I think Celery and Chad. They got their ass kicked every single time <laughs> by this Collapse guy. And I was like, what is actually going on? And I watched some replays, and sometimes I couldn't like actually just straight up flame them. Because I just saw that this collapse, he was laning so freaking well. <laughs> like he already showed kind of like some, kind of like what Amar is doing right now in his games. It was actually incredible to look at. You know what's crazy is I remember when the Russian, the, the CIS teams were just the same players on a conveyor belt, yeah. on a carousel, Team Empire. Every single one of them oh, used yeah. to play for Team Empire at some point. <laughs> it was just this this circle where they this guy's left this team and gone this team, and it was like always the same names, and they never really did anything. No. Okay. It was like this post Navi collapse mm. of CIS teams, and now to yeah, see all these, I mean, Yator is like Wiley got is the best player in the world mm -hmm. coming out of that era. You think that's incredible? Like you would think that you'd need to have these big successful teams to foster to an environment where you'd get the next generation coming through. But instead, in this case, the opposite is true. You need to completely raise it and have basically no good teams and then someone would turn up. It's From the ashes incredible. they will rise. Indeed. Right. But FNG's been there like the whole time, through the whole thing, and he's yes. still going. That's yeah. pretty nuts. Five and like a Phoenix, they have re-emerged, which means that Aurora have a very uphill battle ahead of themselves. They already got 2 0 yesterday against Shopify Rebellion, and many of the cracks that we saw is that they don't really have a very good early game. And if they lose their lanes, they don't seem to have a very good way of stalling the game out enough to have their late game dominance ever show. So we'll see if that continues again tonight. Right now, they are targeting Collapse right off the bat. They ban out the Centaur, they ban out the Magnus. Meanwhile, Spirit take out the Chen, the Timbersaw, the Batrider, and the Dragon Knight. The way that tech, sorry Kazu, the way that tech has had those bombs laid out in perfect, <laughs> in a perfect pattern. Not just space, but like symmetrical. It was like geometric. It was beautiful. It was stunning. I think this lad's done this before. And a part of me thinks he can't wait for them to lose a lane so he can get <laughs> back to his base, start making those patterns. That's what he wants. I'd rather not. I mean, they, they are definitely used to the late game, but I feel like what happened to them yesterday in this early game and what happened to their mid lane, that is, I feel like that's a one-off. Like they usually they usually do a lot better with like their supports. They go mid to Lorenov, he does well. And like they just do the three-man ball, which most teams are just kind of known for because you have to do it. So I'm expecting Aurora to, uh, uh, they're going to show me more today than what happened yesterday. I haven't gotten a panel with you yet, Kazu, so I got a question for an offlane player. What's up with Mars nowadays? Like, I my theory is that Silver Edge being like a non viable item makes it so this hero's survivability at all stages is yeah. better, but is there more to it than that for your. I feel like it's not only that, I think also is that Mars has different builds now with what Amar is showing us. Like, you last patch you had like the Vlad's Mage Slayer, now it looks like you can rush Bling, you can rush. Uh, you can rush Yules like Amar is doing. I feel like you have nice build-up as well with Shiva's going down. You just build double Bracer. I feel like you don't have many bad matchups. I would say most of the meta carries, I don't think there's that many that even enjoy playing against Mars. Like right now, I feel like there's some where it's like, okay, like maybe some Nagas or some TBs, whatever you have. But I feel like even then, you can cover for it with items. And I feel like this hero has very few weaknesses right now. And then you just have this young kid called Amar who's just showing everyone, I can first pick this guy and destroy every single lane. So would you say he's like broken in the sense that he's reliable rather than he's just super powerful? Yeah, I would say his this hero strength is that he's super reliable if you can play the hero well. Okay. So Big then, if. Brian, as a carry player, then why can't the Life Stealers and the Ursas reemerge, the traditional Mars counters. Why are they not showing up with this hero being so goddamn popular? I will say, what based on what Kezu said, like the fact that he has multiple builds, like you can be a blink guy to catch all the range dudes, you can be a Yule's rusher to yep. deal with the heroes like Ursa and Troll. So, as a carry player, I always like to think of what items these enemy heroes naturally buy, and then I'm like, okay, what heroes are good against those items? And 
if the hero has numerous different items to buy, maybe I can pick something that lands against it pretty well, but I'm never thinking like he has no answer for me. Mm -hmm. Is there any other hero in the game as well? I mean, I, I I like seeing Mars in my games. He always is always fun. There's no one in the hero that, in the game that does what he does. He literally says, right, this is where we're fighting. Mm -hmm. You guys are not allowed into the fight. These guys are, and we can come and go, and we're just going to get in there. And it's just like you can change the whole sort of geographical situation of the fight. You can isolate people. You can you can inside and outside of the fight. It's very, very hard to deal with a good Marzol. It's like, well, suddenly they're picking the battlefield. And it's not like Ravage where everyone's stunned, but then they're back again. It's like for fl flipping two years, you're stuck in this cave in the gladiators. You've got to fight your way out, earn your way out, earn your freedom. I mean, right now, the best thing that I see people do against Mars is that you need to either, you need to also be able to choose your fights. Like, you need to match your own team fight against it. That's why, generally, I like heroes like, for, for example, I think some offlane conquer can be pretty good. You match it with the water park, or you get some Tidehunter. And you match that also, in my opinion, at least with carries that will get like a timely BKB, like some mid game BKB to make sure that when this guy blink arenas, that you aren't just dead. So what about something time. like Jug, so you could spin and just spin out of there? Why the, is Jug not popular? The problem is that all these heroes, honestly, they suffer against Mars in one way or the other. In Whether the lane, it's or? the laning, or that you can't actually kill him later, or that he's just going to build a Yules against they Jug, and then what? I mean, the thing about Jug also is half his Omni Slash alternates between back and front, so yeah. he actually, just half of his attacks do zero damage against right. Mars. So it's like a perfect example where, like, I don't like Mar uh, Jug against Bristleback or Mars mm -hmm. for that exact reason. It's, it's like, also, Jug's just an underwhelming hero. As a whole, so the fact that we're saying Mars is needing these answers, then the answers also have to feel good against the other four heroes. Yeah, in yeah. the game, there's a lot of BKB piercing right now. There's the Bat Riders, the Venges, stuff like this. The Shadow Demon as well, Demonic Purge, and Team Spirit have that as their first pick. Second phase bans filter through OD, taken out by Team OD, taken out by Team Spirit. That's a interesting. Second phase ban before they even show a mid and Naga and Morphling. It is not well. interesting in the because sense that Team Spirit has been OD'd like three times this tournament. Uh, two, really? two, yeah. two of them when they were troll on Yatro. Ah. So it's like, and they were not pretty games. So this is maybe a bit of PTSD going on from mm. Team Spirit. Fair. Like if any other team banned OD, I'd be like, on the same page with you, but for them specifically, there is some history with this hero and it was yeah. not fun. Actually, also, like, when you're second pick, you only have one ban. I think today I'm getting it correct. That This time you are yeah, correct, so yes. Yesterday I was swap, <laughs> but when you only have one ban, you need to think ahead of what you want later on, because like Brian is saying, they, they got owned by a, let's call it a surprise pick. So it's very likely that they're setting up either some Morph or maybe Troll. Never mind, Morph got banned. But it's kind of like just to make sure whichever one you want is protected. Aurora pick up a Phoenix and a Tusk as their support duo. This is an action draft so far, though, from Aurora. Yeah, I'm more optimistic today than I was yesterday. <laughs> but, I mean, Tiny, this hero is just... I, I'm trying to think, that this hero is either nerfed into complete non-existence or is in every game. And it's mm -hmm. like, it's in pro games and in pub games, it's the same thing. It's like, if you don't really know what to pick and you want someone to run around and blow people up, you just pick Tiny. And now you've got this kind of Tiny build to go for as well. So you, it's just, this hero is just, I don't know what it is about him. What is it about him that means? I was going to say that conceptually, displacement in Dota is one of the most powerful things out yeah. there. Yeah. Batrider, Venge, Tiny, anytime these heroes are... Dare I are... say, Pudge. Pudge. Honestly, anytime you can lane with Pudge, like in a patch where it feels good to lane with him, Pudge is broken. Like, yeah. just traditionally, Pudge has like zero armor and like bad laning abilities. But ever, over time, when these heroes, you feel like they can get out of the early game, like just the whole idea of skill and positioning and team fight coordination, and you're just, you know, thousand units away from your team. Yeah, it's a broken idea against good players. Yeah, I was talking about this hero on the drive. Yeah, with me. I we heard were it. literally talking about this. We, I was like. Why is no one picking Grimscrope? Because we were trying to list supports that people want to play. Mm -hmm. Supports that have wave clear or supports that can like deal with creeps in general. Because there's so much money on the map, you've got to keep up. But also, maybe your carries are off farm in the jungle. You need One of the supports needs to go and push some waves. And I was like, well, Grimstroke has wave clear. But as yeah. Pezu pointed out, you tend to max ink swell on this hero over the paint. So you're not clearing waves with it. But I'm also thinking he's generally not going to be asked to clear waves until he's maybe got a few levels and strokes of fate anyway. Yeah, you're generally going to be wanting to like play with your mid hero, which in this case I like because this should be a mid tiny. And I think tiny, you cannot just put it mid. You need what heroes, what teams have started to do is ET. ET as a five, or you have a Grim as a four or five too. Make sure that when this hero goes in, 
he's gonna stay alive or that the guy he goes on he just straight up dies so i like what spirit are going for here uh with the faces void i would also say that spirit notoriously with their two supports um they always have a lot of scaling and i would actually say a lot of heroes who are good against void traditionally are heroes that throughout the game shouldn't be too happy playing against a grim or an sd yeah okay i got a question for you now um when you when you grim ult can Tusk snowball? No, he cannot snowball when leashed. Can Puck phase shift? You can phase shift, but you can't But he can't jump. orb walk. You can orb, but you can't jump. Can yeah. Phoenix Icarus dive? No. So why have they picked Puck when they've already got two heroes that can't use a mobility? Uh, I was going to say that not only on top of that, because I agree with that, that's a good mm -hmm. question, but it's also been revealed to be a core Tiny, and Tiny's always been considered good against Puck, so... To be honest, on top of what you already said, I don't know why they picked Puck. I think 18th pick is the most important pick for first pick team in terms yep. of winning the draft, and I think this is a very underwhelming Puck pick. So. I, I do think the one thing that Puck has going for him against Grim is that you you don't really stack with people in the fight. It's very unlikely True. you do get soulbound because you single people out more, or you're more likely to go on the Grim and the SD. But I like the Grim against the Tusk a lot whenever you soulbind the one target that he may want to save the moment he blinks in, like you guys were saying. There's no snowball available. Maybe they're thinking that the Tusk and the Phoenix like follow-up damage into the coil can like change the way the tiny puck interaction goes. But I would agree with Brian. I'm not too sold on this puck for now. You also have the Tusk Axe kick combo with puck, like with the break coil. Mm -hmm. So there's something to be considered there. Like Finch puck has always been a combo. So what would you think about carries here, Brian? I would say that some of the for Aurora, because okay. they're going to have to pick out of phase. You see Faces Void, which I would say is a, it's a scary hero. When this hero is not addressed or you don't have a good matchup, you are very likely going to lose the longer the game goes. They're going to pick Wraith King. Everybody uh, picks Wraith King when they see a I know they have Shadow Demon Grim, but I would probably still pick something like Luna, something just reliable that is meant to get its timings and enable the team to do theirs. Like. I think that bonus damage on Mars and Puck adds up a lot in mm -hmm. the five to ten minute mark. So I would like the problem with carry in a game like this is on paper everything's bad against like Void, SD mm -hmm. stuff like this. It just feels bad. So you, I think you just have to pick something for your game that's yeah. going to have like you mentioned about Mars just being reliable. Mm -hmm. I would just want my hero to get out of the laning phase and get to play Dota. So what about something like a PA? We saw a PA yesterday. You can blow up the Void, maybe you could blow him up in the time. The issue with that is that since you don't see your lane count or your lane opponent, like PA is a very volatile hero. And if you lose the lane, you don't have like a jungle to retreat to. Yeah. So in theory, it's good against the matchups you see. And they might go, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they do decide to go some jump guy. That's meant to kill the void. But jump guy. Yeah. Slark is still in the pool. He's a jump guy. Don't do it. Uh, the problem with Slark is that the he support sucks. abilities, you can't dispel them. You can't dispel Grimstroke's ult, his bug. I'm his really kidding. The hero's fine, but his win rate in this tournament, Brian, is... Yeah, it's like 4 and 12. <laughs> pretty bloody awful. It's pretty bad. I did just get done checking that because it was like we all left for this tournament like two days after the sub patch came out, and Slark was... Like the most broken hero in the previous yeah. patch. I know Void was getting picked more, but Slark's win rate in pubs was like 55%. You guys say that about half the heroes in the game. This hero's the most broken hero. Slark game. was you the most broken carry it. last patch, 100%. It's not a ban Omni. I, I do think what you've been talking about with Luna is kind of when it looks hard, like what you need or what you can pick against the enemies, I think it's very nice if you can try to rely more on what can I help my team with to like break the game open and play on tempo. So I would like the Luna, or at least I don't see anything else that really stands out to me that I would feel great about. Honestly, I thought Sven too, but it's so bad against Void in the carry-to-carry -carry matchup. It's like okay against Shadow Demon in the sense that you can buy an Ag, so you have built-in mobility. I think of any carry that just gets purged and sucks mm -hmm. uh, as being bad against Shadow Demon, and I, that's why I didn't even suggest Sven. Yeah. Also, Razor's still in the pool. They did not ban that out, and so they opted for the Omni Knight ban. Mm -hmm. I personally don't like Razor as much against Sven. I feel like he can overpower him. I could see something like a Slardar offlane or anything that gives you some secondary combo with a Grim or you get Primal. like some team fight. When you move a tiny mid? Yeah, I think, yeah, tiny, I like mid, I think tiny mid against Puck. Yeah, tiny is pretty much mid by default, I think, already. Um, I'll say anything that can help Void, like dish out damage in a Chrono, plus you have a secondary Inkswell, would be cool. Axe! Finally! Axe! I've That's been begging for finally. more Blink Disablers. Yes! I like it. Oh, Collapse Axe. Oh, <laughs> I'm salivating. Careful. <laughs> Our casters I'm are very excited off in the distance. This is, this is probably my all-time favorite hero to play. 
and it is I get very to see satisfying. Collapse play it. I love this. I would I say hope he's got the underpants set. That's the only axe set that exists. I would game. normally hate axe into tusk, but you guys mentioned it earlier. If he blinks, like with ink swell on, and yeah. then they leash the target axe goes on, you can't blink with tusk and save him because of the leash canceling snowball. So it's one of those interesting picks where there's one to one matchups where I don't like it, but it's really enabled by what Team Spirit has going, and it yeah. should farm pretty well against Fence. So. Who you I, like the, I like the I like the team spirit draft a lot. I yeah. think the puck picks underwhelming also. I'll go with Spirit too. They also have a lot of ancient stacking with SD and Grim for Axe. They're gonna help him out. Mm. He can build the shard against Sven. Sven won't actually kill you oh, when yeah. you proc your spin later on, which will kind of destroy the hero. I hope for Aurora that they have good lanes, because if they're even or fall behind by 15-20 minutes, I think they're done. You've got Miposhka Grim, which is great, and you've got Collapse Axe, which I can't wait to watch, so I'm all in on Spirit. I will say the, the one shortcoming that you mentioned with Tusk countering Axe, is it even that important for Collapse to be getting like the primary initiation? Because he's got Laurel mid on Tiny. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, honestly, he can be an initiator for one guy. He doesn't have to look for some set right. call, right? He can just be the one that forces a reaction, then Tiny gets to pick and choose his targets from there. Like The thing about the Tiny Puck matchup is, you just need Puck to reveal the positioning, and yeah. then Tiny will blow you up. So I think Collapse's job this game is to be the guy that forces that reaction so that the Void and the Tiny can follow up on the chaos that is ensuing. My eyes are also a little bit on Q on the Tusk. I feel like maybe he can like go safe lane and offset Collapse's early game and like make early stuff happen, because yeah, I really think the early game for Aurora has to go well. Put the, put the A right there underneath me. I did it You're twice camera, so during Shopify go. Rebellion. I'm going to do it again <laughs> one more time at the minimum as we get into game number one with the PogChamp Pandas. Right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Team Spirit versus Aurora, where we are going to witness the Kallax in action. His second most played hero, one of his most successful heroes, right after his Magnus, up against a team that they matched previously in uh, the other group stage. And, well, it was an interesting outcome, to say the least. They had a 61-minute game, game one, which Aurora won. And then uh, Team Spirit said to themselves, what the hell are we doing? We shouldn't ever be going past 45 minutes against Aurora. And they crushed them in 18 minutes in game two. Could see a repeat here. This looks like a very strong draft from them in terms of the scaling, which is usually where Aurora wins its game. So if you're not going to beat them in the ultra late, I feel like you might just be in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what they can pull out here, but I kind of agree with the analysis. Like, you need a strong early game to put this Sven in a position where he can carry this game, because he is up against Chrono, BKB Pierce, Shadow Demon Old, BKB the Pierce, a, a Link from the Grimstroke, the Axe Call, potentially Tiny Ags later. I mean, I don't know. It looks like an impossible Sven game in terms of the really late game. I like the support duo in terms of what they can do in the team fight, but this is a lineup that wants to get out ahead off lanes and punish the greed. Surprise! Jabs on his walk back to lane, gets surprised by Team Spirit, who decided to set up a little ambush up in the triangle, and they'll run him down for first blood. That'll be claimed by Maposhka. Well, that is a big pickup for the lineup that just wants to stabilize here. A lot of extra gold in his pocket. He can buy a lot of regen, feed it to the void. No problem. This lane is going to be free farm for Laurel. No way around it. Tiny just wins this matchup, and I feel like Axe is also going to free farm here. So we're talking about an early game that needs to go well for Aurora. I don't think they can really crush these lanes. It might come down to some crazy execution, but it looks tough. Yeah, I feel like uh, a lot of this game is reliant on Lornoff doing really well because he both has to, like, you want him to win his lane. He needs to be able to create a lot of space and action oh, in the early game. I? And I think he kind of needs to scale since we have all of these problems with the Sven. But he's matched up against a Tiny that is just... Hard to see how this puck is going to have a really exceptional game, which is what he needs. Tiny is poised to shut him down, but if he can get there, I mean, I can see Puck doing some heavy lifting in these fights, especially in those later game fights where you maybe don't want to be focusing him because Sven and Mars are up in your grill. There's some potential. 
We'll see how much Laurel can extract from this laning phase, though. I I always expect Tiny to pull ahead with it a little, and if you can contest that six-minute power rune, take it away from the puck, you're in a really happy spot. It's bottom lane, jabs in Q in the double melee. Tusk and Mars versus Grimstroke, so I'm going to assume this is not going to be a good time. This looks like a really good Inkswell lane. I'm sure they'll be able to farm and stuff, but I'm just not anticipating them being able to get any kills and really snowball things. That's why I just don't see either of these side lanes really picking up the tempo for Aurora. Maybe the puck rotations can secure later, or you bring the Tusk mid if somehow you get Tiny low. But that's another problem with this mid matchup, is Puck doesn't really chip Tiny down to create that threat. So maybe your best play is to bring the Tusk top, uh, as the panel mentioned, just trialing this axe at a certain point. Get one or two cheeky kills on Collapse, and then all of a sudden, your spend is starting to snowball more. You can stack some jungle. He gets to that 1,000 CS mark like we saw yesterday. Oh. So, so far, I don't think 23 is going to be setting any records here as they have been de denying some creeps on him and the range creeps. Not having a free time here. Oh, no. Mira got one yeah. and Collapse got the other one. So, that is, that is a rough one. You really need experience for support Phoenix. Getting to level three and level five is super important to have a presence in the lane. You don't want to be stuck on level one fire spirits, man. It sucks. This is a man fight. A man fight that Q will win. Fade That's some memory. nice solo XP for him. Got it. Interesting that Mapochka got stuck all the way over there, but I think he was fighting to block that big camp. Doesn't want to let the pull get up. Can't really blame him for it. Gets out traded. Double Wraith Band's already up for Yatoro, though. I mean, he's chilling down here. This is just not a lane that's going to pressure the void. Yeah. He has too much escape mechanism. Time dilation is obnoxious. Too much armor for the physical to pierce through. And that's a scary thing. I feel like when Void is free farming a lane and you, you don't see a way to kick him off, it's not really a scarier hero in Dota. Outside of Lightning Hand Zeus, of course. Of course. In which case, it uh, goes back to, well, we're going to need the, the Puck to do something about it when he can. Make it a run for the Water Runes. Lornoff might just get some extra experience off of Kill Maposhka, though he doesn't quite have the damage. Would have been much... Mm, Four stacks. Yeah, he's this got a lot. If he gets a fifth one, oh, not quite enough. Mira will die. They'll trade out supports. XP to the Phoenix. 23 happy he doesn't die. He can clean up a range creep here. But Axe is having a pretty good time. I don't know. I don't feel like I remember the last time. <laughs> What's going on here? Misses the ice shards there. And Inkswell will stop that attack animation. Jabs is thinking about running in, going for the spear, but... I can't remember the last time we casted a Collapse Axe scheme where he lost. Yeah, he really doesn't lose that. I just much. don't remember him losing on this hero. I don't know what it is about this hero. I, I think it has to just be that obviously Collapse is the most Giga Chat offlaner. And Axe is the most Giga Chat offlane hero. And if yeah, you combine those two... That makes sense to me. It's unbeatable. Who would be giving him the, the run for his money as a Giga Chad offlaner? Collapse Magnus. No, come on. Another plate. Because <laughs> uh, I was thinking, like, Ice 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 was pretty Giga Chad back in his day. Yeah, he was. That, that guy played 1v3 lanes and would get kills out of him. I don't know, man. Feels like a lot of the modern offlaners are just kind of nerdy, dude. Yeah. Or they're, or they're carry players, which doesn't count. Yeah. Maybe like Sumail offlane. That was pretty Giga. <laughs> that was Giga <laughs> Chat. Right, that was Giga. Man. No, that was Giga Chat for different reasons. Why was that Giga Chat? <laughs> I mean, you take the arguably the best mid laner of that time period and make it play offlane. That is a <laughs> Giga Chat move right there. <laughs> that is pretty. Uh, that's something else. Who made him do that? Now that I think back, was that Fear? Might have been. Ooh, Ooh. nice little sidestep, Maposhka. Damn. Yeah, he ain't going to get me, son. He sidestepped that... Uh, he's going in. Yeah, they're turning back into it. He's going to get a big Inkswell damage on Jabs, who needs Q's help desperately. Throws oh. out the spear. That one misses two. Two for one special. Oh, no. I mean, at least Q is going to be able to get some good damage on Yatoro while Time Walk is on cooldown. But Jabs isn't too happy with it. Maposhka's still an option here. No, he's fine. One more hit. He's not oh. fine. Wrong. No, I mean. <laughs> They gotta bring three heroes for the man. 
unfair fight. Hey, you were absolutely right, though. They try lane. Just not the run. <laughs> Not the Axe lane. I mean, this is a good move for Aurora. I think combining the supports in any of the lanes, this game is just going to yield good results for them. It's one way to accelerate the tempo, contest like Wisdom Runes, you automatically secure it here, get some extra core kills. Because again, this lineup can be slow for Team Spirit. Tiny's not known for early rotations to the lanes. He kind of wants to blink. This faceless Void is pressurable in a scenario where you can chase him down if you have the numbers. Yeah. So I like that move. We're seeing it reflect in the net worth here. They're, they're in a solid position. Much I mean, better early game than yesterday. Frankly, I'm just happy if they do anything because the last Aurora yes, series really we watched, slow. they we were making jokes backstage that they they didn't, they didn't really they were in a Dota game, but they didn't really play Dota. I feel like that day was just off for them. Maybe it was you know later match or, or whatever it was, but it was definitely a rough day. I think they went back, sat down, talked about it, and you know this is a team that can play Dota for sure. Yeah, they showed it in this group stage. They have very good results over the last year or two. Something was off about that series, but they're looking to rectify it here. And they're doing a decent job up in the laning phase, though Collapse does now have his blade mail, so off to go to the Ancients. Q and Ollie, this is a smart smoke. Yeah, they're looking for stacking, thinking the axe is going to go clear stacks. Maybe. Yeah, it's it smart, powers just too. wrong. Well, there aren't any stacks, Radiant so are scanning. that's still a, a win for them, I guess. Yeah, they brought Oh no, they'll run into Laurel. Laurel stacked right on top of him. Hits an avalanche combo on two. That brings them a little bit low. They'll Get try the and chase after 23. Are they not going to get anything out of this? Shadow Demon Disruption, maybe, on... Oh, he used the Inkswell on Disruption. Nice dodge with the Snowball, but really, he's just delaying the inevitable. So they'll get the Tusk out of it. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I mean, honestly, kind of sad for Aurora because this theory is correct. Yes. I think in a lot of games, Spirit would just stack that triangle for the Axe. They've done it before every time. And there'd be two or three, three or four stacks there. Mm -hmm. And then that invasion with the Sven makes a lot of sense, right? Unlucky that there's an Invis rune tiny, number one. And two, that Team Spirit were just playing the lane. Actually weren't that many stacks. Claps was just having a pretty good time, so... Like, the move was almost too good. Yeah. I mean, like especially with Shadow Demon, right? Like, that hero yes. doesn't have to be gone from the lane yeah. very long to actually stack up the uh, triangles. There's so. no way a year of Roar in this game and you're thinking they don't have anything there. Yeah. Dyer's but surprise, they did. Under Blade Mail first, also interesting. I mean, the, there used to be a day where Vanguard was the de facto and then Bale shifted it a bit. And now it's like, well, what early region item do you want on this hero? None of them really feel that great anymore. So you may as well just go Ooh, with the Blade Mail Blink. Missed the Spear on the are Spear Arena combo, and that also means that the supports have made this rotation for not. Jabs is, uh, I mean, maybe that was part of it. Part of why their game looked so off in the last series. Jabs specifically had a bit of an off game, right? I mean, he was missing abilities all over the place. I think like he was for it. doing the best in that series. Speared back. Avalanche slows him down. If they get any kind of bashes, kind of guaranteed that Jabs is going to get run down here. Resilenced. And he's tanky. He is tanky with Double Bracer's soul range. This is just not the position you want the Double Bracer phase boots Mars in. He's the strongest hero right now. It, it takes so much committal to bring him down. It's a hero you can fight around easily. Those offlane battles have just not gone Aurora's way. It has not clicked up. And it's going to cost them some tempo here because Collapse is just farming Ancients with this early blade mill. That's the benefit of it. And he is getting huge. And remember, this is not off some crazy stacking. This is him just clearing jungle. So that's time those supports are spending bottom to kill the Mars while the Axe continues to free farm and accelerate. He's going to have a fast blink blade mill here. See if he wants to use it right away or if he just keeps farming. What would your idea for this game be? Like, would you want your axe to be playing for some early pace? I don't think he needs to force it too much, honestly. Again, your lineup's kind of static and slow. You're happy to, to wait a little bit, maybe get tiny blink, play around your chronos. You can also just keep this concept in mind that if the axe is full resources with a teleport up, you can just play for the reaction. Like, if they go on the void, if they go on the tiny UTP blink blade mail call, that's a way better fight setup than you trying to like smoke and call a puck or something. Then Tusk gets a snowball, you're fire spirited. 
I think getting the blink here is correct, but I don't think it's a game where you have to aggressively force it. I think you can play through the tiny more than anything. Yeah, and I think he has that idea as well, because uh, he's looking at maybe Boots and Travels next. next. So I kind of assume he's just going to farm it out, let the team play through the Blink Dagger on Tiny, and if he gets Boots of Travel fast enough, he can just continue to farm while simultaneously joining those fights you're talking about. I do think Puck is the target you want, though, in this game. Sure. I think you're not going to find the Sven unless you really want to make a smoke to Triangle. Radiance if you can get the Tiny and the Axe connected on the Puck. Baiting out a TD. Oh, that's a good bait. The empty. Uh, 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 oh no! Is under attack. Didn't even get the rune. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower. That was one of the attack. most well coordinated fuck ups I've ever seen. Yep. That was beautiful. I mean, only absolutely team awful. Fuck up like that. Yeah, that's what like, I'm saying. Literally, like, only that was like a two-time DI champ mess up right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. That, perfectly the executed, honestly. Instant attack. toss on the double blink and get the rune denied. Run away and Shane missed the call in the second blink. <laughs> Takes real skill to mess up like that. See, that's the difference between a team like Team Spirit and your average Herald pub. Mm -hmm. Your average Heralds are not messing up a play to that quality. Round two. It's going for Jabs, well. who was so close to his blink dagger, too. But he might and not be in tanky. trouble. He's got a lot of team behind him. Now he's going to get blown up there. Supernova barely goes off. They don't have a way to stop this. Disruption. He'll come right back into an exploding sun. They'll back away. Just, I guess Shadow Poison stacks, making him a little bit skittish. They got those two kills, and they say, okay, got a decent chrono. amount out of it. Do Love not to see. Overchase. I, I'm I'm happy Aurora is stacked like that. I mean, yeah. Lornoff getting active. Now they're going to keep going, trying to run down Mira. Some help. Oh, the snowball is not going to make it. <laughs> He's going to get pulled away. And they got greedy, so they're going to miss yeah. out on both. Okay. Look at the tower, though. Nice last hit Radiance for 23, and they got the axe to come back in. Collapse wants to spend. This could be really bad for Collapse. If he dies a second time here, this could totally slow down his game. But Laurel is going to show up as well, and they'll blow up the Sven. Not quite. Uh, Sven has still a little bit more fighting power left, and he's going to beat down Laurel next. Oh, Team Spirit. You know, talk about the screw-ups. That was a big one for Team Spirit. I was about to say, this Sven is tanky, man. And this is why I was saying, I don't know if you want to make the aggressive jumps this game. These are hard heroes to go on, and the Phoenix just makes it really difficult. You get Fire Spirit, there's a Sunray going in, he can set the Supernova up. Axe does not deal that much damage to these heroes at this point in the game. Collapse overconfident. They pay a big price on that God Strength usage that got 23. So much damn gold. He is way out ahead now. I mean, his levels are super high, too. He's level 14. He's going to have a BKB soon. They're probably not going to kill him for quite some time now. He's close to Arteezy's pace. Can we check the CS, please? Can we get the CS record yeah, check? Please? That's very important. 15 minute CS record check. I mean, that's no not, not an Arteezy CS level, but. It's pretty good. I mean, for his involvement right now, 180 plus the 203 plus the last hit on the tower. Oh, BKB's already done. Broke apart the Echo Saber for a fast finish. So BKB, 15 minutes. I don't really know how you kill him now. It's tough. Again, a lot of the, the damage for Team Spirit's lineup comes scaling later on. This is the period in the game where you can abuse him a bit. They have really good lockdown on utility, and if they can kind of fight out, maybe they get you with the second round of spells, but it's kind of just all in on this tiny jump with Inkswell. Radiant That's what they're really scanning. looking for. If you can find supports, Team Spirit will be really happy, but if you're Aurora, as long as you don't show this Phoenix or just run the Tuscan, you should scanning. be pretty confident taking aggressive fights right now between the Mars and the Sven tank ability. And they're just going to run it down mid. Good catch. Another freebie, picking up the pace. Lornoff now on a killing spree, and his farm is doing very well. So we talked about, you know, the potential of Sven getting kited around these fights, having a hard time, even if he gets the farm, to do damage. But Lornoff would be able to pick up that slack if he has the net worth behind it, and he certainly does right now. He's doing a very good job farming. He's joined in a couple of these fights. He's got Witchblade, now going to work towards Kaya. He's in a very good spot. Arcane Rune on top of it means he's very strong for the next engagement. 
Yep, there he is. He's still there. The one potential problem here is the Toro is still kind of farming away. We haven't really seen his impact yet and how that could change things. We haven't really seen a Chronosphere. Yeah, Toro is a problem. But his hair grew back, so... Got that going for you. Yeah, it's, it's like a storing up power, though. Shave it again for another TI or Riot. Another quick pickoff. Closing in this map. Running out of space a little bit. You're going to find space on the void, but these supports are going to start to suffer. Keep bleeding these pickoffs. And 23 is in the commander seat, so to say. He can choose when and where these fights happen. The amount of net worth he's accrued. He wants to start forcing things like Roche. Definitely in the cards. He is giga strong right now. Level 16 and a half. That's four and a half higher than Yatoro here. That is ridiculous. The fan brace on him, 3,200 HP. So you have all this strength, you have all this net worth, you have all this, these levels. How do you use it though? Should they be doing Roshan right now? Do you want to pick up the, the pace on Roshan and like try and start that cycle early? Do you want to start taking these tier two towers? Do you just keep farming? I think tier two bottom, Roche, or Die. Smoke oh, for the scary. Void are all in the cards. Okay. Depends how fast they think they can get these done and how many heroes they have to commit. I don't think you just want to commit five heroes for any of this. I think the max is like three. Radiance you want at least two of the cores to continue farming, pressuring the map, so you just don't give up so much net worth advantage. But if you can do any of these things with three people, I think you're happy to do them. That, to me, is kind of the threshold here. Right now, it's been this this tag team here, Q and Jabs, just hunting the map. And they are closing off a lot of space. We're seeing this net worth continue to rise. Now, if nothing happens for the next three or four minutes, then I think you you smoke, you plant a ward on triangle, you look for that void or axe jump, or you go for the Roche. I would go for the Roche first because there is a chance Spirit read that type of move and they just plant defensively with Shadow Demon. And if you jump in with Sven or Mars and that void gets disrupted, that team fight looks a little iffy. Right. Whereas if you have Aegis, I don't think you care. You just go. So I think this is the correct sequencing here. Are you, like, they are stacking five, which you said you kind of wanted to, like, yeah, I, I don't maintain think this, heroes on map. I don't think this move would, requires five. I think you could have done it with three. Because I don't think Spirit are going to contest this. But, you know, no harm, no foul. If you want to play it safe, okay. Yeah, I mean, they do it fast enough that it really doesn't cost them that much. We'll see how quickly they can get back out on the map here. It's Team Spirit gotten some farming time out of this. Still up by 6k on Aurora and now have an Aegis in their pocket. See how they're able to use that Aegis to take some objectives. I mean, I'm assuming... I, I, I like the five stack there because... We'll see if they do it. I like the five stack where you can go and then you take the towers at this top lane and then you play for their Tormentor and their Wisdom. I think you combine all of those objectives into one five-man ball. I think that's worth the investment of like two minutes of your time, you know? If it was all within one minute, I'd be more okay with it here. I think this is a little long, but again, these are small things. Pickiness. Aurora is still in this very solid control right now, and they're cruising towards those objectives. Mjolnir done for Yatoro, so his damage is coming online. And I mean, you got to remember this Void Sven matchup is just pretty terrible for Sven in any world in which Yatoro gets a good chrono. Sure. But if you get the right kind of initiations, right, you could just blow up the Void. Barring Shadow Demon save? Yes. Okay, I don't know, that was interesting, but they'll get it in the end. Dyer's and he's looking straight towards that Ags. Attack. Get an extra jump in here. Now they start teeping away, so maybe they're not going to stick around for the Wisdom Rune here. Maybe they forward. want double Tormentor. Uh, they want to catch Team Spirit looking Dyer's for theirs. Oh, that's, that's a smart move, and it's even better if they can actually get it, and they do. Got him inside that's the sweet. arena. Mira will die. Ollie also dies trying to go for the enemy Wisdom Runes, so they kind of have the same idea there. Catch somebody trying to take their own Wisdom Runes. But they'll get both Tormentors here. Yeah. Overall, it's a map win. 
And they raise this net worth lead from 6k to 10k here. Not a bad use of this first two minutes on the Aegis. Still have three left. I think this is where I'd like to see that aggressive smoke or you send the Sven for a tier two. Push lanes in, maybe set it up. Ollie's feeling a little sad. Phoenix Shard is so value and he, he dodged him twice. That's life, Austin. Six to 13, 11,000 net worth lead. Aurora are cruising. I mean, I, I, I'm scared if I'm Team Spirit, not just because this lead, but also because it kind of guarantees that Aurora can go late game, which uh, their heroes are decently suited. Biggest one being, I, I just, Phoenix late game, man, is always so, so hard to fight. Well, and the position this puck is in. If yeah. the puck were not in the position he's in, I think that late game looks a lot more one-sided. But given this situation, I think you are confident pushing it there. Yeah, puck late game with uh, Ags and uh, like Revenant's Brooch or Mjolnir and stuff like that. Ooh, it's scary. And they don't have the best direct lockdown. Like you can hit him with a, a Grimmauld, you can get him in this tiny combo. But again, there are saves, there are frontliners. It's not the most obvious game to do that. Yeah, the tiny's supposed to be a counter for like the first 30 minutes, right? When the combo one shots the puck, but we're, we're really getting to a point where that's no longer the case. I mean, it's still good. You can still find him with a stun. But I do think Puck can do some work here. Q just going at it, waiting for his team to sandwich here. Are they going to go Yutoro? They're going to go Mira. Looks like Yutoro's going to focus up the two cores, and Jabs gets him on the spear combo. They'll yeah, collect cool. Mira as well, since Q was able to block him out with the shards. And they'll get another support. So, Aurora. That was maximizing your pickoff right there. All without God strength and mana on 23. Mm. And they are really cruising in this game. Serious damage on Yatoro here. Again, without the God strength, they're able to 100 to zero him off the chain stun. Man, these guys look like such a different team from yesterday. Yeah, where was this team yesterday? I almost feel like Team Spirit came in this match like, all right, they're going to play slow and try and outscale us, so we'll just pick a bunch of late game. And then Aurora come out and guns blazing pick up the pace i mean that's kind of disrespectful if they did think that just because the way they crushed aurora in that game too that had to leave a mark on aurora right you get crushed in an 18 minute game you gotta be like okay guys let's not let uh, this team do that to us again i mean the weird thing is there, there are elements of spirits draft that can play pretty fast it's not all just on in this faceless void like they have grim behind an axe tiny yeah we have not seen a blink ink swell too often right. i feel like so where is where has that pace been from Spirit? Maybe this game's just been a little slow for them and not really finding the openings. Like that start collapse had, we've seen him take games over from that position. This game, he had those failed jumps on the Sven yep. and the Mars and those bottom lane fights that just killed his momentum. And he just hasn't had the confidence to go back for that sort of aggressive play. And you can't blame him. I mean, this Sven's got 4,000 HP. What yeah. are you doing calling this guy? I was going to say the thing, same thing, confidence, right? Like, it feels like that forced bottom play back-to-back -back killed all confidence and all tempo out of Team Spirit. And they've just been kind of playing like uh, they're just going to have to go for Rat and pick off, and they haven't succeeded in finding that pick off too often. They're going to go for a smoke now. Yeah, they have their BKBs. What do you think of the uh, early Ags pickup by 23, by the way? It's pretty standard for the Svens nowadays. I mean, the extra Dispel is just nice. It's a pseudo mobility item. Extra stats and HP. Again, he's incredibly tanky right now. For just me, I think it's a ball. lot about the Grimstroke Shadow Demon, right? Like these kiting mechanisms, that Stormbolt will help yep. you get around that a lot, right? But this build can look really bad in the situations where you wish you just had a blink jump somebody kill them. Yeah. It's not nearly as reliable for that first go, but your second and third are a lot better. And again, the big question here is, if you're Team Spirit, Radiant how do you take a fight outside of you find the backline? Yeah, if you find Phoenix Puck and you can get them in your chain stuns and links, you're happy with that exchange. If you run into the Mars Sven, you are not happy at all. And Jabs is just getting kind of 
freebie spear arenas uh, pickoffs over and over again. It never feels like Team Spirit's like, okay, arenas on cooldown. We can make a move. He just kind of gets to do this to any hero that he gets in range of. And now we're going to be going for tier twos. God strength committed. Might signal he wants to push high ground? I mean, would that be two balls in here? Probably. Radiant's top tower has fallen. Maybe mid tier two? They do have the ward for it. Yeah, I guess so. His team's not really backing him up too much, though. Now, he brought them all back, so he, he's happy with that regardless. That's the BKB done for the Void as well. So this is a big timing for Yatoro. Team Spirit are going to want to use this right now. Yeah, no arena, no god strength. Radiant's Have to find something. Fortunately, no initiation on the puck. Gets away. And again, look at how much HP Lornoff has, right? Yeah. This is where that tiny puck match is just not as one-sided in the mid-late game as it used to be. This guy's got 2,400 HP. Okay. Intelligence here on my ass, dude. He got the same HP as this guy. He's got more than the axe. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. HP values are funny in Dota nowadays. And remember, he's got Warcry in here too, so... Mm -hmm. Level 20 talent to Warcry. Wind Waker for So 25 well. bonus armor, man. You got the armor coming through. You have this new Wind Waker on the Mars. Big pickup in this game. I mean, this item just decimates Axe. It's also really good versus the Void, assuming you can you can get it off. But yep. man, it just makes that Axe jump so useless. I mean, what are you doing? Because you have to commit your items on your jump. Unless you make some like thousand head play of you blink call the guy and insta run away. But you don't know this Wind Waker is here right now. So this first showing is... It's going to mess somebody up. He's the chrono they call. <laughs> He's just back to back orb the wave. He's got it every five seconds thanks to the arcane is, rune. This is messed up right here. Fortunately for Team Spirit, it will expire soon. This wraparound, it's got it. Vision? How do you get the vision to jump this Phoenix or this Puck? So bad. They're so deep, man. Phoenix or Puck. And you've got a Wind Waker and a Snowball save to contend with. Man, look how safe Aurora is being. Okay, maybe not Q, but like, again, just spamming spamming Orb to push out the lane. Nobody is in danger of getting caught. Three, gonna poke his head out. He could get tossed back. Spot him. Don't get him with the avalanche. And he turns back around and just goes for it. 23 is going to get tossed up in the air. Laurel's trying to kite him back right now, but Q is going to stop him. Nice. That's oh, charged. bad ice shards. That is terrible. 23 has to walk all the way around and look at Yutoro. Just biding his time, Got waiting for an in. opportunity. Now has to go for the Chronosphere, though, because of the hammer that was following him. And he can only bring the Sven down to maybe two-thirds of his HP. He goes back again at him, but the Sven is a little bit too tanky. They are kiting him around a bit, though. Aurora. They'll be able to collect some heroes. Whoever cannot get away from Team Spirit is going to go down. They got the Shattered Demon Tiny, and that just left the Axe to clean up as Yutoro gives up on that team fight. So second Roshan will go the way of Aurora. Really nice double silence from Lornoff. When that shard hit, really messed up 23's fight. It's just unfortunate. But a really nice double silence from the puck on the side. Just caught a lot of the jump and the save on Team Spirit's side. You're going to see on the right here. He caught Mira and Collapse with that silence, which sets up the two-man arena, forces an early BKB from Collapse, and then Mira just gets taken out of this fight completely. You do get the jump in. You're kiting the spend nicely, but this is just a damage test, and you did not pass, my friend. <laughs> not call nearly the, enough. I'm watching Collapse's game right now. It's so hard. He finally blinked, tried to go for a blink call at the very end. Yeah, oh, they got it. him! Lornoff set up on the faceless void, knowing he doesn't have BKB. Nice disruption. Beautiful nice stuff. The disruption is not going to bail him out. It just sets up the spear in the end. So, we'll look for Mira now. Glimmer Cape trying to stay out of vision. Nice fog play. Close call, but it looks like he is away to safety. We'll be able to TP out. Now they can go back for Roshan, but cool play by Lorinov to, to find that opening and the rest of the team just implicitly trusting the, the stand-in. That was very fast. Very fast read, knowing that BKB is on cooldown. Limited window, takes advantage of it while Yatoro thought you were Roshan. Nah, getting you as well. Having a perfect game here, zero deaths on the puck. 
exactly what you want to see. And they will collect an Aegis with God Strength still up. Cheese to the puck, Aegis to the Sven. This lineup has proved very difficult for Team Spirit to crack. Like you said, I mean, what what does Collapse jump this game? There's just nothing. <laughs> he was sitting there the entire time waiting to jump something. But all he could see was the Sven the entire time. They didn't even need Supernova in that last team fight. Then he either, jumps. Which is like, he, he totems. He calls the Sven. Yeah. And he gets fuels. Like, after all that, the Sven attack. hits him twice. Doesn't take any damage because you're reflecting it into the, the armor. Yeah. So even if you somehow land this call, it's not even that good. It's like you dag and won the guy. These are those axe games that... You're like, why am I playing this hero? Yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't have a successful first 20 minutes of the game, so now I'm just left with doing nothing for the next but 40. I mean, that's, that's the axe, man. He gives and he takes. Well, he didn't do much give in this game. Definitely didn't give it to Aurora at all. 21,000 net worth lead for Aurora. Aegis, Cheese. Uh, plenty of opportunities to go high ground, I think, with this one. And they have the Ags Tusk as well now, so they really want to initiate. Q can force it. Crack open the high ground that way. If you really want. Cute little play, Shadow Demon Axe, so that is something that's going to be kind of annoying. They could just throw the illusions whenever the creep wave approaches the high ground. Toro is just always some weird spot on the map, man. No matter what happens, he will find some farm. But it does feel like this is almost desperation mode for some damage. Yeah, will there Wouldn't ever be enough farm? farm for him? I don't know. To man. cut down the Sven. You have to go through the Sven and the Sunray behind this hero with a huge amount of HP that is just healing him an insane amount. He's got an Elven Tunic. He's got the Shard giving him the bonus passive armor. What, what is this monstrosity? Lornoff is beginning to build up his own right-click build. He got the shard off the Tormentor, has Parasma. Toss back to Sven. Going in deep. Al nice. straight into the axe call. They get him a little bit low. Oh, he pops the PKB and he just goes for the supports. Damn, he just almost full healed off of killing. Poor old Maposhka, and he'll use the rest of the uh, BKB to back out to that tier three. Gets that one. God strengths out. What do you want to do here? The Toro says, I want to go farm medium camp. Good luck, team. Can't blame him. Well, you don't have any tier twos, so there's really nothing stopping uh, Aurora from just saying, on to the next one. Well, look at this. Yatoro's trying to bait out. He knows the heroes are going to come back to push in the wave. He could get the puck off he the end. He could get the puck. He still has Warcry on him for a little bit. That, that kind of stops you. Yeah, I don't think you have the damage, honestly. Yeah, I don't think so either. Maybe, Maybe if the Warcry was out. Maybe. I don't know, dude. That's also one of those plays, if it doesn't work, you're just screwed. Yeah, I think Chronosphere is on cooldown, and you, <laughs> the game's kind of over. Uh, he won't get him in the end as Lornoff TPs to the team. Now he's spotted. He does have Nemesis Curse. I mean, that would have been close, honestly. If he got some bashes, I think he kills him. High risk, high reward, but you're in a situation where it might not matter. And Sven is knocking at the door. Another attempt at the call. Toss back combo this time around. 23. No, we got off the Satanic and will be able to heal a little bit more. Staying alive because of it. And now the team can finally jump forward and help him out after the tiny ransom interference. Tried to keep the rest of Aurora back, but it wasn't good enough. Got the Laurel buyback. This is truly 23v5. Does not need much help from the team when he gets tossed in. Just takes the fight, gets the buyback. Yeah, Tor does not want to commit this Chrono into the Aegis. No. 
and you can't blame him. That just does not feel like a winning play. But they did stall it long enough off. that Aegis expires, so. Yeah, I mean, they only are down 30k now. Yeah. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. 30k, Elena Barracks, the game continues. Now an AC. Ooh. I mean, is there a point of doing trying to do any physical damage to Sven? An AC Sven? So you're saying Yatoro should buy Brooch? Kinda, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, because it's no, terrible. Honda Brooch. He'd burn through his mana, entire mana pool in like five hits, but. They need a Parasma of their own. That's what they need. Lornoff just exploring the other side of the river. Found some heroes. You know that they're postured out here. Spirit want to bring them into the ward. They have one high ground ward on this map, but Aurora not going to bite the bait. They're just going to send it down mid. Let the creeps force the vision Radiant for them. Very disciplined. You just hit here. I mean, you are worried about the is going to look back. for his opening here. Look for a kick. Lorinoff explores once again, trying to find a hero. Nobody really shows. And a second lane. Nope. Is that the Wind Waker yeah, for Jabs? Really, really. Protecting him from the toss back there. They get the kick back onto Laurel. Remember, he used his buyback earlier, so this death could be final for him as they're trying to get him out with a Glimmer Cape. He barely stays alive. Second lane. Oh, Collapse actually jumping in, trying to grab him. They finally go for the Chronosphere, but Wind it Waker. immediately gets countered. You only got the Sven. He gets Wind Waker. Now he also gets Snowball. Yotoro is able to do nothing with a full Chronosphere, and his entire team gets wiped as a result. Ah, there's just nothing. Nothing there for Spirit at all. I don't even see an angle. I'm sure they don't either. And yeah, you go next game. An impressive game from Aurora. Bouncing back from yesterday's series that was incredibly rough. Showing some good signs of life here, back to form and versus a very strong team. Not the fastest early game I've seen, but it was good enough. Yeah. And once they got to like that 10 to 15 minute mark, they just ramped it up. 23 had really good moves this game, played a pretty much a perfect spend game. Never could take him down. Zero deaths on him, zero deaths on Lornoff. These two heroes just felt invincible here. And it goes back to Axe here. Like, you last picking Axe, it's a very snowball dependent hero. If one or two of those blinks go wrong with that early blink blade mail, you're just screwed versus the lineup. And Aurora took full benefit of it. The Phoenix, I also think this Phoenix has looked incredibly strong this tournament. We're seeing Extreme play it. It looks very good for them. It looked very good here behind these meaty frontliners. I think it's a hero you have to maybe up the priority on a little bit. Well, our panel was so excited to be able to see the Collapse Axe. Did it live up to your guys' expectations? No, I would say probably not, because Aurora are out here exceeding expectations. What a performance from them after a resounding shellacking yesterday against Shopify Rebellion. They, they completely turned it around. 23 Savage on Sven. You tell me his Sven performance is better than Morphling? If the last two days are any indication, that seems to be the case. I mean, I, what I like a lot is I have to give credit to the Sven pick. I wasn't sure how good it was going to be, but I feel like it fills all like all the boxes. You're tanky enough to like live through some of the stuff that they did. And I think overall their fighting was really good. I have to say that I feel like Spirit dropped the ball a little bit in the mid game. Their blink reveal on Tiny, it failed. Their blink revealed on Axe, it failed as well. And then 50 minutes as you saw in the replay, they have this bottom fight, which also failed. But I'm sure, Ted, you're very happy about Aurora. They're alive. Well, uh, honestly, I, I was not expecting this performance from them. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> maybe it was my little pep talk before the game when that I apologized. I think they must have been watching that saying, thank God Pyrian's yeah. got our back. No, I mean, seriously, this is... Um, this was complete reversal of yesterday's performances. They had aggressive heroes. They wanted to get in there and fight. Look at the score. They never stopped. They were just hunting Spirit. They outspirited Spirit in this game. They were all over them. Spirit very uncharacteristically missing spells. I mean, I saw like Tiny just going to Avalanche, just nothing. You think mm. this isn't right? Yep. Mars missing spears. You're like, what's happening? Just miscommunication. So uh, Aurora, to be fair to them, took full advantage of that. Didn't just yep. go and sit back and and farm, they were like, okay, looks like we're winning this game. Let's keep winning it and never stop. And that's exactly what they did. Especially, I'm happy to see Jabs continue that because Jabs has historically been a very 
greedy offlaner. Mm. And so whenever he's put onto something traditional like Mars, in the back of my head, I'm always a little bit worried that he's like, oh, he might left leave his pedal off the gas at some point well his i must say that his laning stage wasn't very pretty it happened both today and yesterday where he's like missing a couple spears but it doesn't matter you know yeah. he can keep his cool and kill still kind of just do what he has to do because yeah like ted was saying i feel like spirit messed up a bit but i agree with you Aurora's team fighting was good. Like, they knew that, okay, we need to go on SD, get him a bit out of the fight so that he doesn't save the person that they go on. And they kept doing this over and over. It's like a complete switch up from kind of the gameplay that they showed us yesterday. Really something else. I don't, know where, I don't know where this was, Neil. Where was he yesterday? I, I don't get it. You gotta it. pace yourself. It's a long Dream League, Ted. Yeah, but you need to win every nah, game. Nah, I can win at the ones that really matter against Spirit. And maybe you, uh, maybe there was uh, something on the line, maybe something with a little head-to-head. -head. So let's go to our Predator head-to-head -head with Brian. Thank you, Neil, for today's Acer Predator head-to-head. -head. I have Yatoro God versus 23, and we're looking at net worth, 10K net worth difference. Throughout the course of the entire game, we saw 23 on his own little island up there in terms of the network charts. We have a few clips to kind of talk about what the what we really saw in this game, what decided exactly why this was such a stomp. So in this first clip that we're going to jump into, we're going to see what happens when 23 has this massive lead, what a top tier carry player does with Aegis, with control of the map. You're going to see right at 20 minutes that they're going to take this first Tormentor. Immediately after, he TP's bottom to kill the Shadow Demon that they have on a ward, get the kill on him, then they're gonna turn around and kill their own Tormentor all within about a minute. So just sometimes that's the life of one carry player. Now we're gonna see the life of the other carry player get stunned by Tusk, silenced by Puck, stunned by Spin, stunned by Mars. That's one, like two sides of a very different coin there, Neil, as now we have the money solving all problems for 23. I was worried about the matchup versus Void, but you see him getting solo chronoed, living with like 70% HP. Then he's going to get blade mail called by collapse right afterwards. And we saw later on when he's sieging high ground, this man, he was so rich that there's no amount of bullets that can touch him there. He's bulletproof, Neil. Dude, that was uh, an, an inspiring performance. But be honest with me, Brian. Have you ever taken two Tormentors as soon as you get an Aegis of 20 I don't 20 think minutes? I've ever done that. That <laughs> might have been the most like efficient that is like, a, 45 a seconds I've ever seen. Uh, but yeah, that was impressive. If they didn't see the Shadow Demon down there, do you think they still would have gone there or no? Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they maybe like took Ancients first and then went back because wow. you maybe take that area and then go back to your side. But at the same time, like you want to use the God Strength, right? Like you, That's whatever true. it is, you have your Aegis, so you use the first God. You use the God Strength to get the first Tormentor, and they did that so fast that it was still on for the second Tormentor. So that's probably what they had in mind with that. Stun stocks are raising quickly throughout this group stage two. During group stage one, I feel like he was maybe like a. I can't pick any of my main carry heroes, so sure, I'll pick a Sven. But seems like this series is indicating that we're seeing the C meta develop right now. Thank you very much for some smart stuff, Brian. You're welcome. Now for some dumb stuff. I hear that chuckle Lacoste, my social media expert. He's a, he's a genius. Don't let his... Absolutely. I fiend off Reddit. I fiend off Twitter, X, whatever it's called nowadays. Uh, anything social and uh, yeah there was a very cool reddit thread that did pop up uh, yesterday okay. about my boy ogre to see what's going on people were very mean about his intelligence and we can check the heroes you know who are the smartest and dumbest of them all zero intelligence at level 30 for my boy ogre oh heroes so stupid they gave him a spell called dumb luck like if you google ogre first thing that you see is his max intelligence is zero max Tsunami Max. Where do you think you would fall on this chart? Are you a uh, I would be somewhere game? somewhere in the middle. Okay, so you're like an agi hero with like Yeah. You, yeah. you've got some cheap spells but good mana region. Absolutely. And then the second dumbest hero is Troll Warlord. Like yep. this for a good reason. How many times did you see Troll using a good ulti? I think now it all makes sense. And we can also check some of the comments <laughs> uh, about my boy Ogre. Ironic that a guy with two heads is dumbest of them all, which makes a lot of sense. And the comment below also zero plus zero, I think this refers to two heads because one head has zero intelligence and the other one as well. And what, the math is correct. What if I multiplied correct. them? What if uh, two times zero? That, that should be better, right? Should still be zero. Oh. That's oh. how it works. Shame. But uh, we also do have, you know, some of the comparisons, some of the stats from the tournament okay. to see who's actually smart and who's down. Because the smartest hero in Dota in terms of intelligence is Pugna. Ooh. 
So explain huh. this to me. One game, 100% win rate. Nine games, 33% win rate. So it has absolutely nothing to do with being smart. Wow. wow. Telling me that all these... All, where you work out at the gym memes are... Uh, yeah. Where you work out at the library memes are actually more accurate? Yeah, looks like it. And one thing that I prepared, Tsunami, is also one of the most iconic Dota 1 clips of all time. So it's a, it's a picture for now because it needs to be introduced. This is Silencer, <laughs> also no, known as Northrom or okay. Northrom. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, this is a banger clip, most definitely. And Ogre is the same model as the neutral oh, creep. <laughs> so Silencer's like, yo, what up, guys? We're just going to farm some cams. Uh, do, 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 do. Pretty easy, has a double bracer, perseverance, boots of speed, casual position for silencer build nowadays as well. Now and he's just gonna farm some neutrals, he's right? He's gonna farm some neutrals, get some extra gold, of course, and surprise, surprise. mother lucker. <laughs> 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 he starts going on him, some LOLs in the chat immediately, <laughs> and... <laughs> I mean, there were a lot of iconic Dota clips uh, back in the days, but uh, this has to be one of my favorite ones. And uh, I, I think about Ogre, we can say that this hero is pretty mediocre, in, uh, uh, ha, ha. but uh, we will see him being picked to Ogre and Ogre again. <laughs> Stop The it. smartest man in all of Dream League, because <laughs> he's done it again! I hope you're all ready for some of the most Ogre series. Is it Ogre? Is it all Ogre? He, this guy is so good, so popular, that even a neutral item is called Ogre Seal Totem. Well, I hope you're ready to flop, flop, flop on over to game number two after the break.
Like a, it's like a 70s spy thriller. It is. Like some classic Bond sequence that, well, we've just snuck in to MI5? Uh, that's the good guys. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. We snuck into... Uh, the, the lair of Dr. No. Right, mm. exactly. And totally following this. Or Spectre, perhaps. Mm. Spectre. For the modern Bond fans. Well, Spectre was around in the old ones. It was? Yes, of course. Oh. There's nothing, listen. There's nothing in the Bond movies that's original. <laughs> it's the same thing over and over again. Even Blofeld pops up again. He was in one of the oldest ba baddies. That's true. That part I knew. Trust me. Nothing Let in Bond. It's am, all I meant am. to be extremely familiar. And I had no idea. But just before the draft gets really interesting, because it's going to be the same shit. Trust me. Uh, I thought that the Bond movie should have had like an arc where they get a Bond in and mm -hmm. he's got an arc where he has a villain we're introduced to in episode one and we get like five movies and it builds towards something there's like an actual crescendo where instead of introduce baddie, death of baddie introduce baddie, death of baddie and make it like that make it a, give us an arc you managed it with Thanos let's do it with Bond this That's guy has I'm good saying. ideas actually no cap this people guy. should be listening you want like an anthology type thing I give him a compliment he shrugs it off but like, you're like I'm this guy this guy, you know right here. this guy right here this guy right here some good ideas there you go. thank you Otherwise, people hear the clip, this guy, and they'll cut it. This they'll, guy. they'll cut it with Brian saying something. Yeah, they'll give me credit, because I've totally had so many good ideas. Yeah, yeah. classic. You're a smart classic dude, booth. Brian. Thank you, buddy. Go build a bridge. Engineering degree haver. Build a bridge. Biomedical engineering. I, I studied food science to be a software engineer. Oh, yeah. That was my old boss. <laughs> nice nice reference. Very, very deep cut reference. <laughs> Brian is your boss, so yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Well, currently the boss of this series is Aurora, because they stomped all over Team Spirit in they game really number did. one. Stomp is the word I would use. Holy Where did this God. Aurora come from? Where are they going? Are they going to maintain this momentum? These are the questions that keep me up at night, Brian. Really? Mine's like, who am I and what does my life mean at this point? <laughs> You're more a philosophical person than I, Brian. I live in the moment. I live in the now. Like, what are they going to ban right now? You can just imagine Brian lying there talking to himself. Who am I? Where am I <laughs> What's going? happening? And Neil was just like, are Aurora going to make <laughs> this form? They're one and one now. <laughs> if they finish this group God, in the top four? killing me. <laughs> Mars. They're going to ban Mars. Oh, that's a shocker. Chen Centaur Magnus taken out of the pool. And Spirit, they remove Timbersaw and Batrider. But if they ban Mag... Um, Mars. Mars, it could potentially leave a DK in the pool, which Spirit have liked as of late. I still think the hero is better from second pick, but, you know, if that's a comfort hero, and as Brian was saying before, they do ban out a lot of the easy click stuns. Do you mean second second pick or second phase? Second pick. Like, when you are second pick, you close the first phase with your pick, which means you instantly get to protect the hero you have picked. Right. So the hero is stronger from that position than when you just reveal your entire first pick with, here's Dragonite. Right, right. Ruin me. Do with my body what you will. Step on me, daddy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We, there's a lot of directions we could go. This is what about. comes to your mind when he says ruin me. 
Well, don't financially ruin me. Yeah. Make me broke. The pair the is. Hunter, there you go. Oh, so they have first, first with yes. the DK, and now they're going to get ruined. Would you have put Axe in the point and click stun category that I, you were talking it was, about? Earlier? It was. Okay. I think that that last game was purely a net worth problem. Like, I don't. Like, in the other games, Team Spirit has struggled. They haven't had the playmaking potential. I felt like in that game, they had the stuns, but they did. 23 was literally just walking around, and they, like, tried to go on him five different times, and it just didn't work. He was like 9k richer than anyone else it looked like. It was insane. It's like at 15 minutes, he had. Treads, BKB, Mask of Madness, Mask of Madness yeah. and a disassembled uh, Echo like, Saber. Yeah, so he almost had it completed again. Yeah. It's insane. Now his item build was really good. Like he just itemized for high HP. He got an Elven Tunic later for like more evasion. Uh, this response I like a lot. I would say generally the heroes that counter DK very hard right now are actually some of the supports that you do see. I would say SD, Undying and Phoenix are the three that come to mind. And I think Aurora played that Phoenix really well last game, so I'm I'm happy with them to just pick it up again. You guys were saying that Aurora, like the the team who stacks the most. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Sven is really the perfect pick. Oh, he them. loves that, yeah. It's weird because his heroes that they have been picking for 23 so far this tournament have not fit that description. Like Morphling. Yeah, Morphling and not as tactic. I guess only Alchemist out of the heroes he's played. He has like one or two games on those. Obviously, Alk loves stacks. He just loves money. I can love money and capitalism. <laughs> We were talking about that backstage as well. <laughs> they do have Leshrac and Medusa heroes in their pool that like to utilize the stacks. Something to always consider when you have the Phoenix first pick. Yeah. Because whenever you have a first pick, the hero's gonna get countered. There's gonna be some like Marana, Lena, you know, morph, some guy that's gonna kill the egg. So mm -hmm. the Phoenix's job or, or like the things that Phoenix reliably do in the game need to be capitalized on to like the stack. We were talking about why no Snapfire, Brian. We were talking about it on the panel that you went on last night. Now you're here with us. Why aren't we seeing Snapfire? Um, I think as a support, it's underwhelming compared to the other ones right now. And then as core, it doesn't really have a natural item build. I think back when Universal Heroes just went Atos every single game, it felt really powerful yep. on Snap. And then she doesn't really have timings either. Like, yeah, her level six is pretty good, but in the old days you had the triple or the your E does right-click damage at 20, and then you had the triple at level 25. When they reversed those, it feels like way more underwhelming. Yeah. They have picked it twice, though, Snapfire, on mm. the side of uh, Aurora. They're actually the only team who have played it, but I think it was only a support, because yeah, I think Core Snap is borderline unplayable, or at least as close to as it gets. Yeah, a lot of the supports I feel like are saves or burst of some kind, or like remaining. they all they either go in or they sit mm -hmm. far in the back. It snaps kind of like a hybrid Five of both of those. Remaining. Kind of a weird spot right now. Another reason why I like this Phoenix for Aurora is Spirit have played a lot of ET um, as a five, and I would say both Tusk and Phoenix are fairly interchangeable with one another in terms of where they can lane. So if an ET were to come out, I mean even. Tusk can sometimes threaten this hero because ET wants to really like dumpster on the lane. He wants to just go in, hit you, and I think both these supports already, they have some playability into that. So what will Mr. Spirit want to do here? It's very likely that they will just take both of their supports at this stage. I, I keep wouldn't hate DK if they flex. run back the Grim's trope. I wouldn't hate it if they just do that again. Mm -hmm. But you can also... I also wouldn't mind the Marana because it's a hero that can leap away from the shards and it can also kill the egg. And he got set up with the DK stun. Exactly. How much has Mira played Marana? He has definitely played the hero, right? Uh, it has been played three times by yeah. him. Okay. No, I think Marana's a good call. Good against the egg, like you said. Works well with DK, both for the synergy and the map play. They took that little dino emote out of the Twitch emote. I think they put it back recently. They did. It that was something to do with Pokemon Day. Oh, something really? to do with that, yeah. The, really. the replacement but, one was hideous. Th that's because he'd evolved into this other oh. thing, I think. I, if I remember right. All the Pokemon evolutions nowadays, they make no sense. So they do go the Grim route, which is the same as last game. The leash mechanic being good against both the enemy supports, the double stun with DK, you have an Inkswell target already. Mm -hmm. But... I think the follow-up damage to the Grimstork initiation last game was lacking. Like, you had Void, Axe, and then Tiny wasn't really going in. Yeah. So, right now I am seeing damage issues. I see a lot of damage ampers. Mm -hmm. Like, you have the ET, mm -hmm. the Grimstork allows you to pump up that extra damage. But who's going to be, like, the follow-up, yeah. you know? I think they need that this game. And they go with the Razor, which for them is a flex. I know that Lorenov, he likes playing at mid. He did it yesterday. It didn't work as well, but 
overall like a BKB carry in this game. You got some tag team bonus damage, so I can see that. I thought they were maybe looking at a hero that gets in the back line. Like when you play against ET and Grimstroke, you kind of should want to annihilate these heroes first. Mm. Because if they get to stay alive, they w they very often turn into the carries, at least during a team fight. So we'll see if Aura will want to... All Another thing they need to think about is Spirit potentially closing this phase with a Morphling next up. It yeah. lanes well with ET, it's incredible against Phoenix. We are also picking Razor. Yeah, it's a Morphling. They jump back to the for Yatura. Mm. I think this is like Morphling written all over it. It's a nice follow-up. That's like the damage guy you need, like the Conda Morph. That's like, what, 1,500 damage instantly when you have Waveform plus the Conda. I've seen it with the ET Spirit. He lit literally one-shot a Marana at yeah. some point. It's either that or they go like Laurel Storm Spirit. I think those are like the two routes I'm looking at mm -hmm. here. Both yeah, like supply a lot of damage in mobile. Uh, yeah, you said Storm? Yeah. Yeah, I could, if they want mid, I can see Storm. Oh. I, I feel like... Aurora kind of walked into that morph. A little bit, yeah. So, do you think they have a plan? I'm not sure if they were like hyper baiting it, but they must know that there's a chance and that they feel like their last pick can like kind of swing the matchup. Um, I would say Ten that. I mean, obviously, Spirit have a couple of bands to go with. Like, maybe. Five what would you say, Brian, that they need to ban? Like, OD plus one, potentially, if their mid pick isn't good against that? Yeah, probably OD. Uh. I'm thinking, like, Morph doesn't really have any terrible lane matchups, to be honest. Yeah. Um, whenever I see first pick team convincingly win the draft, it's always on this pick. If we're yes, all like, this is, sure. if we are, can be like, that is an obviously very good pick, and it's a hero they play a lot of, mm -hmm. and it pairs well with what they already have. We are saying they need a damage, and it does that. So, part of me is just like, I need to see what Aurora does in the last pick to convince me otherwise, because I don't know what their plan was when they see this. Like, I don't, I don't think, I think it was a bit of an oversight if you ask me. Do you have any preference to where the Razor goes now that the Morphling is out on the field? Do you uh, want not me? off lane, I would say, so probably mid. They'll get to decide because they do have the final pick of the draft. Tusk Razor is not a terrible lane, actually. Maybe you demote the Razor because you see the Morph. I'll say whichever gives you like the more nuclear counter pick, you take that one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like when, when I think of Morph, I think of, okay, like what really like ruins this hero? When you just go like straight up one-to-one -one matchup, just maybe like OD, AA, I think the AA card is kind of out of the game, unless you want to do something really fancy. But I feel like this hero, when it is picked in a game at that spot and it is that good of a Morph game, it has to be heavily addressed. It can't just be like, oh, I'll just pick a stun and stun him for you. Like that casualty will not, that will not fix it in the game. Would we ever see a Nyx? That's the pub someone, counter for uh, Morph. Someone in the morning games, I think there was a Nyx. Yeah, Shabs is pretty crazy, but I don't know if he's that crazy. Just saying, let's see. Worst versus, we're looking at Morph here. Nyx is number two. Hmm. Darkseer is actually one of his worst matchups, apparently, but I don't think that, like, single hand... That is really good against DK, mm -hmm. too. Maybe Darkseer. It's good with their heroes, And too. they have Sven. Okay, 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 okay. We're Darkseer talking. would change <laughs> my mind here. <laughs> Is he unpicked at the tournament, Ducks, or have we seen him? He must have been picked. Uh, he's once. definitely been picked. He was not on my. Un he's definitely on the lower end of list. being picked. Uh, the question is if Aurora has picked him. So, Team Spirit, I feel like it would. I mean, I guess. They're mm. not. You don't want Laurel to get his hands on Tiny again? I, you weren't a fan? I wasn't. I, I think the mobility was too strong this game. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they go, like, Laurel Co-op or something. Yeah, like, I, I like thought some... Storm was a good option. Yeah, I agree. I feel like some Co-op, maybe Wind Ranger. I, I would prefer the Co-op over there, but something in, I feel like, that type of... Where you're just... You're more elusive on the map. It's easier for your supports to play through Ember. you. Yeah, Ember. His Ember looked incredible yesterday. He did the... Maybe you were on that panel. He did, what, some Kaya Sanj Radiance. He he destroyed the game. Yeah, I really Stone. liked his build. Yeah, that was cool. That was very cool. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if they just go co-op, because then you do the whole give Razor two bad lanes, I neither agree. of which he wants to go to. Yeah. I think that's why the co-op and the Wind Ranger would feel, fit well. Yeah, Wind would be nice in lane, yeah. I feel like co-op is the better one. Just gives you more elusiveness, too. Because DK into Sven, like, he's going to be fine in that lane. Whenever you have this early pick DK, Sven is good against DK in the game. He has overwhelming damage, but in the lane, it's it's like a whatever burger lane. Yeah, whatever burger. Yeah. Don't make me think about burgers. I've got one. Coming. We're waiting yeah, for them. We <laughs> did order Max, the Swedish McDonald's. But better, way better. Yes. Max number one. I think that's going to be, that's a close decision for me. Really? Close that. I know that's offensive to Swedes, everyone. I do apologize, but... I was oversold on Max as it was the second coming of burgers, and I was like, 
It's a burger. I also hate salted licorice, so that's oh, I do all, hate this, all this sweet. Please, gentlemen, crying out there. show respect to we our are, home we are country, guests right? We're country. guests Please, salted licorice. I will eat the disgusting salted licorice and praise the man. <laughs> the sound person They're fine. is not It's a fine there. burger. I'm just saying, it's not the be all and end all of burger. That's what I'm saying. There's and the Dark Seer. <laughs> Honestly, that's like the one pick that I think mm. would be really sick here. I think that they just need to be able to group up a little bit on Aurora. Like, they have a lot of single target pickoff on Team Spirit, but honestly, their team fights pretty much only ET. Yeah. So, I think overwhelming with them with the five man would be a good route to go. TA is a nice hero for that, <laughs> like that they banned out yeah. because it basically prevents the opponent from five manning I'm, or like picking you off. I'm trying to find this pick that does it from mid. So, you keep the Razor away from the co op, he goes top. Even though it's not a great lane, I think it's fine, but I don't know if I can find it. Leshrac. Invoke. Mm -mm, neither of them really. It's cut like it. Viper against DK2, but it doesn't deal with morph. How about mid Tonka? No, mind it's spent. Coddle. No. Uh, I think then we might just be good enough with the offline, as Brian's mentioning. They're trying to help you with the team fight. I do still think that like some Dark Sears will help you in the game. How many Dark Sears? Four. Can oh. I go Lena. Mm. Now select your hero. You do not sound enthusiastic. I mean, I wasn't enthusiastic <laughs> about Aurora's Game 1 draft, and they freaking own that game, True. so I'm not going to count them out. I do think it's about the freest morph game I've seen in a while. Like, it's the thing about morph versus Razor is you you turn into him, and then you link somebody else or him. And the whole point of Razor as a hero is that he links you and then walks you down and kind of dictates the positioning in the fight. And morph as a hero just completely ruins him without actually... Like, Morph doesn't have to do anything. He's, like, linking you and attacking yeah. you, right? He's not having to go out of his way to to make this happen. So, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, de I'm doubtful about the Razor mm -hmm. for Aurora. I kind of like the Lina pick, but I hope for them that they find this balance where, because they have three cores that rely on gold, that they hopefully, like, find a good timing to get BKBs in the mid game. Because I think when Spirit have their timings with, like, Morph is available and, like, Collapse is Blink, that they can fight back. Because I also, I prefer the Spirit's draft. What was the incentive for the Lena? Just burst damage to kill Morphling? I think, yeah, just like you play on a high range, you lane well into Quap, one of the few sure. heroes. But I do think L Razor, Lena is a bit, it's a bit awkward having them together in the same draft. Might be a comfort pick too. Lornov is like Grandmaster oh, here, Lena, yeah. I think, so. I don't know. You're speechless. I don't know. You truly I really can't choose. I mean, I think the, we've got the Morph, Yetero Morph, and it's, Counts as the razor. I'm just gonna go spirit then. I think honestly, just we, based. We on might that. be jinxing them again. Two spirits. Uh, it's like I don't know if it's good for spirit that we were able to call the morph and the quap. Like, is that good for them? <laughs> or we'll see. You know. Yeah. I mean, having just seen how well Aurora did, I think it's hard to say. Ah, oh, no, it's a spirit outdraft because, like you said, we thought they had it last time. Are you a third spirit, Brian? I I have to go with spirit again. But I'm looking for a lot so of... So uh, downtrodden. Well, it's just last game, I was convinced. Uh, I'm, I'm switching. Morphling. I'm switching. Uh. I'm switching. It's not too late. I'm going with the roar. Technology? Well, I'm looking for a lot of a closer game. I feel like there will be a lot of fights, but this time I'll be correct about Spirit winning. This time. This time I'll be correct. There, we apparently do not have the technology to... <laughs> yeah, then I'm sticking with Spirit. Give me the A. <laughs> That's give me my the loyalty a right there again. in a nutshell. Give me the A again. Give it. There we go. Wow. And how about one of these, Brian? Ooh, ooh. There we go. <laughs> That's some love on the panel right there. You All right. Me, Neil. Let's see if uh, we can uh, share that love with you and our casters. Cap and Avery, I love you so much. Give me game number two. Why? Why, thank you, Neil. You know what? Neil, we love you too. Right, Avery? No. Right? No, I actually really dislike Neil. I've been oh. trying to get him fired for years. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work, though. Ah, you don't have that kind of power. Wait, are we live? Oh, and welcome, everybody, to Aurora Team Spirit Game 2. That's right. We were blessed by that glorious panel and their analysis. And now we're going to get blessed with some amazing Dota. Do you actually agree with them? Wait, what? Their analysis. I don't know. I feel like this you is didn't very. Them, did you? No, I did. I feel like this is very similar to Game One, where, you know, like, is this a great Sven game? I don't really know. But Twenty Three just popped off, and so if he's feeling it, I'm feeling it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then I think that solves a lot of their issues. The Razor kind of doesn't have a direct role in this game. I think he, he got countered pretty damn hard, but 
We've seen Lornoff pop off this series, and Lina has been one of those explosive spellcasters, which is the area he's looked the strongest on. And they got the Phoenix again. So I do like a lot of the elements they have here, and it's very comfortable for them because it's very similar to last game. Okay, but, 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 but. But. And a first blood of the first two. blood. All right. Yeah, last blood. game they got first blooded by uh, when Chabs walked back, and Team Spirit had that nifty little uh, little trap set up. So very nicely played. This is a uh, I I. They don't have anything to protect the egg, man. Not really. You know. Eh, I don't. Spend. I don't like that. LSA. It's not amazing, but it's not the worst. I mean, to be honest, this hero. He can be a bad egg, but he can also just be about Fire Spirit Sunray. And I feel like that was what was doing a lot of work last game with Whoa, this front line. Whoa, Maposhka. <laughs> Careful there. Yeah, I mean, I guess he didn't have to really use Supernova last game. <laughs> there yes. was, I feel like there wasn't a single fight that was really decided by Supernova in any way. The thing Spirit have going for them here that is going to sway this game a lot more is the lanes are a lot more stable for them. So they should have a stronger early game. Uh, I think only really collapse was having like a pretty good early game there, and then it just fell off because he made those jumps and it didn't work. Here, the queen should free farm. Uh, well, mostly farm, I guess. I guess they swapped the Lena. It's a little worse, but both these heroes should get something at least. And this queen can rotate with ult, and that can create a lot of pressure into 23, where collapse is gonna be free free down here, right? You're not gonna kick DK off the lane with Phoenix Fen. In that fact, was might a even get some kill. really sick cue from Mira. Yeah. He hit that both was nice the heroes with that. So if you can if you can free farm this lane with a DK, which is pretty much guaranteed, yeah, and you chip down 23, you make that quap rotation. I can see you really blow this game open. You're gonna take that tower with the first DK form, create some space. Collapse could have a really good game here again, and he's on a hero that can open up the map and create a lot more tempo, and not be pigeonholed in this position where oh I have to get a blink and jump them, and if that doesn't work, then what? Yeah. Because that was that was tough. So the scaling and the laning should be formidable again for Team Spirit. And of course they have Elder Titan, which I've liked ET and Phoenix both this tournament. I think they're two of my favorite fives I've seen. This ET morph has been really strong. I was going to ask you about uh, ET because that's another hero that looks to me like could be having kind of a rough game. You're an Elder Titan expert. Do you think the hero is good enough that it is a worthwhile pick even if you have a bad lane, a do-nothing lane? Because this is one of those lanes, right? There's no way that Elder Titan has a good impact against Razor Tusk. As long as you have tempo from somewhere else, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is a Lornoff going to get a run down by Laurel here. Damn. Not much he can do about it. I do. Man, that is a surprising kill. How many times do you see Lena die before a gank comes through? Just solo. I feel like it's impossible. Yeah, it's really only in that exact situation where you get gone on in the river and that long chase down of the poison touch. Mira trying to slow down and block 23 to make sure he can get the Lotus. And he does manage to get it away from 23 Savage. Yeah, a lot of little things going Team Spirit's way right now. They are showing up in this game too early game, for sure. Trying to swing this series back into their control. And again, they, they have a lot more tempo to do it behind this DK who's going to have a really strong game. So I think the ET pick makes a lot of sense here. Because even if your top lane was having a rough time, which, by the way, it isn't. Your morph lane's top of the board. Mm -hmm. Then you can always just go to the DK with the Grim, with the ET, play off that reliable stun with Inkswell, and Queen can get, give you the damage. Your morph lane can recover. So I think it's an okay situation for it. The downside is I think it's an annoying ET game for ET directly. Yeah. Tusk, Phoenix, Lina, Razor, like, you have Warcry. The ET isn't Amazing direct here, but it is very good for the Morphling combo we've seen all tournament and Queen of Pain spell damage, nothing to scoff at. Dragon Tail and Inkswell misses the Inkswell explosion. I mean, they're just kind of having a poke. I don't think they're really thinking they're going to kill Sven there, but would be nice to maximize that damage. Ollie, very close to level three. That upgraded fire spirits we talked about last game. Very important for the lane. Man, Lornoff is just getting beat up. Yeah, getting handled. I don't think this should be going this rough for the Lena. Like, I think Queen does fine. You, you can shove lane out. Both heroes can do that. You can trade water runes, but he got solo killed. He's getting out leveled. He's getting pretty heavily burned and out traded. Yeah, you outrange uh, the Quap, and you're supposed to be able to out harass them with every Dragon Slave. Jeez. Kind of similar to that situation, but I think that one dash just sent him so far behind. 
It's really rough. I mean, this was the last pick, too. This was your lane swap to put that Razor in the theoretically the worst situation. So really good stuff coming out from Laurel early on. And again, he's like the real threat on the map. If he can get an early six, he can gank either of these side lanes. And just crush one of these heroes, push the XP towards Team Spirit once again. But mostly everybody's farming here. I don't think anybody's having a terrible game. No. All the CS is relatively even. I mean, the Lina is killing it in CS, even though she died. Yeah. Way ahead of the Quap, so it seems like that lane is pretty even. He's pulling it back. Some of that is that jungle camp that he can abuse a lot more. Oh, yeah. Radiant so side it's, Lina. It's going to be lower net worth for more CS. It looks better than it actually is right now for Lornov. And he is susceptible to getting ganked or maybe just killed with Sonic Wave. He's very low. We'll see who rotates for the six minute power rune. I mean, if I'm to spirit, I want to go here because you're you're winning mid right now. You know this lean is low. He doesn't have the resources. There's no way you want to give Lornoff a free power rune here. But Q secures it. That's a big rune. Very big rune, rune just resource wise. Laura will keep his sonic wave here. Again, you could think about trying to combine this on the Sven bottom, particularly if you can get a faster DK form up. Meanwhile, Jab's just continuing to force you to throw off the lane. Both these heroes matching each other in this laning phase. So I guess both are happy. Everybody's happy. Look at that. Yay! Nice little Dota game where everybody's enjoying their farm. That doesn't sound like a Dota game at all. Fino Dota! There needs to be at least, like, six people who are miserable. All right, well, the gank's coming bottom. Big stomp. Stomp is going to land, but they're running out of uh, spells to throw. Once again, Sven just proves to be too tanky for Team Spirit. Hero has looked very strong this series. Yeah. Some of these games, it feels like he just melts, but this series, Team Spirit maybe lacking a little early game nuke capability. Their support duos have been a little slow to come online damage-wise, and I think 23 is taking advantage of it for sure. Almost six on the DK. It's going to be a big spell for both teams to play around. How much room do you give Collapse down here? How much are you willing to give him? Yeah, do you want to, like, contest his tower push, or do you just want to let him have it? Nice snowball save. Back into the Inkswell, though it's a bit of damage. Follow up. The chase down, there's just nobody TPing in on the side of Aurora to help out with this. Like, Q did a great job saving, but... This TP's mega late. Okay, Jabs is finally here, and he will yeah. clean up one kill. I mean, it's really good for Jabs, but pretty sad for his Sven. Yeah, if he just if, they, if that TP came in five seconds earlier, maybe it would have been great. And there's the co-op counterplay. Now he's diving in too deep to try and he's catch trapped. the laps, and he's trapped by the creeps. He is going to die to Laurel. No problem for the Queen of Pain. Well, Laurel happy about that one for sure. That was the highest net worth core on the side of Aurora, by the way, was that Jab's Razor. So that's a big bounty to collect here. A lot of XP. And then 23 comes back, but the lane got shoved out, so kind of missing some some creep waves here as well. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is kind of what I expected is that Collapse would be leading the pack here. The strength of DK into these these low damage lanes. He just gets to sit here and you can't do anything. Didn't even have to commit into a lot of points in the Dragon's Blood. Yeah, here's a, a little bit of a problem with the, the lineup as well. They talked about how oh, it's kind of awkward to have Lina and Razor. There's also a thing where Lina and, and Sven tend to cannibalize the, the same part of the jungle, right? And a factor that Lornoff's lane, him getting solo killed, him having a, a slower game means... He's not going to play aggressive. He's not going to take the Queen's Tower when the Queen rotates. He's on catch-up duty, and that's taking farm away from the Sven. Like, this is such a different trajectory from the first game for 23. He is in a very different position. Jabs really going in on Yotoro, but the turnaround of just the magic damage from Mira threatens him. Not enough to get the kill, thanks to maybe Ollie coming in. He's creating a decent amount of pressure with this Razor, honestly. Yeah, he is. I'm not saying all of it's worked out, but it's at least forcing some reaction on Team Spirit. These other two lanes just not going exactly how they wanted. And here comes that DK form. Getting some damage in, forcing four reactions towards bottom. It feels like Q has just been relegated to this lane. 
Same thing as Morphling is a hero that just deals with that kind of pressure so well. We've seen him go down to a point where he has to full agi shift to no HP, and he is still set second net worth because they just haven't actually gotten the kill on him. Lornoff going to get a run down here, but a Quap with an ink swell on him. Jabs once again is going to show up to this fight to try and collect a kill on the outset of it, and Laurel blinks out. Got tick. Tick, oh, tick, tick. Five HP. Oh, we got him. Just barely on the edge. Jabs collects the kill with the plasma field. So in the end, they do trade out mids. Lorinoff continuing to have. Uh, well, I guess I guess maybe because the Quap died, he's actually a little bit ahead in net worth now. I mean, he was doing ancient stacks, though, right? Yeah, that's true. He he could be mega ahead. So the fact that they're both down here is. I don't know if Laurel's too sad about it. One of those things you'd be willing to. <laughs> well, that's a sad face. Maybe he is too a little down about it. it made me sad. I don't like sad Laurel. Yeah, give me happy Laurel. Happy TI-12 Laurel. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Everybody farming. I feel like the only action has really been around these sonic waves. They be, they just gave up bottom tower, which I think is fair. Like, what are you supposed to do here with the Sven in this position? He's got to recover. You can bring the Razor here again, but I don't think the Razor is just straight up killing this Dragon Knight. No, they do, you don't kill him fast enough, and then you get kind of rotated by the Quap. Yeah. Same thing happens. And again, you max the Plasma Field over Link, so this is like a fighting lane build, but you're not just running this DK down with level 4 Static Link or something. Yeah. I just don't still think that kill is available. So it's going to be another kind of parried game here. I like this. They take yeah, this that tower nice. and immediately smoke to mid to use the rest of the dragon form. I mean, this is exactly what you want to do. Oh, This could be really bad for Aurora if Lorna puts himself in a position yeah, to a get big caught, rune. but give him an arcane rune for the Queen of Pain. That was three heroes sitting there for Aurora. Yeah, they seem... I, th I think they have an idea that Team Spirit's trying to make a move on this mid lane, so maybe they thought the supports were behind the Queen of Pain there or something. More ancient stacking. I, uh, I mean, I think they know the smoke is coming. There's just nobody bottom for so long. In a way, this is almost greedy if you think that move is, is heading towards mid. Yeah, maybe that smoke is heading into your triangle right now. Yeah. So Lord off. But he's going to get away with it. And that has been a lot of recovery farm for this Lino. A lot of levels as well. Rush the Maelstrom here. He's just going to scale. And yeah, now he's going to farm it from underneath. There you go. Now the, the shifting of positions. All right, so he's got the Maelstrom. This is a very good answer to the Morphling, right? Look at the neutral differential here. In t 13 minutes, 1,600. Ooh. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. That's why you stack right there. Does mean that Spirit, like, they can't just keep letting this happen with no recompense anywhere. And this is why they need to make this move at top lane. See if they can blow up jabs. Q's coming over, but uh, even if he did get there and snowballed, they're dead anyway. Team Spirit brought way too many heroes up here. So Q will just save his own life and say goodbye to jabs. That is a dragon for him, though. Threw the kitchen sink at him. Yeah, they really did. I mean, it's the only hero that's going to be doing anything in this period of time. But Potion is going to try and sneak the Wisdom Rune here. Or maybe he's just getting Vision down. Yeah, he's doing a little scouting. Maybe they can push this tower with the rest of that DK form, but... And they might go for the Rune. They still have everybody up here. A little too slow. Indecisive. Don't like patient. the indecisiveness when you know Sven and Lena are farming. I think there was an, uh, there was a world where you make that move, but the problem is, it's an, again, it's another one of those lineups where you, you kind of lack the skirmish damage outside of that Sonic Wave. I don't even think that Razor dies it unless you bring the Quab. Mm. And that's the problem with, you know, you want to make these two or three man fast moves to threaten a hero. Who's doing that th this game outside of Laurel? You kind of have to play it a bit slow, patient, farm back up, and that is going to give the recovery time here to 23 and Lornoff, who are... You know, they're going to outfarm you during this period of the game. You have Cleave, you have Dragon Slave. It's doing more than the Morphling right click. So they will catch up. They will overtake you if nothing happens on the map. And that's where that smoke move to mid not converging and taking that tower 
really helps Aurora right now. Yeah. If that tier one mid is dead, this type of ancient farming becomes a bit more dangerous. You lose more map control. You're going to lose more mid creep waves. But right now, you get to sit your Phoenix here and, you know, dare him to jump him. Pretty happy with this outcome. Oh, it was a blink first for collapse off of a free farm lane, and he found the, the tier one bottom and the one razor kill top. That's it so far. I like you brought the Phoenix up. Because it's just not the Lena and Sven, right? It's the, the Phoenix as well. Likes static lane setups like this where... Yeah, as long as he's getting levels. He's able to just push out lanes while his cores farm jungle, or in this case, trying to farm a post cut. Does manage to get him Yotoro with the kill on the Phoenix, and now he's overextended himself. They immediately snap back and punish him. No way out for the carry of Team Spirit. That is not the move Yotoro was looking for. And that Lincolns cannot bail you out of that situation. Aposhka also bites the bullet down here. I, I feel like Team Spirit are just getting frustrated. They felt like they were stronger. They knew they won the lane phase. They wanted to use that strength, but they couldn't figure out where to put it. What to do with it. And once more, Aurora are a team that are happy playing these static games. Especially in the early mid game. And especially when it didn't go their way. Like, they're just going to sit here. Dare you to jump them. And if you can't find the angle, if you're not content playing a patient game, you might just throw. Now, you're going to be trying to fight into a BKB Razor. Which just gives you more reason to not fight. Right? Like, it is... You have no control for him outside of Soulbind. I guess Sonic Wave, if he runs in BKB, you can Sonic Wave break a link. Yeah, like as soon as he links, you might be able to break it right away. But damage-wise, it's it's a problem. Who's taking this Razor down? You need the scaling from the, the three cores in the late game. I don't know. It feels like Aurora are stronger right now, honestly. If it really came to a 5v5. Yeah, I think uh, you're actually going to get to a point where Aurora is going to consider that early Roshan again. They might. They have Tusk, Max, Tag Team. Yeah, and you have Phoenix around a pit. Like, I, I think that's where one of the places Supernova can really shine when you don't have the big team fight controlling spells that protect the egg, right? It's around the pit. For sure. A wise man said, if you don't have stuns, just push. Is that Eternal Envy? No, that was me just now. Sonic Wave on two with a Soulbind. That doesn't do anything. Great jump in. Now, Jabs, once again, is going to try and clean up as best he can off of this fight, but he's trying to go on to Collapse, and he's Collapse just going to TP away. No problem. Ten, uh, maybe TP. they find Mira here or Maposhka. That's going to be the target instead. But Yutoro's here to punish. He can't quite finish Maposhka. And Yutoro's going to snowball after him. Go for the kill. Can't quite get it. Okay, no problem. We'll just wave for him back to my side Man, of the gonna river. They're going to get nothing out of this. BKB Razor, Supernova dropped, killed their Sven at the enemy triangle. And all they got was a. was nothing, actually. They Not didn't even get that D thing. ward because they were too scared to D ward it. <laughs> and really that means nice Team Spirit can play for under that ward again. Yeah, they're just going straight back Radiant's to it. Middle tower is under attack. And that move just came out of nowhere. Beautiful setup. Sonic Wave on multiple heroes. Soulbind linking multiple heroes. You take the Sven down first. It removes a lot of the EHP from the Warcry. And, and that Fresh Ward will spot another pick off this time on Ollie. Vision is just winning Spirit this game right now. Straight up, these wards are eliminating Aurora's map. Yeah, two wards on the triangle, and then they still have that uh, one ward from earlier next to yeah. that tier they, 1 tower. They see on the left 23. Side. Yeah, that one right there. So they have this whole area completely covered. Which, you've got Dragon Form up. I'm still surprised they haven't tried to take this Tier 1 offlane tower. Just because they have such good vision around it. Waiting for the Orchid, Lactory. So a lot more single target magical damage right now. Yeah, that Spirit's going to send 23 pack in a little bit. And there you go. Dragon Knight commits to it. But look at the war. I mean, Aurora is smoking here, but this is this is prime Team Spirit vision territory right now. Smoke is going to break. Q, can he? Oh, he actually has a Blink Dagger, so he'll catch up to Moposhka and Mira, no problem. 
Nice stop, uh, might save the Grim. 23 will spot him, they'll follow the ghost. <laughs> His wife betrayed him. Yeah, well, it's deserved. He betrayed her first. No, he didn't betray her. He just went insane. Slaughtered the whole village. I mean, a very big I, I feel like killing your spouse is kind of a betrayal of your marital oath, but... I feel like know. loyalty is a virtue. Uh, and not murdering people. <laughs> <laughs> Probably also a virtue. Dead even game. I'm to dig fame. myself a hole there, and I will not do that this time. <laughs> dead even. And it is dead even. So good job. Good job, odds. Good job, chat. Shield rune. Really big rune for Laurel, actually, at this point in the game. If they want to try and re-goose. Though they did lose all their deep wards here. Aurora finally able to de-ward all that out. Tormentor time? No. Had to use him. Supernova to take the Tormentor. Kind 23 of 23 has he's had his struggles with these. That is for sure. But another move to bottom. Collapse ready to go. And Orchid will seal your fate. Man, they got some nasty chain silences. Orchid plus the, the Phantom's Embrace. It's going to be a strong Grimstroke game. Uh, this, this bind is... It's going to be problematic if it actually lands on any of the two between the Tusk Razor Sven. It's just going to debilitate you in the fight. And you have a lot of single targets to throw into it. Dagger, Embrace, DK Stun, the Morphling Strike. Shield Rune still active. Shield Rune might just be what the Doctor ordered. It's not enough. Lornoff even survives thanks to his BKB as Yutoro threw that shot over. But the Phylactery damage didn't go through. That was a smart BKB there. He is dead if he does not BKB TB. So the BKBs get Aurora out of trouble. Get him a big queen kill as well. So this game continues to get stalled. I, the real question is, is Morph just outscaling your Sven here because the Sven doesn't have the pace that we saw from that game one? That's the big question here. I think it's Kanda totally fine because you have done. Lina as well. I think Lina is a better... Yeah, maybe. But better they have Queen of Pain. Swap. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You think Lean is a better six slot to carry than Queen of Pain with six slots? I think so, yeah. Am I wrong? I don't know. That's, a, that's actually an interesting question. I think they do different things, too. It depends yeah, how you build them, but... That's fair. I I feel like I lean towards Quap, honestly. A little bit. I'm not saying it's some huge margin, but... Queen is scary with the max slots, man. Like, Parasma, Queen of Pain late game with some cooldown reduction and the Sonic Wave talents where it's like 30 second Sonic Wave that's dealing 600 pure and it's getting amped up. I mean, that that stuff is scary. I just Ax put, builds that can be spooky. I put a lot of value in the burst damage that Lena gives you late game, right? Just giving that numbers advantage right away. And then she still has the sustained damage on top of it because of all the right clicks. So if that happens, I guess that's where I'm thinking about. Like, if Lena can get that single target burst and you get that five on four, that, to me, is the strength of the hero. Dying. But will that happen in this game where you have some tanky frontliners? We'll have to see. Because he is going the right-click build mostly here so far. See what he decides to end up committing to. You also have to keep in mind this Etiora flying through. Like That's a lot of magic damp on these heroes if their BKB start to run low. And yeah. Aurora has been using them frequently this game. Uh-oh. They are cornered. Do they know that they have cornered Aurora here? They spot Q, but jabs would have been a really great pick. <laughs> Did so much damage. Shotgun down. What should I do? 700 magic damage plus a 379 Conda hit. So that adaptive did over a thousand. <laughs> That's a Laguna blade. That's so much better than a Laguna. Yeah, that blade. is literally that is literally Laguna. Except it's adaptive strike on a low cooldown. 
and on a hero that has like a blink mechanism so you can actually get to the back line to do that sort of thing. Now, what if we give Lena adaptive strike and we give more flame? Don't know where you're going with this, but it's a tail. You want blink too. <laughs> Radiance middle tower is Very aggressive here. Well, that's one way to get the to kill the tusk or get the supernova out Radiance of the phoenix real quick. I mean, I kind of like it because you're running this ET morph strat. So you throw the spirit in, you see some hero, you blink in, condom, waveform out. Radiance but what are you gonna do about it? It's the ultimate hit and run. Radiance middle tower has fallen. Sounds so annoying to play against, actually. Yeah. It's uh. A much more dangerous version of PA in some ways. Now, what if we gave Morphling Stifling Dagger and we gave Phantom Assassin? What is this? <laughs> more. What is this? <laughs> I don't hmm. understand. <laughs> could be, could be something. No, it's not. Let's see this blink in use. Is he gonna blink? No. Discipline from Yatoro. I mean, he's got two minutes left to the ages. He's going to make that play, I'm sure of it. But maybe Aurora strikes first. This is a bold move. I kind of like it. Smoke up into the enemy's Aegis, but they didn't get the initiation they were hoping for, at least. Maybe they do now. Actually, oh, he moved into him. Oh, he bumped right into Laurel. Laurel was still able to get away, though. Supernova. Oh. That soul bind. Toro just he blew has up that poor Phoenix, man. DD. That is a rough one to run into. Jax is still going for that back line. BKB, glide near. The last hit comes in from Lorinov to finish off the Queen of Pain, but it's traded out for Jabs. Yeah, Toro Yotoro, found the Phoenix, but. He's got his blink dagger. He can maybe catch up to these heroes, but he's going the wrong way. Honestly, Yotoro, I mean, he's, he kills this Phoenix, but he couldn't latch on to heroes too well in that fight, despite the mobility and a DD rune. I think Aurora lucky to get out of there with what they got, which was an even trade. That could have been really terrifying if Yatoro just gets to start laying into people there. I mean, Ollie got absolutely obliterated by the amp damage adaptive. Did he have ink swell on him too? That's dirty, man. He might have. Soulbind was nice, but 23 shrugs it off. Nice Ags reveal that hit two on the, the Storm Hammer. Back into the game. Sven getting caught here around the tier two. The supernova goes off to the side. Yutoro has to focus that, but he may not have the damage fast enough. Oh, he barely gets it, but does it matter? They got the supernova, yes, blink. but he's going to be coming back into a potential. Oh. oh, he got the blink away. Waveform's out. They didn't have ice shards to cover it. They couldn't time the LSA perfectly enough. One does not simply stun Yatoro God. <laughs> Midas for Q. Okay. I actually kind of like it, to be honest, because I think this is a game you know you're not rolling it over at this point, you know, and so you're you're going to need to pick up the scale here. If you can get to an Ags plus some other item later, you'd be really annoying in the fight. Yeah. can change the dynamic Bounty. as this game continues to scale, because this game is going to scale. I do wonder how, like, I don't know what other late game items you can really go as Tusk. I just question how good the Ags is when you're doing it against Quop Morphling. I mean, you could also just go BKB or something. He, he could... I think the Midas is just going to pay off with the levels here. Sure. No, I, def I definitely agree. I think this is a good Midas choice. Radiant. What other item would he buy? Like, if he goes Vlad, is that suddenly changing the game? Yeah, nothing really is uh, going I to don't... change the state of what's going on I right guess now. he could go four staff or something, but... I mean, Midas, greed is good, man. Greed is good. Nobody wants to admit it. Uh, trying to force out the BKB, but he gets stunned by Collapse. No follow-up, though, from Team Spirit. I thought Yutoro was maybe going to pounce on that one, but he seems pretty low to jump on the Lina. What BKB eventually? Resmoke up. An attempt to re-go here. Scan hits. Send the dragons in. Aurora are pretty split right now. They've got uh, this Tusk farming deep in the enemy jungle. Don't mind me. <laughs> Just hitting some creeps over here. What is this? Ooh. 
<laughs> Why? Like, the rest of his team is, like, huddled together. He's getting some farm, man. He was out there like, I'm, I'm going to go hit some creeps. That's a, that's a big courier snipe. He's trying to finish Daedalus off that in a couple hundred gold. So he's going to be missing a lot of value here. Battle for the Baiting rune. the 30 minute rune. Once again, trying to get him to use oh, the Elder Titan. The Sven goes straight for the Elder Titan, gets forced away by the Sonic Wave. Good play by Laurel to save his support. Mira, well, unfortunately Lotus. for Mira. Ooh, wait a minute. They have to actually back away from Bone this hammer. one. They roll off the Laguna Blade really doesn't do much to the Dragonite. Laurel's going for the egg, is going for the egg. Laurel is able to get the egg and blink away just in time. While 23 does manage to get that support, but now he has no BKB and he's getting kited around. Yatoro throws the stun back. At him, collapse getting run down by jabs though, as well as Lornoff. The right click double duo Laurel here. Lingering. Lornoff and jabs. Jabs leaves, Lornoff stays. He pops his BKB, and now he TPs out because of the stunning Toro. He will get away. Preserves his life at the end there. What a sick team fight from Laurel though. Like so many heads up play there. That Blink Sonic Wave saves the Elder Titan. Super impactful for those later exchanges where he gets another spirit off, gets an Earth Splitter off. And then he even almost forced to save the DK. Meanwhile, the Quap solo kills the egg as well, and then lives after all of it. Yeah. God damn, Laurel. Popping off there. And then he gets stuck in trees. Another round of Tormentors. Also, stolen Storm Hammer from Yatoro. He got a double hammer off the Soul Bind, and then he got another one on 23 at the end of that fight. Oh, did he? I didn't see the, the first one. That was mega value. And those are proc in that conda as well, if he has it off cooldown. That is just insult to injury. Though, we did see Lornoff and Jabs carry a lot of the damage for that Aurora squad as 23 just tanked it up and I mean, they were running people down. This Lena hurts, man. Yeah, it like took so long to bring down the Sven, but then you have two other right-clicking cores yep. that are eating you up. He's fast, he hits hard, and he's closing in on that level 25 talent. Big talent for this hero. A lot of extra damage going through. Another smoke from Team Spirit. Pop's going to go rejoin on them. Smoke. smoke on smoke. They're going to run into the same area here. Nobody has the ward on the high ground. Team Spirit will take the area. They do not want to jump 23. But that snowball stay behind. Arl. He shows himself trying to dodge, dodge it. it. Ooh, that was a bold move, and he might have paid for it. Got away on like 10 HP. No way. Mira holding back the spin. They're going to jump in. They got the lead up. Warren off. Yotaro's going to go for it, but he got off the BKB. So he's able to back out. Sonic Wave trying to push away 23 once again. Team Spirit on the retreat, seeing a lot of abilities like God Strength and Razor's Ultimate being used. They call it quits here. I thought they were going to try and burst that Lena off the sleep, but not even close. Just an exchange of ults and BKBs here as somehow Laurel lives on what must have been under 20 HP. I mean, that was some balls there to try <laughs> hey, to, to be, get hit by the Gleipnir and go, I'm going to pop the illusion yeah, to dodge the LSA. It didn't work, and he almost paid the price for I mean, it. If he gets crit one more time, he's gone. He was 19 HP. So, yeah, ballsy play indeed. And at this point, you're just trying to, to recover from what is a very confusing situation. But in the meanwhile, you just went to Roche. Aurora just gave it up. Yeah, I think Aurora said God Strength wasn't going to last long enough. And without their ultimates, they did not feel like they were strong enough to, to actually do Roche on. So they let Team Spirit have it here. Team fight discipline pays off. Cut your losses. Don't give up too much. And you end up getting paid back. Big Roshan. I mean, Yatoro can, you can just man up. Try and force some BKB exchange that favors the team overall over the long run. And maybe find this Lina. This is the first Link I think we've seen. Yeah, unfortunately, the Lincoln's not going to be able to protect you against the uh, the Morphling the way you want it to. And unfortunately, he also correctly struck him there.
Huh? <laughs> I don't get why you. Never. <laughs> that was a that was a subtle flame. It's okay. On who? <laughs> he used the right adaptive strike. Yeah. Yeah, from yesterday's game. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I forgot about that one. <laughs> I, was, I was trying not to be mean, but it was too, it was too funny to pass up. <laughs> Even when 23 is not playing more fling, he still gets flamed. Jesus. Oh, Dragon Knight teaching high ground. The coolest mechanic in the game, I got to say. I got to give it to Val. This one was a really cool one. Yatoro! Oh, looking for the freebie. You had the Dragonite to do this. You didn't need to go high ground yourself. He does get out, though. Saves the Aegis. All right, I have a, I have a theory craft for you. We've seen a lot of Morphling lately. Uh-huh. <laughs> what happens if in one of these random late game fights, you just buy, like, a Orb of Venom? And you just randomly right-click him. And then he morphs down to one HP. <laughs> I, it doesn't last <laughs> long enough to like catch him out. Like, okay, that. but what if it? What if you somehow pulled that off? Radiant Would you be the greatest Dota player ever? <laughs> I guess. Like, would that go down as you know, in in the echelon of tops and buys diffusal mana burns bristle back? Like, I mean, I'm trying to think of like what's a uh, whoa what's jabs buys orb of corrosion. A sneak burns dot. out. <laughs> like, like Vessel is like way too obvious. That's so what I'm saying. Is there any sneaky like way? Because we see this so much, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Sunstrike is like the best example. That's not a. That's not as cool. No. Neither is Thunder God's Wrath. So. Maybe they need to buff Orb of Venom, make it last longer. See, I thought you were going to say something about, like, Orb of Corrosion. You know, like the regen factor against Morphling. There's some, there might be something there. We'll come back to that later. Okay. For now, 2k gold lead. Very even game still. The Lincoln's pouring in as Lena is getting jacked. Still not level 25. But the high ground defense is formidable here, right? I mean, you're talking about sieging it with DK illusions, but that's about all you can do, it feels like. How else do you break this defense line? Yeah, Phoenix, but... Lena, high ground? Ugh. Yeah, that I was mean, what my, collapsed. My thing is always like, what? but why not? You could just keep doing it. You say, like, that's all they have. But, like, yeah, it gets the job done. Does it, though? Yeah, the Tiger 3 tower is almost dead. Oh, well, they're going to smoke out. Radiant's Try and get a flank. He's just expiring attack. soon. Oh, if they could somehow catch... Blow up Yatoro here? I guess that's a minute on the it, Elder though. Titan. <laughs> you don't want to find Yatoro. You want to find E.T. Grim, Queen. That's what you're looking for. That courier almost gave it away. Their backstab is in the right spot. They have, they, they know where he's at. That animation shows who the fuck. They blink forward, go for Mira here up on the high ground. Not quite the run. Now they see Maposhka, but he's four stabbed up to the high ground. They couldn't quite get it. Oh, oh no! 23 and deep actually gets to Maposhka because Wait, that he's chased after Yatoro. Somehow, Yatoro led him straight to where he wanted to go. Don't bring him to me, man. <laughs> Wait, Lord, off the, what's going on? Are we leaving or are we staying? Collapse is going back in with the Black Dragon. Spence already down to half health. Yatoro's trying to kite him back, waiting for that Queen next on the round backside. of the phylactery. While Laurel, yeah, he goes for that back line. Snowball in after the creeps. Laurel's probably going to be able to collect that one while Jabs is left entirely alone. The rest of the team backed away. Oh, that Link. Aegis will expire here from Yatoro as he gets the kill. Meanwhile, Laurel got that one kill and he managed to TP back. Aurora did not seem to be on the same page there. That fight was just chaotic as hell, man. They didn't know if they were fighting, retreating. They didn't know what the hell was going on. Laurel just kills Q on the backside. He's going to go for it. Breaks through that Lincoln, down to half, and Lena's dead. Big find there with the chain stun. They might get the egg. Clean yeah. up the supernova, no problem. Aurora have fallen apart now. Picked in the up fountain. Are Toro in the fountain? What the hell? What? Are you Toro? You don't have the Aegis, you Toro. What are you doing? He waveforms away, dodges last bit of damage, but they can keep Man, chasing. It's got no Without God's strength, though, the Sven really isn't that much of a threat. 
Was that just an alpha move? Or <laughs> was that necessary at all? Down a game in the series in Yatoro. Just run straight into the fountain. Laurel almost dies as well. Still have a BKB for 23. He's trying to get something done. And Kinky can collapse. He blinks out of the stun, and now he's oh left in no man's God. land. Dead again. That is gotta be it. They don't have Alina. They don't have the Sven. Dude, the, these spell steals from Yatoro have just been 23's nightmare. He is in the fountain. He is in your head, and he is in your base. And he's taking them all. Putting on a late game show as Team Spirit coming to life in this series. Not only have they killed 23, they have 23 kills. Looking to add to it. Mega Creeps got. He's still at 15 seconds to Lena's back up. 50 for this. Oh, they're going. There's no reason to back up. They're going. They're just waiting for Laurel to get some resources. Laurel having a poke while Yatoro will demolish a tier four. Five seconds flat is all it takes. Jumps after him. Oh, Jabs almost dies. Snowball helps him out here. They go for Yatoro, but he still had the BKB to fall back on. Oh, Laguna Blade eaten up by Lincolns. And Scotty coming in. They're, they're just going to go throw in here. You do not have time for Sven to come back. You have to take this fight right now. You do not have the BKB on Jabs. You do not have the refresher for 20 seconds. Taking it without your carry. Got to get in there now. They're just going to call it GG. And we're going to game three. Man, those late game team fights, when they come together for Team Spirit, they are just nasty when they're in their element. And they found the jumps. They found the stuns. They found the catch. Lauren off on that high ground will seal the deal as he just can't maintain the spacing. When that Sven is dead, the front line just collapses there, and you, you can't prevent Yatoro finding you on the backside with the Spirit. This ET Morphling combo is just wreaking havoc on a lot of these teams. And I think that's the matchup that Team Spirit wanted to force here. They wanted a carry that could deal with the Sven in the late game, give him some buffs to help him do it, and Yatoro does the rest. 9-2-2 two, two here. Pretty low kill count game, but honestly, a lot of that just came down to the offlane controlling 23's early acceleration which just gives the Morphling enough space to win this matchup later on. Sonic Waves from Laurel did a lot of work here, too. That Queen, I mean, going back to the soul kill from him on the laning phase as well. Yeah. A lot of small stuff just set Team Spirit up for success here that made this similar draft from Aurora not look as potent. I would also say, like, there was a lot of small stuff, but then towards the end there, I feel like Aurora, uh, you know, they, they had one fight that didn't go their way and they just kind of crumbled. Yeah, they, they did not put it together. It, it was hard for them to find the initiations and it was super chaotic. 23 is killing somebody else. They're jumping the dragon. Lornoff's TPing out. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> so we head to a game three for Team Spirit and Aurora. Who's going to come out on top in this series? I'm sure our panel has some ideas about that. Well, the Sven giveth and the Sven taketh away, as it does not bring Aurora success in this game number two. You heard from the casters, a lot of small little pieces all contributed to the beautiful puzzle that Spirit solved on how to beat this Aurora draft, as it was much of the same from game number one. Small tweaks here and there, but things were rearranged enough. Maybe it was the Morphling that was the X factor involved for the Spirit victory. I feel like the mid game from Aurora was very good because I feel like this game was actually very hard for them. I was, I would say, impressed with them to kind of hold on to the game as well as they did. Because eventually you can just see that Yotoro, he's going to get his items. And I have to say, I really like this blink dagger. He can go on, like go into the fight with the blink, hit whatever he wants, like maybe kill the egg, but then still like way form out. And I would say that Team Spirit's team fighting in this game was actually... Phenomenal. Like, that will be my takeaway from this game, is that Aurora, it was a hard game, and eventually Spirit, I feel like they just outplayed them in the mid-game. Laurel survived with, like, 10 HP in four different fights, I swear. And they were never really able to... They, they had their first initial hard commit, which I suppose was the Razor doing most of the initiating. And then they were praying that they could get as many casualties as possible, while Spirit just string out of arm's reach, just ever so slightly. Yeah, whenever I look at uh, spirit drafts, I think like once they get items, they always have some cohesive plan of how they're going to take fights. And 
the fight win condition, mm -hmm. basically. In this game, I think it's forcing BKBs from Razor, Sven, Lina, and then disengaging and then re-engaging. Mm -hmm. And one thing I love about watching Spirit is it's so clear that everybody on the team understands what that win condition was moving forward in the game. And you mentioned the blink dagger. It's like, yeah. that's going, if Morphling doesn't have a blink, then he can't go in without, with a way out. But now he does have one, Quap blinking away with 10 HP, you know? It's all about forcing these reactions, poking you, and that says so much about Yatoro's build, not necessarily the most traditional Morphling build of Conda Blink, yeah. right? But it just makes sense when you think about what they're trying to do as a team. I guess that's why you specifically cited the, the team fights. It was poetry in motion, Ted. Every single moment of execution, they're pushing the limits of what their heroes were capable of. Night and day from game one. For yeah. sure. Strange, uh, at the start, we saw Quap just solo kill this leaner, I think, as Cap and and Avery were pointing out she came to lane low in health or something like that. It was just weird things like that that kept happening through the game where Aurora didn't feel anywhere near as settled. If you compare it to the first game, they were everywhere. Mm -hmm. And they just sort of took over, I think. I mean, the Spirit only got a handful of kills. And now in this one, it felt, felt more even. And in a weird way, I think that kind of played into Spirit's hands a little bit because I do think they're probably the better team. And given a bit of time on both sides and this this morph razor matchup that the guys were talking about is not great. The razor's not gonna be able to, to focus them down. So it felt like Aurora had these couple of little problems that happened early on and then nothing really went their way. They were kind of there, mm -hmm. but then Spirit where everything was going their way and they just gradually increased their lead and then every team fight executing and, and then the end, you know, that's it. The Maybe it's the, another point in the point and click stun column that you had for collapse. DK yeah. ends up getting a win for him. Absolutely. No, I mean, the thing about Collapse is I like that he adjusts the way he plays the game based on the meta. Like, meaning everybody else on DK right now is pretty much going Mage Slayer Manta. Mm -hmm. And D then Collapse is the first guy I see going like Sage's Mask, a part of the Mage Slayer, and then Blink Orchid. So it's like mana region item attack speed with Blink, but it's just a different order and it's a way like enables this team and just shows like you can take a meta hero and have a different vision of it than everybody else. So it's, it's a pretty intelligent remark, Brian. <laughs> that you have brought to me yet again. But it's not you that I come to for the intelligence. It's, in fact, our social media expert, because you heard it previously. Lacoste treated us to a little bit of insight and brain power into what the minds at Reddit are thinking about, which most recently has been about intelligence, Lacoste. Is that right? Yeah, or the opposite. Uh, I mean, I've been feeding a lot of Reddit, and there's a lot of dumb stuff there, I'll be honest. What? And, um, On Reddit? Yeah, so... I found one very interesting thread. It's about uh, what are the dumbest Dota beliefs people used to have from the old days and now. Okay. So oh, you couldn't this. buy a Quelling Blade. Like you could, but uh, you know, you were not considered a pro, even like in the professional games. People oh, it's were like not shameful to buy Pretty quelling. much. Oh, like if okay. you're like buying Quelling Blade, you're basically a scrub that can't last hit for <laughs> shit. So you had to do it. Uh, and uh, I, I believe I was not buying it until I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make it easy for myself back in the day. So. What a quitter look cost come on have some pride in your laning and yeah, we're taking you back in time this is for all the boomers there's gonna be a lot of dota one stuff coming out from this one okay there's also one where you can't kill the host like if you kill the host way too many times <laughs> he would leave he would legit leave because back in the days it was played on these different platforms and host was always blue this is the part that i really like because i had a good connection i could host the games oh. and then he looked so cool and no one would kill you also. No, and uh, I don't know if you know this function. What is that? Is this Jirina, Garina this days? This Jirina, Garina oh, days. Oh, tunnel so me, please. If you were lagging, you would ask host to tunnel you. Not uh, sure how that works, so he would like... Uh, hashtag tunnel the guy i think it was related to a color and then he would like fix your ping it didn't do anything but uh, <laughs> the placebo effect is strong. pretty much yeah and only range heroes could go mid back in the day some people still believe that uh, you know you need to do that the intelligence heroes send him to the mid lane because he's like the smartest one ogre could definitely not go to the mid lane these mm -hmm. days we had the uh, we had talked about ogre before and also a lot of spamming. People wanted to heal faster <laughs> back in the day. So they were spamming F1 at the fountain. People still do it to this day. There, there's, uh, we can't see it here, but there's 
over 100 upvotes on I still do it to this day comment. <laughs> so people still think it works. There's nothing better to do. Like you're just sitting there and you're like, okay, what do I need to do? Maybe you can check the items around uh -huh. the map. But if you are our herald, there's not much you can do. And also... Oh, I think I know this one. You know that one? So I, for me, this was uh, when Dota 2 first started. Uh, matchmaking wasn't as reliable, so you would go to lobbies, and this was the go-to password. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Another I have a two thing, guys, was that if you played badly, people would say, get this guy out of the beta. That they were going to report you and get you kicked out of the Dota 2 beta because you were going to ruin the game. My dad works at Valve. And that was speaking of one. that... There is one extra comment about Necromancer. So my dad <laughs> thinks Necromancer's normal attack is powerful because the projectile is huge. Hell yeah. That's so why Sniper have, actually has the lowest damage. Yes, no damage unless he peeps. But uh, yeah, Primal Beast and Tiny with level 18, level 3 ulti, toughest heroes in the game. That must be it. Yeah. It's all about Can't the size. Can't argue with that logic. The girth of the projectile. That's what it controls the damage. <laughs> The cost, ground breaking analysis as always. Appreciate the social insight. And Tad, yes. I hear that you have some more details for our lovely viewers at home as well. I do, I wanna talk, uh, Neil, about ESL One UK. After a long wait, Dota's coming back to the UK, boys and girls, I can't wait. I'm gonna be there in Birmingham. The Dota's is gonna do us proud. And there's tickets still available, premium and select tickets, where you get to sit near the players and mingle with the talented people like us. Be there. I'll be there. Neil's going to be there. I'm Kezu's going to be, gonna be there. there. You can get the tickets yourself. ESL.gg slash BMH Birmingham. BMH. It's coming home. It's coming Wait, home. Yeah, I'll also be there. Oh gonna my be God. There. Brian, you going to be there? I'll be there. Brian's going to be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. Be here, baby. We're all going to be there. Why aren't you? Get your tickets now. ESL.gg slash BMH. Be there and be here well, for game great. number three of Aurora versus Spirit.
Yeah, look at that shiny head. It's revving up a bunch of ideas for game number three of Team Spirit versus Aurora, where the question that has posed me is, Sven, will it continue to be the carry du jour of the rest of Dream League season 22? These are the questions that keep me up at night, Brian. This one might be correct. Do I need to say this again? <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? Where Existential am I? crises a lot. A, a, Existential crises abound. Abound. And yet, here I am, wondering about these things. Kazu, you're saying that maybe I'm on the right track, that Sven might be on the come up. Uh, I think Sven's, Sven is good and he's like safe because he lanes well, he helps you arrange supports to get them out of lane, but I wouldn't, like, he's not a every game type carry, and I think we could see that in the last game. But I would attribute it actually more to Aurora's Razor pick. Um, okay. I feel like what happened in this draft is, so you pick it because it's like, it's a flex for you, right? You can put it elsewhere. But I feel like the problem, once you pick Sven and Razor, and the Sven has to go offlane and your Phoenix is a five, you lose a lot of the team fight. So even though he is a soft flex, when you are forced to put it offlane, in, in that game that we just saw, I feel like you're actually quite sad. Did they have to, were they forced? I felt like the Lena pick is the, okay, we want the Razor to be in the offlane. They knew what the mid lane matchup was against the Co-op. Yeah. They yeah, but you could have the Razor, the razor against Co-op, I guess is the idea. Because yeah. every time he links it, she blinks away. So it's like a pointless. Every time you link Morphling, well, maybe not every time. But, but he's not going to be mid. So I, 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 I guess the idea was we have to move the Razor mm -hmm. because we want someone to have a good lane mid. And that means we'll put Lena there. And then at least she'll lane well against Quap, whereas Razor just doesn't do shit. I would shit. say also, Fair. like, last point to that, just because they could have done something to actually solve it, the harder it gets for you to do that later in the draft, the worse your pick was at that stage. And I think this Razor pick makes it actually pretty hard to solve it towards the end. That's true. Okay, I've got a point about 
I'm so sorry, no, go ahead. I've We're got really a very quick point about down. Sven. We're all saying, is Sven the carry? Is Sven the carry du jour? Is he now here? <laughs> that is the phrase that I use, I'm yes. just saying, they ban a lot of carries. Yeah. And yeah. I think now this is like... All the other girls at the party, Brian, if you can imagine you're at a party. I was about to make a similar metaphor here. They've all <laughs> gone off with other other chads. Yes. Right? Dude, and I, now I, you're I, left dude, with... You and me are literally mind melting. I, right? I, I, I know, I could tell. And you're there and you're like, well, yeah, she's nice enough in a certain situation. <laughs> I'm sure we could make this work. Dude. But it's not your first choice. You want to be going out with Nagasar. My, my exact thought was <laughs> Rude, that man. Ben is the rebound guy. <laughs> okay, and sure. That, when you're thinking of like a meta, like carries like Sven, he's reliable. You know, he's safe. He's you know? always there. You've, yeah, gone you can... for, you've gone for some of the more spicy. Exotic he's got a route. mortgage. And then, yeah, know. he's got a mortgage. We were he's got a nine to five. Right. He, he, he makes keeps a 70K. Fish. He has house plants that are living. <laughs> yes. These things. He has a full, you know, kitchen set up. Head of that. hair. Yeah. Uh -huh. kind of simple shit that was just like safe. It, you want to be you want to be hopping on the back of a motorcycle with a guy who's insane. <laughs> yes. Morphling's got a mohawk over there. Yeah, <laughs> think about it. When all the like the experimental phases have failed, mm -hmm. you go back to Sven. That's what happens over the course of this tournament. That's Everyone's it. like, ah, a lot of these, car. a lot of these like high <laughs> risk, high reward carries, like the morph, like the void. Maybe they're not working every single game. So let's go to our Mr. Mortgage over there. But here's the thing, Mr. Mortgage is the, is the backbone of this economy. <laughs> All right, without with Absolutely. Mr. Motorcycle, America and Britain and everywhere else just falls apart. <laughs> You need Mr. Mortgage. Mr. Safe is how you get a society and a country. God damn it. Not Mr. Motorcycle. Yes, cheer for Mr. Mortgage. <laughs> well said. The crowd go wild for Mr. Mortgage. You need those white picket fences. You do. And Sven's bringing them. I'm never going to look at Sven the same. <laughs> <laughs> I literally was thinking this and then Ted starts the ball. He stole like your point too. Uh, no, no, he alley-ooped my point. Yeah. That was perfect, Ted. Uh, Thank you. Full reliable. Like Sven. Yep. It all goes back to Sven. We will right. probably see Sven this game because we see Morph band out and Naga's band out, like you said, the spicy ladies. Well, Morph's not a lady, but you get it. I get it. Chen and Morph Timber. Into a lady. Bat DK also bands out. Mm. And we get the first pick. Mars from Aurora responded, I guess, almost a steel pick. They finally put Phoenix on Spirit's side and Aurora will no longer get their hands on it. I mean, I like this. Anytime I see Mars, one of the next picks are either they're like saves to break the team fight from Mars, or it's like Aww. you match the team fight by having a Ravage, a Tombstone, this case Egg. Like you try to override the arena. So overall, just pretty, pretty casual, but good pick. And again, a Tiny. Now it's typically been in Laurel's hands, but Tiny always has the flex potential. I must say that mid, I'm still on the fence about the mid tiny. I'm not super sold on it, especially if you pick it like this. Like you see one Mars and then you pick it. I do think there's other heroes that make it work, like we said before. The Grim, the ETs, maybe the Phoenix, but I personally feel like this hero belongs into the position four role, mm. not mid. I mean, we've seen him use so well there. Like, With the amps. Yes, but it's like th this hero just does what you want a pause for to do, I yeah. think. and. He can roam really early on. He's got a great spell combo. He can just blow up supports or he can get in there and disrupt the fight. I think I think he's a great possible, perhaps probably too good, actually. That's a fair point. I do think Tiny is one of the best fours. We have a bit of a switcheroo going on, at least with the supports. I think yep. there's one important thing to note here that I don't like about Tiny versus Mars that we kind of saw in the last Ten game is that you can't toss people out of arena. Mm. Like, That's a good point. Like, one of the biggest things about Tiny is that, like, save component yep. that you can toss people back and reset the fight on your own terms. And that's just not the case. Like, Mars truly does lock you in with him. Now, I've got a question for you guys. Um, I've seen Aurora have banned Centaur, like, every single time. Yes. It's just against Spirit, right? Like, the Centaur isn't considered a must-ban against anyone other than Collapse, I would guess. Centaur, uh, we saw it, I think, XM, or XSS, XSS, I mean? yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, XSS was also getting first banned Centaur, and then, like, one game he got it and was number one net worth at 20 minutes, even though he was first picked. So Jesus. I think Centaur is just another one of those heroes where 
his understanding of the landing phase, he can kind of play like two different builds. You can go for like the max burst damage with the QW, or you can go more of like a sustained trade farm mm -hmm. route. Yeah. So knowing exactly how to get your off the ground running on that hero and hitting his timings is really essential. And here's that hero in the right hands. Mm -hmm. Scary. I mean, I would actually like a Storm a lot, or again, a hero that jumps this back line, unless they want the Tiny to be four. Uh, to, if they want the Tiny to be mid, then obviously they cannot pick a Storm. But I would be looking at these type of heroes that can get in the back line. Oof, there's one. And I guess Primal can kind of do it. At least once you have a BKB, you can freely do it later in the game. This is like a BKB piercing egg protector, kind of. Yeah. Not like the equivalent of like Axe or Void or anything, but... I Honestly, I'll be honest with you, I didn't ever think I would see a hero like Primal Beast added to Dota. I agree with you. What about him? It's just... Oh my god. All right, they're just full send. Wow. It First is really about good the primal against three heroes so, they see. He's just, if you look at other, the other heroes that they've added, first of all, they've either been cutesy pie anime waifu material, uh, right? Like Marcy, or they've just been heroes where you think, you know, I, I kind of get it, but they will basically look like people or it's like a monkey king kind of thing. It's like, they, I can see these, mm -hmm. but they're just like just a fucking massive dinosaur. He's huge. <laughs> And you can hear him all over the map. You'd be like, no, this is like something you'd have to l lump over from Dota 1. Because it's like, oh, whoa, yeah, there was a T-Rex in the original <laughs> Warhammer 3 Customo, so it has to be a Dota. So, but this is like, no, no, we're going to drop it. It's the biggest model you've ever seen. You can hear it everywhere, and it just charges everyone. It goes, Rah! I had a similar reaction when the hero came out. I feel like this was the... The one that, like, it inspired me the least to go and play it. I saw part of this, I'm like, I don't want to play this hero. That they did it for the other camp of people who were begging for a monster. There's a big monster. Too yeah. many humanoids. That's not me, though. I'm, just, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I like Primal Beast. I think he's a fun hero to have in the game. I like the fact his mechanics are kind of unique. I like that. I'm just saying, I didn't ever think that they would literally just go, just put a big monster in, just massive monster, get a big monster and just drop me in the game. But they have. So fair play. That's another quadrupede in addition to the Life Stealer, Brian. Why did Life Stealer get picked? Uh, ET Marana basically do nothing to you in the support role. You're a hero that can get out of the arena with rage, so you don't have to itemize against Mars. One thing I've said time and time again is I just hate playing carries into offlaners that force me to change my items. Like, you yeah. just, against Mars, pretty much 90% of carries have to buy BKB, and that's annoying. It sucks. It's inconvenient. Life Stealer, not the case. So, he might end up buying one later, anyways, mm -hmm. but it doesn't like feel that bad to have like a fourth item BKB or something like that. There is something to me when I look at Spirit's draft so far where it tells me they need to last pick a core, otherwise I feel like their draft looks very wonky. But then if, let's say, that is the scenario, right? You put Primal offlane with a tiny four, Life Stealer into the carry role, there's still something like I'm missing. Like, I feel like currently when I look at their draft, it doesn't look very good. And generally when that's the case, it means something is off. They do have last pick, luckily, but I feel like their last pick, it really really has to hit the mark. Well, can you pinpoint what's making you uneasy? Are they lagging push? Are they lagging? It's the fact that there's actually like a lot of overlap. Like Primal Beast and Lifestealer both have to like run in. You're showing two cores that rely on being melee and tanky, which okay. means they share a lot of counters. If you are last picking an offlane, a uh, mid, I feel like it should then also be pretty easy for 23 Savage to pick his carry because he probably sees the lane he's going into. It's just a lot of... The more you overlap and the easier you make it for your opponent, it's uh, you get punished a lot at the highest level of drafting when you do this. Okay, so then instead of a tanky brawler, maybe you want an eel, mm. as Ted would call them. You want someone slippery who can go weave in and out, much as how Storm Spirit has suddenly shown up in this draft on Aurora's side. There's an eely lad. He's a very eely lad. And oh, one honestly, that maybe Weaver is actually pretty good against this lineup for Team Spirit. Oh, I, I like Weaver a lot. I would like Weaver a lot as well, so like you said, a Radiant hero that weaves. I don't know how serious, how literal you are being. Eels don't nip, Brian. True. They don't make me sweaters. Wait, why would Weaver be a good? Um, game? I've always liked it against Life Stealer because Life Stealer's entire kit is based around. Oh, slows. for Aurora, right? Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah, for Aurora. Okay. Weaver meant for Spirit. Very good. Yeah, also. Weaver meant for like, Spirit. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, and then it's like a hero that isn't too inconvenienced to hit the egg. Like you mm -hmm. can usually position yourself in fights properly. Um, Tiny uses his entire combo on you, and then you just push R. So like, usually Weaver's good against. Like a set amount of burst that's like not quite enough to kill you, and that's right. that's kind of what I'm seeing coming out from Team Spirit's draft. Also, they'd have to pretty much use everything on him, and you've still got the storm. Yeah, who you're also going to struggle to lock down. Yeah, it's also like a ranged guy that pairs well in lane with ET. So, 
Is Void Spirit just dead in Prototype? I haven't seen a Void Spirit. Off the grid. Oh, ranged guy. Okay. Hard. That's a very, eel-like. You the, mentioned he that as a very eel-like eel. eel. It's the triple eel, Strat Neal. <laughs> who's the third eel? Marana? A bag of eels. Yeah, Marana leaps away. He is. And she goes invisible. I suppose like that all is true. Eels. Like all eels. Yeah, those dastardly invisible eels. All right, who's going mid against the storm spirit? Is it tiny or is it a new hero? The thing is... Like, let's say you put the Tiny mid and you're looking for a new 4. I don't see any last pick 4 that wows me. Therefore, Tiny is just going to be 4, in my opinion. Would Shadow Demon have potentially been that 4 as it gets banned out at the last phase? I feel like even that one, I wouldn't have done it for me. Okay. So I feel like we're looking for a new mid that the Tiny and the Phoenix can potentially try to play through. I like and then Death Prophet. Death Prophet? Yeah. I think like you need like a DKS hero because like you said, they have like no objective taking. I think you need like a tower pressuring, Roche taking kind of hero. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it's not Death Prophet, I'd like to see some objective taker because that's what I think, team, like even Team Spirit's draft is kind of lacking wave clear too. Like you have to be point blank range on the wave to clear it. And that means that like heroes like Wind Ranger and Storm are always going to see their targets on the map. Silence would be bad. good as well. The silence would be really good. Oh, yeah, I love mid silencer. The, no, no, no. The, the silence, silence on oh, Death Prophet. I could, oh, okay. At first, I also thought, Ted, you crazy for this one, but... Oh, they go for the tiny mid with the Grimstroke last pick again. Okay. Sure. That was the pick, right, Kesu? That was the four position that really convinces you. Well, it is, it is a great four overall, but... Yeah, I'm... Hmm. I had some concerns earlier. I feel like Spirit have a draft that is fine enough, but to me, at least... Something is still off, therefore I I cannot trust their draft just by instinct. There's something off and I feel like Aurora have like a pretty solid lineup where they have good team fight. And I feel like this Wind Ranger didn't get addressed by you last picking a Grimstroke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could have been basically any hero that they yeah. got at the end. They're like, oh, we're gonna take Grimstroke anyway. But that's that's just my read, so I would already predict that Aurora will win this game. Put an A for that, man, right there. For me, an A. All right, Brian. I would say that Team Spirit's draft is missing a lot of check marks. Like, there's no objective taking, there's no rapid wave clearing. They have pretty much like kill you, kill you, kill you kind of lineup. And I, did, I didn't do one yet. I. Sorry. I was, trying, to, to, <laughs> I was trying to push the button that lets me talk to production. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> Go ahead, the Ted. voices are in his head yet again. I, I didn't do any. I'm just talking to myself. What am I thinking? What am I, <laughs> it's all right. Wasting my life. Here. This, these are the <laughs> questions that keep him up at night. I'll go. I'll go for spirit here. Okay, let's get a BS. I, 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 spirit. I believe in spirit. Put put spirit for me as well, please. But you haven't done it yet, Ted. I I go for spirit. <laughs> Lock him in. Lock him in. Lock him I have doubts about their draft, but I think they'll ramp up mm. the pace and keep killing nonstop. I believe they'll ramp up the pace and keep killing nonstop. Aurora. Well, this guy is good. <laughs> Give me an Aurora. Hire this guy, tech <laughs> <laughs> Right here. I stole Brian's point about Sven being <laughs> Mr. Mortgage, and now I'm stealing his <laughs> prediction as well. Oh, yeah. Sven was actually... Wait, was he banned or was he ignored this entire draft? They're nah, trying. We they're experimenting. The they're yeah, going back mm, to their college days. They're messing around. I see. Sven will be back next series. We had our fun. Or no, we had our not fun. And now it's time <laughs> to have fun. Yeah. Experimentation time is over. Yes. And it's time for a split series between us and a split series in the game as well. Aurora and Spirit. Who's going to take it for game number three? Let's find out with our casters. It's Cap and SVG. <laughs> Creeping me out a little bit. <laughs> I do I do enjoy a nice symphonic entrance to a game three that will promise many delightful scenes. This music really fits Wind Ranger, Marana, Dark Willow maybe? Primal Beast. No. If there's one hero that screams elegance. It's Primal Beast. Yeah. With his a hero would <laughs> rampling all over the ground. Requires a delicate touch. Mm. Well, our panel was split on their analysis and their predictions of who's going to win this game three. Let's find out if we're split or if we are of similar mind, SVG. All right, on three, we, we're going to both say who we think is going to win this game. Okay. One, two, three. Aurora. OG. 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> I knew you were going to say some stupid <laughs> shit. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. <laughs> oh, gee. The battle begins. It's Seb from the third rope with a tweet, but no. It's oh, be he a pushed him away <laughs> from the arrow. <laughs> Not the earliest synergy shown here from Aurora. Uh-oh. I might have distracted them, but... I feel like something always goes wrong for Jabs Mars early game. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> man. This man is just, just struggleville for like the first 10 minutes. And then it's fine, but I don't know. The, the early game spellcasting. I am not as unconvinced by Team Spirit's draft as I think that panel was. Okay. Tell me about it. I Why see, do you believe in it? Because I see the vision. Uh -huh. I see a world where Primal Beast... The largest strength gain in Dota 2, next to Tiny, the second largest strength gain in Dota 2, get infested and boosted to such meat levels that they're untouchable. And then you add a Sunray to that monstrosity. And then you add a Grim Stroke Swell to that monstrosity. And you take it and you charge it in. And you jam it into your opponent's face. <laughs> that is a torpedo from hell, my friend. And if that comes together, well, we're going to be replaying that music at Aurora's funeral. I, I, okay, I can actually kind of jam with that. Um, I just think that Wind Ranger doesn't really run out of damage. Meat torpedo, Austin. <laughs> okay. Giant uh, okay. meat torpedo, okay. torpedo, and you launch it. It's cool. Therefore, I support it on instinct alone. But yes, it does look like quite a good Wind Ranger game in some aspects. And they lack a little bit of control for the Storm if he gets BKB. But Meat Torpedo. Mm. I think Storm is another hero that doesn't really run out of damage at some point. With the Parasma build especially. Yeah, Parasma is going to be really good this game. If they get yeah. their ET amp on top of it, you're running Power Shot in, Marana Starfall, Mars damage. There's so much magic scaling damage in this lineup. I do agree with what what you're saying. Like Mars, I agree with the torpedo analysis. I, <laughs> I'm not, I don't like the <laughs> meat torpedo. Well, nobody <laughs> likes it, Austin. <laughs> nobody likes well, the I, meat uh, torpedo. I think your mother would disagree. But what the hell, dude? <laughs> We're live. Hello, <laughs> hello. It's just a Friday night for her. <laughs> you literally might be watching this. <laughs> what what is wrong with you? I would never say that lie. Like, I would say it backstage every time. <laughs> you absolutely would. No, I, I've never said anything you about think, your mom you live that, on air. You think that was the worst thing we've I use the broadcast. cough button like a distinguished gentleman, and I move on with my cast. That was uncalled for. I agree <laughs> with <laughs> Mars, Marana. Actually unhinged. And and Elder Titan in some ways, like the the way he amps up damage, I think that trio may actually, you know, kind of have a hard time uh, being able to burst down heroes until Earth Splitter comes in and until the Wind Ranger and Storm Spirit don't really run out of damage. You're really sucking that, aren't you? Man, he managed to get him. How did he get him? Blood Grenade? Had to be a Blood Grenade, right? Yeah, sure, man. Sure. Power shot, collapse oh, oh, he disappeared! What? Where'd he the, go? The Wind Realm took him! <laughs> what was that? He got turned into air! I mean, it's the flower thing from the Arcana, but... <laughs> that looked incredibly stupid. He's back, though. Yeah, he's back after they give two kills to Aurora, so we actually didn't even talk about laning phase. Yeah, Are this, Aurora favored? This ET Wind Ranger lane, I think I've talked about this lane before. This lane's incredibly good. I think it's my favorite ET lane in the current meta, just because Wind Ranger is arguably the strongest laning core if you play the trades well, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's dependent on matches, but like blind. Power Shot is just a hell of a spell. And the extra slow, the burst damage for the ET, be able to guarantee him a favorable trade. It's a very strong lane, and it has put 23 in a prime position to carry this game. In fact, all three lanes are going Aurora's way. They have come to play in this early game. It was kind of crazy that they... I remember looking at that change and being like, they gave a slow to power shot, but didn't they didn't nerf the damage at all. can't nerf the damage. What, why not? That's what makes power... It's power shot. 
Not weak shot. Okay, well then why did they give it to slow? I'm just saying, you can't, you can't like... I'm not Ice Frog. <laughs> ask, why don't you ask him? I'm just saying that abilities are able, like, if you have an ability that does more than 300 damage, then it probably shouldn't have a disable with it as well, right? Uh, black hole? <laughs> a regular basic ability. Come on. Uh, Fissure with the talent upgrade? Ooh, Lornoff gets ganked. Nice move. Something you kind of need. This tiny storm matchup is not the most fun in the, the early part of the lane, right? For tiny. I feel like this is something we've not seen out of Team Spirit this series, is the mid-rotations being too successful for them. Like, like A lot of these games, it feels like they've missed on the big power runes. Laurel kind of got put on an island. That game when he, went, when he was tiny, they just let him farm to blink, but they never made a move to him early. This is the first time I feel like Lornoff has been pressured in the lane by the supports, whereas Laurel Solo killed him last game. That was good. But Aurora have kind of had their number. They're, they have brought people for these power runes every time. Unfortunately, they're going to lose it here with the three on two, but... A little unlucky. Collapse power shot move. slows him down. Collapse still going to be able to catch up to him for a couple more hits. Not enough, though. Yeah, double anything, brazier. Might still chase after him with a power shot. A hasted tiny. Going to run down all. He tosses him into the river to the Firebird, and Ollie is dead. Man, okay. that Wraith is so good in this in this game. And there's a reason he took it early here. Denied. Utility is just massive versus the Storm, the Wind Ranger, Mars, ET who want to get chain locks off. You combine it with uh, Fire Spirits to slow down the attack speed so you can't even kill yep. it. Very nice combination. They, they go back to it. And we're starting to see a meta develop at this tournament. It's an interesting one, too, because I feel like it's less item-centric than a lot of the past metas, and it's becoming more hero-centric again, which we haven't seen for a while. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I'll be curious to see if some items start to drive the hero choices more as the tournament progresses, but right now it feels like teams are just fighting over heroes specifically because of what they can offer in the game in terms of spellcasting more than, okay, we're going to pick an offlaner who builds Shivas every game. I haven't really looked at this uh, top lane too much, but I think the problem whenever you see Life Stealer is is this hero just able to exist in lane nonstop? And they're going to try and put a stop to it. The arrow comes in just Boy, at the right what? time. He actually had a half second there, I think, where he could have yeah, that, but that looked like he could get it. He did not know that the additional firepower was coming in. And Yatoro actually respect Tibbs jabs. Wow. Let's see here. Yeah, surely that was a, a frame enough to get it, right? Yeah, Rage is instant, so. Hmm. I mean, very, very good gank. Good. Very good gank. You were talking about a place they're sitting there. They get him. Another power rune contest. I mean, Tiny's just a beast in these exchanges. They bring the Wind Ranger. Yeah, an early rotation from 23 Savage. I like it. I like that. That is a way to punish this Tiny on that rune battle. <laughs> they missed the power rune again, though. <laughs> but it will get forced out here, so you're not giving it to the Tiny. Yeah. I mean, that's just unlucky, right? Though maybe Laura would have gotten that, to be honest. So maybe lucky in a way. And more gold in the 23 Savage's pocket as he is climbing that board fast, man. He is having a tremendous early game here. This is similar to that game one where he just got off to a fast start and never looked back. This is not an easy matchup for Yator. I don't think there's any world in which you're going to convince me Life Stealer beats Wind Ranger in that three to four item range, you know? Right, yeah. Maybe some weird nullifier in action later. Maybe your team can dispel him and you can lock him Got down. Got him again. Pistol. Is and this yeah. the first damage? It is. Oh, a second kill on the life stealer. Man, I posed that question. Aurora's like, ah, let me stop you right there. We already got this well in handed. They, Super uh, nice. They haven't taken the tower or anything, but they've certainly shut down the life stealer a bit. I mean, when you dial lane as life stealer, it's a completely different hero. So two deaths already for Yatoro. They are very happy with how this early game is going. Ooh, we thought he was going to sneak and kill him. A post gun doesn't quite work for him. He's Arrow moving. cuts through. It actually hits the tiny. No that detection. is massive. And Moonlight Shadow. They don't have the vision. They hit him with the avalanche. 23 is like, wait a minute. They don't actually see me. I'm good. Maposhka, not Ooh. so much. Just chomped him down with the stapler. Tried to hit a stop there. Interrupted by the onslaught. 23 still trying to play the outskirts here. Lornoff collects the kill on the Phoenix. 
Are they going to go for more? They could try. But those are big tanky boys. Probably don't have the damage for them. Early earn for Q. Q knows some extra damage for the skirmish as well. I mean, their life's just so strong in these like random fights. For lotuses or runes or whatever it is. Though especially the levels Q has gotten out of top, man. He is... He's gotten so much off those Lifestealer kills, and now he can give it back into another lane, and Aurora are cruising here up 2k already. They really shut down Collapse, which is a big component of shutting down this team in general. So he is, I still think, their biggest playmaker in terms of the team fighting and dictating how those go. Let's see if Q can follow up this momentum. 2-0-3, still got an earn charge, level 6.5. This is... Exactly where you want to be with this hero. Vessel would go a long way to help cutting down some of these big tanky sure. boys. I mean, he has his choice, right? There's very good ore game. Greaves, Pipe are both very good here. Glimmers are good. Four staffs are good. What are All the utility is really nice for kiting out this triple melee core lineup from Team Spirit. So would not be surprised to see him go that Greaves if he if he really wants it. Don't Even Yules are not bad here. Yules, these heroes going in. You can dodge some of the, the Phantom. Yeah. Fire Spirits. See what he opts for down the line. As Quick Smoke, they're going to get 23 Reading involved again here as he's working his way towards Maelstrom. He's just so strong off the stats alone, and they're going straight back into mid. Probably looking for that Tiny, but they will happily take a Phoenix. What I think is really cool about that is that they... It's like a little twofer, right? They smoke two bottom didn't find anything, and then they used the rest of that smoke to get 23 into the mid lane. It's definitely forcing a lot of spirit off the map. And you're looking at that mini map, it's heroes in the jungle. That means some extra tower damage, they'll get a glyph out of them as well. All the pressure in this early game has been Aurora applying it. Team Spirit continue to search for something around these runes. They're going to bring multiple cores. Trying to cover that power rune. Laurel just walking into a group of them here. Doesn't want to force it. First splitter really well placed. Actually, his Laurel got him down to half HP. Now he's going to be pulled back by Lord off. Silence goes off, but it doesn't Ooh. stop the Aurora flood of heroes running at this tiny. All five for that rune. And I mean, they didn't even get the rune, but they got Laurel. They are losing a tower in the meantime, meanwhile, so they kind of need to make this worth it. Is this the team we saw not do anything for 60 minutes yesterday? I'm confused. Yeah, they woke the hell up. They have definitely washed their face. Find another shackle, but no follow-up. Oh, got him on the edge. Damn, okay. jabs. Great read of that situation. I mean, this is not spiraling yet, but this is a lot of momentum. A lot of momentum for this lineup that can take advantage of it. They're just going to pick you off on the map if you give them this big lead. Storm is going to set everything up. You have arrow follow up on any of the stomps, the pulls, the shackles, the the spears. It's a great Marana game. This is exactly what you want in a Marana sort of ET lineup. A three cores who can go in, set stuff up with disables, and still offer you good single target damage. ET Marana just love that. They're going to play behind you all day and make the team fights easy. Because then every stun is a threat of you just getting 100 to 0. Yeah. And that just makes it incredibly spooky to defend these towers. Very difficult to take fights outside of a vision advantage or smoke for Team Spirit, who are still lacking that initiation power on the Tiny and the Primal. Jab's just going to make another flank, try and catch Ooh. the bird. Missed out on the God's Rebuke, trying to interrupt the dive away. It's a good, good attempt. Another thing I, I like about this uh, Aurora lineup, this is actually one of my favorite counters back in the day. You used to do Snapfire all the time against uh, Phoenix, but I really like the Marana, right? The combination, maybe it doesn't work quite as well as Snapfire, but the, the bonus is that you have better mobility. Get enough attack speed that you can challenge, you can kill the egg by yourself for early levels. It's a nice little extra bonus. Yeah. One rely on it, nice stop, sets everything up here. Oh, it hits Maposhka as well, so two for one special. Dang, they are rolling, man. This team looks good right now, man. Team Spirit just not taking the fight back. They're just happy to bleed a couple of kills and trade net worth. Try and come up with something later. They're gonna have to fight eventually. Big part of this is definitely just having Life Stealer, right? Well, Life Stealer versus Wind Ranger. Wind Ranger can get involved. Life Stealer can't. 
Dyer's top tower. Has Especially when he got arrow killed twice on lane. Yeah, that's for Very sure. Very slow game. <laughs> jabs. That was the blink reveal, technically. Jabs just firing on all cylinders today. The reminding them who the CEO is. Bounty. Radiant are scanning. They will scan you, Toro. Dangerous to go in there without smoke. Just don't know where the defensive vision is. Aurora, what are you up to here? Kind of four stacked mid and have been for the last 30 seconds. Seem like they're not sure exactly what they want to do here. Jabs is like, okay, I'm going to go just push out top then. And if they're going to be farming these two lanes. All right, here is uh -huh. what we've been waiting for. The infest bump. That's right. The torpedo. It's coming. The torpedo coming. But they can't see anything. Yeah, problem is you need some sonar to ping out where Aurora that is. They keep on missing on these initiations for Laurel. This is time you're wasting while 23 is a farming. Yeah, they are going to double back really quickly to this bottom lane. So they still might catch 23 with this. That's where their one obs is, They're going to start running. They have to dive into the tier two. This is going to be a little oh. scary. Shackleshot lands. He couldn't actually get the grab. 23 is slowed down, though. He is going to get grabbed by the rest of these heroes, but are they going to be able to get out safely? Supernova will protect them. That's a nice move from Mira to cover their all. Oh, and they actually Laurel's got more. Here. Beautiful Soulbind catches the Mars. Double the toss. toss is over. Double toss finishes off the Mars. Laurel is under the shot of Lord off. He's going to jump forward and might just be able to finish him off. He does with that last little sip. He gets him in the end. Ollie tries to go over the stomp, but Rage is back up for Yatoro. He's just climbing. Climbing to the back of that team fight. I don't know why I use that word, but I couldn't come up with anything else. <laughs> he just chomps through them. Four for one. Laurel makes it back to that fight in the right place at the right time. And just a sick double toss off the, the Soulbind there. A nice find from Collapse using the one deep obs they had on that map to find the one hero they wanted to find. Uh, they're going to try. I mean, that's a hard go. That's a very hard go unless you shackle them off the creep. Yeah, I was thinking maybe he was going to zip grab him at max range and then maybe hit the shackle. It's also worth mentioning that was a focus fire going into the blade mail on the primal, I think. Kind of just sealed 23's fate, though I don't think he was getting out of there. Uh, I think it was on the life stealer, right? He died pretty fast. Either way, this blade mail is going to be an issue for him because when Collapse just charges in, you don't want to focus fire him. Yeah. It is kind of a problem speaking. when you can't actually target that guy Dyer's when he dives so deep into your team. That's what I'm saying. The, the HP buff that Collapse is representing here with the blade mail and all the spells behind this, that's the strength of this lineup. Like, even here, you don't want to jump him here, man. It's not, not an easy go. I also want to point out the Q... We were talk we're discussing what he wants to build this game. He's going back for an Ags on this Marana. Yeah, you literally listed like yeah. eight utility items that would have been good this game, and he's going none of them. I I I disagree with this, but obviously it's a disagreement in, in philosophy, right? This item can pay off if the game goes really late. You start farming some waves, you get a lot of extra single target damage in the fight. He has a lot of arrow setup, so this Ags is very tempting because you know, if you stun a target, you throw that arrow and gives you a huge amount of extra damage on these big tanky targets you have to bring down. I think all of that makes sense to me. But the buildup is very slow compared to something else. Compared to a mech or a Vlads or a four staff, you would have it by now. Yeah. And instead, you're just building empty stats for 4k gold that gets there really slow. So maybe Jabs doesn't die agreed. in that situation, right? If you have the mech. Sure. Earth Splitter. Oh, it didn't actually hit him. They Not needed the that extra off. damage to finish off Collapse. And Glimmer Cape dive in from Mira will help him get away, so. So let's see if this Ags will pay off. Let's see if Q can get there and make it work, because you are missing some decent net worth here off of him having a very good early game that could have translated into something more. At least right now. After losing that fight, now it feels like Aurora, they, they were stacked quite a bit, but they were, it was 
they were getting the payoff for it, right? They're getting kills and stuff, but now it feels like they're stacked up and as a result, getting out farmed by Team Spirit. Radiance guess Middle who Town has a Radiance? Now, now Lifestealer is actually a threat in these fights. Yeah, he's almost level 15 too. Yatoro is outside of those two deaths on lane. He's having a very good game here. That is a lot of drawing on the map. I think we know where Laurel and Yatoro want to go. Trajectory has been set here. He's a problem for their lineup, unless the focus fire connects on him. He's a big problem. And like I said, he doesn't have to... He can just sit in one of these big boys, let him go in, and see what happens. He doesn't have to immediately pop out either. You can see what that initiation looks like. He can just boost their HP. Infest is very strong this game versus the lineup relying on spells. Blow up the Wind Ranger. Best target to catch here. And they've got him. Nice chain now, with that Ollie, well. four staff down from the high ground will help him. Earth Splitter is actually going to land on Laurel. That's going to be a hefty amount of burst damage. They get something in return. Once that cool frenzy hit, but he can't get it. Just another thing to help kite the life stealer. Uh, the dog getting walked here. Or will have to retreat. And he's immediately queued up that Yasha. He needs more move speed. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Outside of those kind of pickoffs, though, they kind of got there. I almost feel like Aurora needs to dodge fights during this really tough Radiance timing. Dyer are scanning. You kind of do want your next set of items. You want this Orchid for Lornoff. Yeah. That increases initiation power a lot, particularly against these supports, but you might just catch this Lifestealer off guard. Yeah, his Orchid, dispel. Q's Aghanim Scepter, uh, BKB for 23. Like, these are all really big upgrades. Yes. And you're very close to thinking he's all up. So chilling right now, not the worst idea. And they got the most useless shard in Dota. Congratulations, Ollie. You have just inflated your buyback cost. Congratulations. <laughs> Is that actually the worst one, you think? Yeah, that's what that's what the text says. Increases your buyback cost by 300 gold. <laughs> wow. That's the, that's the Elder Titan shard. It's really nice. <laughs> I think it's the worst. I mean, the cooldown's nice, but it's rare that a second stomp ever decides too much with the reduced cooldown. Dude, it's such a it's massive a core difference. Phoenix or Grimstroke yeah. shard, so much better than Marana Elder Titan. That, I, that legitimately might be the only thing holding back Elder Titan from being like a tier one. Support. Oh, I mean, there's a lot of things holding them back, but... The problem is, if you give this hero any sort of consistent playability, he just becomes Im immediately broken. Yeah. We got the minimap flickering off the infest again. Beautiful. <laughs> They're going to probably smoke here and, again, try and use this infest HP while it's still really strong to jam the team fight. Five-man smoke from Aurora on the map, though. Can you get the vision to get the jump? And those big items... They got finished up a little, right? You have this BKB Wind Ranger. I say that BKB just finished for collapse too. It's recovered in this game. You're doing the Lotus Team Spirit. That is not the target you want to go on. No, not that guy. 3,400 HP with almost 20 armor. But who do you want to go on then, Laurel? He might just blind blink in. He's going to get poked. 23 is going to go for it. Oh, they're going to kite this. They He's can. going for the tiny and half his BKB. That's has already been controlled up by the Primal Beast. He's starting to get back. They're trying to force staff him backwards Whoa. here, but a charge on through. Knocks him out. Collapse. Hits all three of those heroes lined up, and they'll clean up some more. That was some questionable decision-making, I think, there. I mean, at the same time, that's just... A beautiful way to force this fight from Team Spirit. They send the Tiny in, the target you can't go on. He's immediately Glimmer Cape swelled so they can bail him out no matter what. And they bait a roar out just enough that they come in into that Soulbind. That just steals 23's fate. That, those BKBs do nothing for you there when you're linked together. Yeah, that's a smirk of gotcha. Hook, line, and sinker. I mean, 
<laughs> I mean, if Aurora just stay in the trees, right? If they don't bite this tiny bait, that team fight is way stronger for them. Yeah. But they got pulled out just enough, man. Laurel just kind of like walked in there, said, go on me. I mean, sometimes that's the best strat in Dota. 23 obliged. It's too tempting. Well, you're certainly going to get some value off of that Ags for Q, uh, the way this is going. Might have to do a little bit of ratting with it, honestly. Jab Spear <laughs> accidentally hitting Laurel as he goes for the blink in. BKB TP out. We'll get him away, no problem. This is a strong Aegis period, though, and a very strong hero in this game to have it on. As Yatoro can play hyper-aggressive, this Radiance is going to be very annoying over the course of two lives. I feel like Aurora are just going to try and dodge this. They did get that Marana Ags finished, so they can rat some waves, they can cut some waves, be pretty annoying. Yeah, Storm looks for the pickoff. do it really well for them. But again, the crux of this game is really coming down to can you kill the big meaty boys when they group up? And so far, the answer's been no. So you just need more scaling damage here, more control. That focus fire really needs to connect on a good target. Do you like Ags being the choice here for Lornoff? He wants to get on the back line and just find a big clump past that frontline target, I think is the idea. Yeah, I mean, they've got a decent amount of AoE to combo off of it. I kind of get it. I just would have expected more single target damage. I mean, surely you want the Parasma at some point in this game. Yeah, 100%. But it's a question of when do you get it, what you can do with it. My issue is, I don't know if the Wind Ranger can follow up on the Ag Storm pull that well. It's kind of just the ET stomp into, like, the Star Falls, and that is a lot of magic damage. But the problem is, are you going to even get there? As Yatoro is just knocking at your door 26 minutes in. He's got his Orb of Corrosion. He's got bonus minus armor from the neutral slot. And he's got that shard. Tiny got with damage effect. there, TPing top 23, cannot afford to get picked off again. He has had his net worth get dropped far too many he times. A power shot, it. it's going to reveal him. <sighs> and that's a DD Tiny waiting to clean him up. Insta TP's bottom, they're trying to close the map out now. Yeah, this is, this is one of those nice things about Infest, right? You infest in somebody else, they TP to a lane. Then after you do that, you can TP to a different lane. Just like that, both side lanes. They flush him out. Aurora, no longer able to play there. Shadows take us. You're going to need one hell of a team fight to regain this map control right now. And I don't know if you're doing it in the Aegis. So you still have two minutes here if you're a Team Spirit to try and force the issue. They're Got only her. up by 5k on Team Spirit, but it feels like a lot more. Yeah, but that's 5k on Yatoro. Yeah. So that's like 10k on a normal Dota player. <laughs> Stupendous! He's going to hit high ground again. He's got an Aegis to burn. Is Aurora going to fight this? They don't have the Aghanim Scepter yet on the Storm Spirit. I almost kind of wonder if they just say, give this up. Give up Arax at 28 minutes to the first Aegis? That feels bad, man. I mean, if any team's going to do it, it's Aurora, right? Yeah, but they believe in their scale. They don't want to get pulled into a team fight they can't win. Come on. I mean, you do have spearback potential. This rage is really damn annoying. Maybe now spear. he's a little far forward. They can take away yep. that Aegis. They do. So he's going to have another rage coming up, but there is a window here. He's not going to go for the spear back, and that's probably wise. Team Spirit were really looking to pull the trigger. If they tried to go on your Toro, I think everybody was going to jump in after that. You also have to keep in mind this toss save can come out and kind of reset that initial go. Yeah, that's true. Another reason the Storm Axe could be pretty influential in this game. I mean, Lornoff has found a decent amount of farm here. He's not far behind. If he can get that completed, you pull two or three heroes into a stomp. That's going to do some serious damage. Smoke up. 
a no team spirit after pushing in mid for so long. They got to correct their side lanes. Yeah, so. but Yatoro just drew their smoke Radiant for them. <laughs> they were a little bit, <laughs> they were split for like five seconds and then team spirit just like that. Defensive, defensive group up on their side of the map with a shield rune tiny that they're going to jump on. They do get the, the uh, Phoenix though. That's a big pickup for Aurora. Pulverize getting grabbing the Wind Ranger once oh, again. Yeah, we... This Wind Ranger cannot survive against the Primal Beast. Oh, Collapse got him too. Stops does he Lord him? off TP he does. away and slams him down. They are going to get all three of these cores. Laurel might die. He does. So they get a two for four in the end to the favor of Team Spirit. A very healthy Yatoro now looks to take that melee barracks. That was a really nice shackle to finish off the tiny, but the AOE coming in from Team Spirit is just absurd. You just clear through him. Highest damage that. done by Yatoro. But Poshka wanting to waste no time, uses Ink Swell on one of the sleeping creeps from the Elder Titan stomp and dispels it so the creep will run down the lane so they can break backdoor protection literally like one second sooner. Every little bit matters when you are playing against Aurora here. At any minute, this game could go another 50. MKB done. I mean, this has already been no problem for Collapse to pulverize the Wind Ranger and kill him with Yatoro's help. But now, even the Wind Run won't protect 23 Savage from Yatoro's wrath. They're going to infest back out here. Team Spirit are just not giving them easy targets. Again, who do you go on in these fights? It's been Laurel, but when your best target is to go on the 3,000 HP Tiny with Sunray Inkswell behind him. <laughs> Good luck, right? Yeah. That, to me, is the power of life stealer in this draft. It just prevents them having any good initiation. And that their lineup relies on it. They, they don't have a carry that can walk in and just start casually hitting people and, and seeing how the fight develops. It's all in or nothing. You're committing the Ranger Beacon being focus fire. You're not. You're committing the Storm Jump or not. Otherwise, nothing is happening. You're still looking for that Storm Spirit Ags, but you are losing your base while you're trying to get there. And of course, that was an early first Roshan, so that next one's coming up soon. Yeah, no reason to hit that second lane of Barracks when Roshan is coming up like this. Don't want to throw that one away to Aurora. So back away, back out, wait for Rosh to spawn. We'll give uh, a little bit of time though. I mean, Aurora are probably praying it's a late Roshan, so they have time to get 23 Savage, another round of items. He's got Manta, now he's gonna go back for Lincolns because this Pulverized has been destroying him so badly. I mean, honestly, the pickoff game from Aurora just hasn't been there. I think it's because they, they really lack some lane shove. I mean, this Marana Ags, I think, was supposed to make up for it a little bit, but by the time you get it, the map's compressed a bit. And instead, it's been Team Spirit proposing the threat with Infested Tiny that caught the Wind Ranger top once, caught some other heroes mid. Aurora's biggest strength or lineup to me is like this storm pull into an arrow, the Wind Ranger finding somebody on the side of a map, maybe an arena that's laying up. If you can split this ball up, you're way happier taking those engagements. But so far, it has just been smashing your head into this brick wall five on five. And I mean, Team Spirit will welcome that. They have all the HP just sitting there waiting for you, hoping you will break your head against this Primal Beast carapace and i have a funny feeling that aurora is going to do just that they're approaching the high ground ward collapse he's well set up to go for it here inkswell is on him he didn't immediately go for the onslaught charge in he's just gonna let aurora keep trying this let's have a gem so that morano was not necessarily doing a lot but he will wait it out again the clock is ticking here for Aurora as Roshan is going to respawn. Team Spirit know it. No reason to give the fight to Aurora. They will just camp their OBS. I mean, there's no way you should take this fight in the str like running straight through this area. You, like, surely the play is to wrap well, around they're gonna somehow. Do it. They're going to go for it. BKB immediately blank. Grab the Storm Spirit and he's dead. 
Now, 23 Savage does have a freer game because of that one. They do manage to cut down Laurel and go no for supports in the back line. So this is not too bad. Yotoro has had to spend a lot of his time inside of this arena Can the due to the range out? wearing out. But 23 needs to get outside of the range of this guy, and he can't get outside of the range of open wounds. MKB steals his fate for sure. That ink soul move speed has been huge in oh, these fights. He blinked, did not get hit by the spear as a result. The jabs throughout to try and help out Q. Ink swells, got him on the edge. Well played by Maposhka. Did get the troll camp though, that, that's value. Mm, very value. Uh, they're not, they're not even gonna go for Roshan. They are gonna take some buildings here. Yeah, mid lane was pushed in, so backdoor protection is down. I mean, you called it, man. Pushed into that high ground ward storm first. Radiance. <laughs> A bold move by Lornoff, but it does not pay off at all. His Team Spirit insta-jump him, take the biggest target out of the fight. That was the Ag Storm they needed to pull them back in that 5-on-5. Five five. Gets nothing off. Oh. Back to our protection went up. Are they going to be able to eat through it? I don't think they... Oh, they do, actually. Got okay. it. Yeah, Toro is just that powerful. He's too powerful. Dude, his net worth is out of control. To see this kind of differential on a life stealer is, yeah, it is impressive. Not the fastest farming hero in the game. For He's sure. just done it through the fights, man. He is just chunking them. And there's no real way to bail out your storm in a situation like that. You can throw down the stomp, you can throw the earth Sweater, but everybody's going to be spell immune. Good luck. Jabs with a Hex now. Okay, that's some significant initiation power. Does he want this Primal? Is there any way he can catch? There's a Creep running around, too. That's Yatoro. Stealer. Problem is, Yatoro's been using the Infest so well. He is, he is never in a position to get caught by any sort of jump from Aurora. I wonder why he's opted to just run around in this Creep, but it looks cool. I, I think it's vision. <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. This is such. See? This is the ultimate taunt. Like I dare you go on this little neutral creep. Hey, right, Team Spirit. The mid and bottom waves are pushing in. Yeah, they have base. Aurora problems. has to do something eventually. This is the same situation as bottom. Team Spirit are not gonna jump you. They are just gonna sit here. You're the one who has to respond. You are the one who has to force the issue. A game of patience. A battle of wills. Who will blink first? Creep. Going in. Killing, killing the wave. <laughs> Got it. He comes, he comes out of the creep. Okay, time to force Aurora's hand by doing Roshan. They're going to soft do it here, right? This yeah, is Roshan's like going to roar, command. and then they're going to back out probably. Or not. There it goes. They just don't want Yator to get half HP off this or something. They're just trying to bait him in. They see Q in the base, but he'll TP out. These lanes are going to start adding up, man. Yeah, Q didn't even really clean out the creep wave. You lost a barracks bottom for this fight. You are all in on it. Another roar. Arrow scouting things oh, out. Hits Laurel. Decent amount of damage with the spirit amp. Yeah, and a power shot. Added on top of that one. Nobody wants to jump on the side of Aurora. They're going to Moonlight Shadow. Start wrapping their way around, but they know about the vision that's in lane. So many good wards here for spirit. Oh, they have this vision that on the side as well. They actually jumped onto Q, and Lornoff goes for the back line. He spotted the Phoenix and wanted to go for that one, but Jabs couldn't really follow it up. So now Jabs going to be grabbed during his BKB as he tries to retreat back and just gets demolished by Team Spirit. It's the lost team fight. It's just a question of who gets out. Maybe 23 can chase after Collapse here. He actually has him dead. Okay. Got him on the Focus Fire BKB. But the problem is once the BKB wears out, if the Life Stealer grabs him, he's dead. That's where Lornoff comes in to try and intercept. Oh, but he gets hit by the Hex. Is hit by the Silence. And now he gives up his life to spare 23 Savage. Mira, this is the same as those other Hex games. He is always on point with these clutch Hexes in the late game. 
And that's a problem because you cannot find this Phoenix. The one time you found it with Lornoff, that fight is already a disaster. Gem recovered or stolen, I should say, as well. And it's just an impossible fight. Where do you get the angle versus lineup? You, you almost wish you could infest the Wind Ranger into the storm and jump your Wind Ranger deep or something. I, I don't know. Abyssal. I mean, this is just. Now, this is the nightmare for Wind Ranger. Abyssal MKB. When you're this far ahead, you're just hunting him now. It takes too much to kill one of these other cores. It just always means his BKB win run wears out, and yeah, Yatoro will catch up to him. He has that one six or seven second interval to get something done. He kills Collapse, but then Yatoro just hunts you down. And I also want to point out that Inkswell has helped Yatoro a lot in these fights. Yeah, yeah. The extra move speed alone with it. You know, or the stun just lingering there. All he has to do is follow this Wind Ranger. He doesn't even have to hit him. The Inkswell will eventually catch up to him, stun him, and then you're gone. It's helped him a lot. The, the small synergies here for Spirit really counting in these team fights down the road. Aurora hanging on by a knife's edge. One more lane of racks down 15k and an Aegis. Dare I say it, Austin, but Allies disappear. the meat torpedo. <laughs> has proved too girthy here. Meat Torpedo comes for us all in the end. Now they've got a little cheese to go along with it. Lincoln's for 23. I mean, again, is this Lincoln's... Like, you need it, but... It feels like you got to kill Yatoro or Bust at this point. You have to eliminate the problem in the fight, which is this life stealer, and you're gonna have to do it twice. As Team Spirit are likely gonna seed your high ground right now. A decent late game upgrade right there. Shard for the tiny. He is quite. Maybe this stacked. is where they get it though. Scythe. We'll take the a oh missed out on the spear there. I mean, they have the swell anyway. Yeah. I, I think. What you happens if you? Activate the swell on the middle of while you're being speared. Radiance middle tower is under you attack. You just stop being speared. I don't know. Well, maybe we'll find out. Either way, I think they should be spearing him back. Yeah, they want to go for this play. That's what I thought. Create Jeff a larger gap, do. make the grim blink in or something. It's probably just so scary against that scythe of ice. Yeah, though. it is. If you blink in with this Mars, there's a decent chance that you get blink pulverized. You get sight. You get. Soulbound. I mean, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Radiant oh, <laughs> caught him on the corner camp. Not enough to kill him, but still impressive. Clap still tried to chase after him, too, inside the base. 5,000 HP. Double Havoc Hammer as well for these meaty boys. Illusion. Just a couple lads out here playing Dota 2. Five thousand kilogram beast approaches the high ground. You thought the heart meta was over. Yatoro begins. Now they're gonna try and go up to this rage. Tried to go for the spear back, but got Yules. Instantly sights arrow trying to stop some of these heroes. Lernoff actually gets a jump, but Mira still has the on. Use the focus fire. Really can't commit in. Took out the other Titan in one shot. Laurel catches him, blows him up. Now they got the supernova pulverized combo on top of the Wind Ranger two and twenty three does not have buyback where all he did. So it's now four versus five, four versus six really with the Aegis still up another on this life stealer. Yules. Another Yules. All of these initiations just being countered time and time and time again. Another buyback, another jump, another attempt at Yotoro's life that will not work for Aurora. They cannot kill anything in this damn game. There's way too much bailout, way too much save, way too much HP to burn through. They're pushing to the enemy fountain. Will Yatoro dive it again is the only question that remains. Get silenced again, and that's going to be a dieback for Lornoff. He has opted not to dive the fountain. No, he's thinking about it. He tells Laurel to.
And once more, Yator will end a game in the enemy fountain where he can gaze upon the Aegis with his name enshrined on it and go, that was me. I am him. And D have lost in an interesting three game series, I will say. Very stompy games. Yeah. Very slow, methodical games, but Spirit eke out a win here in game three with an interesting draft. I think it's a, a draft that maybe caught people off guard with how much the little stuff works together in this lineup with these three frontline strength heroes just boosting each other up, giving each other a lot of cover with the BKB Pierce pulverize also causing 23 a lot of issues in that game. And despite the strong start from Aurora, they just didn't find the momentum with it. I think they just lost track of what their lineup was designed to do, which is continue the pickoff on the map, continue to pressure the life through at a rough laning phase, try and get those deep boards out. Maybe the lack of lane shove between the three cores really hurt them. Like all three cores want to be doing that, but in a game like this, somebody has to be closing the map so you can set those plays up. It just didn't come together, but a stronger showing from them as opposed to yesterday. Yes, certainly a stronger showing from Aurora. I also feel like Team Spirit woke up a little bit in middle of this series as well. So I feel like in some ways this series kind of elevated both these teams who have not looked the best comparison to the competition here in this second group stage. But it ends with Team Spirit taking it two to one over Aurora. Which unfortunately leaves Aurora with an 0-2 score right now in group stage two of Dream League season 22 and Spirit are now split. Having lost to Extreme Gaming 2-1 yesterday, they pick up the dub 2-1 against Aurora today. Six games under their belt. They are playing a lot of Dota, but in this game, they're making it look good as well as making Lifestealer an actually successful hero. I had proposed the question at the very beginning, Kazu, to mm. Brian specifically. I was just like, well, if Mars is so good, then why aren't the Mars' counters becoming more popular as carry options? Lifestealer was one of them, and I guess in this game we actually got to see him. Yeah, I would say that Lifestealer is volatile because we could see that they were actually down like 5k gold at the 15 minute mark. And while I have to credit Spirit for coming back in this game and understanding what to do, I feel like that Aurora actually dropped the ball pretty hard. I think, first of all, when it was 23 Savage who died bottom, like beyond the tier 2, with having a 5k gold lead. But mostly to me, I feel like this item build on Marana is. It's actually something you're not allowed to do from this position. You're up 5k gold. He's building, and he basically had like 8,000 net worth that is useless. He bought an Aghanims, mm -hmm. which you're not lacking damage. You need to help your team that when you go in, that they can furthermore stay in the fight. You have Storm, Wind Ranger, Mars. They want to go in. You need to help them to stay in and win the fight. You don't need to build that. Then after he tried building a Hex, which takes forever, changed his mind, went to Yule. So I really think that those two things combined, it actually ruined their entire game. I thought it was interesting that before the, the game, both Kezu and Brian were like, I'm not so sure about Spirit's draft here. I, I do really like Aurora's draft. I think they still do like Aurora's draft on paper. Mm -hmm. um, but I, 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 like I was saying in the green room, I think Spirit were just like, eh, I think we'll just outplay him. I think we'll just beat him. And that's pretty much what they did. I mean, the itemization from Aurora on the Marana wasn't great. There were some mistakes that they made. Mm -hmm. There was one fight I think Brian's going to take a look at it in a sec that was sort of like, it just didn't look as smooth. And you look at the game they won in this series, it was, I, it's a, this, this is a very changeable team. I feel like it's not even just draft based. They just seem to sometimes turn up and play amazingly and other times maybe not so much. Because yeah. I understand like, even though I don't love the spirit draft, what they want to do with their three tanky heroes is like get on top of the wind ranger and kill him. That's how you own range carries. You get on top of them, right? Cause they want to stay on range, but that whole thing doesn't happen if Aurora have a 5k lead, they know how to itemize how to position, and these three tanky cores don't get on you. Especially when you're ahead, you should be able to make that happen. So overall, yeah, I just feel like they uh, dropped the ball, but when you get outplayed, you know, fair play to Spirit. They play better, they deserve to win. Yeah, part of it is them being their own worst enemy, but then again, it's against Spirit. Maybe you have to overthink to actually come out on top, especially if you're not able to get as free of a yep. win as they did in was that game one that they were able to do it with the Sven? Yeah. 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 So Many moons ago. I know, that was quite a while ago, actually. So maybe it was a stamina thing as well. Although Aurora should be used to that, because Kazu <laughs> used to yeah. that. They like the long games. Yep, they, they have the long games. And generally, I feel like this doesn't really happen to them. But I feel like overall today, they looked a lot better than yesterday. Like, let's be real. So I feel like they already really stepped it up a lot. So I wouldn't be too disappointed 
if I'm them, but because this is more like you go in the replay, you're like, okay, we're up 5k gold. They're probably happy with their draft. From this position on, what do we need to think about next time to just, you know, keep it chill and keep the game like nice and easy for ourselves and then take it from there? Yeah, Sunbee has some easy things that he can point out and be like, this yeah. is what we can fix yeah. moving forward. It's a long group stage. They'll have plenty oh, yeah. more time to fix things up. And any other praise to heap on to Spirit, Ted? as we finally see them make a comeback from day one, losing against Extreme. Here they come out on top. Um, they seem to be having fun. They, they seem to be enjoying it, which is good. Um, I, I, I do feel like this is a team that, um, I can't imagine that they ever have any like problems within the team because they've been through so much and they've been so good together. Um, but I do wonder if sometimes they're just kind of not in the right mindset to take every game perhaps as seriously as they need to. It certainly feels like sometimes you think, wow, they just didn't draft or really play as well as we know they can. Um, but yeah, in a series, in a, I think that's the difference between the three games and the best of twos. In a three game series, I'd back them to beat most teams because you figure they're just going to figure it out, wake up and just think we can win this. What like what I would like to add to Spirit is, I say it every time in like the pregame, but no matter if they're up 10k gold or down 10k gold, I feel like the move they made in this game to come back, like go on 23 Savage, like behind the tier, tier 2 tower, not many teams would do that. And I feel like their strength is always knowing what they have to do and like going with it. Like they don't really shy away from it. Someone makes the call, we need to make this play right now and get the game back in control. And they, I feel like they always find what to do and they do it together. And this is what like allows them to actually bring back games like this one. You had mentioned that in the pre-match as yeah. well. It just seems like Spirit may be one of the most stressful teams to play against. Because so. no matter how yeah. far ahead you are, you're like, they still will probably weasel away into this game again. And that's what keeps you on your toes and never really lets you get even complacent. Normally it's just the failed high ground sieges that most yeah. teams will succumb to. I mean, but Remember the, I think we were all on that game. They played against Team Liquid, where Mapochka is hiding in the top side of the corner yeah, above the road. That's yeah. right. Like other teams, they're not going to make this play. So like in those situations, you get away with not thinking about, okay, what can they do? But if in that specific moment for 10, 20 seconds, you don't check this corner, you don't have the right position, boom. The entire game, they bring it back and they, they beat your ass. Like, they, you need to be on your toes the entire time when you play against this team. Assuming that they're on, because Fearing, like you said, sometimes yeah. they're on and off. Yeah. And actually on a secondary stream, uh, Fear and I believe Aries had asked Yutoro about the famed TI form spirit, where it's sometimes <laughs> it seems like, oh, they are really, really in the zone the now. The money form. <laughs> yeah, the money form, exactly. <laughs> but Yutoro couldn't really define what makes them what makes even him feel like TI form is upon themselves. But maybe we can get some more insight from a different Spirit player, because we're actually going to get a chance to speak to Maposhka of Team Spirit. The captain, Maposhka, how you doing, man? How you doing in that game number three draft? Because a couple of my analysts saw that draft and felt that maybe there was some overlap in your heroes. So even though you won, if you could do that draft again, would you pick the same five heroes? <laughs> Hello, yeah, I think definitely yes. I think our draft was better than enemies. Probably we just played a little bit bad on lanes, like our last year died two times. Uh, also, our hard lane go goes kind of wrong because they both died. Uh, so I think if we play again, I think we will even win faster. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I like the confidence. How about these decisions to continue sending Laurel on the Tiny? Most teams are, seem to be preferring it on the four position, but it seems like you really like giving it on the mid lane role. Any reason why? In our opinion, this hero is just good for us. He's strong. It's kind of hard to counter him on mid lane. In our opinion, also, usually we're picking some supports. Uh, comfortable to play with Tiny, like Grimstroke. Uh, in that game we had Phoenix. Also, we picked Tiny uh, kind of early, and we had option to, uh, how, how to, say, uh, to flex mm -hmm. this hero. Uh, and at last pick, we just decided that Tiny it is good here against Storm, against Supports. Also, we picked Grim again. So, I think oh, we just kind of like this hero. Yeah, because it was the last pick of the uh, last draft that I was curious about. We were expecting that maybe you were going to give Laurel a different matchup against Storm Spirit, but then you picked your Grimstroke again, so it seems like you like Grim as well. Any reason why you think Grimstroke is your go-to support right now? I mm, don't know. <laughs> the series is just strong. He has a lot of good abilities and a lot of options. Uh, 
how he can, how to use it. He also can control a lot of heroes. Uh, like, I don't know. We played with this hero a lot, and we just you know, sometimes we just think that okay, this hero is good here. It's not like we want to pick on regrip, but sometimes we just see that this hero is good here. Yeah, you're seeming to find a lot of good opportunities to make that hero look fantastic. I've also got BSJ standing by for a quick question for you as well. Yeah, sure. Hey, so uh, Grimstroke's one of those supports that people generally try to target, and you're against heroes like Storm Spirit, Mars, and we saw that you went first item Blink there, and I was wondering what's your thought process behind choosing behind like Glimmer Capes, Force Staffs, Blink Daggers, like what's your, what's your mindset on like what item I'm going to go to defend myself? Uh, I choose Blink just because, uh, in my opinion, was if they catch me, even if I had Grimmer, something like two Bracers or something else, I will die anyway because they have Arena, they have Titan Spirit, so if he put uh, on me, I will die very fast, even with Grimmer. So I decided to buy Blink because Blink uh, helps me to uh, to save my good moves, to save good position, to be in good position, uh, and even if they attack someone, like Life Stealer, I can still use Blink and uh, expel on him with my shard, so I will save my Life Stealer anyways, for example, or Tiny or anyone else. Also, I had two Blink cores, so it's good for me just to stay uh, far, so far away from center of fight, I would say. So it's easy for me just to press things well and wait. But if enemies uh, shows, I can just use my blink and use ult or something else or silence. Uh, yeah, something like this. That's why also about uh, lens after blink. It also helps me to be in much better position and stay so far away from fight, from Mars, from Storm. And even if Mars sees me, I can just still blink away, something like this. That's yeah. what I thought about in this game. Yeah, thank you, man. Uh, speaking about the positioning and like all vision and window approach fights, I wanted to show you a clip from that game and just kind of hear like what you guys were talking about. This is bottom lane, if you remember this. The fight was brewing for a really long time. You guys are chilling in the trees, so I just want to know what general discussion is going on between you guys right now. Um, actually, my idea was here. We had, uh, I guess, illusions of Tanya, and we put one illusions, and I stayed. I, I was. I stayed uh, together with that illusion, and I thought if they attack here, I will blink out, but they will see illusion, and maybe they will bite on this illusion because they will think that it is this could be a real hero. Uh, but after some time, I thought that okay, if uh, I will stay here, and if I reveal enemies, I could use my ulti on two heroes and our. Primal Beast can instantly jump on them with BKB and just use ulti on two heroes and we will just kill them very fast. Uh, this was my idea, but I played kind of bad and like I had an idea, but I didn't realize it <laughs> because I was just not... Uh, I, I was too scared, I, I think, in awesome. that moment. That was an awesome but answer, man. That thank was, you. That was the idea. Yeah, thank you, man, very much. Even you feel fear, Maposhka? I can't believe it. But I appreciate yeah, I, the insight, my man. Yeah, I mean, I feel scared when my hero is you know, ranged hero and sure, I sure. need to be you know, so far away from fight. In the context <laughs> of the game, fun. outside of the game, you're a stone cold killer, man. I can yeah, see it. <laughs> thanks so much for the insight, Maposhka, and thanks for so much for the interview, thank and you. best of luck to Spirit for the rest of Dream League. Thank you, thank you. Catch thank you later, Maposhka. That's right. Even he has moments where he's wondering, is this the right idea? Did I buy enough distance creating items on a Grimstroke? This is the kind of things that you need to be thinking about if you want to be a two-time TI winner. And if you want to stick around for some Game and Gladiators versus Shopify Rebellion, I've got just the treat for you. Right after the break, we'll be treated to our final series of day number two, right after this.
As much as I love the Pog Champanas, I also love this interstitial that we play. Because it gets me in the mood for the night shift, the very last series of the night. It's Shopify Rebellion versus Game and Gladiators, two teams that actually do not have very much history against one another. I'm sure Quinn has history with a great deal of these, well actually, maybe not even these Shopify players other than Arteezy, but Aside from that, they faced off maybe a handful of times in Dream League Season 19, and then a one time in Dream League Season 20, and that's it. These two teams have not really faced off against one another, not on land. Well, whose stages. fault is that, Neil? Probably mm. Shopify. <laughs> <laughs> Shopify has been getting eliminated very early from many of the lands past year because, well, also Gaming Gladiators was making it through upper bracket for the majority of their wins, and so they didn't have to play very many opponents in general, but... Now they have an opportunity to face off against each other at another Dream League, and Kazu's gonna tell me why I should be excited for mm. it. Well, just in time, Neil. I have the replay ready. I will have something to show because both of these teams, I want to highlight, like when people think about gaming gladiators, right? You think about Quinn and how they play through their mid lane. Yep. But right now that's not really working, and I wanna show on the flip side kind of how Shopify are doing it too. So we'll have a clip ready here. So we need to think about minute six active rune, minute eight active rune, right? This is the Shopify Aurora game from yesterday. Exactly, because a lot of the gameplay right now, if we just look at the map, you already have Theolica here. So one support is already in the mid lane. The second support is coming here as well with Kitrak and Yopash. So you basically ha always have like at least two, maybe three heroes in the mid lane. But some teams, they're actually evolving this move. I showed it the other day on the Telestrator. Offlaner's showing here. up. Exactly. And He's already like naturally here, so around the eight minute mark. So the most important part is not really whether one team gets the kill or not. It's it's basically a bonus. But what's important is helping your mid laner on the active rune. Because really what sets up the early game rotations is going to be how well your mid laner is doing and if they're set up for success. And Shopify are doing this really well. After Sableye helps in mid, he just really TPs top and no one really loses anything on this. But right now for Gaming Gladiators, they have won with this type of strategy over and over and over again. And right now it's not working. So in the next game, I'm really looking for them to maybe like even match this movement. Maybe they also have to bring Ace mid. Because how I watch Gaming Gladiators, if Quinn doesn't have a good early game, I don't really know how they come back in the games. Especially if that means that their games go later, because we actually have a Wisdom Rune on a Gaming Gladiators Ooh. presented by the US Air Force, showing us that Game and Gladiators have a pretty high win rate when the game is shorter than 35 minutes. A 5 and 1 score if the game is shorter than 35 minutes. If the game's longer than 35 minutes, 3 and 9. Yeah, they can speed things up. This team can play some really good Dota when they're ahead. Uh, a lot of the times you feel when they are winning, when they're getting strong out of the laning stage, that the game could end potentially in like 15, 20 minutes, something that they did very successfully at yep. TI. 
uh, in the playoffs, like during the group stages, the games were like relatively long and they're like, you know what, we'll pick these Bristlebacks, we'll pick Chen. They were picking Enchantress as well quite a lot. So they know, I want to see those temp tempo lineups coming out from Gaming Gladiators because right now they do seem a little bit lost. I don't want to harp too much onto Ace because for me, like in the last year, he was probably top three best players in the world, yeah. not just in his role, but also uh, other roles combined. So he was doing quite a lot for his team. Right now, he's getting shut down. And I also think it comes down to him not having any priority in the pick. A lot of the times you'll see him getting picked like in the first phase. But if we go back like three, four months ago, they were picking the last picking, 24 pick. A lot of the times his Underlords, Lycans, Visages. And it can also come down to, you know, this not being a very good zoom meta. So might need to pick up some new stuff. But uh, knowing Ace, he, he can't do it. Like this team, even though they're not doing like hot right now, I can still see them like getting top three in this tournament. I love the point like about the speed, like we saw it in the stat too. They want to play fast. Where like, where's the gaming gladiators IO? Like, why aren't they playing IO Lesh? Like, yeah. this hero can speed up the game. And Chen is banned every game. Ted talks about Ench. Celery is like one of the best enchantresses in the game. True. Why, like, where are these heroes that, well, I'm not saying they're only losing because of draft, because of course you need to bring the gameplay too. Mm -hmm. But where are these heroes that like speak to their strengths? I'm, that's what I miss from their drafts personally. Yeah, they did open up two times with Leshrac at the start of Dream League and they lost both of these games. So I think they kind of lost the confidence in picking these heroes. Mm -hmm. So maybe they thought, oh, the hero's change is dead. Like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's I think I always think a lot of teams, obviously a lot of teams are very confidence based. And yeah. if you, you, your confidence has to be in heroes as well. It is. And yeah. you pick that hero a couple of times, you literally like, oh, I don't want to play it anymore. No, no, I've lost twice with it. I've got to move on to something else. But they haven't found it yet. Yeah. I don't think they've found it. I mean, I, I honestly think in a weird way, it's not the same, but Liquid haven't found out what to do with 33 yet. I'm wondering if maybe Gaiman haven't figured out how can we get Ace back into mm -hmm. where he needs to be? Because as much as Quinn is the engine of this team when he has a good lane mid, yeah. Ace is the superstar, in my opinion. He is the absolute engine of this team. And the lanes start with Tofu and Celery winning yeah. there, but Ace has to have a good game and he's just not been having them. No, I agree. And it, it is really like like your mid laner, sure, if he has a good game, he can move to the sidelines. But the better your sidelines are doing, the more they've chipped down the enemy carry or the enemy offlane, the easier it's like, oh, I can just TP here, get one, two quick kills. Because, yeah, right now it's not really working for them. But on the other side, I feel like Shopify, when we've seen them in their games, Oof. they're just looking good. They're laning well, they're rotating well, they know what to do. Yeah, it just seems like, a, I mean, it is a fresh team, but I feel like they're just impressing me every time I see them. Yeah. It's like, oh, some cool play here, a nice team fight there, a good draft. I didn't